pronounced death when her soul left the body. Chaos begets chaotic life, yet the attempt to unravel it becomes a ludicrous theater of absurdity. I must find somewhere far away, far away from the world and the sun. Once the soul and mind can be calculated with accuracy, they can be separated from the body and roam the world. I grabbed onto this last straw amid those ramblings of madness. Like an alien creature possessing my body and covering my skin. In the mirror and under the shadows, It's a vessel. The true key is often hidden behind the door of absurdity. Tonight's story? is about to begin. Do not forget, my dove. Never open the seventh door. Rare flowers, brilliant gems, and exotic secrets. They should be free. Only the most precious are kept under lock. Only the purest fear the cover of dust. My dove. Slumber with them and become an eternal treasure of mine! It's a pity that a trap set for prey would one day trap the hunter. Car j'étais un nouveau vampire. 
opinionatedness. In the quest for the unknown, we may have a glimpse of the brave new world. The rest note is announcing the advent of the greatest masterpiece. Successful collection of samples. Begin extracting and separating the toxins. Left. 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 I can finally restart the experiment. The subjects are in position. Now it's time for the second toxicity test. They seem to have different visions. That leaves us with... One last variable. I'm Eli O, an English caster from the NAEU region. Hi, I'm Cho Cho. This is Saikyu coming at you from the NAEU region. Hey folks, Botch Spice here from the SEA region. Hello everyone, I'm Nello Mello, a commentator for the NAEU region. With the recent Call of Bisquaffers in NAEU finally coming to a close, we're left with two victorious teams, 
to rule them all. Those being Omni and B4U. So we all know B4U as one of the best representatives of Identity 5 in the NAEU region. The team B4U has some incredible survivor chemistry as their survivors have been playing together for many, many seasons. Uh, and they also have a very strong hunter side as well. There is no doubt that their presence will leave rumbles for their opponents on the stage. I'm excited to see what they have to offer in the big stage. Along with them comes Omni. Their new appearance adds a wild card to the table. Since their performance in IVT 2023 to the qualifiers, they have grown a lot and Sky is definitely the limit for this team. So we should expect to see some good things from them in this upcoming global event. So for those of you guys that are watching that want to support Team B4U, that wants to support Team Omni, or even the whole NAEU region, make sure to come out and show support for your favorite NAEU team as they come out to compete for the ultimate test of glory. And for the people who's coming for the offline China event, do remember to book your tickets. Your support is the greatest power to make them stronger and keep moving on. So don't go anywhere. I'll see you. We shall see who shall be the reign champion for COA7 Global Stages this time round. Thank you guys, and I will see you all in the manor. See you guys. Hello, สวัสดีครับ. Mobidi da hap. สวัสดีค่ะ. Jup lawa na ha. สวัสดีค่ะ. Lady Solan. สวัสดีครับ. I'm J2S na ha. I'm character of Zone South East Asia in Call of Duty Seven na ha. ปีนี้ต้องบอกเลยว่าการแข่งขันรอบคัดเลือก Call of the Abyss 7 ในโซน South East Asia สู่สีและก็ดุเดือดกันมากครับแล้วบอกเลยว่าทุกทีมนี่จัดเต็มกันสุดๆเลยค่ะนะแต่ว่ามีเพียงแค่หนึ่งทีมเท่านั้นค่
because my teammate Schmitty has shaken his hand in Koa 2 and I would like to do the same in Koa 7. I've never been to China, and I know that food is a big part of their culture. The variety is intriguing, and I would love to try it. ちょっと興味あって、まあどんな美味しい食べ物あるのかなっていうのが興味あります。我听很多人说西湖的风景非常美。some goals I'm very excited to achieve is going to certain places that I've been wanting to see for a while, concepts such as the Great Wall of China and uh, certain lakes and monuments in the area, as well as being top 12 during this core global climate. <laughs>我是第五人格赛事官方解说永晚兔今年的话二十四岁还在上大学我的座右铭是热爱自己的热爱勇于挑战每一千跳每一千跳呃进医院了进医院了杰克杰克确定进医院了进医院了与第五人格这款游戏
当时夺冠的第一反应的话，其实是在想，对，难道真的不是一场梦吗？拿的冠军，它其实并不是终点，它其实你那个阶段性的终点，说明你那个阶段做得很好，但它还有很多很多不同的阶段。从监管者转到了求人者阵营，其实是我职业生涯中最大的一次转折。对于我来说，可能是更想进行一个尝试，进行一个突破，在求人者阵营看看能能不能拿到比较高的一个荣耀。我会用乐观积极的心态去面对困难，不断的去提升自己的水平。我知道胜利是努力和汗水的勋章，我会在每一场的比赛里付出我最大的努力。そうですね。まあまず自分が外国人格大好きなんで、そもそもゲームやって楽しいっていうのと、まあ今いるメンバーの仲間たちと一緒にやるのがやっぱ自分にとっては楽しくできる理由で、そうですね。僕にとっての C.O.A. は勝った思い出もあるそういう場ですね。まあ去年の C.O.A. シックスでの G.W. 戦。で自分のまあ大きなミスが結構試合に響いちゃって負けたのがとても悔しくてこの CO7 までめちゃくちゃ練習してきましたデータで結構チームメンバーが変わったりとかまあいろいろあったんですけど CO へ向けての調整はフートキャンプをしてきたので。事務所で練習することによってたくさんの練習時間を確保することができるので、そこでみんなで一緒に話したり考えたりして対策を練ってきました。まあこのためにみんなと一緒に日々いっぱい練習頑張ってきたので、それを全力で発揮できるようにと自分も悔いを残さぬように全力で戦ってきます。我还是要感谢一下我自己，当初的话自己鼓起勇气去投递简历，成为一名解说。现在回头想来
Yo, what is up, everybody, and welcome to Call of Us Day Six. I'm Psyche, your commentator, returning along with Eli. O. Say hello, Eli. What's up, guys? Good to see you, uh, Psyche. Pronouncing my name yeah. correctly. Uh, is it a special day? What's going on? Not usual. Yes, today we remembered. As I'm saying your name more and more often, I'm remembering more and more often. But every mm -hmm. once in a while, I still love calling you Ellie because that is what right. I know you by. Guys, today is day six. We have the matchups Cat versus TE today, HHDG versus FT afterwards, followed by FPXZQ versus GH, and finally GG versus Zeta. That last one will be a competition of professional OGs. Guys, Cat, on the other hand, Cat is not a professional OG. They are a professional new G, as I like to call them. Does that make any sense? They're coming out and they're one of the newer, I'm not sure if they're one of the newer teams, but they're, they definitely are a new name we see around here. Uh, before we talk about that, let's talk about the support works collection as you guys know throughout the stream you guys will be seeing different kinds of arts that we will be showcasing to you guys and this is part of the support works collection that you can do on twitter so if you post any content supporting any of the teams here on call of abyss 7 using hashtag call of abyss 7 support then you have a chance of getting 10 essences for free randomly it's from randomly selected it's basically like a raffle i wonder how many that's the only thing i don't know uh, but any outstanding support works may have the chance to be featured on the global finals support wall and who knows maybe even on the stream illustrations and crafts memes videos all that stuff is good to be used as your support and you can do this for any of the teams you like it doesn't have to be just any eu and we also have the viewing guide if you guys would like you could also check out any of the discussions going on on the official X with the hashtag called the Southern Global Finals. You could check in. Players are invited to share their live experiences by posting check in photos on SNS with tag hashtag called the Seven and called the Seven support. And during yep. the called the Seven Global Finals, visitors can join the Discord channel and you have a chance of winning the Eli Tiger keychain. Yes, there we go. Along with other keychains, they look real cute. Yep, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, if you're not part of the Discord, don't forget to join. I'm sure many of you have Discord because Discord is very popular among people. So that's something to keep in mind, obviously. Among people. Uh, <laughs> not among my dad, though. <laughs> not among Psyche's dad, but everybody else. Like, well, also my mom probably does. I don't think any of my parents have uh, Discord. But anyways, getting into our match rankings. We have GG's Ada Division, MRC Double, and GR following up in Group A, of course. The most competitive group, most likely over there. Group B, RC currently in first. If HHDG, that'll be interesting to see who comes out on top. FT fighting for a third spot, potentially even more. RD in fourth, and Omni wrapping things up in fifth. Group C, TE, B4U, Wolves, Scars, and Cat. Multiple teams fighting for the Burke playoffs. TE, B4U, Wolves, Scars, all looking to secure a potential spot. And Cat hanging on at the end there, along with Group D, Axe Wave, Weibo Gaming, FDX, DQ, GH, AWG. GH, of course, not out of things just yet. They're really going to need a huge win over FPX CQ today. They want to try to move into a potential playoff position, but it is definitely an uphill battle for them. TE versus Cat. Cat must win the rest of their matches here and by a significantly high score if they want a chance of securing a potential third place spot to clinch the playoff division. Uh, HHGG FT here. Again, both these teams fighting for a winner's bracket spot in the top two. FPX CQ GH we talked about. And the last match as well. Cat versus T, the first one though. Cat, a must win today. TE just looking to pad to their lead here and uh, really trying to finish out in that first place spot um, in their group if possible. Getting the lineup here, we have Satori, CC, STAK, I'm Sovio, and CU, 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 CU later, Psyche. See you later. <laughs> Completely mispronouncing it. See you later. Oh my goodness. And on TE, we have Yang Y. Hua Hua, Yi Hua, Pepe. Pepe. Uh, Yang Wai, Hua Hua, Yi Hua, Pepe, Li Bao, TX, and On Yi. Yes, no, that's not confusing at all. On TE, we have TX. The whole state of Texas is joining in in TE. <laughs> uh, that's a joke, of course. But as you guys saw there earlier, in the leaderboards, in terms of Group C, Cat versus TE, Cat is on the lower end. They're in fifth place. TE is the first place team. They are doing the best in their bracket 
or they're grouped right now, I should say. So I'm not sure if Cad will be able to still get a third place if they don't win today. Satoru oh. right there giving Heart Servant. I believe that is Satoru, right? I know Quinn really wanted me to shout them out. I believe that is the Hunter right there. Yep. And uh, the players, the Survivor players also bowing down. But yeah, this is not going to be easy at all. We saw we saw a lot of teams, a lot of good teams in this bracket playing against each other. We saw TE in first. We saw B4U in second. I wonder yep. if we could see B4U continue to keep their second place spot. That would be very exciting to see. And we haven't seen, mm -hmm. just like Ellie said, in a long time, in, a, in recent times, we haven't seen an NAU team be doing so well before. So I yep. hope we can continue to see this continuation of really strong gameplay from TE and B4U. And hopefully we can, maybe, maybe though, we'll see a comeback from Cat. Cat will yep. need to win here today, most likely, I believe, to get a third place. Otherwise, I'm right. not so sure anymore. They'll only have one more match right. remaining. Unless yeah, so they played a fourth time, but I'm pretty no, sure they're, they're, they're going to have to go. If you want to secure, so basically, for those of you who don't know, how the playoffs works is essentially, uh, assuming it's oh, the same tournament. as the uh, Interview, I mean. <laughs> インタビュー。インタビュー。ワンセグンガイズ。やっぱり普段ランクマッチとか言ってても対策がしづらいような心情相当的开心啊，相当的激动，让我热血澎湃。团队大家都非常的努力，大家好好加油，努力争取进个淘汰赛。听说性感哥非常厉害哦，我们会竭尽全力去战胜你啊。All right, and we are turning now. Go that's going to be our interview. Um, so talking about the groups, for those of you who don't know, essentially, assuming the rules are the same as last year, it's going to be the top three. So basically, it's a double elimination playoffs, except the third place teams start out in the loser's bracket. So the third place teams in each division automatically start out the loser's bracket, and the first and second seed teams start out in the winner's bracket. Um, and then it's a double elimination, of course, for the winner's bracket. And the third place teams will have to go all the way to the finals by winning all their matches. Um, so, to secure a spot in third place division, you have to at least, I believe, be probably at least be two and two, uh, based off of how things are gonna most likely play out. So, Pat already 0 and 2 here, they will have to win the next two matches. Indeed. I feel the nervousness on their looks. Whenever you get in this kind of position that they are in right now, it definitely it definitely scares you a little bit. It almost changes like your view on Identity 5. Like all you guys playing Identity 5, especially when I was playing Identity 5 before I got into the better. It's like it's like a game, alright? Like you play, you continue to play, if you make a mistake, it's alright. But now it's it's really scary because now every choice you make really matters. Even the look in the character's eyes will never feel the same to you after today. You'll always remember like, okay. We, I will remember what happens here, what happens now, and they'll need to if they want to continue competing. It's going to be a big deal, and it can definitely be a big, big nervousness factor playing in on their side. Uh, Satoru here sitting at the end of the table. Gravekeeper, Mercenary are their options here. Though, do not be mistaken, I'm sure they have plenty of other options to go with as well. We also saw CC, I'm so Obo, GT, to you. And Kali, but where is Satoru on here? Where is Satoru on this on this list? I'm so confused. Well, Satoru, uh, uh, Satoru, formerly known as Seiyun, is the, uh, the of course the rescuer player for um, for Team Cat. Was also on Team MS, I believe, last Colobus, and has been on the qualifying team for Koa most years. Uh, and is a rescuer player. Mercenary first officer will be the most common character. Gravekeeper as well. Of course, definitely on the hunter side as well. Uh, Hey, 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 not sure. But anyways, the hunter for <laughs> EE here. DE is looking really strong. Uh, definitely on track potentially for the first seed if they continue as this grape. We're gonna see that TE is gonna be in Sigara Hospital. And Cat, big coin flip, was able to win the coin flip and choose the map, going into a map where they uh, must win match for them, being able to choose map first. Of course, very, very crucial, giving them a pretty good advantage here. It's gonna be Arms Factory and uh, the Cat Survivors. We'll go up first, TE is an optional hunter. Indeed, it is a pretty big deal. When you get to choose your map, 
or at least at least when I play competitive nowadays they give the option map or faction I don't really see why you would ever go faction because if you go map you could pick the team squad the team composition that your team has been practicing have the hunter go what they've been practicing play kind of on your terms play which you've been doing good well uh well with playing what you've been what you're used to simple as that and it's it's really good but of course other teams have also been playing on possibly the same maps you never know that's what you have to be careful of you gotta pick a map that maybe they are not gonna be as familiar familiar with hard to say that though because Obviously, if you're a pro player, you've been playing on every map. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of... And honestly, hundreds is an understatement. Thousands would be a better way. I mean, I'm over here playing that game for six years. I just recently hit 20,000 matches. Most of them are in rank. So they've been playing literal thousands upon thousands of matches uh, if you play every day. And so really, at the end of the day, it's going to be whoever plays uh, the most well. Whoever is going to just be on top of the game with their kiting routes with the hunter skill usage and all that good stuff but yeah we're gonna be hopping right into the band picks here pepe is gonna most likely start off with an opera singer survivor band we could see a couple of them we could see gardener we could see coordinator we could even see explorer which i was just about to say we see the explorer why explorer you might be asking because how do you deal with this hunter there's only two ways you deal with this hunter you either stall it out with stuns or multiple hits or you just straight up tie and you could honestly do either one with any character but explorer is particularly good at hiding not so good at hiding but to be fair most survivors sure. are not going to be that good hiding unless you're anyway against but, huh? uh unless i'm the explorer but uh no i'm just kidding <laughs> so you're saying you'd be able to kind of hear the explorer kiting oh yeah oh yeah yeah all right no, my I, man would just, is I would just get bound in here I would just get bound and die. Probably not. Uh, anyways, getting our band picks here. Quick reminder to everybody in chat: if you are unaware of somebody's uh, gender, please refer to that individual as they, because that way we don't make any mistakes and we don't cause any problems. So instead of arguing over uh, gender identification, let us be open-minded to everybody and enjoy the stream, enjoy the games. First option will be the last character picked here from the side of Cat. Um, and for Pepe, I imagine Psyche, probably the opera singer. Uh, not likely to see anything else because, you know, opera singer has been our round 100 both sides. And, you know, we talk about this a lot. The first round opera singer match is the most important one. Who will come out on top? Whichever team has come out on top in round one, whoever has the better opera singer game, usually goes on to be the victor. So uh, I guess something to keep in mind though, Cat actually does not play opera. They lead with Mad Eyes, um, but... Uh, Oh, Kat Wait, chose Kat leads with Mad Eyes? Yeah, Kat leads, Kat leads with Mad Eyes? I thought they played... No, that's Ardy. That's Ardy. Yeah, yeah, that's Dream. Yeah, that's that's Ardy. Sorry. Same color, different okay. team. Uh, anyways. No problem. Upper singer Magic Dang, will be Am I remembering cool. teams better than Ellie here? No Mikey. way. Oh, you know what? Uh, You're falling apart. I today. I My might replace you guys. Don't mind me. How are you feeling, by the way, Eli? I saw that you've been real sick recently. You've been coughing a lot. Yeah. How are you feeling today? Well, today, like you yesterday was me. yesterday was pretty bad. Today, I'm currently um, uh, I'm currently I have like a dry cough, so it's a little bit like it's kind of annoying, but it's not like one that's gonna slow me down too much. So hopefully, things will be okay with that. I might be coughing uh, here and I, there with the dry cough, but it, that means it's on the way out. You know, it's on the it's it should be gone good. hopefully in the next two days. Yeah. We see an interesting spawn here from Cap, by the way. I actually learned quite a bit about this spawn from before use coach Aaron. He let me know that they are also one of the bigger fans of this spawn strategy, as I like to call it the shape, as he likes to call it the rocket. We're not gonna say, yep, that's definitely the shape I was lying about. But basically, you have both people spawn in the corners, and that might seem a little bit counterintuitive. Like, why are you spawning both people in the corners? Isn't that bad against transitioning? Isn't that bad for cyber decode? And while it is awkward for Cypher Decode, the idea here is that if you have two people spawn in the corner, one is, they're both out of the way, and if you try to block Factory, the idea here is if you spawn someone Factory, Hunter is tempted to try to block Factory by spawning top left right here. And you see right here that now the Hunter has to make a choice. Do I go after the person in the sandbags or do I go after Force? Either way, the people have a very clear, very clear start about who the hunter is going to chase him right away. 
And we're right, there's a nice snowball to star, but it's gonna lead yeah, to early it's, it's, Yeah, it's not gonna matter. We saw an early switch from the novelist here, trying to avoid a hit, but ultimately not mattering. Uh, I'm surprised novelist wasn't able to. Oh, we could see Mike with the pallet here. This is gonna be big. Gets the hit through the pallet, and the cypher machines have just been started. I'm so OVO, one of the strongest kiters from this Korean region, but this time around, I passed down for Pepe here, and just like that, this is going to be an incredible start for TE. Um, and already for Cat, yeah, really on the back foot. They're gonna have to. How do you work out of this one? Um, it's really tough for sure. We're gonna see first officer potentially transition in for the rescue, but at this point in time, the Cyphers are really far behind. Indeed, I'm not really sure what happened there. On paper, it seems seems like a good idea of a spawn, but what, we just saw right there the survivor spawn a really open area and Opera Sting being so fast. It could just be that I'm so Ovio didn't have time to get to the area that they're trying to get to. First off, you're going to get a nice clean rescue here. He's not even going to have to use the watch. Wow, that's really important right there. But again, I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe he didn't run to the area right away because now, oh, nice flywheel. Ooh, but getting the blink out. All right, good enough, I suppose. But it's just, it's just the first guy is going to be, he's going to be one of the weaker ones and it's going to make this game a lot harder to tie. So. Again, I'm not sure what happened there. In B for use match, we saw that the hunter went after the person in deep sandbags, wasting a lot of time on the hunters into travel. And on this case, we see the hunter just immediately go after someone in forest. They don't really have anything to kite. They're also near the hunter. Um, when I was talking with Aaron about this, he explained that the advantage here is very strong cypher rush because factory, well, factory is going to be a block, but the deep sandbags will have a cypher. You can run to the other deep sandbag cypher in, in like, deep sandbags area there might be two there we're gonna see a bubble well done bubble there well time bubble it's going to still take a hit in fact it's going to take a double hit so i feel like that was the most that they could have stalled there without getting too close to the hunter and getting a hit novel's gonna get one more book here Ellie. this could be a good ending for novels no moved out of the way yeah, uh, at least he's able to stay alive a little bit longer here, seeing if he could extend this cut. But actually has five will not broken windows, so um, not going to get a whole lot of speed boost around here. And honestly, uh, not much he's going to be able to do. I don't think he makes his window. Gonna... Uh, oh, okay, does secure the down here. Um, and that's going to be a double down onto the survivors of Cat. And, you know, things are really challenging at this point in time for uh, for Cat. You know, just that first down was really fast. And, you know, while the spawn does promote, uh, you know, a significant amount of cypher rush, you do put yourself in a position where it's hard to for the uh, that novelist to rotate out of that area and, and was down pretty quickly. Yes, again, we'll, we might have to review this match later and check out like, what happened there. Did they just not move out of the way in time? Cheerleader is going to have to use well, both cheers immediately, just as I thought. It might still result in a hit here. It does, unfortunately. Cheerleader not going to get the value she wanted. It's just, mm, I wonder what the cheerleader was for, speaking of which, because there is no like survivor that you would want to reset the cooldown for besides for Sobster, unless the notebook recharges to full when you use the cooldown ability on Novelist, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. I feel like you'd have to look at the hunter. It's not like a seer owl. In fact, it's exactly like a seer owl. You can't just use a cheerleader stun just to give him an extra owl. I don't think it works like that. So yep. overall, it's gonna make this it's gonna make this awkward because now they're not gonna be able to get a second good kite either. And even though First Officer has his item from his last rescue still saved, it's still gonna be difficult. They only have one person decoding. Lots of deco progress, but not enough people decoding, mostly because they have to have so many people doing so many things that we can't have people just decode for free. Oh. Unfortunate miss from the blink there. Gonna immediately switch. Um, I think at this point in time, you know, he does down the officer, which is fine. Will he continue after the... No, he's going to try the officer. I think either way, even though uh, the survivor was able to escape here, it's not really going to be a big difference. Survivors have two cypher machines at 70 plus percent, so they have a lot of good progress. Uh, but in reality, they still have a full nother, a whole nother cypher to get through. And no one can really rescue here. Uh, I think there's pretty much zero opportunity for this not to be a four kill. Uh, Pepe's pretty much locked oh, locked down this game. That first down with the Novelist was really, really important. And then from there on, just injuring all these survivors. Indeed, indeed. That is going to be the win condition here for Pepe this game, at least. It's just going to be a game of attrition now. Perhaps the cheerleader can get the rescue off because this is for Officer's first chair. He also takes longer, but this window vault is going to slow her down, unfortunately. Meaning that now the Opera Singer is going to be able to catch up to her, but she didn't have any more pom-poms to use. That was going to be it no matter what. I'm very curious here, will Pepe choose to chair immediately? Probably not. Otherwise, he's going to risk not getting the foreman here. It's going to be a big deal to get a foreman. And Ellie, I have a feeling that we're going to see 
this is I, I i mean this is how the legacy of call of abyss 7 is going so far if you don't get a tie against opera it feels like you just win in round in round two just in two rounds that that's quick and easy unfortunately so yep. we might see this happen i'm not sure but for now this is looking like in trouble yeah, Gardner's able to get a bubble here, but, you know, really just going to be a mind game at the Palette. Gardner is going to be downed, and that should be the Force Survivor Elimination. We still, still have to self-heal on some of these survivors, but uh, realistically, uh, yeah, there's not much to be done here. And yeah, this is exactly... Uh, his yeah, he missed the survivor there. He's, he'll find her eventually, most likely. Uh, I think he might be... I think he oh, might be overthinking he? it a little bit. Although, um, I mean, I'm curious because she doesn't seem to be crawling that much faster, is she? She doesn't have flywheel, so she might not have sticker. She could still be running it. Possibly, I'm not exactly sure. Most likely not because sticker is not that great to run on its own. But, mm, yeah, I'm missing her out in the open there. I think she might be like behind a barrel or something, so that'll stall it out a little bit more. Imagine. I mean, the worst case scenario, he could always just sit next to dungeon and wait for her to die although no then gardener could self heal and get a bubble up yeah he kind of needs to find at least one person here one of them has to be found yeah so all right we're gonna give pepe a bit of a few minutes here to find the survivors it might be a couple minutes it does take a while to bleed out he'll find them eventually usually yeah. most likely mm. but yeah, yeah for this now is, uh, this is like uh when, when this is like when Psyche played violinist against me and my low tier friends when I was new to the game. And uh, and Psyche had a hard time finding anyone, except when he did find someone, we were really bad at kiting because, you know, I was like literally new. This was way back in season whatever when I was a newbie and didn't know what I was doing. And uh, and Psyche killed me and my teammates fast. So, uh, yeah. Um, so, what Ellie is saying here is if they kited well, I would have lost. I mean, that's how it goes with survival. Yeah. Yep, that's true. That's how it goes. Uh, it, however, I like low. to point out now, nowadays, if I were to catch Psyche, it would be a different story, right? But that was just back no in the days. I was back in the beginner days, you know. Yeah. Oh, oh! I thought you had another story there. I was like waiting for no, that. Was, that was a story. The story is basically, back when I was a low tier, I couldn't kite, but Psyche was also flying. But then nowadays, <laughs> I can actually, <laughs> I can actually kite. So it's good. <laughs> Okay, I see how it is. I like how during that whole story, we just went from one fourth bleed bleeding out to now three fourths, and she still hasn't found any survivors. This is getting a little bit scary now. It's actually she problematic. Still has yeah. both pom poms. She got them both yeah. back. This could get a little bit scary. Cheerleader though, most likely gonna bleed out on purpose though, just so her teammate Gardener. You know. Uh -oh. I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know if I've ever seen this before. Okay, it does find the gardener. I think that's the better find because, you know, that's the driver that's, uh... Actually, that should... No, because Shiller can technically get back up again. So he can't yeah, share... Totally. He can't share. He actually cannot share. He's going to let her struggle free, I guess, to reset the heal. Um, but then she'll just continue to... He's going to let her struggle and then down her again. Ah... Uh, and then this force is, he's gonna wait. He's not gonna down her yet. He's gonna oh, wait he is for really chugging his sentence. He's gonna wait here. for cheerleader to breathe out. He's gonna wait for cheerleader to bleed out before downing. But cheerleader can get up again as well. Yeah, Indeed. Don't... I wonder I wonder if he'll just go try to find. I wonder if he should have gone and go find the cheerleader at this point. Since yep, that way, I if agree. they're both alive, no timer is going down. So he'll have time to identify at least one of them. Although, I then agree. he would, no matter how what, have to start one of their timers, I suppose. So would it really make a difference? It would be nice yeah, to at but... least get an idea of where you have tinnitus and stuff like that before you start downing yeah. people. And but oh wow, hey, nice. Here's he found the, the problem, nice right? Early, he, he has to if he, 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 he has to cheer cheerleader when he downs her, right? Because cheerleader, even though she doesn't have social, she's gonna bleed out, which means Gardner can get up. Um, so he's gonna chair uh, the cheerleader, which actually would buy more time uh, in reality. Uh, I almost feel like survivors should bleed out a little bit faster than they do, but I don't know. Anyways, uh, we're gonna see the cheerleader is gonna use that speed, which is gonna cut here as much as possible. Um, and I'm not sure what the survivors will do. Maybe search a chest. Yeah, search a chest, look for an item. He's actually going to change targets. i go for the other one. Uh, Pepe is a bit of an awkward position. Uh, you don't really see this in, in these, uh, four kill situations, but there's still an opening for Cat here. 
Indeed. It's all because he couldn't find that one survivor. I almost feel like he just kind of forgot because he didn't knock her down in an area full of walls. Or maybe she, maybe he did knock her down in an area full of walls. I'm not really sure anymore. So he'll, he'll just carry the survivor. I really doubt he'll chair here. Maybe he will to extend the timer. No, he will chair. He will chair. Done. Yeah, because yeah, if he leaves okay. her on the ground, she's going to bleed out within a few seconds. So he has to chair here. Uh, actually, chairing should make, waste more time. Cheerleader's going to hide. This is huge if Pepe sees the cheerleader. Oh. No, so cheerleader is going to get found here. She had one cheerleader go. pom pom, but used it a little bit too late. I have a feeling she would have gotten hit there no matter what anyway, though. And there we go. TE having a little bit of an awkward ending, but still nonetheless getting the four men that they really wanted there. It was all because of that just awkward start with the novelist. I wonder, again, yep. I would like to go back and rewatch that match. And we're going to see exactly how this happened. Because, by all means, I feel like that novel should have been able to reach the front gate unless he got really unlucky with spawn and spawned really close to Shed. I suppose it is possible, and I suppose that makes the spawn a little bit risky if that were to happen. Let's look back at that, because I'm actually curious as well. The novel got cut off. Or he got found pretty early and close to No Man's Land, which you really don't want to be at. You want to be up to the front gate already. Uh, so let's see. We spawned into the game here. That was spawns at the rock. Okay, so he's rotating from the rock, and oh no, I guess no, no, he's no. past closer to Shaq. Yeah, right? he spawned and really close to Shaq. So he, he just runs. There's no way. He just didn't have time. So he actually runs directly to front gate, but just doesn't have time. That's just the speed no. of Opera Singer, right? Is yeah, that's just right? Opera Singer being really fast. There was nothing he could do there. I suppose the only thing he had left to do there was to just not get hit through the pallet right after the start of the kite, but that's still a huge downside. You really need both your health to even get its high kite. And the fact that that happens really, really makes that spawn a little bit awkward. Perhaps there is something to be said when the hunter goes and chases in deep sandbags because then your teammate First officer will be like, oh, I see the hunter passing by the gate and now, they, now the coordinator has plenty of time to hide. And the coordinator will be like, okay, I'm in an area of thick walls. I can hide. I can get this nice star. But what about the person at forest? The person at forest is out in the open. The person at forest typically, typically could get a spawn anywhere between shack, closer to shack, or closer to the front gate. It really depends. And he got a little bit unlucky there, I would say. That's, you normally don't spawn that close to the hunter, that close to the edge of the map. So I feel like if this match were to be replayed again, I don't think that were to happen again. I feel like that was a really lucky start from the hunter side. Of course, nothing that they could control, nothing that anyone could control, but perhaps that shows one of the downsides of the spawn location. And the other downside of the spawn location as well is because you spawn with a survivor in bottom right, you also create a position where that cypher machine's locked. So let's say, so the point of this spawn essentially, right, let's 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 analyze this a little bit, right? So you have a survivor spawn um, and you make like the rocket shape. So you have a survivor at the top, middle, and then two in the bottom left and bottom right. Okay, and you have the hunter spawn top left. So if you spawn with the survivors as the plus sign instead, right? And you have the survivor uh, top, middle, bottom, and then right side, right? Uh, at the gate, mm -hmm. you don't lose Cypher Rush because if the survivor, if the novelist gets found at Big Rock, uh, middle can you can, can be decoded, sandbags can be decoded for the survivor that spawned bottom side, and then front gate can be decoded for the last survivor, and none of your Cypher machines are locked. But because the hunter spawns top left, you block factory, right? Which means the cheerleader is looting, losing out on decoding progress um, because the survivors spawn that way. And so that's sort of like the, the downside with you know, the, the direct directly into factory spawn. If you want to go for a Cypher Rush, there's two types of spawns. You spawn a survivor directly into factory, so you create a safer position for them, right? Even though the Cypher might be blocked off. Uh, or you go for a Cypher Rush based spawn in which you spawn a survivor top, middle, bottom, and right side, middle, right side. That way you don't lose out on decoding progress at the hunter spawns top left, which because the survivors can just do front gate, sandbags, middle, and you have immediately three survivors decoding um and yeah. so that's yeah so i'm i still say i'm a fan of the t-spawn more than the l or the rocket spawn that we saw right there but the idea yeah. here of having someone spawn factories you're tempting the hunter more to spawn in the top left so if they want to chase at deep sandbags it'd be a really far distance away i feel like the other problem here is maybe just having novice there isn't really the right move you might have wanted a coordinator there Gardner. instead so i think that Gardner because been fine yeah. Well, Gardner has the bubble, so Gardner guaranteed to, is guaranteed to make it to front gate. So I feel like Indeed, Gardner in that so... spawn is, is actually stronger. 
So probably should have swapped those spawns around right there. It would have been a lot better because the hunter is going to want to target the weaker survivor in the in the weakest area possible. So you don't want to put your weak survivor in a weak area that they have to run from because because part of the idea of the spawn, part of the benefit of the spawn is that if you spawn people at like fat at like the gate or between factory and deep sandbags, the, the downside of it is that you have to transition to the ciphers and then that makes it a lot easier for opera to catch up because transition doesn't really do a whole lot against opera. At least that's what I learned from Aaron when he was explaining this. But I also figured that there's nothing really stopping you leaving the area like it's not that like factory is that far off from your spawn it's not like the other area front gate ruins is that far from your spawn if someone has to look right there if if the person at middle gets chased the other person at front gate could get a warning and like hey i'm using a watch right now but after the watch runs out could you like already have gone so that i can hide there and i feel like there could be some communication going on here but i'm not gonna lie there although i prefer the t-spawn I still think like this spawn could have worked out, in fact should have worked out had they swapped Novice and Gardener and put the weaker survivor in a stronger area where he can hide easier and put the stronger kiter in a place where they're not going to be able to hide but instead they're going to be able to kite and use their strong kiting abilities against the opera senior. So perhaps a little bit of an oversight there but regardless we're moving on to the next match here. TE just needs to tie as their survivor or even get one person out and they win the round. So. TE has been known to be very strong on the survivor side, Gen just so strong in general, very dominant performance overall from them. So they just need to play super safe. That being said though, Opera Singer is a scary hunter. Opera Singer could turn the tables at any point the moment one person makes a mistake. Even like that game, no one really made a mistake besides like, like even if you could argue that one pal drop, like yeah, that was a mistake, but they got really unlucky with that, with that like spawning the novice so close to the hunter. Like it could have worked if he just spawned closer to the gate still instead of so close to shed. So we'll see here. It really just takes one mistake if Cat chooses to play Opera Singer. We've seen them play Wax Artist a lot though. So I'm very curious what we're gonna see her at Eli. Yep, I'm curious to see as well. But we did see Wax Artist in round one in one of the matches. And then we saw Opera Singer round one in another match. So I don't think we're going to see Wax here, Psyche, just because it's Arms Factory. Arms Factory, Wax Artist is considered very weak. Uh, I've played Wax Artist a lot in the past, and I will say Arms Factory is one of the less optimal maps due to the fact there's a lot of high walls, a lot of ways to break light of sight and avoid the Wax, whether you're at Front Gate Ruins, Factory, Shack, Three Pallet, Sandbags, basically the whole map, besides the transitioning areas, uh, Wax Artist does struggle uh, quite a bit. So I will say that Wax Artist is unlikely here. I think we'll see the Opera Singer come out in this situation. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, based off of how um, SCNK has been playing very consistently, uh, has been tying pretty much all of the matches thus far, but has had a hard time actually going for wins. And considering that Cat, pretty far behind in points here, uh, a win might be what's needed to turn things around again. If you lose round number one, if you lose that Opera Singer round, uh, it's, it's something like, at this currently, around like a 90 to 95 percent chance of losing the best of three series that's what we've seen throughout the majority of this event and a lot in the qualifiers before this event as well indeed we've seen this time and time again if someone if any team loses to opera singer and then the opposing team's hunter doesn't get another win as opera singer what ends up happening is that the team that won with their opera singer hunter they just they just end up playing for a tie or even getting a win sometimes and then their hunter does just a little bit better and then gets it back, gets it back, wins in two rounds, and it makes it really tough. It makes it really hard to mount a comeback because of that. I mean, just like that, even even if you somehow get to round three, if you get four man at any point in a tournament like this, you don't just you don't just go down to like a three point deficit. Because let's say you get you let's say you get one person escape, right? One three point one point goes to the one to the side that got one escape, and then three points goes to the hunter who killed those three survivors, right? Yep. So it's a it's a two point profit. But with, if you get four men, if all four of your survivors die, they don't just get three more points than you. They don't just get four more points than you. They get five more points than you. A whole whopping three extra point 
difference is what we have going on here, which that's what makes it so difficult to come back from. It essentially is, in other words, okay, well, you now need to four man us back or four escape us back, usually four man, because it's really difficult to get four escape style as survivor side. Usually the most they can do is get three out. Since it's so easy for the hunter to tunnel one survivor late game, camp with the tension, blink them down if some miracle is attempting to be happened, switch to excitement. Trump card has opened up a lot of options for a late game hunter and guarantees that almost always they're able to get at least one person kill majority of the time so we will see here just like ellie said i'm a little bit skeptical skeptical of the wax artists we saw waxers though on church as well and i was also skeptical of that so we'll see it really just depends what they choose here but again like ellie said arms factory is one of the hardest masks for for wax arts. in fact probably the hardest besides maybe each hospital but even a hospital has those long quarters corridors where it makes it kind of difficult to reach hospital or if you try to reach hospital from a far distance just by walking there you might get shot down with the wax so at least there's that advantage with arms factory there's almost no advantage most of the good pallets and windows are all clustered together in really close proximity to each other full of walls all around the place it makes it really hard to gain momentum as wax or anything you're you might be losing momentum you might be losing wax sometimes which is really unfortunate but here we go we got the band selections already interesting we see entomologist first um not really a character you see banned for the opera singer so not really sure the thought process there uh yeah very curious but looks like we're gonna see acrobat and gardener on the side of te here really their next for stnk and you know honestly i feel like um with the entomologist fan, it could there's a slight possibility SDK is considering a different hunter, but realistically, I think Opera Singer would technically be the best opportunity for a four kill, right? So that's something that you have to take into consideration. Yeah, if Pat sure. does lose, Pat does lose the first round, I, I really don't think they're going to be able to win this series, and this is a must-win series for them. So I think in reality, uh, SDK kind of has to play Opera Singer. I don't think there's anything else you can really get away with. Not banning the Antiquarian as well. We saw this happen in the, some of the previous matches with some other teams, and it really ultimately came back to backfire uh, into the Hunter side. So giving the Antiquarian here could be uh, very, very yeah, I mean, I feel like at this point, it's probably not an Opera Singer. Yeah, it's a huge disadvantage if you go Opera Singer at this point, Eli. I mean, but why I would you they, not ban I really, I really think the Hunter has to play. I really think the Hunter has to play uh, the Opera Singer. I, I don't think another Hunter can four kill from this player. I mean, I absolutely from agree, from but the, these, this uh, Antiquarian, the close to Gardener, it's the only difference is like the, the Mercenary here is not the best against Opera Singer, so maybe STNK still has that advantage going for them, but I absolutely agree. Opera Singer is going to be the way to go. She, she is the best Hunter in the game right now that they can play, uh, besides arguably Dream Witch, and these bans, the thing about it is that Antiquarian is not even globally banned. Antiquarian is going to be around the whole time. So they, he definitely has, uh, they definitely have to come up with a wow. hunter that will deal with Antiquarian. Otherwise, otherwise it's going to put them away. So Wax yeah. we do see the Waxers here a little bit sketchy, a little bit skeptical because of just the sheer dominance of the areas. It's not so much. Yeah, it's just it's the map. It's not so much what survivors you pick against Waxers. It's more so your area. So I feel like we have to see things like insolence. I feel like we have to see things like faster pallet breaking. If you have slow pallet breaking and they drop a pallet, they're not going to get just like around one corner. They're probably going to be around two corners by the time you finish that. So that's a lot of walking that you have to deal with. Along with that, insolence is going to be really helpful to blocking off key windows. Not so much pallets because those stay up when the game starts. It's more so the windows. There's a lot of key windows that are super annoying on the factory. Just everything combined together. So maybe we'll see like a basement. That could be really good with full presence. Then Sons helps out for full presence as well. So there's that advantage. Going in with the plus spawn here, not really blocking anyone's cypher. So the Antiquarian will just see which cypher gets blocked. If the front gate gets blocked, she will just go factory. If the Gardener sees hunters coming towards her, then she will warn Antiquarian to not go factory. She will go factory. Merchant will also have extra eyes as well to look around the area. Acrobat will get that really nice for a cypher. And if Forest doesn't spawn, he might have to go shed. As long as they're all talking to each other, like where's the hunter going, they could all work on their own at, at that point. They just decide, okay, well, we're just gonna do whatever cyphers we're the second closest to and not blocking any survivor.
That's what it's gonna be. Definitely, so we're gonna get into our match here. This is the second half of the first round of TE versus Cat in the Call of the Best 7 Group Stage Day 6. A must win match for Cat against TE and my Eli O. Join with Psyche. We will be bringing you the commentary for this match. And actually, we have left, right. So insolence and trump card with no detention. Interesting, interesting. Left, right. So you got the trump card. You got the you got the secret wild card in your pocket. You could switch to anything you really need at the time. I wonder how useful it's gonna be, because if I'm correct, he started. Uh, they started with teleport. So. It's going to be a little bit obnoxious. Mercenary they having did. to only use one elbow pad. So... They, the teleport star is interesting. Of... Usually with trump card, you don't start teleport. Uh, because, you know, you don't want to... You want to, like, switch to teleport later again. So starting teleport here oh, red and light having trick? trump card is very interesting. Oh, Mercenary not even waiting around the corner to see if the Merce, if the wax versus was waiting to red light trick him. I, I probably would have stayed around the corner of Shed because now he's going to have to use an elbow pad no matter what. The difference is now he's in a worse position. Like now he uses that and he's still in an awkward spot. It's not, it's right. really not that much better, but that window at least will help him out a little bit. But you guys can see that wax is just having such a hard time, even when he's already on the side of the window. It's so difficult and not ideal, not an ideal start for Mercenary because taking a hit like this against Waxers is a little bit awkward. Definitely would have rather cut it there a little bit longer, but he's going to teleport here, and he's going to follow it up with chasing the Garner. The Garner bubble did run out, so good timing yep. there from STNK right here. Yeah, so this is something you see with hunters who start teleporters. They will chase the rescuer to one, try to get a free hit, and then two, get free presents, and three, waste items from the rescuer. On top of that, when the Gardener on the team, it removes the Gardener's uh, a bubble over time, which is also very strong. We're going to see the first Hunter Wax here. It's gonna be another hit. Awkwardly, in instead of running to the sides of walls, the, the gardener ran directly in front of the window and then that resulted in shooting her down and then vaulting the window made it really awkward for gardener to still reach something else in time. It's all about positioning against wax artists. So if you don't have good Indeed. positioning, you kind of uh, ruin your- uh, This bubble's, your, this you bubble's ruin, done like, nothing. He's just gonna freeze. Yeah, yeah that's gonna, gonna be rough. The gardener. That's gonna be the down onto the gardener here. Excellent utilization of the wax from STNK. And uh, yeah, gardener, Obviously not a strong character against the Wax Do You see why this team comp obviously would be good against Opera Singer, but not so much against Wax. It's just the map that we thought STNK wouldn't go Wax, but still going to opt for it. I guess the idea is that even though this is a bad Wax Artist map, if you're able to get a, a bad enough team comp for, uh, for the opponents, then it's still okay. And so far it seems to be the case. It's working out for STNK. Gardner now down, down, Mercenary with only a single elbow pad remaining and already uh, with the full presence here for the Wax Hardest. So camping ability will be very I mean, strong. I imagine while, while it is cool. true, sorry. Uh, anything else you want to say, Eli, while we're waiting for this rescue to happen? Uh, I just think the, I, I think the the rescue here is a little bit risky now that the Hunter is at full presence. Yeah, that is true. He has to get here without getting seen from far. That is the biggest thing here. At least he doesn't have wanted order on him. He has the wanted order on the wrong person. But as I was mentioning before, I don't really think it's going to be Ooh. that important. Yeah, okay, that's going to be really tough. He needs to get a good elbow pad here. That's his last elbow pad. I think he has a good shot because these walls are really protecting him. Unfortunately, though, getting off there. Okay, now going to rescue. Well done. Mercenary has to get behind something. Gardener doesn't have anything to use here, and that's going to be... Oh, this <gasps> wow! wow. A little bit that, always, that always happens to me when I play Wax Artist. You go for the Wax, you see the Wax go up, and somehow, as long as the survivor manages to click the button, even if it's a split second before the Wax goes up, it will still activate. Gardener is going to not be able to get the bubble. It's going to go down here. But that rescue uh, was really good from the Mercenary. Did have to use the last elbow pad, but was able to buy a little bit of extra time here for the survivors to get those different machines almost ready. Keep in mind, they only need to get one survivor at the gate here to win the round. And winning the first round we talk about is so crucial. Mercenary, no more elbow pads. You saw the upside of chasing the mercenary first. But of course, it does waste time for the cyphers to be decoded. And we do have a lot of progress. 70% on one cypher, 50 on another. And they also have some extra progress on other cypher machines in case the wax artist opts to uh, wax some of these off. Indeed, even though that was a pretty solid start, hitting the rescuer, then forcing him to heal the rescuer, meant that having very slow decode for the <laughs> remainder of this game, Mercenary really hiding his track super well, but I think that he might have gotten seen there right around the corner. Yep, he does. So he's gonna go down here. This is a really bad area. No real abilities to use. I think he might have missed the pal. Oh no, he vaulted in in time still, just like Ellie said, as long as you click the button, it'll go through. The whole vault will just go through. So. The teleport being really handy here, not gonna lie, it's been really nice here. If you can get a hit on the mercenary, 
that then it just makes this help for really worth it like in, in um ideally as mercenary you don't let that happen but if, if you're in an awkward situation like that there's not going to be much you can do the the acrobat along with the mercenary are both have been finding themselves in really awkward spots of this kai now the acrobat having to use nothing but the building but look at this this building has literally nothing to use and even then you can find yourself still doing well against waxer still manage to kite and look at this waxer has literally no wax remaining he'll get the wax finally here oh no he might get a double hit here as a result or unfortunately not the speed bonus helped him reach the palace so just one hit followed by a cypher pop that happened extremely quickly a fast series of events even with a mercenary knockdown was able to still pop the surface quite decently fast and gonna block off that window acrobat already has an escape plan though as long as he can get behind that wall oh no but the waxers doesn't even have wax right so it's gonna make it even yeah. difficult. why choosing to go towards the window that's blocked i'm curious oh because he wants to go for dungeon all right fair enough right. i just i just it's just gonna be can the survivors can escape make first? i think they will i think it they will open. ellie but uh he doesn't have to, well he doesn't have attention so i don't think it actually ends up, ends up mattering here we're gonna see the escape from the survivor that is gonna be a three survivor escape here for te that's gonna give them an eight to one lead SCNK doing their best with the situation that they were given i don't really you can't really fault them for what happened in this match but one thing to keep in mind here is that incredible wax are to start from the hunter side of te into the survivor side here and not only is winning the first round important Winning the first round by a score of 8-1. to one. Uh, Yeah, I mean, we talked about how Cat needs to win this series by a significant amount of points. Not only in this one, and also their next match. If they want a chance to make the playoffs. Going down 8-1 to one right away here. Uh, it honestly might just knock them out completely at this point. Indeed, it's going to be really rough to come back from this. Even if they manage to match their opponent's score here in round two. If they get a three man, then they match it with their own three men and vice versa. So no matter what points they get, even if they tie, they it's not going to matter much because they're just in such a point deficit. They have to mount some sort of comeback here. Get at least one format is basically a requirement at this point. If you don't, you're going to fall behind in round three and then they're going to beat you out in points for in round three for Cat's position. So they really need to... Put has just winning team compositions, winning team survivors on the board, maybe go hospital, but no, they don't even have map pick anymore. So that's gonna go to TE. So TE finds themselves in a really nice position here, not only having the leverage of starting really well against against the uh, against the what's it called? Against the hunter from cat side and against the survivors on cat side, finding themselves with plenty of points and now can follow up with their own map pick. What did that be? A tie pick, a tie map that just really does nicely with a tie hunter. Like perhaps right. an Anne, I've been mentioning a lot. We never really see Anne when I commentate and when I mention Anne, but regardless, there's like a lot of ways to get the ties. We saw the Dream Witch before as well, and the Dream Witch is really solid at getting those ties. But yeah. Something I, uh, I wanna I, something I wanna point out real quick is Pat had an opportunity to choose the map, but they choose Arms Factory. Which is very interesting because if Cat wants to play Wax Artist or at least have the option to play Wax Artist, why choose Arms Factory, right? You have plenty of different mm -hmm. options. You could go a map that's, you want to choose a map that's maybe not so good for Opera. Maybe go something like Moonlit. You can still play Wax Artist on Moonlit. Why choose Arms Factory when you have an opportunity to choose a map here and give yourself the advantage? You have to choose a map that's going to be good for your Wax Artist. If you're in STNK, you want to go for wax bands by banning the entomologist and not banning antiquary which is what we did see you have to make sure you're choosing a map that's going to benefit your wax artist play if you're choosing arms factory you're not really gaining anything from that in fact you're actually uh if anything you're, you're sort of knocking down your own potential and making it harder for you to play that specific character exactly that's a really big deal well, usually when you're picking maps you're picking in in uh in mind with your hunter because it's re right. you really want to pick a map that aligns with your hunter's mains. Opera Singer is going to be good on basically every map. So for TE, it matters a lot less so if they get map picks since they're no matter what going to pick Opera Singer. Maybe they'll pick like a really good Opera Singer map at best. But besides that, Waxer is really is map dependent. You really want to pick a good map. This this That's the thing though. I want to mention this as well though, Ellie. We saw the hunter go Waxers and the survivors were still on Arms Factory really shaky against this wax artist. You, it's usually a very dominant kite when it comes to kiting a wax artist on arms factory, but the mercenary not waiting around the corner to see which side the wax artist goes around the building was a little bit of a mistake there because now he finds himself in a position that 
not only is really awkward, but he anyway has to use an elbow pad as opposed to if you wait around the corner, at least he'll be able to stall out longer. When he elbow pads, he's not gonna be trapped in an area like he was there. Cause even though he elbow pad the second time, he was still essentially in the same problem. So not really being able to position himself well there. Then we saw the teleport happen on the gardener and the gardener started out well, but then the moment they dropped that pal and that pal was broken, they vaulted the window. And instead of immediately going left or right to be out of range of getting shot, she was just directly in front. The problem with that is that now the wax will shoot you. And then now you want to go left or right, but then he's going to vault and cut, that cuts you off. And so you really have to already be thinking of this kind of thing ahead of time. And that's, that's the thing, even though the survivors weren't like admittedly the best against waxers, that doesn't, that I don't think that really mattered in the long run. I think it really just was the kiting mistakes and we, otherwise I feel like it would have been much cleaner, but still dungeon absolutely. getting the three men. Go so we're gonna go to the highlights now. We are gonna go to the highlights for this round, I believe. So we'll be back with you guys in a moment. Even the anti crane had broken windows that last match, so they were clearly expecting a waxers. Are we already available? Yep, we're already we live. Yep. <laughs> All right, so guys, here we go. We have the call of this support collection, but here's the difference from the past five streams we have it in English now. Hooray, we can hey. read now. We learned to read, we went to kindergarten. We went to we went to school and we can now read all languages and it's automatically translated inside our brains. This is definitely not translated by the people in the back. Yeah, okay, it definitely is. STNK well, win, was, go. I think this is just an English, uh, one of the English submissions. You think so? Usually they're it? they're in the language made by the, uh, by like, like rooted for like the team. Like for example, I'd assume if, if some art is made for well, Chat usually the, the thing is, usually that, that usually, well, usually that not necessarily because usually the translate, because remember, Psyche, we talked about it. We talked about hashtag co 7 submit your, your work and you have a chance for it to be shown on screen. So I believe that this is the English submissions. And also the thing is, and also excellent job here uh, with this TE um, artwork here. Uh, the thing is, um, with the translations, they don't directly translate to English um, from languages such as Chinese, Korean, Japanese, they would have really odd translations because the languages are significantly different. So because the translations look to be perfect, or the English look to be uh, standard, how we would pr pronounce English, uh, it looks to be that this is English, uh, English submissions. So yeah, so it looks like some of you guys got your, your work featured on the stream here. Um, Yes, I, I could be wrong. Definitely... <laughs> I could be wrong, but that is my understanding of language, because um, I do study a lot of languages at my university, uh, specifically two others at the for the time being. Uh, but yeah, anyways, could be wrong, but who knows? We'll ask Dong later. But there you guys go. If you guys want to submit your work on the Calvibus Seven Collection Support Collection Collection Support Collection. You just have to use hashtag call the seven support and you can get your work potentially featured here. Right there, we saw works for cat and it works for TE. So real clean. Um, and so just so love seeing the artwork. But yeah, we're going to be going into round two here. We're going to need some sort of comeback for cat because as a reminder, they are down a whole 7.8 to 1, 7 point difference. So if they only get three escapes here, three kills here, even, even that won't be enough. So they will lose out in the end. Perhaps if they start right now, if they get three men from now and they keep getting three men, I think maybe they can catch up. No, I think they still might need a four man though because the other team's always gonna be constantly getting one point while they will get three. So it's gonna be all up to that. Eli, while we're waiting for the next match today, we will start our next collection. <laughs> We have the support collection, now we have the entertainment collection. Yesterday we did Hunter Impressions and we also did a Sonic Impression on day uh -oh. 5. Make sure to check it out guys. Today, I want Eli to test me. I've been playing the game for literal years and I read... I used to read the book. Back when matches used to take 15 minutes, every 
every time between those 15 minutes, I just be sitting there reading the book. Did I ever miss anything? Did I miss? Did I miss? Did I miss? Did I miss? The Some ID of these things I've no, memorized, you... like, like thieves, thieves lockpick trait, or not lockpick, but hoarder. It says old Wait a minute. Hold on, hard. hold on, hold on, hold on. And I've memorized hold it. At let that let point. me just get this right. You spent your free time reading the in-game manual of the characters. Is that right? Is that what I'm hearing? Well, when I'm matching, yes. While I'm matching, indeed, mm. that is the case. Later on, I hey. pulled up like a YouTube video. Oh, I'm waiting for match. Dude, those days took like 20, 15 minutes to match. So nowadays it's instant, so I don't really get that choice anymore. Yeah. Shoot, what was the map pick right there? I just missed it. Okay, we'll every see next town. Time. Okay, every second town. It's gonna be a difficult map for sure to get a get a win as as survivors. So we will see. We will see how that happens. Cat is gonna be surviving first, by the way. So. We're gonna, it's, it gives the hunter a chance to decide what they want to do. Do they go for a tie build or do they go for like a winning hunter build? That puts the pressure now on TE's hunter to decide, okay, well now what do I want to do? Since I have to go first, I might just want to go winning hunter. Do I play safe and go for a tie and just hope my survivors do well here? It's a kind of a disadvantage to, to go as hunter first because really hunters are a lot more matchup dependent than when it comes to something like survivors. Survivors are generally all rounded, but hunters, some hunters are really, really good at tying, but can't do much that much more than that. Other hunters, you could you could see yourself losing, tying, or winning as. So you got this versatility option, but no guarantee option. Unless you play a certain way, or maybe you run blink and you run behind space, but even then things can turn out a little bit bad. Like, wouldn't it just be easier to pick an N or something like that? Exactly. It would, usually most times, not necessarily, but that <laughs> Too many exceptions to talk about. Long story short, it's usually that's what you're looking for. So now TE has to decide, okay, what do I want to do? Do I want to go win, tie, loss, hope my survivors do real well, keep myself a three-person escape on their side, win the round. Now I'm a sheriff from Texas. Anyway, while we're waiting for your life, I want to do this. Were we going to turn this into a sheriff's psyche stream? Is that Parasaki? I'm no, gonna, we're not gonna do the cat. I'm gonna give you a quiz. I'm gonna give you a quiz now, Sheriff Saki. Yeah, you can give uh, me a quiz. So, I think I'm an IDV expert. I've been playing the game for a long time. Yes. Okay. Today, I want you to test me on every single name in the book. I will not be looking at the book, even though I could be right now. So, so let me ask you this: I, You want I me think... to give you? You want me to give you the character name or the lore name? The character name, and then I have to figure out the lore name. How much okay, do I, I remember? I don't know the lore. I actually don't know the lore. Let's Perfect. All right. Perfect. Oh, I guess we'll have to do that later. For now, we got the okay. pick, so we'll do that later. In the meantime, though, Pepe is going to be starting off with their first two bands, along with the global band of partner novels. Doesn't do that much, admittedly, if they ban Opera Singer here. So that's good for the survivors. But for now, they have to decide what do they want to go. For. Probably going to ban the Opera Singer. We will see here very shortly, very shortly, but in the meantime, they cannot play here. Priestess, novice, gardener, they can't be digging out weeds, they can't be reading books. No bedtime stories today. Priestess cannot be doing mystical things in the darkest corner of ever sleeping, none of that. Sierra cannot be doing, <laughs> cannot be doing readings of the future. Oh, I see us getting a four man escape and it actually happens. None of that. There is no guarantee of that now. That's not how it works. But maybe in identity five, in identity six, <laughs> or would it be called identity five and two? Oh man, we're getting a little bit crazy here. And some just airplanes are going to be the first two picks here from the survivors on cat side. Mm, Ellie, are you awake? Ellie, are you muted? Oh, Ellie, you're muted. My mic was muted. I, I muted the cough and I forgot to unmute. Okay. Uh, anyways, we, yeah, we're gonna see the cheerleader as the final band here. Uh, so, Airplanes is a character that obviously we've seen become very strong in the meta, but has not been used too much for the majority of this event, so this is a bit interesting. Uh, but we will see it this time around. It's gonna be Allure as the final character selection here. Everybody knows how much I love to see the Allure get played. I think this is a character that should be used in the majority of team comps. Not only is it effective against the opposite singer in the round one situation, it's also very good in later rounds as well. Cypher Rush, decoding, rotation, many ways in which Lawyer is a very strong decoder slash support character, uh, and especially in four-person DC. Very nice to see this being utilized here. 
Um, and Cypher Rush should be intact at this point, just due to the fact of that Lawyer and the only slow declare being the Arsenal here. Indeed. Lawyer, I know you're a big fan of Lawyer, Ellie, at least ever since he got his buff. Which means, yep. guys, today let's get Ellie doing some impressions for Night today. Watch. Oh, Night Watch. Nightwatch is gonna be the hunter here. What a strong hunter pick from that big. What can I say? Nightwatch is just one of the strongest hunters in the game. While we decide here how we are gonna see the bands here, what are, sorry, the picks for the personas, we're gonna have yep. Ellie have a little bit of fun with us. Why do I have to do the impressions? Why do I have to do the crazy clown impressions? Why don't we you're, have you're so like, good at it, Spikey? You're you're so good at it. Why would I anyone am. else do it? But yeah. it's because it's because we need to have a little bit of fun here. It's not just me. I want to see Ellie do it. Ellie, entertain me. Entertain the audience. Let us see your best nerd lawyer impression. Like, like, yeah, like really nasally, or like your tongue is like super you thick. Know, I'm gonna be honest, like you, your best nerd I, impression. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest, like I think you, uh, I think you just covered it right there. So I don't think it's even necessary <laughs> at this point. Um, Ellie, come on. All right. Well, impressions I guess aren't we my won't thing. I can, I can it. impersonate, I can impersonate specific NAU streamers, but nothing besides that. Not, uh, not too good with the characters. Looks like our spawn here. We're gonna have the entomologist close spawning close to the corner house here, the plus sign uh, with the lawyer at middle two story air for this right big gate. Mercenary at middle, and the night watch will be at the Geisha gate area here. This is going to be pretty standard spawn here. Lawyer, of course is the best chase target for the night watch but the top of uh, opportunities to rotate it looks like we're gonna have uh broken windows on lawyer with flywheel no borrow and time flywheel. Here. yeah mm -hmm. and flywheel no borrow time and flywheel on the other two survivors as well so this is not they were not actually prepared for night watch uh the fact that they brought flywheel means they were thinking of a different hunter flank detention and trump card here for FA. this is the first half of the second round of cat versus te i'm Eli Ojo with psyche we will be bringing you Live commentary for this call of a seven group stage matchup. Indeed, guys. And while I won't be doing the nerd voice for this commentary, we will instead be looking over at what Pepe is doing here. Where is he chasing first? He decides to chase the two story Geisha first, starting with the Lard. This is a good start because he's going to be able to win him down. Guys, real key, real key important thing there using the. Oh, unfortunately, not reaching him in time because that broken window spot. Oh, well, now he might get here. No, no, no. Uh -oh. Lawyer's busted. Just look at that vault speed. What a big difference. See, this Amazing. is why you play lawyer, because you can just vault any window, and who cares? There's no threat. What the? Oh, missing the swing there. Now getting the swing. Necessarily, I mean, but anyway, we'll talk more on that later. In the meantime, we have the entomologist beast here perfectly blocking. I don't think they... Oh. They might, actually, you know what? I think it might have been necessary to move there. Otherwise, it wouldn't have locked fully. What a beautiful beast of horror. What can I say? Not the bees, the bees. The hunter canceled the bees, unfortunately, for the entomologist. But not before she got tons of value out of it. So that's what you love to see. Lawyer getting back into graver. I mean, what can I say? It's just pat on the pack. Pat on the back for the entomologist. That's amazing. So now the lawyer has to circle graveyard before he gets caught by wind again. The speed up of the of the presence here, zero presence, is going to result in catching up to the lawyer in time. But not before the lawyer ball flywheels, and not before the blink happens. Combination of really well played ability usages there from both sides there. Unfortunately. To you, not getting as long of a kite as they needed. I mean, they did pretty well, but it's still gonna be a little bit tied, especially with only one tide turner. That's the problem here. So, pallet breaking, by yep. the way. And that's the power of the lawyer, right? You know, you see, even though the lawyer gets found out early, which usually doesn't happen, because the lawyer can rotate with using the map to see the hunter, it's they're still able to just use that veteran's bonus to buy a lot of distance and extend the kite for a long period of time. Lawyer kite. 2.75 ciphers here and also gets blink out. So this is exactly what we're going to see. Lawyer's going to go ahead and push his pal here. Mind game at the pallet. <gasps> wow. He got that pal stun like crazy. Yep. That was amazing. That's a really That's hard lawyer, pal man. to stun at without getting hit. Frax lawyer, Psyche, I don't know what to tell you. I think that would, I mean, maybe the movement speed had something to say there because otherwise I don't yeah. know if you'd reach that Paladin time before he gets out the way. So really well done here. This is the rebound they needed. Please vault in time. Okay, getting stuck on the pallet so the wind doesn't pull him. That was amazing yep. timing. I, I probably would have 
and you know what? The wall, but that works as well. I didn't know that would help. That is, that is fundamental hiding night watch, right? When you, <laughs> that is Sorry, fundamental that was... hiding night watch. You're good. Uh, when you go, this is a, something you guys can learn from. When you go for the, when the hunter goes for the instant win, if you hide behind even a corner of an object, it will stop the pull, and you can avoid that. Yes, indeed. I was, I wasn't expecting that. I didn't know the edge of the pallet could have protected him, guys. Look at this now. Just a single pallet is all that's stopping the night watch from reaching the lawyer. I'm surprised he didn't jump Indeed. sooner. I wonder what if he was playing around there. But now no. it's gonna mean that they could actually just have whoever, whoever's not decoding the last of her now, just goes to rescue. This is a really good start. This is, well, not, well, I mean, it's not a start anymore. This is a really good way to enter the end game, but no! Cypher's right here. They need to get it as yep. close to 99.99999%. Otherwise, I don't know. Trump card of normal may have something to say about the oh my goodness, that is the most juiciest win I've seen in a while. They know about the abnormal. They're just playing it safe. One person has to stay by the cipher, otherwise. Okay, there we go. Well, our prince is gonna go help out on the cipher. Yeah. <laughs> Using it the flywheel. I feel like that might be a miscased use there. Wow, 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 whoa, whoa. Interesting. Will he blink here? Oh, okay, so he's, gonna, he's gonna get the down here. Uh, Lawyer didn't have bar time, so that ended up being a really good pop here. But the problem is, like, they don't have the gate ready at all here. So even though he gets the blink to scare the Lawyer down, which is very good, uh, they did have a four survivor endgame. But it actually doesn't matter. If he's able to look at even one more target, it's going to be a tied game here. Um, and it looks like we're gonna see. Um, mm, looks no like we're gonna see... Yeah. yeah, no one's getting it's chased just... just yet, but he needs to oh, find target. He, he can find any target he can tie this game, and he does have tinnitus. Yeah. Huh? yeah, he knows someone is here. And guys, notice how he still has tinnitus no matter which side of corner house he runs around. So this is, this is anywhere but the sides of the map. It means it has to be inside a corner house. He will get the mercenary vision here, but not the mercenary kill. Not yet, at least. He needs to go a little bit further here. A lot of dashes being used here. Mercenary matching with his own dash. Getting to a kiting area, but unfortunately, I don't know if he's going to be able to make this dungeon. It's really yep. far away. It's not close Unlikely. enough. He would have needed maybe one more pad, but even then, a couple wind usages, a couple dashes, maybe a speed up here or there, and that would have closed out the game as well. So not getting the wind, though it was looking like a really good start, Maybe, maybe could have ran in the direction of Graveyard after the pop instead of running in the middle where it would be so easy to follow up from the Nightwatch side to easily catch up to Gate. That would have been a great way to just stall time. Because think about it, if you would have had to use Blink in that situation to catch the survivor quicker, then you wouldn't have the teleport for later. In that case, he didn't because he used the Blink, but he was still fine. He still would have been fine. So. Perhaps maybe it would have been also been nice to save that flywheel. That flywheel could have potentially stalled it out a little bit more in a more dire situation. So overall there almost worked out there, but it was just a difference between choosing where you're gonna kite and gaming. Really, it's kind of a decision you have to make before you get rescued, because once you start running in that direction, it's kind of too late at that point. Otherwise you're gonna die before you ever reach graveyard. So understandable there. But yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be a decent start. For cats, they didn't lose. Yep. They got a tie, so it's not bad. If they're hunting, yep. can get a four man here. That would put them quite far ahead. It, it just the fact that they're able to get the uh, the four star right game was really strong. The lawyer's rebound kite was very good. Obviously, the first kite into the rebound kite, um, and just utilizing the little corner edge of the pallet to avoid the instant win ability was very good. So overall, I would say that this is definitely. Um, some momentum that Cat needs to come back in this, but again, even so, they need to be winning these rounds by a lot. Their hunter needs to come out and have a very strong performance here, um, and by strong performance, I mean four kill. They they have to come out and put, even if the problem with this being a tie as well, if SDNK gets a four kill, Cat still has to win the last round because they're still down on points because the first round was eight to one, right? So they have to get a the hunter has to uh, win this round. And then Cat has to win the last round as well. And that's just to get their first win of this group stage. And they have to start to get a lot of these points back as well if we come down to a 2-2 two two tiebreaker. So it's very important for Cat uh, to, um, uh, you know, to to get as many points back. And I really think their Hunter has to get a 4 kill to, to start to make that happen. Because if they don't, they're going to approach round 3 with only 2 point gain in this last round. 
for their overall score throughout the majority of this tournament, that's not going to be enough. You can see down 10 to 3 here as well. Um, and yeah, for TE, let's see if they can close it out. 3 Survivor Escape would do it for them here. I feel like Cat has a good chance to move into around three, all things considered. It's been a long time since I've commentated around three. I think the only time I commentated around three was literally day one, and then ever since after that, I've just been doing two round, two round, two round, two round. Ellie, what about you? Have you seen a three round yet? Uh, I've seen it. Obviously, there have been a few that I was able to commentate, but there's been a lot of, yeah, two round victories for a lot of these teams. Occasionally, this happens in the group stage where some of these matches can be a bit one-sided. Um, and then once you reach the playoffs, things uh, start to start to elevate to more, um, you know, traditional best of three and the matches are a lot closer. But yeah, some of these teams just really came in well prepared for this event. Uh, a TE was one of those teams that we thought uh, was doing really well. But, you know, Cat able to get a two to two here. Here's an opportunity for a third round, which honestly, considering that they, you know, Cat struggled in their first two matches, this is a pretty good shift for them, but they're gonna have to keep this going. They're gonna have to win this series by more than just a few points. They're gonna have to get a lot of these points back. Um, and think about it this way, Psyche. Let's say, you know, let's say the Hunter gets a uh, a three kill here, right? Let's say the Hunter gets a three kill, okay? And then it's five to three. And then let's say Cat wins the last round by a score of five to three as well. Think about the overall points. Cat still loses on points. They still lose on points by three, right? They would win on rounds but they lose on points, which means they're actually gaining even more negative points for their potential tiebreaker. So overall, Cat really needs to gain a lot of these points back. Um, and honestly, I think SNK has to three kill. If they do not three kill here, if they do not three kill here, Cat has to win the last round eight to one just to tie. And that's not enough points for them to, to potentially make playoffs. And that's also not enough points for them to, uh, or not a likely opportunity for them to actually get those seven points back in the last round. It's very difficult to do. So SDNK has a minimum get a three kill here, I believe. Indeed. Uh, yes, it was shown at the bottom uh, bottom of the screen there a couple of minutes ago. He has to get a three man or a four man to win it out in just two rounds. But the reason I have hope, because this is a pretty nice map for Waxers. So I might see a Waxers ban here from TE. We might see that. This is probably one of Waxer's best maps here. Hardest to hide behind any talls. Almost the complete opposite of arm stack. It makes it really hard to do that much against Waxer. So we'll see here. STNK, they're sitting already in their chair, waiting for the match to start, waiting for the ban picks to start. I'm very interested. What are we going to see here? Now, I have a feeling T is going to ban Waxer. So that's, that's going to be my thing here. We saw, they saw, everyone saw that STNK has played Waxers overall a little bit more than opposite even in round one we saw Waxers this 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 group this matchup we saw Waxers but we saw before as well that they went Waxers on Red Church there was one time there where they also went Opera Singer it's yeah. that thing overall two to one on Waxers versus Opera Singer it'll be very tempting to go Waxer to see what can I say so that's most likely what we're going to see here and unfortunately for cats, even if they don't ban Waxers, they're very likely gonna go to our staff on just annoying for Waxers. The good news is, it's like I said before, it's a lot less what survivors you pick against Waxers and a lot more what map you are on against Waxers. So, we'll see here. Cat fighting, support for cat from the crowd. We see it going on here. But yeah, while we're waiting here, Eli, would you like to quiz me now on the survivor names? I claim to be a oh, professional um... in the game. Uh, let's see, uh, who do we got? Um, what's a hard one? Female dancer. Um, uh -oh, like uh oh, Margaret. Margaret? Margaret? Margaret is a little bit different. I thought it was, like, more like... I feel like it was slightly different than that. I don't know, is that right? I'm checking right now. It's Margaret Thug! Uh, <laughs> you gotta give I me the point for that. <laughs> Oh no, Psyche! You gotta no. give me it. Psyche, no, Psyche, you claim to be a professional who reads the book all the time. You gotta know this. This is this is work. not fair. No. I was expecting Psyche. you to start from default ranking. That's like saying that's like saying Psyche, can you name um, can you name Explorer and you say Bert instead of Kurt? I don't know, like Bert. Bert, Psyche. <laughs> Come on, Psyche. Bert, I don't know. That's a mystery reference. <laughs> well, let's uh, start well, from the beginning. Default ranking. Okay, what's Starting from Doctor, followed by Lawyer. 
He's Lucky deduction guy. substitute. We talked about that yesterday. He <laughs> doesn't have any. Okay, doctor psyche. Here we go. We got Emily. Okay. Uh, what about? You're okay. not looking. Okay, one more. One more. No, I'm just thinking. I'm not mad. One more. Uh, what about? I wanted to do all of, like 30 survivors. What about antiquarian psyche? She she. I can't pronounce it, but I can spell it. She she. Okay, that's still pretty good. Uh. One more, one more, one more. Uh, what about... Time is ticking, Ellie. We have bands. What about cheerleader? Cheerleader. Oh, no, I never looked at oh, her. No, Ever since like she came out, I haven't oh. really been reading the book. Uh, it's over. I don't know her name. She's basically a nobody. Yo, we saw the opera singer band, though. Ooh, yep. that's not what I was expecting. So, we're almost certainly going to see a waxers here. Wait, regardless, yep. they're gonna go antiquarian here. Interesting. Uh, the, interesting. Yeah, it's but interesting. But we saw antiquarian as well. Can against wax. You can also counter wax. Patient strong against uh, tight against wax. Also, Ed Demolish is very good against wax service as well. Uh, so that's kind of that's the mindset. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So they're gonna go ahead, except that um, the wax service is likely to be played here. Try to counter it. Antiquarian, yeah, it's a bit interesting, but you know, obviously, antiquarian can still be effective against wax if you're able to. Uh, get the stuns and absorb the 25% wax. As long as you're stunning while getting the freeze on you, that's what you want. So let's say the wax hunt on the end part is at over 75%. Then you go for a stun, you stun the wax artist, and then you get frozen, but you will have enough time to unfreeze and make the uh, potential pallet before the wax artist can get their swing back. Or if the wax artist is over, above 50%, you do a double stun and put yourself up to 100 wax to freeze yourself, and then you make it to the pallet when you unfreeze. Yeah, the problem with that is that's like saying, oh, Blood Queen, you Banty Grand can counter Blood Queen if Blood Queen gets too close. And yeah, but why but, should but, she? But that's just, but it's, not necessarily. It's a little bit different, though, because Bloody Queen can mirror from a distance with Black Sword. If you're not getting close enough, the hunter, the survivors can keep running behind walls, running behind certain things. This, it's, it, while well, that is, there's an argument for that. I have played this situation many times, for, but uh, uh, it's actually going to be a, yeah, for a moment, not even the, uh, not even what we thought. So it doesn't even matter. I was pretty certain. I mean, this is literally one of his best maps. I don't know about Fool's Gold again. Fool's Gold is like, okay, he's getting there. He's all right. But it makes a lot of the survivors a lot better now. I mean, First Officer is a lot better now. Antiquarian is probably a lot better now. I mean, it's it's kind of an awkward pick. I feel like maybe it was to bait them to take Flywheel instead of instead of Carl's, like, Broken Windows. Sorry, sorry. It was to bait them to get take Broken Windows instead of Flywheel since Broken Windows would be really good against against Waxers, but then Broken Windows are, is also good against against this Hunter. I think it's also really solid. It still gets you away from the Hunter. Flywheel, I see it has its uses, but we're gonna see a partial Tetris spawn, Z spawn kind of. The staircase to heaven, as I like to call it. <laughs> Ellie uh, has what? no reaction whatsoever. The staircase the to heaven spawn. Uh the staircase okay. seven spawn. We see antiquarian closest to the hunter, patient furthest, and of course, and small just kind of near the center to have support ready. That's usually where you right. spawn your support character, after all. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and it's gonna be the it's like Blink from card intention this time uh, for the Fool's Gold against the TE survivors. This is the second half of the second round of TE versus Cat in the year, their third match of the Call of this Seven group stage fighting for that potential playoff spot here. I'm Eli O, joined with Psyche. We'll bring you the live commentary oh. for this match. Indeed, and right away, we're gonna start with some crazy good transitioning straight to the anti crane. This is the benefit of Fool's Gold in these open areas. You get some really nice fast power breaking right there. Yeah, we don't see, what is what is his uh, persona though? That's what I'm wondering. Uh, trump card, fast power breaking, yep. And detention, that was his persona right there in the corner. Persona refers, oh no, missing the staircase, hitting the floor of the stairs instead. That would have been a clutch purple hit. Can you get it now? No, not gonna get it anyway. That's is, really unfortunate. Is there even a survivor there though? I don't think there is, right? Yeah, there was an entomologist in there. Yeah. Uh, huh. Oh, mm -hmm. I didn't even notice that. Okay. Anyways, Eli Elio needs to open his eyes a little bit. So I guess I'm not. So he's not the only blind one. 
Uh, looks like we're gonna see the Hitting pickaxe the here. floor again. Yeah, Ellie. missing that, that as well. So a few missteps here from SCNK, and this entomologist not gonna give any free hits at this point in time. Entomologist just gonna avoid the walls, use the bees. It makes this it's beautiful mind games from TX here. Not getting any free hits does force the blink out, but avoided every single chip there. And you see, one of the issues with Fool's Gold is you can just simply get mind game. Oh uh, yeah, that's kind of the problem is that you don't know if they're and gonna if they're. Oh, no, never mind. Nice. Go ahead, Ellie. Yeah. I think Ellie wants to see. I thought I saw the tram, but it actually wasn't the tram. It was the building. But never mind. Right there, accidentally hitting the wall because now his cooldown is two seconds longer as opposed to not hitting the wall there. So that's a little bit unfortunate. Now he didn't have the yep. pickaxe, uh, pickaxe up sooner. Still is going to get the damage though. So that's pretty solid. Also getting rid of the beast there, slowing him down a little bit, but not enough to really matter. Hopefully pulling himself closer to the... Oh, oh still getting the hit. I was not expecting that. I was Ooh. not expecting that as well. I thought that was going to be a perfect mind game from PX, but you do see the down secured. But, oh, wow, look at the Cypher progress, though, here, Psyche. We see, you know, two Cypher machines already done. The Officer Cypher, a lot of progress. And actually, it is, well, it is basement, but I was going to say the Officer can actually rescue and then, or they can go for an after half rescue as well. And I think that might actually be their player because it is basement. They're going to go for an after half rescue um, and hope the other cypher machines will be primed. Honestly, it's like, I think they're going to be fine. Ellie, they're going to be almost ready with high turner. They are. And you know what? He was trying to block off a cypher with the rock. Every single cypher is too far away to place with a rock. He needs to get a yeah. little bit closer to at least one of these cyphers to block off with a rock. But because of that, he can't even stop the cypher pressure. He needs to get real close and he... I suppose he could risk it, but um, yeah. So right now he's, he's gonna, gonna go it. for it. So that's, that's and the thing here. he does get back in time. He does get back in time, but Officer does have a watch, and the Cypher's still have a lot of progress. And I think even if the Rock did watch a uh, Cypher machine, the Survivor can still push the Cypher at full health here. We're gonna see the rescue. Last Cypher, seventy percent of the way done here. He's not gonna be able to stop the rescue. It looks like he's gonna get the hit onto the Entomologist. Can the last Cypher be popped in time here? Eighty percent. Mm. We'll see here. I'm pretty sure they're gonna be able to this is do the one it. Survivor, though, but he's not going to the to the entomologist. Did he get confused here? Did he get confused? Went, I'm pretty sure when you. He, no, no, no. I think he's going for the double eight, but he didn't think the cyphers were gonna be ready. But the cypher was so strong from TE that he actually gets mind essentially mind game by how fast these cyphers have been completed. And now we're into a four survivor endgame at this point because of that play. Guys, this is a classic situation of Fool's Gold being both his biggest, like his walls being Fool's Gold's biggest strength and biggest weakness right there. The wall's in the way, so he can't even hit the entomologist once again. She's hiding behind a wall. The pickaxe is not really that that's useful. That's the wrong gate. Teleporting the wrong to gate. no yep. one, unfortunately. And that's going to be a three survivor. Right three survivor escape here for TE. That means TE is going to go on to be the winners here, advancing even farther into this group stage, moving things up. Uh, on the moving themselves up on the ladder here, SD and Kim fortunately unable to secure the draw here, and that is going to be a two to zero victory for TE. Unfortunately for Cat, that will knock them out of playoff contention at this point. But TE, of course, will be moving on to a potential first place finish at this point. We will have to see. Indeed, this is this is looking real good for TE. I assume we're gonna see the bow down here. Usually, when we see the team win, it's very often I see just the hunter bowing down because that's the last one who just finished winning. So right there, we saw a beautiful group bow down, really nicely seen, and a really good, really good situation there for the survivors. Just being very fortunate that the ciphers are away from the person getting knocked down. This is there's no way this wasn't planned that they're not gonna have someone die graveyard on accident and then just by Quinn twins have all the servers really far away i'm sure they planned this out to in the best case scenario have someone die in a corner where it is most difficult for full skill to get the rest of the ciphers blocked and i almost feel like maybe the rock might have missed because we saw a couple times he threw the yeah. rock but also we're we're also i'm also not sure because when i play survivor and a rock is literally that far away the farther the rock is the more time it takes for the transmission to go through. So if you throw something, a pickaxe at the wall, and you trigger the wall, it takes about like three seconds for the rock before it finally activates. So the survivor can literally see you throw a pickaxe. They can literally see the rock shaking, but just didn't blow up yet. And then they just get off for half a second and get yeah. back on the surface. So you, you can't avoid the rock. That. Yeah, you can avoid it. The closer it is, the less reaction time you have. So at that point, you're gonna have to start sacking damage on purpose if you don't have time to react. But Otherwise, 
there were a lot of reasons it was going well there even if he got even if the fool's gold got that rock off it just means that the transmission progress is going to be too long to make a noticeable difference unfortunately so definitely yeah. is the case uh and yeah with this finish here for te again uh they are now on to still undefeated i believe right te is not dropped a match yet i think they are now yeah. are they three and oh or two and oh i'm not entirely sure uh let's not look back entirely into sure either i pretty sure they're gonna three and oh though i'm gonna review the right. standings here from today just to make sure we know it looks like it is gonna be yeah te <clears throat> is moving on to three and oh at this point they were able to defeat uh cat before you and i believe also scars if i'm not mistaken uh so i think te and wolves still has the match to play but besides that yeah te three and oh now already secured themselves a spot in the winner's bracket now the question is will they secure themselves a first place finish uh even at three and one they could still definitely do that as long as their points are high enough and Currently, I think it might be. TE has had a lot of very good finishes. The 8-1 to in the first round, obviously, is very good for points. Winning 2-0 and here, getting two-round victories is very imp uh, important as well. Um, so they have very good odds at this point in time. And yeah, unfortunately for Cat, down to 0-3 now. So they will uh, yeah, no longer be in that playoff contention uh, at this point. Yes, and right here we have the match results from the survivors here. Not a whole lot at kite time, but that's because they also didn't really spend a lot of time with the rescuer having to go to the chair multiple times or anything like that. That also gets kite time. The other thing is the game sometimes does not really register kite times properly. If, you if you're too far away from the hunter, they might not count it as kiting. Uh, so way, way more than 76 seconds. Way yeah, that's that. definitely, that, that is definitely should have been way more than 76 seconds. The entomologist there, showing a fine example of not just using walls to her advantage to actually block off the pickaxe from hitting her, but also using the bees really well to block off the hunter. Well, she didn't really get that great of usage because they kind of just end up taking hits in front of a window that she was anyway safe at. But the point is just being able to get out of the way of the pickaxe right as it hits a wall and just all that kind of good stuff. We also saw a game sense decision from the survivors there to not go rescue before half because after that, who's going to rescue again? It'd be more efficient if they just have the survivors keep doing the ciphers rather than trying to switch off and potentially lose time during the switch off where they're not decoding and possibly not getting that three person escape that they really want. And here we go. That's it, guys. We see TE here winning 13 to 4. Pretty, pretty, pretty high points lead right here. 13 to 4. Pretty noticeable difference. Uh, 13 to 4 is 9. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I'm just explaining kindergarten math to you guys. So, to fill in the time while we're waiting, we will talk about the best deduction. Obviously, nothing else. There's nothing else on my mind. Pepe gonna be the MVP hunter here. Ellie, you wanna read out the stats? Three eliminations on average here. We saw four eliminations in the first round and a tie in the second round with a 10,489 deduction. Definitely pretty strong here. Um, and yeah, that four eliminations, giving them the early momentum lead and putting themselves in a very favorable position. So that was uh, sort of the big, uh, in the big factor there, I would say. Um, just getting that first four kill. Once you get that first four kill and you get that early momentum as the opera singer in the first round, most of the time, statistically speaking, the team has a, a better chance to win the game. And we've seen that the statistic will continue in that winning that opera singer match, winning that first round will give you a huge advantage going into rounds two and three. And Psyche mentioned this before, you win the first round. Um, more often than not, teams have actually been winning the second round as well. And uh, T is gonna continue with that 2-0 victory here. Um, and of course, Pepe with the best deduction and the MVP for this match. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is exactly what uh, TE wants to see representing mainland Chinese division. We always talk about how mainland Chinese division will, you know, consistently have the strongest teams. Uh, and, you know, really TE is, uh, is showing that right now. Indeed. Uh, the only thing really left to do now is we're gonna be waiting on an interview for TE. They're gonna be having their third interview. So that's gonna be nice for them. In the meantime, I wonder what the host, is the host running out of questions at this point? <laughs> Like, but no, she has to plan this out because, of course, there's always going to be teams that win four times, team that wins three times, and so on and so forth. 
Ellie, while we are waiting for an interview, it is time to test myself. I don't want to do just one survivor, and if I miss one, then I'm out. We're going to be naming all the survivors. Now, I know uh, you're super already, lazy and... You've already missed a few, so... Uh, yeah, yeah, I've already missed two. I guess if you're counting Dancer, then maybe three. Because I know you're lazy, Ellie, and you don't want to look up... Oh, people. now I am. Okay. You have no excuse. Name each character as you see here. Oh, we can't really do that. Okay, this is fine too. All right, I'm sure you can see the images. All right, name uh -huh. their name, and I'll give you their name, hopefully. Priestess. Why am I tensing up? No, 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 I know this. I know this one. I know this one. Ellie, fill in the time while I think. No, you're Priestess looking, Psyche. Is... No looking. No looking. No, I'm not no looking. looking. Fine, fine. I. Oh, you're right. It could look like I'm looking. Oh yeah, I didn't. Do it, does, it. It. It really does look like you're looking. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. Sorry. You're right. You're right. Uh, I don't want to cheat here. What do we got, Psyche Priestess? I don't know why an, I can't it remember. With an, I think it begins with an F, right? Fiona. Okay. <laughs> there you go. How did I know right, that? Give me like another one. one. Give me another one. Um, <laughs> yeah, I should have known that one. All right. Embalmer. Embalmer. Okay, this one I should have known as well. What the heck is wrong with me today? What is wrong with me? I can't remember for the life of me. Embalmer? Oh no, the fans are gonna be mad about this one. Aesop. How could I forget that? There you go. Okay. Okay. Uh, perfumer. Right. Perfumer. Vera. How, wh why am I taking more than two seconds? I played perfumer for literal years. You literally, oh, yeah. Okay. Seer. The lighting is really off. Okay, there we go. Maybe we should do this. Seer, like you. Seer. Oh, are we going into? I think we might be going into interview, guys. Seer right. is um Ellie. It's literally your name. Actually, no, it's Eli. We got it wrong. Who are you? <laughs> All right. We are now going to be going into the interview section of the match. Not sure if we're going to have a translator here today for you guys. So, if not, we will just stay quiet for. Congratulations to TE for winning the, the match. How are you feeling? He said that he was very happy. Yeah, very happy. And they got four elimination as well. Happy that they got four elimination, right? Yep. I assume. Usually you're happy when you get a four elimination. So. Yeah, maybe, maybe every once in a while, if, maybe if you're a psyche, you get a win and you're like, oh my god, everyone played so bad. I don't even care. <laughs> so they're very confident with their, their hunter to get four eliminations, which obviously we saw in the first round. Uh, a little bit of a difficult time in the second round. Almost a three survivor escape, but did manage to ultimately secure the tie. They didn't really say that second part, did they? They, they didn't say the second part, no. But they were talking okay. about their, their confidence. I was just recapping the match. Yeah, recap, gotcha. There was a funny, there was a funny situation where I believe the hunter was trying to find a survivor and the survivor kept hiding from them. I think they're talking about the round one situation with the opera singer. Yeah, well, they had a hard time finding the the down survivors. The other uh, strategy there is that they try to separate their survivors. Um, I didn't quite catch the reason why though. But yeah, that's what they said. Yeah, 
So they just mentioned that when their teammate was put on a chair and they're in the lead, they have to really decide, are we going to rescue or when are we going to rescue? But there you guys go. Uh, there you go. Thank us. And uh, we are now going to go into a short break. Give us five minutes while we go into the next matchup, guys. Thank you for watching and stick around.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Call of the Seven Day Six. I'm your commentator, Phoenix Wright. Objection! And we got Posh <laughs> as my co commentator. <laughs> you scared me there, man. I don't know. I, I don't want to be accused, accused in the court of Phoenix Wright. But, Psyche, thank you guys. Thank you so much for that intro. Uh, that woke me up. And. Also, I uh, hope a lot of these teams would uh, that also be able to wake up because we're actually past the halfway mark. So, you know what? The end is in sight with the group stage. Like you said, day number six. And some of these points are kind of set in stone. So it's super important for these teams to rack up points in their respective groups for them to, you know, claim uh, a bracket spot during the playoffs. Indeed. I believe it still matters, though, if you get fourth versus fifth, because I think you get more prize money in that case, right? Mm -hmm. or I'm pretty sure. I, At least I, what I saw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, I think they also 17. want to be able to go for it. Hmm? There was like 17 through 20. It gets like 25,000 Chinese yen, I believe. And then mm -hmm. I'm sure or below that is 16 through 13, 14. 15, yeah, 16 through 13 would be like fourth place, I assume, in the group stage. So going on and going so forth. And then after that, it's going to depend on where you are in the bracket stage. So uh, go ahead, Poch. Yeah, just definitely the, the lion's share would go, would be a lot higher once you uh, move further in the group stage. But you know what, they want to be able to go out with a bang and also have the, you know what, the bragging rights to call themselves like third or fourth or maybe even first place in their group stage. So hopefully we get to see that because our next matchup is going to be a battle of second and third place. We're going to see HHDG versus Team FT in, I believe this is group. Oh, this is the group of hope. This is group B. Group B. Maybe it should have been called Group Boat for B instead of Hope. But no, I, that I, makes zero. I got I got the Kurt and Bert thing that you guys are when you you, you uh, got the dancers. Actually, that, that was a tricky one. I, I forgot the dancer's name too. I just call her dancer. I said Margaret, and her name is Margaretha. Uh, Margaretha. Okay. Well, yeah. Come on, it is the, the group of both. The group of hope. Here we have it. FT what versus H. The group it's, of hope, by the way. Because this is the group with the least amount of professional teams. The only professional team in this group is actually Team RC. Everyone else here, HHDG. They did qualify in the Chinese mainland division, but they are not a professionalized team because they're not an IBL. Team FT. They did win IVC. Not a professionalized team. RD from. Chinese HMT region, also uh, just a competitive team, and Team Omni as well. Hmm, okay. Yes. Unlike, and here we go. I was going to say, unlike the group A, which they deem the group of death, because they're all IBL yeah. teams and one IJL team. All of the really amazing teams there. I believe even, uh, I believe that one team that was in, from Japan is Zeta, right? Zeta, that, yes, that, that is correct. Yeah, and then you've got, you got, you got uh, all the other big GG, MRC, yeah, Dou, GR. So you have oh, technically uh, three, two, three Koa champions in that group. So that's, yeah, that's why it's real. called the group of death. But here we have Which it. Is this is the... scary. Yeah, like definitely. Any of these champions could get eliminated. Go mm -hmm. ahead. So I would say that any of these teams could actually make a run for second place because RC, the, being the most professionalized team, is sitting pretty at the first place spot. But... HHDG is in the second place spot, while FT in the third place spot. So let's see how this one shakes out. I do have a little biasness for towards Southeast Asia because they're they are definitely my region. But let's check out this interview from both teams. Uh 我们的人队所加油,相信你们一定能多跑了 
saying the game plan here is that hopefully their survivors will be able to get some good points in because they have they have a very strong hunter side on HHDG. Also, HHDG <laughs> wants to apparently, I believe it was their hunter, wants to take them out to go to Southeast Asia, I think you said. <laughs> Did you uh, finish that, was, that right? That was, was Hushin, yeah. Hushin was inviting HHDG. I mean, both mutual respect from both sides. Hopefully they get to, you know, share a meal afterwards. But right now it is actually, you know, all business time here. That's Adi. You saw Yush, an addition to FT. Adi being part of the core lineup of Team FT that won IVC. Adi sporting, you know, at the Gravekeeper as well as the Professor. But he also has uh, Aeroplanist uh, and Wildling that he has used on this big stage. So can't wait to see those amazing rescues by Adi. Indeed. And our next player up here is going to be Shadow. We've seen mm -hmm. Shadow before. I believe Shadow was doing really nice kites before, if I remember correctly. Shadow is the kiter of the team sporting that that gardener and well first officer kind of kind of a kiter kind of not a kiter depending on how yeah. you want to see it but i think interesting in because in our table toyota it shows that they play different survivors priestess and seer yeah in the big stage i was able to take note of shadow's um resume he has the entomologist dancer gardener cheerleader so like you mentioned one of the amazing kiters of the team and then now we have mini blue Mini Blue is actually the main rescuer-ish of the team. He can also kite, but he's kind of relegated to being that rescuer, has patient, has forward, also used the first officer and that coordinator. Uh, latest character he did use was that psychologist. So uh, that is the lineup of Team FT. Indeed, kind of like a kind of like a kiter support oriented team. Right. We see the forward, we see, we see, like once again, it says on here, it says on here that they play what was it they play forward steer but on the on the screen we saw something else mm. so yeah I, I think they took the data from what they already played on stage so i think uh, that was an updated uh data i think he probably used mm -hmm. that in uh, ivc but uh, we are going to move on to hhdg's tzym uh, the, so what's interesting about uh, T, uh, HHDG is that never saw game number three. They've only seen up until game number two. That's why you only see two main hunters here. They have to worry about the opera singer. They also have to worry about the gamekeeper. So uh, lots to think about if you're Team FT. Indeed, they have they have a lot of things to worry about. Uh, HHDG known for just owning out games in about two rounds, which is very, very good. I mean, we've said it before in the past matchups that with Opera Singer being such a strong hunter, if you really make one mistake against her, it could turn your game from a tie to a four-man loss, and it'd be really hard to come back at that point in round two or even round three if you if you get there and your team right. either ties or wins round two. Hey man, I nightmare. was listening to you in Eli, and I know you've been jonesing for some best of three. So hopefully that this team, uh, this team matchup will be able to take us to that best of three. Uh, we have Indeed. seen we have seen uh, Team FT take our I believe it was RD. Uh, to game number three, but unfortunately, uh, based on their statistics, RC actually took it 2-0 against FT, so that's why they're sitting in third place. But you have to admit that this could actually go the whole BO3 if they play their cards right, and we'll finally be able to see the third hunter of TZYM. Indeed. Uh, so now we're just waiting here. No, I mean, Potch, you want to continue the game we were doing earlier with the uh, guessing survivor names? Maybe I should give you a few. <laughs> How well do you uh, know the survivor names? I'm, Maybe I should do it reverse. I'll give you like their new lore, role name, lore name. Lore and name, and then I'll get, okay, cool. I hope I get it right, but yeah, I'm kind of 50-50 on this. Like I'm a casual lore enjoyer, a casual name enjoyer, but yeah, go for it. I know you have the book out, so I saw you were yeah. uh, showing everyone the book. I won't memorize their names, yeah. I'm not gonna memorize all names. If I get a name wrong, it's gonna be because of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just wanna be super short. I'm gonna name a basic one. What is right. Explorer? Do you know Explorer? It's, Kurt, it's Kurt. Oh, I'm so it's sorry. Kurt. I was supposed to say. Oh. Yeah, sorry. Oh, I'm yeah, supposed okay. to say no, their okay. name. No, what about this one? I right. right, go for it. Yeah, one. Service Leroy. Which one is this? Wait, wait. Say <laughs> I got lost in the accent. Can you say that again? <laughs> Service Leroy. Which one Service is this? Service Leroy? Sir, that's his look, full name. That's his full name? Three oh, words. Service Leroy. Leroy. I'll give you ah. a hint. Okay. French baguette and wine. Oh, is 
No, I, I don't know. Like, Fran he's French? Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah, I, he's, I think so. <laughs> chat, help me out here. I, I got nothing. Who we got? Who is it? It's Magic Boy. Oh, it's the magician. Okay, I never knew his real name. Okay, but now I learned something new. Sir, Sir Vice one, yeah. Leroy? Leroy. Oh, Leroy. Oh, oh. Omelette du fromage. Mm -hmm. I, can only, I can only say two things in French. Le French baguette and wine, which is not even French. And I can also laugh at French. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I hope I warmed up my voice enough. Okay, I want you to rate my my uh, breaking wheel impression, okay? Oh, no. Ready? 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 Rate, rate my breaking oh, wheel impression. This is when he's about to transform, okay? Ready? He's about to laugh. <laughs> <sighs> he sounds so goofy. Yeah, that's pretty yeah, on point. A lot of people would say, oh, is that goofy? I was like, I, I, yeah. And Nell was like, oh, that's, yeah, goofy, but... They, they, they are pretty silly, the three of them, the breaking wheel. But anyway, let's save the conversation for a bit because I want to get your thoughts on the lineup so far. We are going to see some bands of the Gardener, Cheerleader Patient, TZYM, not going to stray far from the meta most likely. We're going to see that opera singer. But what do you think about the lineup here on the Survivor side? I think it makes a lot of sense here. We see it's important to look at the Hunter's bands here. They banned out Cheerleader and Gardener. And what does this do? Cheerleader makes Perfumer a lot better and without children makes perfumer just essentially also banned if you want to think of it that way granted mm. they could have also gone sear perfumer if they wanted to but they did not opt for that acrobat wilding is also fine enough and also acrobat could be good if you can block off the ball or something like that he has a couple cool jump spots like at corner house as well where you could jump off the railing mm. we got the sear in response to the patient ban i mean if they're gonna give it to you may as well take it sears a good survivor and extra hits are always good it's a free eight second kite if they don't hit the out Think about it like that just mm -hmm. like a gardener bubble nothing wrong with that whole extra two seconds and the last pick is coordinator but allowing the anti crane to go through not very commonly seen it's always like a little bit of a situ sticky situation with anti crane as opera singer you can definitely dodge it if mm -hmm. you go backwards and forward you dodge her her, her pain attack but right. if you ever vault or break a pallet it can it can be rough it can be a little bit scary or if you ever like teleport to back to your one of your shadows that's another opportunity for the anti crane to just swipe you to the side or to the left or right yep they're both mm -hmm. sides you get the idea. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I like what you pointed out about the cheerleader. Now that makes me think, right? You, if you ban out the cheerleader, you shadow ban also technically the perfumer because of the cooldown time. That's why now we see like the the seer is here as well for just absorbing the extra hits if if need be, or if he'll he'll be the one to do it, or he'll send out the owl to do it. But if we are gonna see an opera singer, who would be the most likely chase for TZYM? Mm, well, for now, it depends on the spawn, but there's two main good ones he's looking at. Mm -hmm. He's looking at the Acrobat, most importantly, and the Seer. anti is going to be a little bit scary because really with anti if you ever have to put yourself in an animation, that's where she gets those hits. And if she does mm -hmm. it really well, she can disarm you for a maximum okay. of five plus seven plus seven seconds. That is 19 seconds if she uses wow. all three swings back to back to back in less than one second that is something that i mentioned in the book mm -hmm. and i often i often overlook it because if you're a, a, like a second too late it's only mm -hmm. going to give you five additional seconds instead of the seven so the game encourages you to use the stick multiple times and against opera singer you are even further encouraged because it's a little bit scary having to use your stick and then somehow still getting hit i have that happen sometimes and it's not fun because of how fast she is she might hit you before you hit her so mm -hmm. uh, definitely going to be taking any opportunity you have to stun her besides that potch acrobat mm -hmm. steer wildling eh. if he ever gets on his board so too early two. yeah, yeah. Two. actually based on my notes on the matches i've witnessed ft play this is their i think this might be their debut antiquarian i know that they are very proficient with antiquarian but this is the first time they're bringing it on stage maybe the teams that went up against them just abandoned them away because i do know that shadow excellent stunner mini blue also has stuns in his own right but it seems like yush one of the additions to team ft will be at the center here while adi will take the 11 area ish with the pallets that we usually see so interesting that TZYM will have this fair, well, I mean, he could make a beeline for that Seer before the Owl can even come back and register a hit if he plays his cards right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his goal here is almost for sure gonna be greater. Where else are you gonna run here, Potch? Not really anywhere. I mean, maybe you're gonna go 
like up the two story, but no, you're just gonna be giving free dashes to the opera senior. So I say better ideas for Steer to run underneath Geisha House. You see the coaches right there shaking hands by a common sign of respect in the Chinese mm -hmm. region. And yeah, it's almost for sure gonna be this year. And as you guys see, the survivors knowing that gave the Steer the cutting <laughs> build. Oh, very well aware of this. Everyone else has borrowed time, but Candy Quarian with the Broken Windows, not commonly seen. Very mm -hmm. elusive Broken Windows anti Quarian. More, more in like interested in the kite rather than her support. That's the main idea there. But I will be your commentator, Psyche, aka Phoenix Strike, along with Posh Spice. Let's get right into the first match of FT versus HHDG. Let's and just see like you happens. called it, Ace Attorney, we are seeing the Seer just jump right into the graveyard side. But it seems like uh, TZYM is actually going to take a back step here to see if anyone is caught slipping and working on some objectives. It seems like Mini Blue might get caught out in the open. Yush making a rotation towards the left. We got to watch the, for the tram. Yeah, exactly. Look both ways before you cross the street, folks. Uh oh. Tram moment indeed. Yush, ooh, knowing ooh. that the seer is leaving now, getting a slight glimpse of him. Look at how well the upper singer is, by the way. If she knows there's nothing to dash nearby, she dashes and then immediately leaves for to keep up with the speed bonus. Seer is in an awkward spot because there's a lot of things to dash on. At least he'll get the guaranteed pallets here to stall out, but the, then the, the shadows are going to make it very difficult. Baiting wow. out the owl. They didn't hit it, so good discipline from the hunter, but it's still gonna buy eight seconds. And the ciphers are Whoa. going up percent by percent by percent. Yo, wow, I really wheel nice through the pallet. Oh my god, able to bait out the, the the blink, and now Yush actually he prolonged the game enough to actually want to be wanting to be chased at the graveyard side. So excellent kite on Yush's side. The cipher progress, like you pointed out, Psyche, he's doing pretty well. So Yush, um, hopefully he'll be able to farm an owl in this process, but it's going to be tough for him to continue on. He might have to fall down here, but it seems like he's going to head towards the pallets again. Indeed. Uh, not going to drop the pallet right away, which I feel like he could have stalled a few extra seconds. It's just less risky and more important to get three cybers done rather than try to go for more than three cybers, since that's really all you need. Mm -hmm. But I completely understand as well, trying to get greedy, because at the same time, that's a double tie turner strategy to just do right. exactly three cyphers if you want more cyphers done and you only have one tie turner then you're gonna need more cyphers mm -hmm. done otherwise it's not gonna be enough so right here finding the finding the wildling really early on so this is gonna be important for wildling to get on his pig what does this mean now guys that means now wildling will not have his oh <laughs> catching the hunter on the way to the chair doesn't really matter but it's funny to see the problem uh -oh. is now he doesn't have his pig so uh -oh. does the hunter want to sacrifice it look at that look how smart the wildling is running in the opposite direction of the seer right there so that mm -hmm. they don't like go in the same direction and it's worth hitting the wildling now so well done there from the survivor side yeah you gotta admit that the wildling all things considered he needed to get that push the tram was on the way and he wanted to just close out the distance and since they are running this uh rescue strategy or the sacrifice play on the seer shadow is already here to just provide that support let's see if we're gonna see any pushbacks or so stuns. annoying yeah oh he pushes him My towards goodness. the chair and now let's see if the body block happens no the silence oh. even more the seer has an owl <gasps> What a perfectly timed owl there. By the way, the stick right there, she even let the hunter have a brief moment to swing there, knowing that she's gonna be able to cancel the swing in time anyway. So really maximizing every single second, millisecond for the seer to get away. Falls the pout in time, jukes the hunter, breaks the ankle. What a oh hunter. my. No, that's the wrong shadow. That's the wrong shadow. This is looking like a three person escape here, Posh, because the ciphers are drastically going up very quickly. Although that 43% oh. cipher is going to get teleported on now. Yeah, so now oh, Adi. Oh, that was so close. Cool. That would have been godlike if he was able to get that stun on the hunter. But Adi, oh you know, really tempting fate there. But uh, TZYM using uh, the teleport already. Uh, just to make sure that he's gonna stall out the end game. But like you pointed out, they've already on top of the case. They're opening up another cipher. Shadow's gonna get caught out in the open, so he has to be very careful. One more hit, he will be falling down, but he has some bamboo uh, stick left to work with. That is the nasty thing about anti car And you find her, she's she's legitimately worse than Mercenary to chase because at least Mercenary uses pads. You can catch up to him in those five seconds and maybe even hit him before his next L pad. Now with anti Korean, and if you really think about it, anti Korean has six usages, which is absolutely insane. Wilding, overwilding's out of pig though. Not mm -hmm. enough time has passed. 
He's yeah, five seconds off and he goes down. Unfortunate there, but at least the saving grace here is that this wildling does have borrowed time. He can get rescued. The acrobat is already here while the last cypher is being primed. So now TZYM really has to be very careful how he plays this end game scenario. Mini blue is on the case. He's already been spotted out. Now let's see him go for the rescue. It seems like they're going to try to push the cypher and the rescue is going to happen. TZYM is really committing to getting this last cypher guarded. That's a fat distance to try to make, mm. and a fat distance he will not make in time as they pop the cypher. Waiting, mm -hmm. waiting for the shadow. Waiting for the. Yeah, what did you just say? No, oh. bars. That was bars. That rhymed. Yeah, good job. Oh, <laughs> look at this. Dropping both pals to make sure the opera singer. Oh, no, missing her dash. Okay, so that's going to cost a little bit of time. Not too much flywheel. Whoa! Yes! What a nice flywheel. Ooh, well that done from the seer there. Crazy. The seer, Yash, the first target here will be the one to have a seer owl. Oh my god, forcing him to teleport, but the exit gate here, it's already open. Wait. Two of the survivors are out. No, 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 no. So he should be able to teleport back. Please tell me you have a shadow to go backwards. That's a four man if, that, if he doesn't wow. have a shadow to go back. Oh my god, and now we see that the exit gate is about to no. open. TZYM, he wants to guard the dungeon, but the survivor is already there. They got Shadow. it! They got it! They got it! Oh. They got it! Come on! No, no! Oh my god, god it's silence! <laughs> that was Let's crazy. Go for the antiquary, that was amazing. Wow. Excellent. Watch, not only... Yeah, go for it. Yes. Go. You, you, you finish They're your thoughts not... first. Oh my goodness. Not only did they get a three person escape, I thought for sure, like, I thought for sure there's going to be a, like a backup plan. They're like, okay, if the gate is open, because I'm like looking like a lot of time passed, you could see in the top left, the tension has already been down to like 90, 80 seconds. It only takes 20 seconds to open a gate. So he should already have like an idea, like, okay, I'm playing a big risk here. So at least I should have a backup. He did not have a backup. He did not teleport back to his shadow. Sha uh, Seer just got the gate open. Andy Crane, I thought would have just been able to just stand there and escape, but needed to yeah. use the stick, predicting mm -hmm. that the hunter is going to chase after her, like dash forward, because imagine how scary it would have been if the hunter predicted that back mm -hmm. and then just dodged the flutes. That could have been really nasty, but luckily that did not happen for the Ukraine. Wow, yeah. that was really clean. I mean, I I think the yeah the three main ones that we can call. I mean, the top two survivors there was definitely that kite by Yush, the seer. We also had an amazing showing of Adi about to bait the tram hit, but good rescues on his side. And Shadow also with, you know, an excellent flute usage because all of the hits really counted, especially all the way to the end. Mini Blue was there. He was the main decoder. I definitely, we're probably going to see like 200% uh, decoding progress on his side, but he was definitely just making the rotations around the map. So this excellent uh, survivor synergy. I was agreeing with you. It looked like a three-person escape, but this definitely puts FT in a higher spot because that is a huge uh, victory to get. And I believe this is the first 5-0 game we're getting up against an uh, up against an opera singer. So that's not easy by any means. Uh, I mean, this is insane. We saw before that FT's Hunter said in the interview that we really need our survivors to get the points. And the, the <laughs> points they did get! A four-person escape against Opera Singer. This is going to go as one of the biggest matches mm -hmm. in this Call of the Seven history. That was amazing there. I almost feel like the Opera just decided to go away from the Seer because the way he charged at the exit gate, the way mm -hmm. he had it out, like, made it seem like, oh, yeah, the gate's almost open. I'm just going to touch it and you're screwed, which mm -hmm. was not the case. We knew it was 0%. And so yeah. I feel like maybe Opera Singer was a little bit like didn't realize, OK, well, what if the other gets open? Yeah. I guess I may as well check on him. Yeah. Um, so that, it that was cost him. definitely uh, a little flustered that he was being. And also he was thinking, should I charge at the exit gate where the seer is opening it? Or should I they even had a portion where he was looking at the exit gate and looking at the dungeon at the same time? Then he committed to the dungeon. It was so close because, uh, yeah, if there was that one scenario, he baited out the flute. He could have actually gotten one survivor uh, eliminated. But Dems are the breaks and FT leading the charge here with a five point survivor game. That is huge in this group stage, especially in this group stage where uh, the team in front of them is HHDG. So not only are they racking up the points, but they're also kind of sending HHDG lower. So they're securing a better spot in the brackets. Indeed, it's very interesting because usually we'd be seeing the four person kill go on the hunter but we know we never really see a four person escape from the survivors against opera it's usually like a, okay we either tie or we either get four man either one of those but or three man uh by the opera singer but no we saw a straight up 
win and a big win at that. So that mm -hmm. means the hunter's very free to mm -hmm. just get one person here and that would be good enough. In the worst case scenario, they are playing Opera Singer. So chances are, if the survivors play perfectly, like like really perfect, they could maybe get a three person now. And if the mm -hmm. hunter makes a mistake, then maybe four people out. But if the Opera plays perfect in response, Mm -hmm. It's just going to be a tie game. Like, it's a yeah. perfect versus perfect. It ends up averaging out because the thing mm -hmm. about Opera is that when you play the Rice Rose against Opera Singer, it's not so much about, oh, Opera Singer did something wrong. It's more so that, well, I couldn't do anything wrong. Their Gardner had a bubble that mm -hmm. just stalled me out. Everyone else also stalled me out. And I, like, I had the right abilities. I used them at the right time. Just had to sit there and wait. So that's the big thing about Opera Singer. It's really hard to do anything more than a and a win against Opera Singer because she's able to constantly be on you and there's no real ability in the game that could really stall mm. that long so yeah absolutely absolutely rare sight to see and yeah. overall i'm gonna have to say ft is in a very favorable spot here oh yeah i would say though uh, fans of hhdg not to fret because this is the first time they're facing adversity because they've been getting two o's since the start of the group stage so you know what every team has to face adversity and hhdg now has to climb out of this si sticky situation that uh ft put themselves in hopefully the survivors can rise to the occasion we're going to start things off with d king hopefully they can cook i do see eli o in chat saying that ft cooking like gordon ramsay so uh... <laughs> <laughs> no they're not burning they're making a five-star meal right now chef's Chef kisses. kisses there you go boom yeah Get michelin french star <laughs> french in wine five star oh the uh -huh. service of the Roy, or whatever. <laughs> service oh of the Roy. God. Reviewing the Le Baguette. Oh okay. So right. tell us something about know. Egg. <laughs> In terms of Egg, we see Aeroplanes, we see Patient. Two pretty similar survivors here. Also getting a, a solid average containment time, which is yep. really nice to see. Like, he's not playing a rescue character, so definitely harder to kite out. Mm -hmm. Usually you see that on the rescuers, they get really long hiding time, which is to be expected, but Egg still doing pretty well, pushing out almost 90 second kites. Mm -hmm. Very, very impressive. He also plays Mercenary though, so um, maybe that plays a part. Okay, we're going to introduce our next survivor. Uh, I listened to Nell pronounce this, I hope. Chat, let me know if I pronounce this correctly. It's Susu Tzu. Uh, Susu having the acrobat and also the cheerleader also based on my notes uh also plays the gardener so this guy is basically the big kiter of the team so yeah he might be what uh, ft is to yush susu tzu, might be the, the the answer that they need uh coming into this match but we're gonna introduce our last survivor in sing h uh, uh sorry uh, psyche <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it really well. You said Sing H? Yeah, it's just Sing H. That's how I pronounce Sing it. Sing H. Sing, yeah. 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 Overall, the main rescuer of the team, we got the Marshalling, but we also see, instead of the first officer, the elusive forward. Forward, mm -hmm. such a great supporting character, but we've seen him fall out of the meta as every Columbus has gone by. Harder and harder to keep up with hunters, especially as their chase has improved, it makes it even harder to put the pressure on them, especially when a person's knocked down. So you rather go something like the Crane, mm -hmm. which is much easier to do both with to support mid height and in balloons. But here, Kuga. Kuga, we've mm -hmm. seen them a lot before. Um, yes. Posh. What have what do we know about Kuga? Mainly like an opera singer main, perhaps, right? Yes, in this meta, but he's known in Southeast Asia as like the Dream Witch, like the terrorizing Dream Witch that has won uh, IVC and also has a really strong Night Watch. But in the big stage here, he's only used Opera Singer because in their match up against RD, they actually chose to ban out his Dream Witch more than his Opera Singer. And I would say his Opera Singer, you know, securing ties here and there, but he hasn't gotten that 4K that is possible with that Opera Singer. I don't know if it's possible for him to bring it out now or maybe, you know, hold off on it and bring out, you know, his calling card of a hunter in the Dream Witch since there are no bans. And a map like this is definitely one of his playgrounds. So uh, it's really up to the team and how they're going to strategize going into this. But in, in your opinion, Psyche, what do you think the Hunter should do? Play more passively or just go all out? 
I would say play more passively. I mean, we've seen this time and time again, whether that be in my experience from watching Before You or by seeing these other teams, we've seen a very common trend where it's like, okay, well, if your team had such a huge advantage, you don't really want to give the other team a chance. Sure, you're going to extend it and, and make the game longer if you only go for ties, but you're not going to win off the ties is the thing uh, for mm -hmm. the opposing team. So HHDG would not win off the ties alone. So if you play super passively and get the occasional like three person kill, that's good enough. So it's it's hard to say like how passive should you be in this kind of situation because Opera Singer is an aggressive hunter. She doesn't really have to be passive. It's the mm -hmm. nice thing. So that's what makes the situation even better that his survivors were able to get a four escape, which makes it a lot a lot less pressure on Kuga to, to do well here. But of course, he wants to maintain their lead. Mm. As I, li much I, like as that, I like that mentality. Ties don't technically win you championships. It's, it's really going all out. And um, hopefully Kuga has already acclimated to the big stage and he's acclimated to this type of scenario oh, that he can bring up the opera soon. Mm -hmm. I meant ties won't win for the opposing team right now. Oh, but for the opposing for team. Uh, yeah, they already got okay, their okay. big win. So now they can right. play it safe. That's the correct. Uh, okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, yeah, it seems like HHDG bring out that barmaid. They're just kind of accounting for if he'll bring out the, the Dream Witch to uh, come on in here. But like you said, Kuga could just kind of... Well, yeah, if he plays passively, uh, Opera Singer isn't the type of hunter to do that with because she's very, it's all gas and no breaks with her. And it seems like he will be going with this uh, this Opera Singer matchup. I mean, as long as you're careful, as long as you know how to use the ability right, you chase the right people, as long as you don't get crazy rotated, you'll do all right. There's nothing like really bad against Opera Singer. She's just the hardest hunter to counter because she's everywhere all at the same time and can do everything everywhere pretty much. I mean, even Isn't better movie? than Dream. Everything everywhere all at once. <laughs> Possible <laughs> reference to that, but no, didn't mean to. Uh, no. But it's just, it's hard to argue with Opera Singer, all right? Like, yes, I say passive, but when I say passive, I'm talking more like, and and stuff like that when i think mm. of opera singer you should play like you play opera singer all the time some of the hunters best defense is a good offense and opera singer is one of those hunters so even though like with Ann, you'd probably play more defensive keep your kills you know chick go one at a time with your cast it's also really hard to mess you up so is opera singer it's really hard to mess up opera singer herself so you can really get the best defense with a good offense wise words yeah. yeah, definitely. Wise, Wise words word. by, uh, I mean, I don't know who said it, but I'm going to quote you, uh, sorry, Psyche, with, with saying that. Let's see how this one's going to go. Uh, again, same type of T spawn. Actually, we didn't see anyone. Uh, we saw someone spawn near the graveyard side, but it seems like Suzutsu will be at the center here. Kuga can run the same route to see if he's going to chase after the barmaid to start things out. Egg is right below the barmaid while we see the forward uh, Sing H on top and DK on the middle two story. Indeed. And one thing I find interesting here is we don't see patient near graveyard or corner house. Now, corner house is a little bit worse than graveyard, but I wonder what their plan is here. Why not spawn the patient near one of his best kiting areas? Is this first officer really needed that badly? I'm not so sure about that. I feel like they could swap there and for Sutter would also be fine. He's going to have to use his watch no matter what. Let's put it that way. Uh, I mm -hmm. really think about it. Yeah, but it right seems like the cheerleader and the barmaid not bring borrowed time. We have a flywheel, a tide turner, and then you have uh, broken windows and another tide turner on the first officer side. So very interesting uh, persona builds here, Psyche. I say it's reasonable because they <laughs> need to do well here. The hunter just experienced a really bad match, unfortunately. For unfortunate match, I should say. But guys, we'll be going into the second half of round one. HHDG is in a massive point deficit. They need to come back as soon as possible. But Kuga doesn't have to worry about it as much because their team did so well. So we will see what happens here. Kuga having a little bit of a hard time hmm. trying to find that first survivor. But Patient is in a really awkward position. Also awkward for Opera to dash to him, though. Look at how open air he is. Oh, yeah. This is uh, going to be a little tough for him to kind of close the distance. So now they kind of the survivors can kind of settle and go for some objectives here while this patient makes the rotations at this side of the map drops down the pallet so he has to go around it he's going to go in the out in the open again to try and bait kuga to follow him and we see that the cheerleader is actually here as well indeed it's an interesting idea so far it's actually been working fine because you guys notice every single time the patient is hooking from one side to the other look look mm -hmm. there's nothing to dash on there's literally mm -hmm. nothing to dash on right now tram uh, he's getting a little oh bit close God. to the side, so now she has 
Wow, but that's a guaranteed... <laughs> Guys, think about it. It takes 12 seconds for Tram to leave, and it takes about 12 seconds for Tram to start heading to the next stop. For this stop specifically, it is super slow. Watch this, Tram. Look at how slow it is going from one stop to the other. <laughs> it is so slow. We, so we could literally catch up on our days with that. that, but now it seems like the patient has already uh, gone to the last stop, and there's not much he can work with uh, just besides the pallets. He has no more hooks anymore, and gets the blink down. This is super important for Kuga to continue on the, the dominant streak of FT. Like you said, don't have to risk too much. Just wants to get at least one survivor out. It'd be better if he gets a tie just to deny any points gained for Team HHDG. Indeed. Overall, if I were to rate that patient, tight, I'd say I'd say nine out of ten. It wasn't. I don't think it'd be as good. Oh, first off, you're getting found a little bit early, having to use the watch. We'll see if he gets mind game. I don't think it was the best, the best like patient kite ever in existence. But if I compare it to something like Graveyard, I'm thinking back now, there's a lot of stuff to dash inside of Graveyard. Getting the hit here on the first officer, getting it before half. First officer uh, working with the cheerleader here. I'm not sure what the cheerleader is for necessarily, but first mm. officer has to avoid getting double hit. Well done. Not getting yeah. double hit there. And now. Whoa. Egg, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Go Egg ahead. with the pallet drop there. Just to continue on the chase, the tram is also here, but we still have Tide Turner in effect. So Egg doing a great job opening up a lot of ciphers. We do see that the they still need to work on two solid ciphers. Cheerleader is actually here to support. Eats a hit. Kuga almost a full presence. Egg is now uh, kiting for his life. He still has a second chair to go with. And now we see that he does move dash on along here with the cheer of the cheerleader. This is actually looking really nice for HHDG's side. Although their hunter may have had a rough time, that doesn't mean their survivors can't also give back a rough time to Kuga. Patient, overall, like what was mentioned earlier, surprisingly very effective because every time he crosses those railroad tracks, the opera singer is not dashing. Even though it may not seem big at the moment, oh, he might have to use his watch here. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Jeez. Mind game, mind game. He has oh a watch, God. right? He does. Yeah, he does. Wow, he's being he, so oh, he does. greedy to oh watch Oh, my with. God. Yeah, you're right. So now we see uh, the, the patient actually drink uh, a, a drink from the courtesy of the barmaid. The barmaid's going to eat a hit. He's on a timer here. He needs to be able to down the uh, the, the patient before it, he expires, but it seems like he's going to switch targets, and now the uh -oh. patient is going to be healed up, and the barmaid will be the focus of Kuga. Indeed. Oh. I was thinking for a second, oh, what a clean 5-0. I don't know if that's enough, but with Opera Singer missing the dash, I think it oh! might. Oh my gosh, it was. Well done from, uh, uh, however you pronounce the barmaid's name. Oh, Tram! Tram, Tram, Tram! Man, Tram has been the best Careful, hunter SpongeBob, today. careful. Careful, SpongeBob, careful. Wow, but the barmaid there is stalling just enough. Really clean. Oh my, oh my goodness, God. look at these flies. Redder this like a bug. huge. So yeah, that's the thing. Kuga has been susceptible to hitting early on and forcing whiffs to happen. And these are definitely racking up HHDG, making it a close battle here, folks. But seeing H gets hit, first officer is down. But one Cypher remains, Psyche, like 70%. Kuga just needs one just to pass the bare minimum for them to secure that round win. But HHDG making it such a hard time for Kuga to get that one elimination. Yeah, indeed. And although it is opera, so chances are still in the opera server to get one person killed. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is it is always a little bit uncomfortable when you're in this kind of situation. Like, okay, patient had a good kite. Cheerleader gets a good body block. First officer gets a good rescue. Everyone is working together. Barmy takes a hit there, but that's not going to stop the Cypher. No, no, no. And they do have extra Cypher uh, person at health, healthy mm -hmm. person to go rescue this barman it's not looking too great for kuga's side but i mean one person is still very doable yeah especially with definitely that okay last cypher is already prime they get the rescue susutsu needs to kite for as long as he can but there's no pallet here able to get the pop but oh yes the barmaid does All it right. in borrowed time so yeah that's gonna be a little tough so kuga is gonna want to get more survivors down and out there is an exigate that is being moved but kuga is actually not guarding that exigate the blink wow blink made the difference well done there. The patient unfortunately didn't didn't really position going towards graveyard. Instead, kind of ran along with the barmaid there, which made things awkward. Now wow. Kuga's gonna get a tie. That is absolutely Dude, insane. From a one-person escape to a tie, that is definitely a huge win on Kuga's side. Uh, it seems like they're not leaving yet, so I 
are they gonna try to risk it? The barmaid's already mm -hmm. on the second chair. I think it might be a little too risky. So Sing H already here. You don't want to give any more points here. So yes, okay, thank God. They were able to exit. I was kind of scared. Watcher. Oh. I, I understand him saving the watcher. It is a little bit oh, greedy. Yeah. We'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. It is a little bit greedy to hold on to the watcher because now you're not necessarily guaranteeing that you get the ciphers done in time, but they're leveraging that for instead hoping that the patient's able to kike longer because of the barmaid handing him the drink. And also, I did not expect for Softshare to last that long. I was expecting that for Softshare to just kind of die much quicker, but he was baiting the opera singer so well that it took a couple extra seconds to knock him down and it made it not even worth it to knock him down in the first place. I feel like we could have seen Kuga's shadow back there a little bit sooner. That being said though, the rescue was really in Kuga's favor because the only person who could rescue was mm -hmm. the patient. Patient is one of the targets that Kuga wants. So right there, the moment the barmaid pops, uh, mm -hmm. where it gets, gets knocked down, they pop the cypher. It's unfortunate because they were really hoping maybe patient body blocks her because he had borrowed time on the other hand. Mm -hmm. But the other thing they could have done there is since he has brought time, he has a much easier time just running anywhere in the opposite direction. Graveyard's one option if he's running with the barmaid, but the other option was honestly just going Dancing Gisha, the Dragon Gate, towards Corner mm -hmm. House. Anywhere really where it's not near the barmaid, and unfortunately for him, he didn't really account for that. And so it ended up making it so that uh, Kuga was able to corner him, knock him down, get a really valuable blink there to essentially mm -hmm. secure high. Otherwise, it probably would have still been a three-man escape if patient was able to last long enough it's hard to say because he was mm -hmm. so close to the barmy that i have a feeling he'd go down and then the army would just yeah. fall up with another lockdown so definitely really, yeah really a lot of frantic uh it's that chases there by kuga you got to give it up to hhdg they tried their 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 darnest to be able to get as much survivors out as possible Good support all throughout, good rescues, good kites, uh, forcing Kuga just uh, to swing constantly and uh, just get whiffs. And I would have to say this, Psyche, that no one, uh, the tram is zero and two with uh, the hits here. So thank God for all the survivors and hunters to not get hit by the tram. There were a lot of close calls in both matches, but um, this match in particular is definitely a close call on both sides. HHDG still able to, I, I think, just manage to stop the bleeding. Like you said, it's seven to two and coming into round number two, it's usually the one with the momentum, but uh, there's a bit of a switch up here because it's the survivors and not Sangria to be able to score the team a big win with the five points. So that will be the score line for round number two. It's seven to two folks uh, with a round win going to team FT. Indeed, it is going to be a pretty big lead for FT here, still managing to get <laughs> a major amount of points still five point lead overall instead of instead of well i suppose it could have been like a it could have been like a reduced by two points so it only would have been a three point lead but no <laughs> psyche the, the multiple personas of psyche that was actually a good one that was uh i thought i, I thought it was complicated when someone knew that's crazy <laughs> then i do that one every once in a while I have this uh, horrible fear of glasses. Now, part of that is because these glasses look like they were they were for an old person, made for an old person. So it's not like the kind of glasses you'd see a younger person wear. So that's why I hate them. But even uh -huh. other glasses with like bigger, like uh, not, not like super big frames, but just not like empty frames, because these look like your uh -huh. dad, like dad's, a dad's reading glasses, pretty much. Um. <laughs> Do you have 20-20 vision? No, I don't. I actually wear contacts. That's oh, you where wear the contacts. Whoa, 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 what's yeah. the grade for? What's the grade of contacts it's, you're wearing? I'm pretty sure it's negative 4.75 on the left and negative 5.25 on the right, and it's been very similar for a while now. It's stayed around that region, okay. but slightly still increasing. So can't really oh. get LASIK until that stops moving. Mm, true, true. Oh, but wow. hey, thanks for peeling the curtains back there. Like I didn't know actually. I thought you had 20/20 vision. I didn't know you had, you had no. glasses. So all right. I think glasses don't look good on me. That's that's really, really the main reason. Yeah, Maybe you haven't found the right pair yet. Mm -hmm. Maybe I haven't found the right pair. It's true, but either way, I, I don't think I could ever get used to glasses. I don't want to get used to glasses. I've been wearing contacts because I was in fourth grade, Potch. You wow. weren't even. You're not even supposed to wear contacts that young. You're supposed to like at earliest the age 13, and I was 10 mm -hmm. already. Wow. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> I think <laughs> the I think the hardest part to get used mm -hmm. to was I would spend. 30 minutes i think on each eye like, trying to put a contact in uh -huh. and, and now it takes 
10 seconds. Now oh, it yeah? takes 10 seconds. Okay. It's a trust. It's a trust mm -hmm. thing. You have to mm -hmm. trust that your eye's not gonna hurt. And for all the people who are like scared of that same reason, the contact protects it so that normally, yes, if you don't, if you just raw touch your eye, it would hurt. But if, if you think about it like <laughs> plastic, the plastic protects your senses for your eye from really getting hurt. So, right, right. Uh, Besides that, you just have to get used to the random coldness from the contact. Have you ever fell asleep with contact on? Yeah, it happens, and you're not supposed to do it, but it's not gonna like destroy your vision. You're not supposed yeah. to do it, and I don't it's recommend really dry, it. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gets super dry, and you want to take them out as soon as possible at that point, because dude, it's worse than <laughs> it's way worse than if you just took them out. Especially even if you don't wear dailies, I wear dailies. It is the healthiest, so that you mm -hmm. get the least amount of infections. Mm -hmm. um, Admittedly, glasses are still less infectious, obviously. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> there's like other contexts. There's contexts that you could save and hold on to, like just put them when you go to sleep, put them in like this contact water overnight mm -hmm. and then put them back in. But obviously that could cause bacteria, so we don't do that. Either way, you have to put them out, take them out and put them back in. So it's mm -hmm. a very scary thing. All right, and some wise words from Psyche over there. Take care of your eyes, folks. We're going to be right back. We're going to check out the highlights. And when we come back, it's going to be round number two. All right, folks, we got a fan cheer identity five event. Super topic, hashtag COA7 support, HHDG, go, go, go. We are sure to make the vic uh, sure to make history. Again, beautiful cosplays all throughout. Again, send in your selfies, your memes, your fan arts, and using the hashtag, hashtag COA7, and hashtag COA7 support, and your hashtag of your team. Uh, take us through the FT one. FT is forever. Call the seven support, hashtag FT win. So as Poch was just saying there, if you use hashtag all the support, hashtag FT win, and you post it on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, then mm -hmm. you could have a chance of getting essences and even showing up on stream right here. Speaking of which, that last cosplay, how did she get her whole eye black? How I know, we were just talking about that. There are those contacts that can get your whole eye black. That just covers a lot. Uh, I know some cosplayer friends do that, but it gets your. It's like every hour you have to put eye drops because it just makes your eyes super dry. Yeah, that's that's absolutely insane. So, uh, I imagine there's like the eye part because the contact doesn't fill the whole eye; it just fills the color of your eye and then mm -hmm, the the mm -hmm. in the center. So, how does she get the white part black? That's sure. insane to me. I don't know mm -hmm. how she did that. Yeah, but uh, shout outs anyway. to her for the the for committing to that cosplay for team hhdg but while we get ready for round number two i have a pop quiz for psyche i'm gonna say a survivor name and you're gonna have to tell me which survivor it is are you ready psyche i'm a little bit worried this is this is really scary i haven't read All the right. book in a while okay here we go who is frederick krayberg oh that's easy that's composer i All thought you right, were gonna name one. me composer like patient mm -hmm. like and then oh, I no 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 because they asked but i'm gonna ask you now who oh fine have you found oh, no. out <laughs> you, what you want you want the survivor like lore name or the i, I feel like you'd actually do better with the survivor lore name ironically because they're so unique between each person it's like oh yeah i remember reading that but off the top of my head no i mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to tell you. okay all right i have another one lined up because i think this might be a little bit of layup next time because i think eli asked you and he's like uh you can answer it. Who's Lily? Who's Lily? Yeah. Oh, wait, that's cheerleader. That's there you go. Name. Yeah, that's her name. Lily. Lily Barry. I would have never Barry. remembered Barry. that. I just so, see, we're not, we're not looking at IDV. We're looking at something else entirely. We got the whole 
secret commentator data of how to see what each person plays without actually knowing what they play <laughs> we got the so notes beautiful. well I, I have i have mine written down here but it was based on the notes like just taking down notes i'm, I'm very analog like that yeah i see you're you're also looking at like the past matches rather than me i'm just going off mm -hmm. my memory like oh they did really well can not we just see them play <laughs> <laughs> how would you rate your hand right, or we talked about drawing right how would you rate your handwriting uh People tell me it's good for a guy. I don't think it's that good for a guy, but if it ever comes to drawing diagrams or being very specific, because I do chemistry, I have to mm -hmm. learn chemistry. So when it comes to right. draw, drawing diagrams, you really can't miss the details. So I'm always very spe spe specific, very particular, I use different colors uh, so that everything is obvious what's different from what. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say the handwriting itself is that good, though, but again, I see guys with a lot worse handwriting, so I'll take what I can get. One thing I will say, Poch, I will never understand how how you see some people write amazing handwriting. It's usually the girls in school, they're writing with amazing handwriting. Like, I'm trying to study their methods. I, I look look over, I'm like, <laughs> <They're me> <laughs> what, what are they doing? Calligraphy, I mean, man. Like, it's a, it's a like, work of art. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So like, let's, oh no, the camera's gone, but they, they turn their paper 45 <laughs> degrees sideways. They do. And then they they have a different position. I don't know what it is. Like, yeah. It's, what? Like, they write try to do that with a slant. It's, like, it's kind of crazy. I don't know, chat, if you can give us some tips on how to improve our handwriting. Maybe we've been learning wrong. Who knows? Uh, maybe it's we're not supposed to write on a plane. It's supposed to be a little askew. Maybe, maybe guys aren't supposed to write in general. Maybe that's really You know what? You know what? Let's think okay. about it like this, Poch. When you write, mm -hmm. is your hand perfectly straight? Is your arm perfectly straight? No, it's at an angle coming from like like right here. Like you're writing like this. You have your elbow out. It's like uh -huh. it's like going in this. Like you're doing uh, one of those gym exercises. All right. Oh my God, too bad the camera is <laughs> not up. Pull, uh, like the pull exercise. You're not yeah. like you're not like putting your arm straight out in like yeah your wrist would yeah width. yeah it's an awkward angle. And just yeah, writing. I, so. I need to yeah. do. Let's talk about this when do we have the camera. But I'm okay talking about it right now as well. We'll demonstrate yeah, later. I feel like we gotta figure that out. We gotta improve our handwriting. It's it's I I can understand my handwriting, but I once uh, signed up for something and then the person that was reading my the, the attendance was like, This can't be your adult handwriting. I'm like, Yeah, it's mine, I'm sorry. It, you didn't even couldn't even read my name. Like, so That's really bad in that case. Okay. It, it, it well, was in my case, mm -hmm. people can still read my handwriting pretty well. That's I would good. say I've never had someone tell me, Oh, I can't read this. I've had classmates. I'm like, what does this say? Like, mm -hmm. could you tell me? No offense. <laughs> with with your handwriting, with, or you said that to your classmates? With other hand, people's handwritings, and sometimes, uh, like, I hear their stories, and they're, sometimes they're honest about it. They're like, honestly, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I was just writing <laughs> randomly. Really <laughs> I heard that before as well. Mm -hmm. That's kind of crazy. Risky, like, but you know what? Uh, you you know what people say? You have the doctor's handwriting. So you have a very distinct handwriting, right? Prescriptions that it's very, I mean, the people that are reading it in the pharmacy, uh, the pharmacy, they're like really good at deciphering what the doctors say. I have no idea how they do it. It must be just working with the doctors. There's no way they knew day one what it said on that prescription. No, they had to call in through the like, hey, are you Dr. Scholes? What does this say? <laughs> and what is Dr. Scholes like foot thing anyway about? How does this work? <laughs> I just know Dr. Pepper, man. Dr. Scholes. <laughs> Yo, at the shoe thing, right? Dr. Pepper. I, just, yeah, I don't think it's good. too heavy. Like all the doctors are coming in, like, hey, mm -hmm. I think we might need to fire Dr. Pepper. And then, <laughs> and then like the director of the hospital's like, what? Why? Dr. Pepper's a great hunter. And it's like, well, I, we just don't think assigning soda is that healthy of a, of a remedy to illness. <laughs> <laughs> From this day on, Dr. Pepper was fired, and in Dr. his Pepper. revenge, he created his company. Dr. Pepper. Ah, oh, the lore of Dr. Pepper. I knew it. It was him all along. And now I will make a play about it in my new mm -hmm. theater class. There you go. Oh, let's go. I can't wait to hear that play right. The, the Revenge of I'm Dr. Pepper. That. But that would be a cool idea. Like the lore of Dr. Pepper. Mm -hmm. Anyway, guys, let's get right mm -hmm. into the band picks here. Kuga going to start off with Anti-Korean Seer band. Very typical. I mean, it's always a surprise when we don't see Anti-Korean band because she leads to such detrimental results. We saw that two rounds ago when FT mm -hmm. was playing anti-Korean. And mind you guys, they play anti-Korean to absolute perfection. She knocked back the hunter away from the survivor, away from we wanted to kite, so that's tip number one. And mm -hmm. she even waited an extra bit 
even after, just to maximize the stun time, which is really nice. And only two sticks were enough to protect this here. Absolutely amazing. So, gotta ban out the Ukraine. Besides that, Aeroplanist, Mercenary, Psychologist, Acrobat. What can I say? These are all amazing survivors. Plus, they're just good at what they mm -hmm. do. I mean, it's hard to argue for anything better. You gotta pick something at the end of the day. So, you're yeah, gonna pick good survivors. Sure. So, no, nothing really specific, it looks like. Solid survivor lineup, and I think they also kind of covered their ground with the uh, barmaid being globally banned by picking up the psychologist. So I don't know. Kuga now is forced to go for a hunter he has not used in the global st in the in the big stage. He might go with okay the night watch. I actually thought he was gonna try and uh, force the dream witch match, but this was the hunter to get a four man elimination up against uh, Team GH and IVC, and it was also in uh, hospital. So he's kind of crazy with this uh, with this hunter, but in a global stage like this, where everyone is like neck and neck with each other, let's see how Kuga is gonna be at. Uh, in your opinion, Psyche, how is um, Nightwatch in a map like this? Uh, it was Red Church, right? It, yes. it can be a little bit, it can be a little bit funky sometimes because there are certain pouts like Graveyard where the Graveyard pouts, depending on which side you're approaching Graveyard from, if you're going deeper inside Graveyard, it can be a little bit scary when Nightwatch jumps over a pal and then you don't have really a pallet close by. Like, let's say you use that pallet on the, in front of the, let's say the rocket chair inside a Graveyard, you use that mm -hmm. one and he jumped over it, you don't really have another pallet close by, as opposed to if you swap sides and like you're heading towards the red carpet side of that same exact Palette. Then you have pals close by. It really depends on the area overall, I would say. And not just depends on the area, but sometimes the area itself depends on which side the hunter is on, or else the jump is either really good or not too good. Overall, I have to say the favor goes in for Nightwatch on this map just because while the wind may not be that good, there's a lot of pouts and a lot of windows where you jump over them literally one time, like Red Church windows or the shed windows. And he's already up to you. you just you were really relying on that one pallet, one window to really buy you all the time. So I'd say overall decent, but he has to keep in mind the wind is a little bit weak on Red Church. Doesn't really pull mm. that great. So he has to keep that in mind. Has to really rely on his dashes and his and his speed up. Maybe yeah. we'll even see a combination of speed up and win like we mm. saw before. Quite possibly, yeah, that could be the case because there are scenarios there where they could just hide behind the walls just so that the wind ability would not come into effect. We do see three flywheels, one tide turner, and everyone has borrowed time uh, on the personas of the survivors, but pretty standard uh, build here for the hunter. We got uh, Blink, Detention, and Trump card. So let's see, a lot of funky spots that Psyche did mention. Kuga just needs to kind of still sit on that lead and not provide any points to be garnered for Team HHDG. Well, HHDG kind of showed that their hand that they are capable of going toe to toe with the best of the best and they're gonna try to get back this one to the push for that game number three indeed so everyone running flywheel here in one's high turner this is going to be the benefit for kuga overall so i will be a commentator psyche along with potch and we're going to be going right into the first match of second round nice catch there psyche gonna jump over the window to start the <laughs> kite off not using the window he knows the power of stacking up abilities at my watch i'd say a wise choice overall and yeah, airplanist. gonna be going inside a church. Yeah, airplane is doing an amazing job, still kiting, using the window now. He has two abilities. You can use that speed up, trying to force the ability of the of the jetpack for EGG to work with, but he was able to make it behind this pallet. He's gonna try to get another ability. He's gonna jump through this and hopefully he'll be able to catch up. But EGG, I believe, all oh, drops down the pallet and Ooh. also gets hit in the process. So right here, this is the exact situation I was actually talking about. There's a certain point in Graver where if they jump over the pallet, you don't really have anything close by. Then they combine it with the win, and the two together will make a nasty combination. He had to use the jetpack there. Wow, but look at all these walls. The walls are now using to his advantage. The Just besides distance, now the hunter has to walk all the way around it. It was a, basically a better patient uh -oh. there, because patient would not have done that. Oh, no, 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 mm -hmm. no. I Was he not yeah. watching there? Was he not I watching where the hunter was going? I think Ooh. so, but he has a get out of jail free card, but he used the last of his jetpack. So a little unfortunate that the EGG took that route. Probably not seeing that Kugu was passing, not passing the red carpet area. Trying to, yeah, trying to bait out activity, I believe. See, he knows he has blink, but now he's going to use the wind force. Nice flywheel, but now he has the blink to work with. 
Well done, really well done. The only problem is that airplanes could have kind of been longer had he not just gotten cut off there, had he like circled the reception a right. little bit more. It's not like he has dashes, so he honestly could have just kept circling around and then followed up by going back into Graveyard if he really wanted to. But now it's going to be a little bit shorter than ideal kite, but still decent kite overall. But remember, guys, HHDG is in behind here. They need to they need to get something going here, and they really needed the airplanes to a little bit longer similar to similar to last game where we saw hhdg do real well but a couple mistakes here and there is going to be the difference maker Ooh, okay, can we get charge. the turn shock oh Ooh, goes no. for the charged up attack hits the mercenary but now the airplanist has these pallets to work with goes for the hit once again oh. while dropping down the pallet the last effort pops so mercenary is injured uh but yeah we still oh my gosh and he gets full presence as well farmed off a hit off egg you know, Egg just getting away from that area just so that they can pop that Cypher at the broken walled area. It's going to be a pretty big deal now because I don't assume people are going to... Wait, no, no, but they could absolutely rescue this. They just need everyone on the Cypher and they do not. They don't have someone on that 35% Cypher. So now it's going to be... Mm -hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Maybe it was psychologist. Yes, it's psychologist. They could absolutely go for this rescue here, Potch. And if, if, if Airplane has survived somehow, some way... <laughs> Mercer just needs to make it. He's good in, doing good uses of his elbow pads, not taking an early hit far from the chair. He needs to hold on to this hit as long as possible, though. I imagine he'll want to take a second hit to body block as well, not just take one hit right on the rescue. Can Hang he on. get the rescue uh -oh. here? He was Can able he get to get in. Now? Oh, wow. He no. was able to hit the mercenary. So this is huge. He needs to be able to provide a long enough kite. They're both able to hide behind that pallet. Egg needs to be very careful to last long here. While the mercenary eats the second hit. So the last cypher is whittling away. Can they continue on this support? It seems like Kuga really wants to down this airplane. But oh, can no. he get it in time? It's going to be close. But I think they oh. got it, Posh. The fly will is secure that the cypher is going to be primed for sure. Gonna give a really nice pop to everyone involved, including the mercenary, though he has to be careful. Hunter could have swapped there, but not gonna opt to do that. Now, the airplane is in a, such a good area. This is not a typically good area, I should say, but good against the wind. Look at these tall walls here, Potch. Gonna catch up here, barely. Mm -hmm. Gets the terror shot. Delay. It, is, it possibly is because the exit gates are opening left and right, and Kuga gonna chair the aeroplane is the sole target of the game. We barely saw the psychologist. I don't think we even saw the psychologist at all or the acrobat, but now we're still at 61 Wise. because the mercenary is well over done. here. Yeah, that was masterful play there. Mm -hmm. He probably could have gotten gate open because there was no chair in front of where the airplane is died. He had to go next to the big rock. But still, still playing it safe, better safe than sorry. I mean, plus it looks cool. Extra BM mm -hmm. jumping yeah. down through that dungeon. So overall, extra pod, stylish points. Yeah, exactly. Super stylish. That was really clean. That was a really clean game from HD, HHDG. Mm -hmm. And they're slowly mounting a comeback. It's It's been going good so far for them. Kuga not getting the continuation of the of the survivors that that they put up the, the fight that they put up earlier only mm -hmm. tying and then followed up by a loss means that hhdg will have to continue on their survivor side gaining the points and as we saw earlier that is that that is ft's plan as well and that mm -hmm. is exactly what's been going on oh sorry i had it flipped around in my head no yeah yeah i had it right no no i yeah, had it right did, has to Keep, up, keep it up, but unfortunately fell behind a little bit. And now they're slowly catching up to FT. And HHDG yeah. doing really well on their survivor side, but so is FT. FT is also doing really well on their survivor side. So we will see here they're dependent on their survivor side exactly. That is what we heard in the interview, at least. Mm -hmm. So HHDG is not out of the woods yet, because if by some chance FT could duplicate that same type of performance and continue on the streak of the five-point game, that's going to be curtains for them because they'll be able to get a 2-0 winning this round one and round two. But if they're able to tie things out, if they get a tie, if three survivors and below, we're still going to see that best of three. It seems like the battle of the survivors in this matchup. So, so here we see the match data. Zero uh, containment time on D-King. Uh, D-King was able to just decode and also uh, heal up. And everyone actually won per sound. So, so it's, uh, that was like the, the one when he teleported. But... Really, the main stars of this? Kited. Yeah. 21 second kite for Agrabad. That's my random right there. That's my average nah. The difference is they did not get dungeon. <laughs> they died. <laughs> True. So it seems like, yeah, uh, the airplaneist and the mercenary were definitely the MVPs of this game. Really good at making sure that the hunter just kited the airplaneist. Good routes that they took. 
And this is what you're talking about, Psyche, with the uh, the funky routes that you take, the walls not working in the favor of the uh, of Kuga's wind force, and the dashes also. It seemed like he had more he had more utilization of the speed up and the jump over pallets than he did any other skill that uh, Nightwatch did have. Yeah, that's gonna be the most important thing on a map like this. When you don't have the ability to do well with your wind, you're just gonna rely more on the jumps. The problem with Nightwatch is mastering Nightwatch is all about using the abilities in combination. Very often, like a novice Nightwatch, for example, that we'd see maybe in rank or somewhere like that. The average Nightwatch that I would see would approach church just like just like Kuga did there. See that airplane is vaults the church window. The difference is that Nightwatch would waste his jump even though it doesn't provide anything. Like, yeah, it's sped it up, but it's not gonna be enough for a hit. The, like, the survivor's still gonna be able to have tons of distance and he really needs to be saving those speeds up, speed ups, mm -hmm. in combination with each other. So let's say you use one speed up and you need a second one. Well, then you'd really wish you didn't waste someone at church when yeah. you just walk in normally when you weren't mm -hmm. going to get a hit regardless. By the way, what did we just see there for the wing those... position? I didn't quite catch that. So if, if it's a four man escape, FT win. That's the Ooh. only thing that's important. Any other condition, we continue on to best of three. So HHDG doing really well here making it near impossible for FT to really win in two rounds. But I mean, they've gotten a four escape against freaking Opera Singer. So mm -hmm. if they can do it against something that's not Opera Singer, I wouldn't be surprised. Church is also more generous with dungeon spots being closer to the map uh, overall than something like Ever right. Sleeping. It's a little bit more awkward trying to traverse that map. Though, Retro's kind of has the same problem. Trying to cross one half of the map to the other half if, if the dungeon is not on your side can be an absolute nightmare. So that's something mm -hmm. to remember. Speaking something of which, Pod. Yeah, you're saying? I was just going to mention a random factor about dungeons. If you have something to say about the game, I think I'd rather hear that. Okay, put, put the pit on your, your fun fact because uh, we could actually talk about the potential picks here because what we know about TZYM is that after Opera Singer, he uses like a round two and a, kind of a checkmate gamekeeper. So how's gamekeeper in a map like Red Church? He's all right. He's all right. Uh, kind of the same problem as Nihilus, but just to a bigger extent, because now if the hook doesn't work, you don't really have much to rely on. The problem with the trap is that you can drop it, but it, it has a very similar problem to Peeper where Usually the survivor won't be able to run away in time, but they'll at least be able to hear it. They'll be able to come, like think about their route next, where not to go pretty much. So the trap very rarely gets value. If anything, all it does is prevent something. It doesn't itself gain value. Uh, it's very difficult to do that. On the other hand, if you put a trap ahead of time in places like the church entrances or the church windows, that is what helps you out in the future. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like an investment. You're investing time into something like that. And that way you're hoping the survivors themselves has to invest time destroying it, or mm -hmm. they could choose to ignore it and just not waste time decoding. It really depends. Also, there's the issue of flywheel, flywheel in the trap. The flywheel right. may not be good against the hook anymore. You could mm -hmm. just flywheel the trap and that'll also do the exact same thing, unfortunately. Hmm. That's, uh, that's a good way of breaking it down now that I think about it. Um... It's, it's gonna be yeah, if you if you mm -hmm. use your hook and there's tons of walls in the way you're never gonna get a good hook I think with gamekeepers mobility that a lot of that problem has been solved because you could hook to the side of the wall And mm -hmm. then you kind of have them in awkward spot where do Chain I vault? It, yeah. like, what do I do? Um, and so that then you can do that But before in the past the animation was too slow to do that You just run out of range in the hook, but now it's a little bit different still though places like graveyard places like the tall broken walls brick walls they can be mm -hmm. tough but Sorry to cut you off, Podge. Go ahead. No, it's uh, it's all good because now that uh, you did mention that, that is something that uh, FT can kind of account for. So let's see how they're going to come up with a solution here because FT, if they're able to get the victory here, that would be great. But, you know, you want to be able to cover your grounds before anything else happens and possibly end it as soon as you can. So we're just going to have to wait and see. It seems like the Seer and Antiquarian are going to be banned out. Uh, Psyche, please continue on with this picks and bounds. <laughs> gotcha, no problem, Paz. So if they're worried about the gamekeeper, they'll pick good gamekeeper survivors. We'll never gonna we're never gonna see a gamekeeper ban here. I mean, unless they're super confident they can do well against this opera. They didn't think so. So they do a go ahead and ban the opera singer. Seer Antiquarian though are always gonna be good bans to do. It's hard to argue not to ban these survivors. So we're gonna see most likely support characters from FT side 
knowing that they are more of a supporting team. They got like stuff like forward. They got these other supporters that they can play. The Wilding and Acrobat are perma banned. There's still so many good survivors. I mean, you could go patient here to just have good kiting. There's also other stuff on the table here. Like, let's think about it. They could really go forward if they want. There's also the Entomologist. That's a pretty good one that I did not think of. So nice pickup from there. Also one of the best survivors against Gamekeeper. Though it may not seem on paper, because think about it like this. If you don't leave the bees in time, the hook actually does go through the bees and it hits to attach to you. But if you leave the bees and the bees are on your back and you leave the bees in time, the hook actually attaches to the bees and it kind of wastes itself on the bees. One thing I don't know ever since Gamekeeper's buff clutch is mm -hmm. when you latch onto the bees with your hook, do you pull yourself to the bees or is it just kind of like damage, like a survivor is being pulled to you? Because they I... did that with Flywheel where you're pulled to the flywheel uh, uh -huh. and with the illusion. But mm -hmm. what about the bees? I'm pretty sure the bees is the exact same way, so Insomnus will still do really well. Yeah, I think... I, I don't know if we I'm saw this. I'm pretty sure that that's the way get... bees work. Uh, we'll just have to find out because I do recall that I think a matchup like this happened. I think Dongshan used Gamekeeper and he actually pulled someone out of the bees, if I remember correctly. Well, that's he didn't get out of the bees in time. Or I'm pretty sure if you click to get out of the bees, you have to also get out of the bees a little bit more than mm -hmm. just click the button to get out, if you know what I'm saying. You can't just click it to get out because if you guys know, there's a brief moment where as a hunter, you can actually hit the bees because the game, you can swing at the bees, but if the entomology is inside, then you hit the damage on the small because the game prioritizes survivors over bees. Mm -hmm. That is the way it works. So yeah, so you gotta maybe. Yeah, if you drop the bees in time, then possibly it would negate the hook. But we just have to wait and see and see how Yush, if Yush is gonna use it. But this seems like a wow. Actually, this is kind of scary. You got a novelist, coordinator, and entomologist. So TZYM is going to have a pretty interesting job here at the Red Church. There's a lot of synergy for the survivors, a lot of stun potential. So I wonder what kind of traits that he'll be bringing to the table. Or if he'll just go with a kind of a passive route and just kind of defend and just rely on endgame detention. Indeed, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have to depend here. I say usually the detention is the route here. There's a lot of times with Gamekeeper, if you choose to get Gamekeeper, not necessarily Gamekeeper, but the detention is just so good because if you ever chair someone late game, you don't want to give them the option to rescue off of your chair. So and that's important to have, but then it kind of kind of takes away some points in other areas of the Persona web. Still though, Shadow going in with the corner here. It's a little bit scary going against the corner because the thing about corner is that while she's not really the best player in the game, she is so annoying if she rescues because then mm -hmm. that person who got rescues, they get a free rebound. That's mm -hmm. why I still say sometimes to the day, to overall, I give Mercenary the overall better rescue. But I mm -hmm. still say coordinator is probably the best rescue because if you know how to use your gun, if you know when to shoot your gun, it is impossible to stop a coordinator from rescuing. It's just like Mercenary. The only difference is with Mercenary versus Court is that if you have to shoot your gun early to make it to the chair, well, then now you don't get the rebound potential and you're effectively just a worse Mercenary who would have still had more elbow pass to follow up with. And we do see the Gamekeeper here, Poch. Mm -hmm. But the thing about coordinator is that against a particularly Gamekeeper, if you get shot and stunned in some way, then trying to hook onto the survivor afterwards is going to be really difficult. Thankfully, though, Gamekeeper's buff of uh, pulling himself to walls might negate some of that problem so that the second hook will be in match, but we're going to have to see that. For now, True. see Gamekeeper going in. Yeah, yesterday we were actually talking about what do you think the best item in the game is? Eli said the coordinator flare gun. Nell said the syringe. Where do you go with? Syringe, really? <laughs> I mean, it was a troll answer, but do you agree with Eli though? With the, <laughs> I like how what was his response? It was the flare gun. Flare gun. I don't. I really don't think so. I'm sorry, oh, Eli. What is it? The problem with the flare gun is that it's only good on coordinator because with lucky guy and every other survivor, when you buy it into the air or pull it from a chest, God forbid, mm -hmm. it's it's God. it's way shorter. <laughs> It's way so, shorter. You guys have to remember, Cornier gets a 30% buff to stunning yeah. with the gun. That's a big deal. Uh, and with the flare gun, it's area dependent. It's survivor dependent. That Cornier is the one using it. You only it's get one, one of it. Too. Yeah. I would have to give the versatility to Mercenary Elbow Pass because it works so well with every survivor, mm. no matter which survivor you are. Um, Especially if you're Toy Merchant, it is so nice. Maybe with Toy Merchant, Black Watch might be better for overall mm -hmm. 20 second kites. But if you have a route in mind, 
elbow pads will guarantee you that route. If you have an area that is not good against a certain hunter, you elbow pad to the good area where the flare gun may not necessarily buy you that time, especially if they have stun resistance, which is another mm. counter to flare gun. Or excitement on top of that, which we see right here. Interesting pick. Excitement. Oh, okay, good transition there, Psyche. So uh, let us know also what you think the best item in the game is. Is it the flare gun? Is it the mercenary elbow pads? Let us elbow know pad, in the chat. 100%. Elbow pads. Oh, <laughs> that sorry. Is the correct you're asking <laughs> no, I'm mean, asking the chat because we're about to get ready for this next game once again. Psyche and Pod Spice at your service for the second half of round number two. TZYM wants to be able to at least tie out this game to get the round win. Indeed. So right away, we see the gamekeeper here using his hook for mobility, knowing that he's anyway not going to be using it for the first few seconds of the match. And right here, I have to check who this is. Wow, does that really block the entire graveyard? I think it does. But mm -hmm. Entomology is one of the harder chases for for a great gamekeeper here. The only thing here is that the gamekeeper is kind of able to cut off the entomologist here, thankfully, mm -hmm. because she had to go around to avoid the hook, but that means he could just break it and get it in her way again. Right here, being really careful. He, she has to be super Yo. careful here. Oh no, the hook hit the pumpkin. So, oh, and then she just vaulted on the other side. I don't, Potch, I don't think she re, he, uh, he, uh, she realized that Gamekeeper already used both his hooksters. So there's no way he could like hook her to the True. side. So she didn't have to vault so early. Yeah, so just trying to oh. cover his ground. Shadows doing a great job just containing this Gamekeeper at this area. Forcing him to go through the bees. That's going to buy him actually a time to uh, rotate left. But let's see. So nice good. avoidance here. Left and right we go. Shadow also negating another hook. So that's another timeout on the hooks here. He's going to try to go for the bee hit. But still, uh, this, he's containing the hunter quite well here, Psyche. This is, this is going to be a little bit hard here. I mean, they need a four man to win in two rounds. Granted, they are pretty high ahead, but this is a really good start. I mean, the kite is almost Yo. guaranteed here. Oh, with the pallet stun. Oh no, and he's kind of trapped in here. He has to break it. The worst is when you get stunned and you have to break it because mm -hmm. otherwise you would just go around, but it's not even worth it. So my goodness, Posh, this is looking way better than a three star She hasn't even taken her first hit yet. And he has excitement. So oh he doesn't even God. have any bling. That's tough. I mean, and drops the bees things. here just for him to transition away. Shadow doing an amazing job. Gets another oh pallet slam. And it's an all you can eat pallet Ideas slam. And Shadow is serving. Mm -hmm. I have never seen a pallet slam like that. I've seen hunters like look backwards when they get pallet slam in the wrong direction, but I've never seen a sideways uh -oh. pallet slam. That's a new one for me, Posh. But anyway. Oh, mini we blue. got a new chase chair. Oh. Yeah, so it is Getting mini blue. Unfortunately uh, for him, this is the target he could possibly get, but she does stay longer in the rocket chair. She definitely has a flare gun to work with, but he has the counter to that flare gun. So let's see how long mini blue would last. TZYM, though, needs to make haste and make up for lost times here. Trying to try to go through the window, able to get it. Drops down a trap here, so mm. mini blue can't go through this area again. Dude, Gamekeeper, don't get me wrong, Gamekeeper's buff helped him a lot, but you guys saw right there, TZYM tried to use the first hook to get the second hook hit, and she still vaulted it in time, which is absolutely crazy that the hook is still too short, getting the hit there through the pallet. But, guys, she's purposely holding onto this gun, probably mm. realizing that otherwise a blink would have came up by now. Maybe yeah. he realizes that a blink wouldn't help, though, and so mm -hmm. he's rather saving it for Trunker. I think, yeah, that would be a smart play. Let's say he does have blink, he wouldn't want to use it anyway because he's too far behind. It wouldn't gain him anything. He wouldn't get a tie out of it. It'd be the exact same situation. So they're still not exactly sure because... But they, they could be taking guesses here at the end. Yeah, of the day, I think guess. I think with a, a with how uh, the entomologist kited, maybe they have an idea. But it seems like now they might uh, go for the flare gun late game. And now we see that the first officer pocket watch did expire. Waiting for the chair hit, able to get it. Adi now trying to body block. He's going to use it. No, he's actually going to save it and not go for the excitement and continue I'm on the chase. A little, yeah, I'm a little bit surprised by that, that she used it that early. Why not wait for the pop? Let's see her build. Nope, they all have borrowed time. So I'm a little bit confused by that. Especially because Gamekeeper recovers 20% faster from flare guns. That itself doesn't get you that much oh. business. I suppose. Nice elbow pad there, by the way. Can I just say <laughs> shout out to item. elbow pad? <laughs> Got her to this area, which I'm not sure flare gun would have done the same thing because otherwise mm. he'd probably fall up with like a second hook or something like that in the, while she's traveling in the open. Elbow pad completely skipped that palm. Although I'm not going to lie, I think elbow, elbow Corey would still get there mm. as well. But guys unfortunately they did decide to have first officer rescue i feel like there were a couple things that could have been done differently here uh like don't get me wrong great three escape from ft here potch but 
I feel like we could have saved the tide turner. I feel like we could have saved the gun. I feel like we could have saved some of this for a late game and potentially go for a three man if they really want to, since anyway, that was going to be looking mm -hmm. like a like a pretty easy rescue there. Not much game people can honestly do in that situation mm -hmm. um, to stop a rescue besides get so, a terror shock. So, like yeah, go ahead. To me. Um, I want to ask, like, there was a moment there the flare gun was used, but it seemed like the gamekeeper didn't want to use excitement in the process. Uh, would you have wanted him to use the excitement? Because he hasn't used this trait at all in this entire game. It wouldn't be worth it because you guys saw perfectly right there. The stars were purposely waiting to see the excitements immediately after uh, mm -hmm. so that they don't want to pop right away. So it was a really important move there from the survivors to be like, hold up, hold up. Let's see if he does anything. It's, he, he honestly didn't have a choice there, Posh. The only reason he would pop exam is if they pop early. So he's waiting to see what they do. They already read him like a book. They already are mm -hmm. like waiting for the excitement. So if he excitement at that point, that wouldn't really do a whole lot. So I suppose they were trying to shoot the gun just to guarantee that they're not going to like get double hit by a hook. But mm -hmm. I feel like there's so many places to... Mm, well, maybe not. Maybe not. Because a lot of the resources were drained already at like the back gate area. And also back gate itself is a little bit scary against Gamefear because you could actually hook through those gated windows with the bars. So. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like yeah. the only difference I would make is maybe, maybe run to like a... I don't know. Maybe run to closer to a kiting area, a better kiting area before shooting so early. Since you got the mm -hmm. time, you may as well anyway use it. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. Still really solid kite from the corner. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, mostly the entomologist did the kite. Still, um, yeah. Just solid from the team. Yeah. yeah. Can I just say also that uh, this is actually a survivor showcase with how well it's, they're performing. So it just seems like um, the, the lowest the survivor has gotten was a tie, and that was Kuga. But everything else were wins off the board ft getting a three-man escape up against hhdg so hhdg still has to answer that five point deficit that they uh received in round number one but psyche you get what you want we're gonna see a best of three series up against ft versus hhdg and based on how these games are going it's quite survivor sided and it's quite close uh when it comes to their survivor lineup so hopefully the hunters will get some wins come best of three Indeed, and I can't wait to see this round three because we've seen very few round threes. Uh, at most, we would see we would see like interesting stuff in round two, but it's kind of hard to see the the more traditional like support and kiting of round three that is showcased because we always see just the hunters go to round two or the survivors go to round two and then they just win straight up there. So now we're gonna see the really good hunters band. A lot of the good hunters band two is a pretty big number of hunter bands and also a lot of the good survivors bands so not necessarily having the op things of the overpowered stuff of the antiquarian or the right. mercenary and maybe even the first option depending on which order they picked in uh mm. so we'll have to see hunter has their own four bands as well to add on to that yo Posh, it's crazy to me that just mm -hmm. a few years ago the hunter the hunter i believe only had two bands and they had to do it at the start of the round and they would no one would get any more bands than that can you believe that right that was crazy, that was crazy. oh my gosh yeah you're right and that was when survivors would just run the same oh it's at the, the, the same comp all throughout so you gotta love the global band system too because definitely evens out the games i think it was was it co-op four ish i mean there were also some hunters that were kind of crazy there was the air of the wheel that was crazy. But once you get to the later rounds, it's just it, it becomes very survivor sided because you don't get that much bands. Absolutely. So it's really nice to see as the game progressed, as we added more and more survivors in the game, it's really nice to see that the devs in response saw that there were being so many survivors that if you just keep having only two bands, eventually they like bump, bumped it up to three bands. But then it never really solved the problem because they'd always just, the stars always had more survivors in store ready to mm -hmm. use. So they're like, okay, well, first of all, let's make it a little bit harder for survivors to not just pick all the good survivors at the same time, willingly and knowingly what comp they're going to have in combination with each other for sure. Because if you mm -hmm. just ban right away, you're not really certain what, what, kind of, what kind of team composition. Sorry, if you ban right away, the survivors will always know what survivors they're going to be able to use. But if you go in rounds, and rounds of like survivor bands one by one by one they're going to mm -hmm. be like okay well if we make it too obvious we're just going to ban out our survivor that we want to pick so it's really nice to see the versatility of everything we use but anyway guys we're, we'll, we will now go into the highlights <laughs> Hey, 
And here we have another fan cheer here. Gotta love the HHDG merch. Even though they're, oh, this is, yeah, this is HHDG, HHDG Koa and TZYM as well. Fan cheer is going all throughout. Again, you use the hashtag Koa7 support and use the hashtag of your favorite team to be able to get the, uh, get them featured here. Indeed. And right here we have a image. It can be even as simple as an image right here showing support for HHDG from the last time they had their interview. I believe this was two days ago. I'm not exactly certain anymore. I don't know. I'm trying to remember based off the day host's four. dress. What were oh. they wearing that day? <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah HHDG is going to wear right the same there. outfit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, not not like not like us over here wearing the same outfit literally ten days in a row. <laughs> right? Yeah, same. No, we're switching up a little bit, you know, just a little mm -hmm. bit. But yeah, if you guys would like to show your support, your work, mm -hmm. you can do that on X using hashtag callbiz seven support mm -hmm. along with the team you want to win with hashtag this team win, and you could get yourself ten essences. Yes. And yeah, all that good stuff. Get yourself a skin. I know how much you guys love your skins. Get you know, I, I wasn't able to see chat because I definitely love that topic of what do you think the the most useful item is. And now they kind of break it down like that. I'd really love to get if Eli could chat us as well. I know you're listening, Eli, uh, on a counter or a rebuttal for we're having a debate either if it's coordinator's flare gun, that's the best item or elbow pads. Is coordinator's flare gun at least a second place psyche or it's or is there a second place spot? I still don't, I rarely pick up, for example, when I'm playing Lucky Guy, I, it's one of the last items I pick up. If it's, if last I'm picking up a flare gun, uh -huh. because it really depends on the situation. That's why I don't like the flare gun because it's situational. Every once in mm -hmm. a while it's, it's good, but okay. it really depends. Okay. Like, am I rescuing? And if I'm rescuing, that doesn't really mean I might want a flare gun that I might just want a different item while I'm waiting at okay. the chest tube because if I don't care about the person rebounding, if we're not going to have enough ciphers, there's no point of getting a gun to help them. I'm only going to get a gun when it actually matters for saving another person's life. The other mm -hmm. situation is maybe I'm up against a hunter that exactly flare gun is better than mercenary level pad. But in that case, usually then options like magician wand are going to be better. Or maybe even like the elusive <laughs> explorer book if, if it's like a map like Leo's memory. It mm -hmm. really just depends. But flare gun is really situational is the issue. Uh, okay. Especially with, with so, um, increased stun resistance, which is really obnoxious. Tell me which is your second then best item in the game. If, if it's not the flare gun, because you've made a lot of good points there. And I hope Eli's listening because I definitely going to he's going to come in later and commentate. And then he's going to say his points unless he gives it to us now. So you guys can have like a, a discussion on it. But what would you be the second item for you to be like the best item? So it's that elbow one. pads. And then the, what's the second one? That one, I'm not too sure about. I have to think about that one. After this, after the first one, it really depends on the hunter. I'm not always going to... Mm. Usually, I pick Perfume for Kiting because it, it is so nice for literally every survivor, but particularly Lucky Guy, which is what I'm really thinking of. But if I had to say overall the best, the best item, I don't know if I'd say the Perfume because the Perfume really depends as well. You need to be full health. I think a better option here would be to say would be to say, I would used to say forward football would be second, but ever since oh, yeah. Brooklyn Windows and Pala Boost don't actually affect your speed anymore, mm -hmm. I'd probably say for Officer's Watch is just going to be overall a little bit better. 23 seconds of kiting and just essentially walking a straight line is going to be better than half a football and then you getting stunned after the football runs, which is, that is the biggest downside of football. After that though, Podge, it's really a toss up between board gun and perfume and, okay. and uh, what's it called? What's the last one? And Syringe. football. Mm -hmm. No, no, syringe, not syringe. Because if you ever, if you ever, <laughs> if you ever get a syringe, you just rather get a robot. It does the same exact thing, but for better. Uh, you get more out of it. So, syringe is syringe is always going to be worse than mechanic dulcum. <laughs> if syringe is the best item, the mechanic dulcum. Those are fighting be words, unpopular. says Nell. I'm kidding. <laughs> it's like, because you always get it in the most inopportune moments. When you're hit, you get a perfume bottle. When you're not hit full health, you get a syringe. So it's like, what the heck? So it's just the it, yeah. it's just how it is but totally agree with you in terms of now that you broke down how elbow pads is very it, it's it's not even situational it, everyone can kind of benefit from it especially like transitioning um and we have seen it well i'm guessing also if we talk about high level cord gun is very situational and also very susceptible to being yeah. sidestepped or like kind of being juked uh, for uh, uh, it hitting something Exactly. So you, you really have to force the gun as opposed to Mercy Elbow Pad. 
I mean, if you're starting out with mercenary or elf pads in general, you, you're probably also going to have to force it. You might mm -hmm. also want to have to be like, okay, I want a flat wall. I want an open area. I don't want to be elf padding in an area full of walls because I'm going to have it go out of control. But with someone like me who's been playing mercenary for a lot of years, elf pads go so smoothly that I just use it whenever I need it. And I already... The thing is, you have to already have a plan in mind. Okay, where do I want to take this elf pad? It's wherever that you would have kited anyway. Like anywhere that's good against that hunter you want to kite and can't the elf pad reach it, then chances are you're going to go for it. As opposed to coordinator flare gun, you really have to force it. You really have to force it because if you plan to use it, you need to go to an open area. Because if you shoot in an area full of walls, you run that risk of the court of the hunter constantly going behind in and out and then hitting you with an ability behind the wall as well that's also really obnoxious that's another reason why i don't like the gun uh which i didn't bring up just in terms of hiding it's so annoying because it's, it's there's so many <laughs> i mean come, come on as a survivor you're always going to be using pallets and windows what does that mean they're always going to be blocking your way blocking you and the hunter meaning that the hunter can have you but mm -hmm. you're not you're not always going to be able to and very rarely will you be able to team up there in fact i've had times i try to shoot over I'd never do this, but I tested in like, let's say, what's it called in like single training. I want to see like, I want to see how often can I shoot over a window with a gun. And mm -hmm. I did not get consistent results, even in a straight line, which is really, mm -hmm. really scary. In fact, you get better results shooting over a bench on hospital than those short bench. Ooh. That one always works <laughs> Because it's low, it's low terrain. Uh -huh. So stuff like while and pick and jump over it. Ripper uh -huh. flies right over it without having to be close to it. Flare gun mm -hmm. bullet doesn't get blocked by it. Yeah. It's just shout out situation. Shout outs to Two Bros Kisser says elbow pad really is better. A lot of people are agreeing with your sentiment, Psyche, so you are definitely onto something. Uh, Mickey says, I think second item or best item would be a football perfume. You did agree, maybe that could be possible depending on the scenario. Uh, yeah, so it seems like all nine sentiments, they do love the M the elbow pads. What's up, by the way, Miki? Thanks for coming. Thanks for joining. It's 2 a.m. for you. <laughs> oh, my. All right, cool. Thank you so much you for everyone joining us. Time. Yeah, I see uh, Alice Yamada says remote control is okay. Yeah, I think that's when we were talking about between remote control and syringe. You want to get a remote control so you add Which, another body. I, I despise when lucky guys get remote controls because even Mechanic herself, who gets increased durability from it, the, like reduced her, like, it drains slower is what I'm trying to yeah. say when mechanic uh -huh. uses it. It still goes down so fast. So with lucky guy, if if mechanic can't do a cipher with half her robot, or what she more? could, but mm -hmm. yeah, then what about lucky guy? Lucky guy, you don't even get the increased decode anymore. Like you used to, that used to be 25% faster decode by the way, which is absolutely wow. insane. Then they reduced it to 10 and now it's zero, which is which is like, why? Why? What's the point of the robot anymore? I'm like, okay, well, at least make it durable. At least make it like maybe take two hits in its Ooh, current state maybe maybe make it so that so that um instead of like instead of like losing 50 percent of your robot you only lose 25 because right now you lose it so fast you, you lose it so fast from decoding and it's so easy to die that if a robot dies even one time after that the mechanic you don't even watch the mechanic anymore because the robot will go down so fast it's not even going to get more than 75 percent of the cyber done assuming you use it a little bit right yeah Hence why we don't see Mechanic anymore in this line. It's kind of weird. I think it was two years ago. That's when Mechanic started not being viable for tournament. But I remember in three and, and four, like- And then they further nerfed her. Yeah, they did. And then they, they further nerfed her. They, <laughs> they removed the decode buff of the drop up from, 20, from 10 to zero. Like, really? Really? Was that really necessary? And you think Faster Bot is going to fix Mechanic's problems. What the? Why would I pick a kiter at that? Why would I pick kiting Mechanic? I'd just pick an actual kiter at that point. That's well, not why I'm picking Mechanic. I mean, I guess uh, Mechanic had her time as one of the best decoders in the game, but, you know, it's leaving room for all these new survivors. Speaking of new survivors, we're going to see a journalist come out on the FT lineup along with a patient because this is Moonlit River Park. They still were able to pick up their Antiquarian, which did so much damage in the first round. And now they're going to pick up also the Mercenary for their Stable Rescuer. Absolutely. Back to back to the on topic thing. You know a good survivor? <laughs> what is a good survivor? I'll give you one. Mercenary, Antiquarian, Patient. These are all great survivors. And anyway, even before Mechanics of Nerf, I never really was like a big fan of always being Mechanic because the problem with her is that as you guys see right here, how this relates to right now, I prefer general kiters. If you can kite three ciphers, 
That's better than having a, survi a survivor who had to hide and be safe, and now you're actually getting reduced decode out of the decoder because they have to sacrifice something. They don't just get it for free. They had to sacrifice and hide and make sure they don't get found. So I love that you got these survivors who can play a bit more dangerously. They still want to transition, of course, but they're not also like trying to avoid the hunter's gaze because if the hunter sees them, I mean, they're still in the great survivors. The only one here is like journalists, which I'm very interested why they pick journalists here. We might see a hunter who kind of struggles with journalists. Uh, which I'd be very interested in. Which, I mean, you, whoa, what Whoa, the? whoa, whoa, hold up. Hang on. What the? Wait, we're, 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 I did not expect we we're gonna see a Wu Chang come out, but this is HHDG once again, folks. He, they have not seen the game number three and they're gonna bring a Wu Chang in this matchup up against this lineup. It's like you have a moment to gather. I mean, you had a moment to gather your thoughts. Tell me what you think of what we're about to witness here. This is a big surprise. I don't think anyone could have seen this coming because this is the first time HHDG had their hunter go in third round. So at up until this point, it's like, yeah, yep, that's pretty normal. That's pretty normal. And then like, what the? They're like, what was but, that? Yo, pe people what in the chat though know that TZYM does bring out Wu Cheng, so we're Never in for mind. a treat here. So. I'm excited to see how this one's going to play out. I mean, I'm as excited as you are because uh, HHDG, I wasn't able to unfortunately catch most of their qualifier matches. So maybe they're accustomed to this and hopefully Team FT would be ready. But on paper, you rarely see Wu Chang. Yeah, I, I think it's going to falter, honestly, Posh. Like, as much as I want to be positive here, that there's a reason we don't see Wu Chang. It's just too easy to communicate against and he doesn't really have a great synergy of his items. Like, you got the bell when you throw out the umbrella, but the problem is, if you grab the umbrella, you just have the animation time stopping you, so it's really mm. awkward. But here we no. go, we got the spawns here. Yeah. Oh, interesting, we don't see yeah. a bridge spawn, so... Just aware, just knowing, they do know who the hunter is when you pick these spawns, so they don't want to pick an area that's like really bad against switching to get teleported on, and that's another problem with Uche. You could just pick areas, if you know who the hunter is, you could just pick areas that are gonna do well which i wonder well, how come in rank we don't get to know who the hunter is if, if they if we if, if we got to qualify they, for call of the abyss so <laughs> yeah like i don't get it but anyway yeah let's I'm say excited let's to see. didn't know they go like Sorry, go. But go ahead. yeah i'm excited too <laughs> yeah uh, i'm excited as well we're gonna see insolence detention and blink build on the side of tzym chat you guys asked for it you got the wu chang but ft you know what they have been on a hot streak they've been able to get a, uh, a four man escape a three man escape and they're hoping to continue that streak but tzym pulling out uh, a very surprised pick in our book here with the wu chang once again psyche and potch spice your commentators for this round three first half Indeed, and we're gonna see the Wu Ching just scare the survivors. He knows people are watching him, so he's gonna keep holding their umbrella to you have their teammates kind of working against communication now, against voice chat. Them telling each other that, oh no, he's only the umbrella, he's only the umbrella, get off, get off, and now they have to just play it safe. What a mm -hmm. nicely played um, umbrella here. It's gonna force him to have to choose. Is he gonna hook? But look at that. He's not gonna fall for it. Because why would you? The animation time with the umbrella, it really hurts you so that the survivor can just sit there and wait. But now, mm -hmm. this is a much better angle because now he corners the survivor as opposed to having the umbrella on his back. Uh, so well done from the patient there. Also, knowing he doesn't have his umbrella, it's on cooldown. Uh, it's on a five second cooldown. So there's gonna be more than enough time to reach the pallet now. And now it's gonna be a little bit too late. Mm -hmm. Even dropping the pallet on himself, which is going to waste the pallet boost, in my opinion. But I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, the <laughs> hell pallet here. here. Yeah, mm -hmm. mini blue just you know, gathering that distance. We do see TZYM is going for the blink hit. And uh, what's hard is that usually you want to blink down, but he's still able to at least unlock his soul siphon. So let's see if he's able to get the... Not going to block the hook. Mm -hmm. That's what you. That's what he was trying to do there, Posh. He was trying to block the hook there so that he gets stuck on his body. But a really nice bell is going to make sure he goes down here. If he does not fly, wheel. yep, he didn't have fly. Wheel. He had broken windows already. We saw that. I'm not a big fan of dropping pallets on yourself here, Posh, because it, it's just a waste of your boost. Because let's say he does break a pallet. Well, then you could have used that to now leave the area that you are now trapped at. Instead, he was left with no option. He would have had to use an item. There was no point, really. Like, it just makes no sense because I've tested this. It is, it is sl actually slower to drop mm -hmm. and then vault. You get less distance than if you just like walk straight. I okay. suppose if you drop the pallet, then, then Possibly... yeah, my like, master mercenary doing a good rescue here. Good enough. Just don't get double hit. Uh -oh, okay, mercenary. I would use a double pad there. <laughs> but, <all right. laughs> so Fair enough. He's he, able he to use it the... anyway, so he just played a risky. 
He did. Mini Blue has one last hook to work with. He's going to need to use it to transition, but he actually baits out a hit. So let's see. He's going to try to block it from happening. He's uh -oh. able to block it, Psyche. So this is a huge yeah. umbrella hit. So that's unfortunate because the patient's rebound ability has dropped down significantly. Uh, wow. TZYM doing the work with the Wu Chang. They do have a couple cyphers done, but uh, with the Wuching constantly holding his umbrella, it's indirect cipher pressure because they're scared to keep doing the cipher. Right now, mm -hmm. though, he's not going to do it. Right now, he's going to solve Keep in mind, guys, this is before Wuching's buff, I'm pretty sure. So he doesn't have all his normal buffs of like faster mm -hmm. animation time for the Soul Seven at full presence. Uh, and mm -hmm. I'm sure there's another buff that I'm forgetting. Oh yeah, faster vault speed for black form. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Oh, Yo. oh wait, not oh. a single one connected? Not a that's single insane. one did connect, so that's a little unfortunate. We're going to see the mind games with the Soul Scythe, and he's going to have to change windows here. He goes through the window, but the Terror Shock connects. And now FT put in a really tough spot here because now they kind of... Was that I resided to all, at least a tie because you still have end game detention to worry about. Also, Mercenary is at a half health. He does have an elbow pad here, so he'll be safe from one teleport. But it's really scary having half health people against switching because one surprise umbrella will be a free knockdown for him. So mm -hmm. right here, never breaking a pallet is going to come back to bite him. And yeah, he's going to break it right now. I almost feel like he may as well have just waited for the blink and done the exact same thing because now she's going to mm -hmm. get a lot of this. He must be saving it for another chase because he doesn't take any Shadow. Gonna get rid of, yeah, just gonna move right away towards the the window part of this map. But yeah, just forcing Wu Chang to change elevations here. Waiting for um, Shadow to be able to touch a Cypher or he's gonna drop down his umbrella. It seems like uh, Shadow is gonna contain as much as he can here for that last, this is the last Cypher actually. So uh, TZYM still continuing on the chase here on this journalist. Wow, that's in range. <gasps> Yo, <gasps> no way. That was a really good play. play. That was crazy. That was, a, yeah, that was amazing play from the hunter mm -hmm. right there, Podge. Yeah, go but now on, we see, on. yeah, the the the, the photo, the, the little bro able to drop down the pallet and also forces out attack what? recovery. So this allows the journalist to head on over to the window area. That that pallet wasn't even up. He was just gonna walk to a different pallet and then that mm -hmm. ended up saving her. So that was that was really unfortunate for TZYM uh -oh. right here. They're trying to pop the cipher. Oh my god. Well, yep, that's gonna be enough to pop. Now, I don't know if she'll still pop. She's oh still gonna pop, so I she's gonna use the oh, food no! here and miss it, unfortunately. Uh oh, that's it. yeah. So she's that getting would... knocked down here, Podge. Yeah. So let's see how they're gonna. He's gonna play out this end game because the exit gate is just being open on the lower left side, but Shadow is opening up the exit gate. He can actually throw the umbrella here, just for him to catch up. So let's see if he's gonna get it open in time. Mm hmm. I mean, oh, okay. So he's gonna throw the umbrella all the way. And mm. wait, Journalist is kiting again. Can the little bro help her? Oh. No, it wasn't on time. Oh, but I think he might have forgotten he's still there. <laughs> so the little bro did help in some way. Yeah, kind of. but, but Wu Chang, here we go. He's focusing to get a three person uh, elimination. Mercenary is I mean... just about to touch Yush, but now TZYM could actually wait for the umbrella cooldown for him to be able to catch up to this rescue that will happen. So let's see if he's gonna catch any of these survivors with this umbrella. This is uh, this is when witching is best. I'm not gonna lie. He oh my goodness! And he got the soul summon off. There's always this little bit of hope with Wu Chang, but if you can nail it, if you can predict where the survivors are going like he did right there, man, that was absolutely beautiful. So he is best. This is his best stage of the game. And you know what, Posh? The uh, the anti current going down there made it made it a very good situation for him because now they don't know, okay, should we do the gates or should we get off? And now this is looking beautiful flywheel, but this is looking like a four man as a witching, all because the anti current went down so fast that he was mm -hmm. able to keep up the pressure on them. Oh, oh, will he stop it? Okay, no, he's not gonna stop. For example, even gonna get yeah. on, he's just gonna take his one person here. Is anti Crane gonna? No, anti Crane oh. is stuck at second stop. Ooh. They didn't press the stop, so now Yush actually has to pick up the mercenary. They haven't opened up the gates yet, so this is actually still very much doable, like you said, um, for the for the hunter to actually get more than just a three person is uh, three person kill here. Indeed. And the mistakes are gonna come back to haunt them here as they are threatening a four-person like elimination here from TZYM. It's wow, barely missing the soul seven, but it's gonna get the hits though with the blink. Oh so my really well God. done there. 
Yo, uh, FT did not expect this Wu Chang to be this good. And it, Yush, it's a race. It's a foot race to get the rescue going on to Shadow. Shadow on his final seconds. But Wu Chang here, he's going to be able to at least knock one of them. Indeed. And so it's always... I mean, they're rescuing Pause, but they're always in a, like a trading scenario. They're yeah. always trading away. And now Mercery needs to get picked up. Earlier, the uh, the the, um, the anti or whoever it was, didn't have to go kill the mm -hmm. Mercery. Now they have to. Now now it's now it's looking like it's it's really rough for the survivors. It's not looking like there's much hope left. A mm -hmm. beautiful prediction there from Shadow jumping the palace, seeing that he's. It's not really a prediction because he sees he's swinging, mm -hmm. and there we go. That was a, that. On the other hand. That one hit through the pallet. That was um, mm -hmm. that was definitely a surprise. There were a lot of a lot of mistakes there. Pause. There was just the the patient hook. I feel like already already um, using uh, an area that maybe is not the best against Wu Chang. That you don't want to really want to corner yourself, mm -hmm. especially because then he can umbrella you and further corner you. And the patient hooks are supposed to break you free of that. But if you don't position yourself in an area where you can hook out of that, then you're not mm -hmm. gonna have hooks. It's, it's like you're a lucky guy without veteran bonus. So yeah, perhaps. The start was good for him, but afterwards, afterwards, I would have liked to seen uh, maybe go back in ten instead of hooking out in the open, and he mm -hmm. wasted the pallet boost as well when that's not going to do you much good. Maybe he thinks he's never going to need pallets. I'm not too sure about that. Yeah. I feel like just a lot of times you evolve pallets on Moonlight because that's really all you have, not many windows. Besides that, it was pretty clean afterwards up until the antiquarian missed her flu. Uh, all three, all there were there were two instances right it was when the rescue happened then there was also when the cypher pop happened and it was really weird to see because yush was so on point with the with the flutes in game number one and come game number three none of them well there was the one that, that stunned for him to pop it but afterwards when there was detention when they needed it the most he wasn't able to get the stun going on so it was just a little unfortunate but you have to give it up to TZYM. He was able to capitalize on all the openings that the survivors presented, capitalize on over all the overextensions that they did, and ultimately, and I did not wake up this morning saying this, uh, thinking I was going to say this, but we have a Wu Chang getting a four survivor elimination. That's crazy. Yeah. In this meta, I'm very curious. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. I'm very curious what the point distribution is going to be now. Do does FT still have a chance here? Do they still so, have a chance to come back with their own four men? So the thing I is, right. they've already they've they've caught up because he's already um, they caught up with five points, and I believe the scoreline was eleven to six. So now it's all gonna hinge on this last half. Ooh. If they tie right. it up, we're gonna see an overtime. But if one sur one side wins, like three survivor escape, three survivor elimination then we're going to call uh, a winner here. But it's going to be a two-round win for one of these teams because HHDG did win round... Oh, no, they didn't win. So it's going to be... Yeah, uh, it, it's going to come down to points then. Yeah, it's going to oh, come down to points. And they, they tied. They had a tie round too, right? Yeah, they had a tie round. Tie so round. so they're still down five points. Mm -hmm. But now it evened up. Now it's zero to zero, essentially. Yeah, wait, sorry. They are on track to winning this round because round number two, Ty. Round number one, FT won that. So HHDG well, wins this. Yeah. Off wins run, one, or round ones anymore. It's going to be based off of points. After round two, it's always going to be based off of points. No longer, they don't really care who wins the round. It's going to be after points, right? Yeah. So yeah. as you were saying, that points are actually, we're all tied up now. It's 11 11. Yeah, yeah. And it's because we had that. We had that four men earlier from FT's survivor side. Survivors, really well yes. done, beating mm -hmm. out that opera singer. Then we saw Ty. There we go. Now we have it. Mm -hmm. And then we both saw the both survivors doing really well in round two, followed up by HHDG finally getting the four man they needed to come back from the earlier situation. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wait. So if we get a tie here on Moonlight, we could potentially overtime. see a round four overtime. And yes, anything, sir. any other side that happens here. That goes to the opposing teams yes. for the win. That's pretty much going on here. So we're going to see FT hunt here. So FT would need to get an extra kill. He needs to kill three people. Yes. But HHDG, they need to have three survivors escape on the other hand. So very, Correct. very polarizing sides here. We very rarely see this where it's like, okay, it's perfectly cut down the middle, either one or the other. And if we tie, we could see a round four over. Mm -hmm. Absolutely insane. I wonder what we would see that.
in in this matchup there could be a lot of firsts like we saw the first Wu Chang, the first survivor four man escape on on opera singer maybe first overtime we just have to wait and see but yeah kind of crazy how it's too it's it's very polarizing polar opposites of how we're supposed to play this it can't be cut down right in the middle or else we'll see that overtime so who do you bring which survivors do you bring to the table for this type of uh, uh what's that requirement for you to win and what hunter will you bring to the table also because opera singer for sure will be banned um, I'm not sure if they're going to respect ban the, the Night Watch or just going to respect ban the Dream Witch that Kuga does bring to the table. So there's still that question, maybe breaking wheel just for him to be able to get a four person elimination. But he's a very all or nothing hunter. Absolutely. It's going to be it's going to be something like that. Um, and in this situation, it's not bad to be like that because you're going to need mm -hmm. you're going to need a three person kill. If you could take it a tie, tie is fine as well. I suppose that would be all right but it's kind of crazy how after two and a half rounds we're back to score zero pots we're back to zero <laughs> points again if you really want to think about it like that we're back to zero points the difference is zero and so it really doesn't matter much what they did before it's going to mm -hmm. either be if they tie they're going to go into round four and if they also both have the same points after that let's say both sides like get a three man escape Ooh. or something like that and it's going to be up to up to what's it called up to time yeah, so it's Hushin that's coming on in here. We do note that he did bring out the Hermit uh, in, I believe it was Hospital, up against Team RC. So we just know him. He is the backup hunter of the team. He could bring out Hermit, but now with two bans that they can go for, they could just ban out, you know, Opera Singer Hermit and just see what else Hunter that he does bring to the table. But I'm not sure how much homework uh hhdg has done on hushin since kuga is actually the main hunter that they do have a lot of uh, knowledge on yeah i'm actually real curious i'm gonna check right here if there's anything else we can find about hushin here besides just the hermit here real quickly we're gonna see this is ft's hunter right i believe this is ft's hunter kuga yeah uh, not not uh hushin hushin mm -hmm. yeah so we're gonna check right here I believe Thing. also, yeah, is there anything on him? Yeah, he's played before in the past. Blood Queen and Guard 26. Hermit is not mentioned on here. So, mm. very interesting. Very interesting to see her. Blood Queen could be good depending on the survivors. Blood Queen's annoying Hunter to play around because she really causes a lot of survivors to just not be usable. Uh, just like anything like a Prospector, you could be in danger picking because he's going to be a very easy down for the Hunter. So, mm -hmm. we'll see here. We'll have to see. It really depends what the survivors are. Uh, but he'll have to ban a couple of the good survivors, and there's like right. a couple good ones. There's a there's a couple even that are good on this map specifically, and not really in others like Embalmer mm -hmm. or Toy Merchant that you normally wouldn't see on other times. Now is a genuine threat. So if anything, the survivors have more options to mm -hmm. get a three escape here, knowing that they have more options to support each other, like the catapults or the coffin brought by multiple yeah. survivors. I want to get a refresher on the global bands already because we already have like a full team of global bands that uh, HHDG can't use. And now that you mentioned BQ, how, what are your thoughts on BQ on a map like this? I know she has the mirrors on point and uh, you know what, the, the, the vastness of this map would definitely play a role, but you have to definitely play with the mirrors very well. I really don't think the Vastus makes a big difference, honestly, because to mm -hmm. think about it like this, if you were playing on Arms Factory, you wouldn't use the mirror until you have a Tinnitus. If you're playing on Moonlit, you really wouldn't use the mirror until you have Tinnitus, except it's better because now it's more likely you're going to see the survivor from far and still be able to, to be in reach of them because that's that's just how far the mirror reaches. So <laughs> the heart of the monitor. 250 BPM, oh my God. Is that a real thing? Actually. I mean, that's that's uh, he's going through something. That's that's an intense matchup. Oh, yeah. But now that you mention it, yeah, that is cool. But I was thinking more of just him being able to be more mobile around the map. But yeah, it's uh, it's it's still gonna be tough because, like you said, uh, if they have the same notes that we have and they're gonna prepare for a BQ, they can just uh, prepare accordingly. Yeah, although if anything, I think they might have even more resources than we do because they probably have access to these matches. I th I'm sure we do as well, but we are as commentators are not looking that deep into it. They, as players, know that their matchup yeah. is about to be against FC. They're going to be looking over all the tournaments 
from their region that they did to get up to this point that they are now and maybe any like insider knowledge like from other people what did this person play and that's just like that's honestly the biggest main way you get people to know about other people's countries it's just you're like other people knowing that person that's how you really spread knowledge around so we'll see here we'll see here mm -hmm. we're waiting for the match to start though in the meantime what do you think about Blood Queen here on Poch? What are your opinions on Blood Queen in general about her existence in the game? How do you feel about her? I like her as a character, but in tournament, you really need a specialist because it's really unfortunate that you can... Well, you really have to get caught out in the open, right? You can't get, afford to give away mirror hits, but we've seen, I think, Lati. I think, yeah, we were commentating that match. Really lives up to that tie potential because BQ has been in the meta for so... Well, been in the game for so long that people know or can predict where it's going to be at. I do like the the uniqueness of the character um, and, and the whole like uh, having the mirror image and you being able to teleport. Like if you're in basement, you can you can actually use the mirror to just go to uh, pressure a cypher. Uh, but in an instant like this, where Hushin needs to be able to get a victory. Hey, look, there's a, an umbrella. How did he get that umbrella? That's actually an amazing umbrella. Dude, that's that umbrella. that's Wu Ching's umbrella. Yeah. That's the, um, I forgot the name of it, but it's that S tier. Again, mm. oh, Mickey's gonna yell at me for I forgot the name of it. <laughs> Shout out to the Mickey in the chat. It's, it's not Broken Blossoms. That's the one we saw last game. It's it's like it looks very similar to Broken Blossoms. It's like oh, I forgot the name of it. How, how are you? Someone in chat is gonna know. Yeah, are, are you good with skin names? Because I'm not so good with that. I know Nell if is really good at that. If it's a popular skin that I've seen around before, then I'll typically remember. I don't know why I can't remember this skin. I, it might be because I don't really like the skin. Like, mm. I just think it's it's just a, a little what bit of a What is your favorite stroke. skin in the game? I'd have to give it to Call of This 2 Ripper. I really like that one. Ooh, that one's gotta that's be a good one. I, I like it's the mercenary lady. skin on that one, too. Yeah, the Call of This? The Call, Call of Abyss 2. Too. The the Call of wow. Abyss 2. Wow, what an I, ugly like, mercenary skin. Bosh. No, because because you can I hide that with that one. skin. It's I like I it. It's great. Or maybe because really also that's when I start getting into Koa and I have like sentimental value with it. But I always see the utility of that skin because the Cheshire skin's great, but you get to be seen so far. Like it's like Cheshire oh, you're there. skin is great. Excuse me. It, what? You don't like what Cheshire these, skin? What are these skin takes, Posh? I'm. I don't know, Chat. Um, don't shoot it. me. He's so the one that doesn't like Cheshire skin. I'm saying that's a good skin. <laughs> Guys, side with me here. You know he's nasty looking. And what not are in a you good saying? <laughs> That's one of the most popular skins out there, man. I'm just saying. Popular for a reason. Someone in chat is going to remind me. What is that skin called? But in the meantime, we're finally picking mm -hmm. our survivors and hunters here. Ban the Hermit. Ban the Opera Singer. Like you predicted, Posh. Banning the Hermit, which is... Yeah. A hot take for me, but... <laughs> I guess that's what they, the they saw, right? Because he did bring out Hermit against Rejects in a do or die situation. So it's more of a respect ban. But looking at the survivors now, you have the Antiquarian, you have Airplanist. That's really good. And I mean, the Airplanist in the map like this is kind of crazy. Cheerleader also to reset cooldowns, Mercenary, and also the Antiquarian. So considering they glo uh, the global picks they played this one really well for them to have this at round number three all these survivors that is yeah yeah that's very true we also saw the anti crane of course from the opposing team except even nicer for them is they had an extra an extra anti crane without being it banned out passion though going in with the gamekeeper man hmm. see that's the wuching skin i'm talking about what is that called it's like chat it help us out word, the, probably or like the. Or something like that the something the, i don't the, even know the s tier yeah the s tier skin gamekeeper on moonlit is such a good hunter there's so many walls that he can just shoot right over pod so i'm very mm -hmm. excited to see what we what we see done here especially intent my goodness goodness mm -hmm. god that is a really scary good god right there mm -hmm. good god yeah. good god me fellow chop <laughs> no one's saying it in chat no one knows not even me I think we're waiting. We're still waiting. Yeah, so the umbrella is already in chat. So I think, yeah, the, the, we're going to start to talk about the skins in just a bit. Oh, my that God. Delay. That's how far behind we are. All right. Sure. Fair we're, enough. We're predicting the future, uh, Psyche. But um, what was I going to say? I totally forgot. You didn't tell me your favorite skin. Call it of just this 2 Ripper? The Ripper. Oh, no, Survivor. Sorry. My bad. Oh, Survivor skin. Probably the Call of this 2 Perfumer. I really like that one. 
Um, you know what? The, another Hunter skin that might be even better than Colobus Super, but I'd probably have to give it to the S tier for Wu Chang, the divine, divine one. Divinity divine. Or yeah, that's Far good East one. Wind. It did start with an F. Far oh, East yeah. Wind. Okay, thank oh, you, Chad. Yo, a lot of people thank know that you. name in the skin. Okay, they're gonna be Shroud, screaming that for the next five minutes. I know. Like, no, guys, look at my car. <laughs> we looked at the guys. I swear, we looked as soon uh, the first person who said Far East to win. Like, I'm gonna read your name out right now. Read like, it. In the meantime, hold up. Where are you? Where are you? The umbrella, umbrella, umbrella. Far East win. Ning Ning. Thank you so much for letting. Oh no, Genesis. Genesis. For that. Genesis. Okay. Thank you so much. But... So, <laughs> let's talk about the persona builds here. Seems like they they are bringing the flywheels, they're bringing the, the kiting abilities here, they bring the borrowed time, just one tide turner. Hushin though, it's very standard with this uh, with this gamekeeper, blink, a detention, and trump card. Again, it's all or not, it's, it's three or nothing for both these teams. It's gonna be a, an intense one. Are we gonna see the uh, a, a best of four? We're just gonna have to find out. Once again, Psyche and Potch Spice on the mic for this one. Indeed, and we're going right into the first chase. Gamekeeper, as usual, using himself to just speed up the chase, first chase being started. The Antiquarian is gonna be, is that not the Antiquarian? Nope, that's the cheerleader. The cheerleader is gonna be the first chase here. Wow, what a great hook here. And look at this, this is exactly what I was talking about. This makes for such a bad kiting here against Gamekeeper. But the cheerleader, just using all her boosts, essentially makes it so that he mm -hmm. has to waste his hook. But guys, she used two abilities for just his one ability. So overall, she's not going to be left with much to say here. And that being said, she really gets her ability back insanely quickly. Not going to get to hit here, though. Oh, clearly. that was close, but unable to get it. Now let's see how he's going to be able she to could close. actually out. hook over that, but oh. he's playing it safe. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ooh, nice flywheel. So right there, we saw that the cheerleader was actually dodging out of the way, even though she was behind a wall, knowing mm -hmm. that he could hook right over it. But is she? she's not going to make it. Because mm -hmm. of Gamekeeper's just speed up. Gamekeeper having that double hook and just being able to speed himself up so fast. Wow, really clean from Hessian right here. Yeah, so Susutsu now is at the fourth stop here. Unable to actually use anything in this area, just the area. Elevation drop down hit to cancel attack recovery. So Hushin having the uh, the cheerleader down, but Cyphers are moving along quite well here. Uh, Aeroplanus will have the wanted order. Wow, so I wasn't sure that was gonna hit, but somehow that was still in range, so that was really nice. The dungeon is here, so they get instant information on that, instant feedback on where the dungeon is. And Mercenary, probably gonna bait it out. He wants to wait it out. He doesn't want to, mm -hmm. ah, I wanna rhyme here, say it out, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mercenary. That's a good one though. Getting... Bars by Psyche, let's go. <laughs> Mercenary just stalling out as long as possible. That's what you're supposed to do as rescue. You don't wanna rescue earlier than needed. You wanna maximize the time. Is anyway going to go to 50% not the second rest? Cheerleader using her pop bombs here, but okay, she does have both using them in combination. Ooh. Oh, that was really close. I'm uh -huh. uh, surprised that didn't connect. I know oh. he tried to predict he was going to go through the exit, but unable to get the timing correct. And now we have the antiquarian D King just uh, giving some support, pushing back the hunter. Let's see how long this will go because. They have the last two ciphers already. The silence is going to be on Hushin. Going to continue oh. on the stuns here. So let's see. Susu is going to get caught out here in the uh, the walled area. Cutting her off a little bit. I almost feel like she should have waited around the corner just to see which side he goes on. But I suppose anyway she'd be dead to a hook. But no, I guess no, no, no. If she if she was more careful, though, I feel like she would be able to re go like circle the ten better. Oh no no! Whoa 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 whoa! What was that? Whoa 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 whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, continues on with the struggle here. Able to get the distance, but no, get the farmed off hit on the cheerleader. D King just trying to buy time for that last cipher to be primed. Dude, we are scarily close to getting that last Cypher Prime. For how decent of a chase Hessian's first chase oh, was, oh we're still God. struggling. Wait a minute, it's on the Cypher. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's God. here. Oh, gosh. And he can oh, actually set up God. traps here, but it seems like he wants to get more survivors down. Sing H, oh. forced to use the elbow pad, but now we he see that He wasn't Aegis expecting here. Mercer to be right there, that's for uh -oh. sure, otherwise he would have swung. And now he's gonna stall it out as long as possible here, Podge. Mm -hmm. Can he avoid this hair shock? He's just extending the chair timer. He's just gonna hit someone just to get the chair already started with. Teleport. Yes. Yeah. Let's see him actually try and go for a clip here. Off to the cheerleader. Is cheering the aeroplanist as well. Gets the hit. The last cipher is not primed. He has his sur first survivor down and out. 
I would probably teleport on the cypher here. Oh no, but the chair is so far away. Yeah, I guess no matter what, the chair is going to be far away in this situation. Mm. Would I still teleport here? I still think you'd be good because it's their there only cypher. Go. Yes. There we go. Okay. Good move from Hessian, I'd say, because they oh, they, they already started another Cypher. So even better move from the Survivors already playing around that. So good mm -hmm. thinking from their side, already being ahead of the schedule here. Okay. Ooh. Whoa. That was a miss. Wow. That's crazy. I thought the hitbox would actually connect to the Antiquarian there. So now it seems like he's going to set up some traps. He's going to get notified as well that a Cypher is being used. So let's see. Gets the Terror oh Shock on the Antiquarian. Okay. <laughs> yeah, ball, right? That was the Threading the counter. needle there. Barely not hitting the wall, Podge. I mean, insane. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, there was no auto in there. That was perfectly aimed. So props mm -hmm. to in there. That was that would have been harder before they added the curse mark. Wow. Okay, you can hook over that too. It has to dodge out of the way. Indirect map pressure here because he has infinite hooks. He does. This is infinite hooks right here. Yeah. Especially now presence. that they made it. Yeah. It, uh -oh. So we'll see here. We'll see. Oh no! But if he gets hooked here, he can't make the rescue. He can't oh, no. make the rescue. This is actually tough. And now we see that EGG. Is he gonna actually get the rescue? He's able to get it. The hook cooldown is not there. He's too far away from the Cypher to actually pressure. And now he gets it down onto the Antiquarian. Ooh. He's just gonna go after him now. He's one hook oh. away. Okay, all right, sure game, sure. Yeah, that didn't, that didn't auto wave. I know an auto wave hook when I see it. That would auto wave if I, if I, Mercenary, the, game the end game pop, able to get through, but seeing H playing with fire here, they need two survivors out to continue on this game. He's gonna go for the wall hit. Cancel He's the able elbow to get the mercenary. He just canceled the elbow pad with the shock wave. Did you guys see that? He had the elbow pad effect there, but the shock wave didn't hook him. But then the shock wave canceled it. Are you joking me? So the dungeon, there was potential here. It was his last elbow pad, so it would have been unlikely afterwards because you need a way to get to this dungeon against Gamekeeper. He, otherwise, he just hooks you away. But my mm -hmm. goodness, Pod, this is a... <laughs> look, look, he got a syringe. <laughs> One of your favorite <laughs> items in the game. So go seems... tell Nello how great syringe is here. Yeah, my chat goodness. tell Nell that this is the best item to have, but unfortunately it won't help out the aeroplanist. And Hessian does have the map control here. He, they can opt for the, oh, it's at the, uh, open up the exit gate. But once he sees that the exit gate's opening, he, teleport is ready for him to use. Yeah, so honestly, he could go for a super safe. Honestly, if I were him, I would just go after the other gate because if they rescue, I just I just help her on the gate. And even if mm -hmm. they open the gate first before they rescue, so I don't get notified, because that's what they should honestly do. They would mm -hmm. probably just open the gate and hope for the best. But no, in that situation, I feel like he could have just checked the gate. And if, mm -hmm. if no one's there, it just may as well go back yeah. to the mercenary. And even if they rescue, you got the X gate. But regardless, Playing it safe there, maybe, I don't know, pocket yeah. item? What item would possibly save them? It could only help one of them. So, really clean there from FT Sunder. They're really exciting seeing that gamekeeper. So many, like, wow, that was really good. We're like, what? How did that not work? <laughs> so, it was really a, lot of, a lot of moments. Like, gamekeepers like that, though. Uh, you yeah. Guys have, like, That's the big part of it. Sometimes they're godlike hooks, and then their hooks are like, hey, how come that didn't? That was a little suspect. Like, he was literally there. When the, when the cheerleader is exiting the 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 circus tent, but you know yeah. the antiquarian through the pallet, there are actually some good hooks as well. All things considered, Hushin was able to at least get the bare minimum to contain the lead and uh, overall for them to win this game. So it seemed like a survivor line, a survivor game through and through, but Hushin was able to stop the tides there with his gamekeeper matchup. Just an incredible showing of Team FT, but HHD really pushing themselves to the limit. You got to give it up to the survivors and the hunter as well. Oh, uh, FT finally overthrowing HHG's yes. reign. They were flawless mm -hmm. before this. Now they finally take their first loss. Granted, it took a while. It took a couple of rounds, mm -hmm. but they finally more than average because we were we, by average see double rounds. And keep mm -hmm. in mind, FT. I'm not sure if FT would have reached this point had it not been for that amazing four escape we saw yes. earlier against that opera speaker. Mm -hmm. So that was absolutely amazing. Followed up by the hunter finally putting in work usually we like you said we saw a lot of survivor game but now for once we see both hunters really perform mm -hmm. well in the final round with their with the with the round three like typical non-typical hunter picks Wu -Chang. that you normally don't see gatekeeper coming meta mm -hmm. but technically Wu Chang did better like that that's not that's not <laughs> up to today. Wu -Chang is not better than gatekeeper 
But granted, mm -hmm. he played really well there. He definitely held his umbrella a lot because knowing that people are going to communicate and tell each other, hey, he's holding his umbrella, get off the cypher. Mm -hmm. He's using that to his advantage as indirect cypher pressure so that they stop mm -hmm. decoding. So really smart play there from Hessian as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, back to the Wu Chang, I just want to say, yeah, there was just the mind games were really strong, right? Just capitalizing on a lot of the, the, the umbrella plays, blocking out the, the hooks of the patient and ultimately getting the lead there. So TZYM, I'd have to say, he definitely showed up and showed out in round number three. Survivors were very consistent in the first, second, and third, so really gave Kuga and at round number three, Hushin, a really tough time uh, to really garner those points. But at the end of the day, like you said, FD started out with a five survivor, a five point game with the survivors in game number one. Game number two, the survivors were still able to get a three person escape. And ultimately, they relied on their sub hunter in Hushin for him to be able to use his gamekeeper to ultimately get the win for his team. Indeed, indeed. That is the case, indeed. So. I'm very excited. What are, like is this the start of Gamekeeper's reign? Is this how when finally Gamekeeper becomes good? It's been years. Fun fact: He used to be the worst hunter in the game because he didn't start with the hook. And back then, mm -hmm. this was normal. By the way, mm -hmm. hunters used to not start with abilities, and that was completely normal. The only hunter who did was Cloud, and we all know he doesn't start with an ability either. He has to go earn his ability. So mm -hmm. Ripper didn't have an ability. Hell Ember didn't have flames. He didn't even have a puppet or anything like that. Uh, there was there was there was gamekeeper he didn't have his hook and then after that there was no no other hunter gisha was like the first hunter to have a butterfly really? to use right yeah. away but even clown was still better because it was harder to counter clown back then you could just always look at geisha but mm -hmm. anyway that's not the point the point is gamekeepers come a long way they had to buff him a couple times they had to buff him a lot of times and it took literal years even dancer who gained a bunch of bunch of bunch of bunch of buffs is finally out of part like she even became used way sooner than gamekeeper it took a while for gamekeeper granted he didn't get much attention so mm -hmm. that's a big part of it now i'm finally happy to see gamekeeper the meme of idv which mm -hmm. it's been so long that people don't even recognize him as the meme of idv anymore because it's, it's that well known it's like it's not even a meme anymore it's actually sad it's actually <laughs> sad at this point so i'm so glad that gamekeeper is one of the more used hunters and yeah. The more more like exclusive tech with Gamekeeper that you can hook over certain walls. We didn't mm -hmm. see much of that right there, but you can do that and that is so fun to do. And there was just never a good opportunity to do it because Gamekeeper was garbage. So, mm -hmm. um, not garbage. He just was less fortunate, right, Nello? Mm -hmm. I mean, Pot? <laughs> Gosh, I always confuse you too. It's okay. Uh, really I, I, we get, I get that a lot. Chocho Eli also says that uh, confuse me and Nell since we always commentate together. But yeah, you know what? The time in the sun for Gamekeeper is definitely now. The last time I saw Gamekeeper and Koa, regar uh, regardless, not counting this Koa, was I think Koa 4. And it was when PP Xiao was still a hunter main. And he used Gamekeeper in best of four in the, this map. Uh, I think to get the victory over against FPXCQ back when AK was still there and all so it's it's been a minute like i think it was like four years ago that we saw gamekeeper in, in call of the abyss but now it is definitely his time in the sun let's check out the match data here psyche between hhdg and team ft for hushin to get the three to one victory indeed we saw a lot of kite time from the cheerleader but the reason they just weren't able to quite catch the cypher was because they got cheered on that was the really big play there that in this, that just flew them out of the zone. Otherwise, they would have been in a really good spot there. Having that Cypher just a little bit further away from the chair would have been the difference maker. But now that cheerleader is going down and there's no Cypher progress being done, which not only jeopardizes cheerleaders' future, but also jeopardizes the whole team because after cheerleaders dealt with, they still got the same problem. They still got Gamekeeper on the side of the, uh, on top of the chair, mm. on top of, well, after oh. the chair goes out, still on top of the Cypher and just, it Can just, add something? It just yeah, go ahead. So the chat is actually bringing up some receipts from what Nell said, because if FT said, if he said if FT makes it out of the group stage and into brackets, he's going to shave his head. No way. <laughs> that's what Nell no said. No, he said that he day so one. Hair. You can't I know he that. has a lot of hair, but that's what he said. I don't know. It's uh, a lot of people remember that, Nell, and I don't know if you still want to Hold that Nell true. Was chat before I saw Nat Nell earlier in the chat. He was he was ma. He's talking like mm -hmm. it was like 30 minutes ago now, or like an hour ago. I don't know. Time flies when you're the commentator. Because right. guys, 
it's so insane, but we started this matchup like 20 minutes ahead of schedule, and now we're ending right on time. So we had a whole 20 minutes just used up now. I was honestly worried that we might go into overtime. Like, oh God, all the other commentators are gonna get pushed back too. But no, we're back on schedule here with the round three. And uh, just, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit worried for now. <laughs> Save here. But it seems like who is gonna get the MVP here. Uh, because he was able to bring out the opera singer, a three-person game. Interesting. I, I really feel like this this match alone, there's a lot to highlight from both sides and both factions, right? But we have to give the MVP to one person, and it is going to go to FT Kuga for his opera singer in round number one. Indeed. I mean, it's it was it was so uh, so solid. Um, although I feel like maybe the MVP should have gone to the. To the antiquarian from round one like she was mm. playing really well that was she was Yash, doing really well help yeah help helped, helped her teammate mm -hmm. i'm not entirely sure i'm just saying yeah <laughs> that's mm -hmm. the honest mm -hmm. truth true but, true it's 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 rare right to see the survivors being highlighted as best deduction because i feel like the point garnered for the hunter since it's a one person uh one it's only one character that gets the, the point yeah. so uh, that's why we're here. So we'll be able to remind the audience of the amazing antiquarian play that was in round one. So guys, do check that out because that definitely played into the domino effect of the five point game that FT was able to get. But MVP still going out to Kuga. And even if you give Kuga the MVP, not to not to roast, not to <laughs> roast the graphics people, but why Upper Singer? He tied that match. He four manned with Wu Chang. That's why they gave him MVP, right? At least that's why I think. Did the, did the team tell them? Yeah, yeah, his operation was really good. And that patient just ran right into his teammate, and that's why he got the tie. <laughs> but maybe, maybe. That, guys, we're still going to see the interview portion. So let's see if uh, the the survivor MVP will actually make it to that stage, or maybe even Hushin, which uh, he had performed really well with his, uh, with his game keeper. I see a lot of umbrella emojis in the chat, as well as deer emojis. That's how we summed up the third round uh, with with those two hunters, and it was definitely a hunter showcase. Definitely. Okay, Nell in the chat is saying, "I keep my promise." Oh. This is a little bit worrisome. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my goodness. Nell, you're in trouble, my man. How is FT doing in the tournament now with that win in that case? Let's well, they check. so Group B, the rankings at the start when you, we started the stream and you and Eli opened it up, it was RC, HHDG, FT, RD, and Omni. So oh my they, replace, they replace HHDG, I believe, because they have a win over them. And they have one more match, I think. I, I believe they're, they're. Yeah, their last match is up against Omni. So if oh, they're able to, okay. I mean, they're, I think they they're kind of the safe here for yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. And on top of that, you saying they're kind of safe. I mean, they'd have to lose a lot of points to the other teams at this point to fall out of third um, mm -hmm. and just go into the third and fifth. So they have a pretty solid, pretty solid. I mean, I don't want to say pretty solid lead because I'm just going off the placements here. It, the points mm -hmm. might be close. Yeah, um, just sure. based on uh, our assumption that they're a little bit on the safe side, but I love what Nell said. This is a commitment to Southeast Asia. So <laughs> he did say that this is for this is his uh, his offering or his his dedication to the Southeast Asia team. Uh, I don't know. Nell Nell does shave his head when he uh, when, when he means it. So yeah, um, shout outs to Nell guys. This is Show not the first time. I this shaved is his head like time? not because of FT. He just shaved his head because he wanted to see uh, how he look. So. Uh, he shaved his head before, so okay. Yeah. I don't think I'd ever I do that. I don't know, Eli. You have a nice, and nice crown of hair. I don't know if you'd crazy. ever do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, we're not now. We're not built like him. So here we have the interview portion. We got Kuga and Shadow, courtesy of Team FT. Uh,非常开心，因为我们赢了。嗯，嗯，是的，赢的而且很漂亮。那问一下酷干的，对对哦，太强了，队友太厉害了。今天来到我们下午采访会紧张吗？面对到那么多的观众，刚才给你们加油
跑拿下的时候，大家是一个什么样子的状态？因为看到大家打完之后抱在了一起。呃，大家都很。So the host asked how their mentality and state, uh, how they are, and they're still good, like they're very stable with how they perform. I want to ask, is in the match, is there any preparation for the match? Uh, there's a team training. I've done a lot of preparation. Yes, it's still very positive when you're training. 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 Believe they were able to achieve a four-man escape uh, against the opera singer. Mm. Uh, so there was a situation where they needed to find a dungeon, and uh, it was a very tense and stressful situation uh, in, the, in that uh, matchup where they had to find the dungeon. And surprising. And surprising. <laughs> Did I say surprising? <laughs> no, you didn't, but he said okay. surprising. There you go. Thank you for covering. And so in the last match when they got three men eliminated, they didn't let their hopes down. They were still confident they could do well and beat their their opponents. So that's that's how you do. You gotta keep high spirits. And it's because of their intense practice every day that they're able to pull it off. So at the end there, yeah, it was the host uh, asking what they want to say to the fans, like keep fighting, they're going to keep fighting to the very best. They want to thank everyone, and we'll thank you guys for joining us. We're going to take a break, and also, we're going to get match number three. Pops to Kuga! And also, uh, Hushin, incredible performance, and also HHG shout out to them. But we're going to take a short break when we come back, match number three.
Welcome back, folks. It is day number six of the group stage for Call of the Abyss 7. Pox Spice and Eli O on the mic for this one. But Eli, I'm still kind of reeling in the effects of the previous match. Round three, Wu Chang. You got any thoughts on what we just saw between uh, Team FT versus uh, Team HHDG? Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, we saw the first round go very well, very much in FT's favor. Mm -hmm. uh, and then going into the second round, it was, um, uh, you know, excellent drop from the survivor side of FT, but then also three escape from uh, HHDG as well, right? So that made things very interesting. And then, you know, we went into the last one that had to win 7-2. to And honestly, when I was watching this match, especially in the third round, I'm thinking that FT's probably got the game secured. You know, coming back from a 7-2 to is really difficult. Mm -hmm. But then we get into the first half, right? And it's a relatively quick down as a Wu Chang, which, you know, one of the reasons why Wu Chang is really weak is because Wu Chang struggles in the early game to secure, actually get the first survivor down without presence. Mm -hmm. So then when the first town happens, then Wu Chang can actually win games because then, you know, you don't have to worry about the presence anymore because you've already gotten it. You have map pressure with the teleports and the umbrella um, and you can turn it into a potential four kill. Mm -hmm. So when that happens, uh, you know, I'm thinking, oh, okay, maybe this hunter can actually get a four kill here. But there was one point, sorry, <laughs> one point at the end mm -hmm. in which the mercenary goes for the save in two story. And I'm, and I'm very, uh, I'm a little uh, confused by the decision just because if mercenary gets an escape there, the hunter side for FT only needs a single kill to win because then they would still be up on points because it was seven to two in the first round, right? So if FT gets a one escape, hunter gets a one kill, it would then be 62 for the round. FT would still be winning by a single point, which would secure them the victory. So that, but FT, interestingly enough, goes for the rescue, and then the hunter is able to turn it into a, uh, a three kill into a four kill, and that's yeah. a huge game changer because then um, HHG can actually win. They can get a three escape uh, and win, or get a tie and go to overtime. And throughout the majority of the second half of the third round with the gamekeeper, uh, it was looking like HHG was in a great position of a four survivor endgame. Um, from the first kite, from the anti-current support, it was looking like really good. But then, uh, Hushan able to turn things around and tur somehow turn a losing position into a winning one. Get the win for FT. What a, what a great game, honestly. But we have to get into our next one here. FTX EQ versus GH. Uh, Posh, what do you think about this one? Yeah, this is going to be another case of like uh, GH going up one of the big uh, big teams going up against FTX EQ. So, I don't know, maybe they get inspired also for their Southeast Asia brethren with how well, well, with how FT was able to skirt a victory out of that intense last best of three game. GH is still looking to get on the board. If we're looking at the Group D standings, it is Axis that is leading the charge, Weibo Gaming right behind him. Uh, FPX EQ on third place spot and GH knocking at the door on that safe spot in the third place just for them to be able to uh, make it to the bracket stage and AWG at fifth place. So this is a very important match for uh, GH. FPX EQ needs to be able to hold on to their lead here. Uh, the record in this game, uh, they did have a win over AWG and they lost to Weibo Gaming while unfortunately for GH, they lost to Weibo Gaming and lost, lost to Axis. So uh, this is kind of a, I would say a do or die moment for GH because after this match, they only have one left and then the group stage will be settled. Absolutely, they have to actually win mm -hmm. uh, their remaining game. Similar to the yes. position we saw with Cat earlier. So they want a chance to secure a spot in the playoffs, try to get that third place position. They're going to have to win two games in a row. So definitely a, a, an uphill battle for them. And, you know, things don't get easier. FPX EQ, a very strong team that, you know, we thought would be one of the uh, top contenders. We are going to look at our interview video uh, right now. 是大陆赛区初选战队的石桥样很久没有这么多队伍能在一个地方打比赛了对队友都就是多给我施一点啊秒牌吧他的监管玩得非常的厉害很出名我也很期待和他进行一场对战感觉彭大山和拿分也是一
sides of the team here. It seems like we're going to get uh, Meow to hunt uh, first while we're going to introduce the survivors of FPX CQ. We're going to start things off with San S. Same, it says here that, you know, he has a forward, he has an embalmer, but also he does bring out the journalist uh, in, in the mix here. Again, impressive stats all throughout. So um, we were talking about this, right? FPX CQ survivors still need to have a more solid performance compared to their hunter, which is Dong Shun. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's not. And something to keep in mind, though, is um, Don Schlein also, uh, in the previous match against Waymo Gaming, did have a bit of a tough time dealing with the survivors there. So we're going to hope Don Schlein's able to, uh, you know, turn that around here and, and come out in uh, stronger condition today. Of course, the FX survivors will also need to have a good performance here against uh, Meow Pai from GH. Uh, we have Zivi as well here uh, with a. 35% win rate, 50% escape rate. Average game time, only 64 seconds. Again, FPX EQ survivors have uh, had a bit of a hard time in this event thus far. And, you know, of course, going against Weibo, uh, you do have to deal with Alex as well, which is really challenging, right? So definitely something to keep in mind. SX Web, of course, as the last survivor player. Yeah, he was interviewed. He uh, noted and respected Meow's capability uh, with one of the best uh, hunters of Southeast Asia and one of the best hunters in, in that region that is on stage as we speak. So we'll see. Hopefully we'll be able to see some amazing rescues, but uh, moving things over to Meow. Um, interesting to see how he has been performing. We're usually seeing, uh, we usually see him super aggressive, but as of late, he doesn't mind going with just a very defensive strategy to start things out. But you never know with Meow, he could actually turn the tides in a snap of a finger and a drop of a hat. So we'll have to see what kind of version of himself he'll be bringing to this matchup. Yeah, definitely. We see 54% um, win rate, only 27% for elimination rate, but keep in mind uh, that's actually pretty uh, important. In fact, you're able to eliminate four survivors one fourth of the time is is, is really good. Uh, getting into the map selection here, we do have the XEQ with the opportunity to pick the map first. We're going to see Arms Factory ban from GH, and they're going to go ahead and lead with Chinatown. Mm -hmm. see the GH choosing to go Hunter side first here. Chinatown um, is uh, obviously a very common meta map, but a little bit less so in the first round. Um, kind of been replaced by Leo's memory. Uh, we've seen a lot of Leo's memory in Ever Sleeping in the early rounds for opera singer players so it's sort of the idea with the four common maps right now for round one that we've seen in this tournament are arms factory moonlit mm -hmm. and leo's memory and ever sleeping so basically ever sleeping and leo's memory are are pretty good for opera singer whereas mm -hmm. arms factory and moonlit are not quite as good so sometimes teams will pick a moonlit or arms Sleeping town no sorry moonlit or arms factory to turn the closing opera yeah, have a bit of a to improve their survivor side against opposing operas or the other way around where you pick up receiving or leos try to give your hunter a pretty good opportunity to play opera singer um and then china chinatown is one by the wayside a little bit because of that but of course still a very common map and can be used in round one and uh we are going to see it this time around so with that being said eli if if fpxeq survive or they pick this map are they trying to buff the survivor side or give dong Shuen the advantage uh while using this chinatown map um I mean, I think this map is pretty balanced for Opera Singer, so I think in reality, it's not too sure. I, I think it's fine for both players, uh, for both sides, both factions. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, if anything, I guess it'd be pretty good for Dunk because, you know, you have a lot of options for, for playing on this map, whereas I guess Meow Pie would also have the same opportunity. So it doesn't really, I think it really doesn't do too much for either. I think it's just pretty balanced overall. Uh, mm -hmm. in terms of both factions so yeah i mean i think it's uh just they're just picking a standard map here and uh just gonna stay with consistency mm -hmm. uh by the way i don't know if you caught our conversation with me and psyche and he said that the best item in the game is not the flare gun but the elbow the pads. elbow pad which mm -hmm. i think is um i mean i don't know Poch, if you're in a if you're in a match okay and would you rather have an elbow pad or a flare gun be honest. I, 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 <laughs> I mean, because Psyche's coming at it in a. Re I, he, you feel his rescue tendencies to come in, right? He's, he wants to be as safe as possible, but uh, he did mention that you know, if if any, it's only good on the coordinator. It doesn't help out with whatever. I get it, and I've I've had my fair share of miss flare guns. I have my fair share of miss elbow pads. I get where he's coming from, but the stunner in me wants to go the flare gun. 
I, is that is that your is that your rebuttal? Let's like, let's think about it logically. Okay. Okay. So All right. Okay. If you have um, an elbow pad, you can use mm -hmm. it to gain distance, right? Mm -hmm. It's like okay, that's good. So if you have a flare gun, you can use the flare gun. By the time the hunter recovers from it, even if it's a non-coordinator stun, it's still long enough where when the hunter recovers from it, you will be the same distance away as the elbow pad got to, right? Okay. Additionally, the flare gun can also be utilized to help support someone kiting to buy them distance after going for a rescue. It can also potentially uh, help you rescue if you're worried about getting stuff. It can help a, a, a teammate rebound kite after using it after they save. And this never really happens, but it could technically be used to try to get the hunter to drop a survivor on balloons. Maybe they'll struggle through something like that. Probably not, mm -hmm. but it is technically possible. And it does, mm -hmm. it will happen once in a while. So the flare gun can do by you the exact same amount of time and distance as the, as an elbow pad. However, you can also use it to support, potentially harass, buy the teammate more distance, help you rescue. Uh, so a lot more versatile, a lot more mm. situations. Man, I That's really wish Psycho was here to try and. I mean, I'm I'm not part of this. I just I'm just I'm trying to be being the adjudicator. Now, but you're kind of you're kind of buying me into this the flare gun here. I will say, if you have okay. if you're a mercenary and you have three elbow pads. Then that's understandable. Yeah, it's but three. You're not a mercenary. Mm -hmm. it, it, we're assuming just like in general, right? Mm hmm. So, in general, a flare gun. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll revisit back this topic. I hope you in chat w would agree with Eli or you're going to add more points to it because right now it seems like of, uh, they've already selected their survivors. Cheerleader was banned, but they still opt to use the perfumer. They're going to use the seer as well. Uh, I believe Regacy is usually on this painter. I think in their first outing as FBXQ against AWG, we had an interesting hide and seek scenario with a painter where the painter hid away from the hunter and he couldn't find him at all. So we have to wait and see. I know you're not the biggest fan of Painter, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people in chat would love to see this Painter do uh, an amazing kite in this matchup. I'm so sure they've already they would. Of course. Yeah, I'm sure they would, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, I'm not, uh, I've never thought Painter was too strong of a character, but who knows, it could be. Uh, it can buy a waste time against an opera singer. You know, if the opera singer does look into the painting. And you know, one of the things we talk about is the way to deal with Opera Singer is you're gonna go down relatively quick against get Opera Singer, so delay the inevitable. So uh, using that painting can buy you a lot of time and, and be very important. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think um, chat is asking if Zhao Khan is Indonesian. I believe he is. He is, yes. He is, there you go. Ugh. So yeah, big shout out to everyone that's still joining us. We are gonna head to the spawn locations here. It seems like GH Meow has to. Be, oh, yeah, go for it. Uh, Meow will have to be able. Will spawn over here at the core left, top left side of the map, where Sans, Regacy, and SXY are actually surrounding him. So, Meow might want to go for that uh, painter to start things out, or unless he's really on point with how he's able to down this perfumer and just waste away the perfume. But if he's able to down this painter before he can get the painting going, that's gonna be great. ZB probably is just going to support all the way on the other side of the map with his owl. Let's check out the persona builds here. We got a pretty, uh, we have no uh, flywheels here. Just got broken windows. You got two tide turners on the side of San S and SXY. Trump card, blink, plus detention on Meow's side. Very standard build when it comes to Opera Singer. This is how usually round one goes when you see the Opera Singer. Potch Spice and Eli O, your commentators for the round one. First half between GH and FPXEQ and Meow, uh, Meow not wasting any time. He's already transitioning away from this uh, building area, going to change elevations as well to try and find his first survivor, which already made an excellent rotation away from the center part of the map. It is San S. Regacy the Painter might have to take this first kite. Seems like he's already getting to work on his masterpiece here. Let's see if Meow is able to get a hit onto him while he continues on the painting. Note that this is super important if he's able to knock him down before the painting actually uh, is activated. The painting is already here to stun Eli and Regacy continues on the chase. Yeah, it's very important that he's able to get that down uh, in a narrow area where it's very difficult for the hunter to look around it. Um, and so at this point in time, he's just going to try to buy enough time to at least try to get the second painting with that owl that is going to potentially allow for that. Uh, but the owl only eight seconds, so it's going to be very close here. Ooh, excellent spot as well. He's going to buy some time and also gets the stun. But at this point, you have a painter with no more paintings left. 
and he's uh, he's kind of resided to being at this part of the map just so he doesn't disrupt Cypher rushing. So at least he was able to kite for one minute, but now it's going to be hard for the rebound kite to happen since uh, there's no more owl to work with. You know, you kind of see the, the downside of the painter is, you know, the, the, obviously the stuns are very good and against Opera Singer delaying that is, is very useful. But mm -hmm. in reality, it, the, the biggest problem is just that you... Uh, oh, it looks like we're going to see a pause here, but the biggest issue is that an Opera Singer can still catch up relatively fast, right? Opera Singer with the short stun, it's usually not enough for it to be too impactful. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say, usually having a character with a Veterans bonus might be a little bit better, uh, because you can use a Veterans bonus by a lot of distance that way, whereas the Painter stuns are short and the Opera Singer, and you don't really gain as much distance during that time. Mm -hmm. um, so even then, I feel like something coordinate, like Coordinator is better because the sun is a lot longer. Uh, coordinator is faster vaulting speed um, and can be used for rescues. And even a veteran's bonus character, something like even a lucky guy could be a little bit better there. Um, but yeah, the good thing about Painter at least is that the Painter does have that uh, the chair time in right. which the Wildling can go for the rescue at any point and then continue the chair time then. So um, mm -hmm. that gives the survivors a little bit more leeway when it comes to the rescue. Yeah, so it seems like a lot of people are also kind of shocked about seeing Painter come in again, more like surprised, but this is kind of the, how FPXCQ has been operating based on the notes I've been seeing in the day one and day two. Uh, that seems to be their go-to tactic going up against the Opera Singer, and they've been pretty 50-50 with it. They found some success against AWG, but uh, when I, they ran into, I believe it was another team that they go up against. Um, uh, checking out my notes. FPXCQ, FPXCQ. Oh, here, uh, Weibo Gaming. So yeah, uh, it right. was Alex. It was Alex, and uh, he was able to stuff. Uh, I think Alex got a five-point game from both halves. So he was able to kind of deny the the stuns. Uh, not the stuns, but he was able to weather out that storm. Which in this scenario, it seems like it's going uh, that way. So uh, just a technical pause, ladies and gentlemen. It's better to have it now than late in the game. I believe that was still us commentating Eli when it was literally like Alex was about to get the the second uh, survivor elimination. I think there was like less than twenty buzz. seconds left. Less than twenty <laughs> seconds left in the game or something. And there's an hour pause for less than 20 seconds, which, you know, got to make sure everything is up to par, of course. And luckily, mm -hmm. uh, this time around, it is going to be a little bit earlier. So I'll work out whatever that issue is. <clears throat> Sorry, as soon as possible here. And, um, but yeah, I mean, so far, things look pretty good for the Opera. Uh, the kite was not too long, but I mean, the Cyphers do have a decent amount of progress. We see Sarah Perfumer around 80 plus percent, wilding a little bit farther behind, but... Ooh. In reality, uh, it There's seems a... like a uh, high mm -hmm. There's a question here in chat that I think you can answer, Eli. Amiga Chan Desu is asking, why does the Opera Singer randomly hit the air when uh, Opera Singer is moving? Um, so when you... Uh, to, to exit the the shadow area, like the shadow realm when you're like dashing mm -hmm. around, you have to swing to, like, to leave it. If you, you won't be able to leave it. There's two ways to leave it. You can swing to leave it, or you can dash out of it to leave it. And if you dash out of it and you don't end up in a new zone, uh, then you will have a ten, about a 10 second, was it 10 seconds, 10 second cooldown something before your next dash. Um, but if you swing and leave the shadow zone, you don't have any cooldown at all. So when you swing and leave the shadow zone, you have no, um, you have no cooldown on the dash and you can just continue to dash somewhere else if you want to. Well, there you go, Mika Chan. I hope you're able to uh, understand that. Yeah, it's just more in like uh, rec uh, the just not having any cooldown canceling. So, uh, still on this pause, I would have to say, I hope you guys get your love and support to Meow because he's technically the only one on stage right now. No coach for GH. Uh, it must be a little nerve wracking him uh, just waiting out the pause here. So, um, I don't know what kind of player you are, Eli. Do you want to just keep, keep things going, or do you need to warm up for a couple of times before you uh, get to your tournament best uh, when it comes to the stage here? Um, for me, I... Well, obviously, uh, I will say this. Like, if I just, like, go and start playing, like, randomly, like, maybe, like, I go into, like, a rank match or something, the mm -hmm. first game is always, like, really bad. Like, the first game is always, like, you gotta, like, have, like, a warm-up game, I guess. Um, if you kind of just go in and start playing, actually, this is something a lot of players can do. Uh, for those of you who like to play rank, instead of just jumping into rank matches, you can go ahead and play 
uh, like 1v1 customs with your friends for like the first like five minutes before rank starts or something. And that way you can just kind of get, you know, just a feel of your uh, of your device so you're used to uh, movements and things. And so sometimes if you just jump into a match with like your, uh, the movements maybe will feel a little weird or you're like, oh, I'm not really warmed up or something like that. So you don't want to go into mm -hmm. the first match and just throw randomly because you didn't like, prepare, Yeah, warm up. Right, mm -hmm. so like, yeah, you definitely, this is something a lot of players can do. So if a lot of you guys uh, want to play rank, you can absolutely just um, go into customs and do like some 1v1s maybe with your friends or something, I don't know, to get uh, adjusted and prepared for your yeah. rank matches. Run some routes, just make sure that you got the skills on point. So yeah, that's super important. You don't wanna, I, I've had the, well, I think everyone has that uh, lose streak in rank where you just, next game, next game. But I think, yeah, warming up is super important. Maybe just playing a couple of quick, quick matches as well, just getting the feel of things, especially your characters as well. So super important. So hopefully um, both Survivor Faction and Hunter Faction are staying warmed up because once the once the referee starts the game again, uh, there's going to be no coming back, no turning back with that. And uh, it seems like based on the pause, I know it was just the first minute of the game. They got the down onto the painter. Uh, pretty standard opera singer early game. Uh, I don't think they even popped the cypher in time yet. It was Not close to popping, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, they didn't cross over yet. So, um, yeah, but I mean, I think it's um, usually like when the opportunity to really get the down really fast, when all the cybers are like 30% or less, then that's when opportunities can usually get the win. Mm -hmm. If they get it down after like a three cyber kite, then there's a good chance of them but possibly losing, but they can mm -hmm. still come back in the, in the end game and get a tie. Mm -hmm. And then if you get the first down with two cybers at like 85, rescue cyber at like 65, usually. Uh, probably going to be a tied game at that point. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of how the position is right now. Mm -hmm. So it's looking like a probably a tied position here, but yeah, we'll have to see. Yeah, it's hard to say since it was just the, the first minute. And you know what? This game could go by crazy. Like you can have the best hunter like start and then the mid game, if you can't find anyone, it turns out uh, they're able to get like a three person escape. So can't just call it just uh we can't call it just yet folks so do bear with us as you know what the the admins the tournament organizers in the back are trying to check uh the situation that is going on so just a just a tech pause just for them to figure out what's going on um but yeah in the meantime we're just chilling here eli uh you and you and psyche kind of had like a like a quiz thing on character lore um <laughs> how did that go with him um he told me that he, he read he used in his free time he used to read the like the book mm. you know like the mm -hmm. in-game book with all the characters and all their stuff right um like in his free time he actually like read the book like, I, I don't actually do that <laughs> um and he said like he can like name all the character lore names i was like okay so what's uh what's dancers and then he got it wrong and i was like you got it was close right he got yeah. He got Margaret, or said Margaret, Margaret, or Margaret, or something. And then, yeah, I heard the thing where he said it's like calling Kurt Burt. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then I asked him about what cheerleader, and mm -hmm. he didn't know. no, he didn't know it was Lily. I told him it was the name was Lily. So there's that. Oh, I didn't know that. Either. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, we, I think among all of us, I think yeah, maybe Psyche might be the most deep into the lore. I know Nell knows like a little bit of it, but he's really good at naming skins in the game. That's where he, that's his, his, his forte as well. But yeah, Psyche with the lore. You, is Chocho good with any of the lore or not really? No. <laughs> Chocho, Chocho. Just, is it just say no? Chocho only like, knows K-pop. Like... <laughs> Chocho only knows K-pop. So. Dude, I, I swear when Chocho sees all this, it's, uh, it's going to bite us in the back. It's fine. I think it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be worth it. It will be. <laughs> How are you doing so far with the predictions? Um, the first match was kind of close. You know, a cat could have brought it all the way to best of three, but unfortunate, um, they did fall again. I think I think they have only have one match left. But how are your prediction going so far, Eli? So far, everything's pretty good. I would say um, the only thing that is not was not predicted was FT winning against HHDG. What about uh, Wolves yesterday? And Wolves? I can't remember if it was Wolves. Wolves versus Scars? I think I was... 
Let me look at the... Okay, let me look at the groups. I have to visualize this and see. Go for uh, it. Because yesterday there was a pretty big match between Wolves and Scars. And yeah. uh, just to catch everyone up, that was in the <laughs> group C. So what's crazy is Scars is still at fourth place because that was their first win. Uh, for, yeah. Before, it, it, the people that are leading that group is actually TE, before you, and then Wolves, Scars, and Cat. T. No, he's still um, mm -hmm. Hold on, where is this? <laughs> Five. Yeah, almost there. Oh, uh, yeah. I, no, mm. coming soon. What? What is going on? Hello? Hello? <laughs> That's okay. why I got a pen and paper. Uh, this. Do you want me to just tell you? No, no, no. Wait, wait. I'm just gonna... Okay. All right. If you oh, my know, God. I think this Chocho... So long. This is where Chocho would possibly say oh, Eli is technologically challenged. Is that true? No. I just, no. like, don't... I just can't find the... That's what technologically oh, challenged means. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, like... Hold <laughs> on. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, yeah, wait. I, I, I can wait. hear Chocho say, oh, Boomer Eli. Oh, hey, yeah, uh, like all that stuff. Yeah, yeah but Chocho only listens to K-pop, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's not here, so she can't defend. So uh, there is that. Folks, let us yeah, know also if, how you're If I wasn't it. here, if mm -hmm. I wasn't here, she would have also said it, even if I couldn't defend. You'd be surprised. <laughs> Chocho doesn't have too much digs on you. Like, I remember really? commenting with her. Yeah, she's just like, she's all different then. Mm -hmm. she, she uh, can take it. All right. Got Looking it. at the groups here, Let's go. Group A, I had GG, Data, MRC, GR Dole. Okay, and well so that's far, that's pretty so good. far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Group B, I had Ars. Oh no, wait. Group B, yeah. I had HHDG, RC, FT. Come back. All right, put a pause in that, Eli, because okay, we'll it seems that. like yeah. we got the game going on, and the painter has it on the rocket chair, and Meow is chasing San S. San S being the perfumer. Let's see if he's going to hit or go back. It seems like he's going to go back, and this actually um, buys a little time. No, the blink, unable to get it. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting. Uh, gonna, yeah, another swing and miss here. Uh, excellent job from the perfumer. <laughs> You're just gonna wait for a next perfume before going for the rescue here. And now she's gonna go for the save now that her perfume's up. Gonna hit. Can you get back to the perfume as well? No, was not able to get back. Perfume should have. Well, I guess perfume could have gone back there, but. Well, no, would have fed more presents, so I guess it's okay. Vader's gonna take the hit here. Gonna use this time to just run to the corner. But uh, yeah, the Cybers are still pretty far along here. It's looking like a tie game at this point. Yeah, that was just unfortunate, that blink attempt, uh, when a unable to get it. But, uh, I mean, all things considered, Meow is still on top of just tying out this game. Uh, Perfumer is uh, sporting an injury here, so can't use that perfume anymore. It seems like maybe the Wilding will go for that rescue. Lower left side of the screen shows that the Wilding is just feeding that tinnitus. I'm just waiting for the painter to be in an optimal like uh, position to be able to go for that rescue. Let's see, Meow breaks the pallet. The Wilding is already here here perfumer has healed up wilding eats the hit and painter is back out seems like regacy not much area to work with last effort already popped in yeah meow is just hunkering down to get this tie yeah so this is one of those situations where you get the first survivor eliminated sent back to the manor um and then you have and then normally it's you have two survivors injured and one not injured just two went for rescue but here was uh healed up so that's actually really important that they have that perfumer healed up here. Additionally, because it is a perfumer and having a blow up for your perfumer, the perfumes is way better than half health. Uh, so that's very important here. Wilding's gonna heal up as well. Uh, they have 50% of the last ever. Still needs a full Cypher to go though, which you don't yeah. really want to be that in that position. Yeah, two Cyphers still remaining. That second to the last Cypher is moving along. Fortunately, Meow finds SXY, so this could buy him a lot of time. Well, this could buy the Survivor team a lot of time to find the last Cypher. So it seems like Meow is actually choosing to commit towards this Wildling. Not sure if this will buy enough time. We've seen a lot of this Wildling play just going around in a circle, just to force, this, uh, force the Opera Singer to chase on foot. But now SXY continues this on, and it seems like they haven't opened up their last Cypher yet, so this Wildling Kite is doing pretty well, but gets the pallets in the process. 
So we're gonna see, um, at this point in time, I think the, uh, since the teleport's back, I'm interested to see how, how he's gonna opt to play. We're gonna see the hit through the pallet here onto the wildling. Wildling can use this time to transition upstairs. They still need a full cypher machine to go, though. That's sort of the problem here, and there's gonna be no more tri turners available. Uh, we'll see how Meopi wants to use his teleport as this game progresses. Oh. Point of the last cypher, wildling will be knocked down here as well. Um, and we're gonna finally see one of the survivors go to the cypher, but yeah, it's kind of a bit slow here for FTX yeah. you know the survivors are having a bit of a hard time dealing with this upper scene. it's just unfortunate that the, the entire time the wildling was able to uh kite for as long as he could they didn't open up that last cypher now it seems like sans san s will have to focus on kiting and uh for a long time before that last cypher can pop no more perfume bottles for him to work with he's gonna eat the regular hit but that allows the wildling to get saved the boar is ready for him to get back on so this is gonna buy enough time for him to actually kite for as long as he can but no gets another hit and now goes through the pallet but gets a terror shock so that cypher is about to be primed but perfumer getting the rescue is going to be a bit dangerous yeah absolutely uh, and i think um okay so that cypher machine is almost ready here but uh it, again this there's two strategies for how opera singers play this they either tp last cypher or they save teleport for end game um and yeah trying to find the perfumer is the seer that's on the cypher, so uh, if you can find perfumer, that's really good here. Oh my god, through the window, is it going to force the pop to happen? No, they can't force the pop to happen. And now he's just going to teleport to just uh, make sure that he secures the wildling down. Seer is the only one left, no owl to work with, so it's going to be a bleed out strategy. From a tie, it's actually going to be a hunter win game for Meow if he plays his cards right towards this end game. Mm, looks like uh, Seer, yeah. I'm surprised they didn't just pop when Perfumer went down. Uh, I guess they did get the teleport out, but yeah, now the Cypher is, even though it's prime, um, interesting. Oh, he actually didn't see where the Seer is. Seer might just go for the, nope, he, I, he could farm an owl. I think he's going to try to get an owl first before mm -hmm. going for the Cypher pop. That way they'll have an owl for endgame. Uh, it'll make it hard for him to be down. Uh oh. And then Perfumer can also set up at the exit gate. Oh, yeah. they're actually going for it. He doesn't have the L yet, though. Yeah, it doesn't. Actually, it's kind of scary. He drops the pallet a little too soon. And that's actually going to secure another down. But Meow wants blood. Uh, Let's see if he can make it. I don't think he can, though. It's already halfway think. done. So he might have to just settle for a three-person elimination. Yeah, you know why he um, he went for the cyber pop right away? They didn't want to give the, the hunter time to get the teleport back online. Mm. Um, so that was sort of the, the big play. So if, if he stayed there... Waiting for the owl. There's an opportunity that the hunter gets their teleport. The dungeon Hang is on. actually close to Seer, yeah. So if Seer can potentially get up, maybe uh -oh. could go for that dungeon. Oh my god! Oh, he's able to actually snipe him away, but that was actually a close call. ZB is gonna get picked up. So Meow paying, playing, you know, things defensively. All things considered, him getting a sigh of relief on Meow's side. He actually got more than what he wanted. Got a three person elimination for GH to take the lead in this matchup. Absolutely. Uh, that's a really big, uh, really big play for GH here, considering that, you know, a lot of their matches have kind of been lackluster thus far. They've had a difficult time. Meow Pai's had a difficult time. So the fact that he's able to get three kill here against this mainland Chinese team, this is going to give him a huge lead. And especially with Dong Shuen coming up, you have to gain some sort of advantage from right. the, the Hunter side. Um, mm -hmm. And so... Yeah, it's just gonna be that, that's a really big uh, important game here now the important thing is that gh doesn't get four killed in return um mm -hmm. considering that yeah, that's definitely something that we've seen from dong Shun in the past and uh that's gonna be uh definitely yeah again like you're just gonna want to play for a tie this first round is so important mm -hmm. whichever side wins the opera singer round on the in the first round probably gonna go on to win the series yeah, it's uh, kind of crazy how in the last game it didn't work out that way. It was actually the survivors that got the, more points than the opera singer. So uh, with that being said, you no know, congratulations going out to, uh, to Meow for him to be able to get this victory for his team. But now, yeah, it's, it's time for the survivors to kind of bolster up and just, I would say, play safe because you're going up against Dong Shun, So you don't want to be too... Um, too relaxed and too uh, aggressive with your strategy. Just all you need to do is get a tie to score round number one, and round points are super important for the team. Uh, here we have the match data just showing us that it was actually a really good early game for the survivors. They were able to pop the cypher, three ciphers simultaneously. 
and then once it got to the uh the the stuffing of the perfumer when he was when the hunter was far camping the chair it was kind of the beginning of the end for the three to one game to happen absolutely um but yeah again this is well this may be a good start for gh the question is will it actually be enough um uh, dark twin you know still has uh, his opera singer available here in round one still has characters like uh other wood potential characters potentially like three much but probably we'll see the opera singer we did see him have a hard time against the Weibo gaming survivors in the first or one of their earlier matches and so that's going to be uh obviously one of the stronger survivor sides so that's something to take into consideration mm -hmm. gh has been playing survivor very well especially in southeast asia but in the global stage they have struggled a bit so this matchup will definitely be uh you know going against Dongshun, one of the best hunters in the world definitely going to see if they can um get up to that level for this match yeah and gh also is very open that they are up for the challenge they actually got drafted into a really tough group and having fpxeq here also having weibo gaming here it seems like they had their hardest their hard a hard hard road to start out because they start out uh day number one and weibo gaming was their first matchup i'm just trying to remember yeah it was so they have two more matches left after this one against Axis and AWG or did they face uh wait I think I, I have notes on that uh oh they did face Axis and unfortunately they lost so their last match is between FPXEQ and AWG for them to secure enough points for the playoffs uh Eli you're muted sorry I coughed and front you muted. um <laughs> AWG, I think that matchup between GH, that wouldn't be close. But I actually think GH will have the advantage there, uh, only slightly. But I think they, they will have it. Um, but uh, yeah, this is when they start are gonna have to win as well. I think if they can manage to get a win in this match, then they definitely have a good chance of going two and two. But mm -hmm. yeah, this match is is still one of their harder ones for sure. So uh, for sure. definitely very challenging. I would say this is not the hardest group, but I would say this is the second hardest group. And so the fact mm -hmm. that GH has to get through uh, a lot of these really hard teams, Weibo, obviously uh, very challenging, FPXEQ very challenging, um, and the Japanese teams as well. So mm -hmm. uh, um, they had, I think, yeah, only professional teams in this group, of course, with the exception of GH. Yeah, you're right uh, on, on that front. Yeah, all these are professional teams or IVL teams. GH is actually one of the odd ones out. Uh, speaking of groups, I know you mentioned uh, you had a really good prediction when it came to group a you were talking about group b how how are your predictions on the group b side of things oh yeah let's see what we have here so again. no no it's good i got it okay. um so for okay well we'll get back to that oh. in a second let's talk mm -hmm. about the survivors here for gh with gh gh uh Jalcon with a 80 percent win rate 27 percent escape rate 102 seconds Average damage time actually very high here, uh, very impressive. And of course, Shao Kahn, uh, the only player from Indonesia on this team, uh, and will be playing from home it looks like. And then into the rest of the players, of course, from Thailand we have GH Skyfall, 18% win rate, 36 escape rate with an 80 seconds of entertainment time, 1.18 on the average rescue. Skyfall will be playing the rescuer for GH here uh, with characters such as first officer and mercenary. Yeah, he's actually. Uh, came out of player retirement. He was the coach at one point of Team GH, and he was actually there on this big stage of Call of the Abyss, but as a coach. But now he is a player. Now let's introduce Narakun, one of the kiters of the team. Look at his devilish stare with the red hair. My goodness, he's having a staring contest with this camera. But you do not want to go head to head if you are a hunter with Narakun because he plays the stunners, folks. He is an amazing kiter, an amazing addition to GH, has a bunch of highlights, and uh, trusts that he can contain when he needs to and give that support. Yo, the man is not blinking here. Really. Yeah. Um, pretty good. <laughs> there we go. Uh... Oh, no, he Staring contest. Okay. Oh, no, yeah, there you go. Okay. Camera Another. one. Uh, anyways. <laughs> almost. Almost got it. But anyways, little boy here. Oh, he's... We're, we're doing No, nope, we're, we're still doing, doing it. Again. Uh, Dude, oh, he's he staring to my he soul. Blinked. Okay, okay, there we go. He's, he's doing uh, the he peace sign. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, little boy, <laughs> 96 hours can save his time. Very, very, uh, very strong for um, mm -hmm. for GH, and obviously, little boy, probably the best kiter. Uh, one of the best kiters in Southeast Asia, for sure. FX EQ, you have uh, Dark Twin, 47% win rate, 35% 35 for eliminations, which is very high. Um, 
and average elimination is at 2.59. Mm -hmm. I, out of all the hunters, I believe this is the hunter that needs no introductions, but we're giving it to him anyway. One of the IDL demons. Okay, I think GH has like this contest, a staring contest, guys. For fans of GH, this is the time for you guys to screen record the, the staring contest. If you want to stare, have a staring contest with any of the survivors of GH because they are staring them down. Oh my God. You know those cams, uh, the, the, the fan cams that like in hockey games, you see those memes where they, they just focus on the crowd and there's that one kid that just has a staring contest with the camera. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've seen that. They got that sports games. That happens Did he blink? Sometimes. Did he blink? Dude. The eyes <laughs> moved a little bit though. <laughs> uh, what would you do if like yeah. the, a camera, like a cameraman was like pointing the camera right in your face too? Would you I wonder if there's a cameraman or if it's like one of the already pre-set up cameras because sometimes they have those as well. I think it's a um, roaming cam though, see? It was able to oh, kind of yeah, dolly be. down. <laughs> little boy. I don't know. You got to give it up to GH. Still in high spirits. You know what? The big task ahead of them going up against Dong Xuan, one of the, I would say, the scariest hunters in, in Call of the Abyss and in IVL. So they're taking things in stride. Oh, Nerekun. Oh, there. He's back to looking. No? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> he's able to get the... Okay. The cameraman finally broke him, chat. Absolutely. Uh, someone said... Looks like I was old. I'm not, I'm not that old. Right? Am I old, Fudge? You're not old, dude. If you're old, then I'm I'm ancient. Uh, it's like, you're not old. It's you're not that... old. You're not old. Mm -hmm. Chat, not maybe old who said that? Who said that? Do I own a typewriter? No, I do not own a typewriter. Just because I had a difficult time. Yeah, he was looking for standings. <laughs> I bet Cho Cho is Cho Cho is laughing. Yeah, Cho Cho is. Uh, no, I mean, I own a typewriter. I do not own a typewriter. <laughs> no, uh, I own a computer. Do you own Do you own a billfold, Eli? Uh, a I don't. Machine. I don't even know what that is. So. Oh, billfold is just a wallet. You oh. You fold money. I mean, I have billfold. a I have a wallet. Mm -hmm, but I call it a billfold. I don't know nothing about a billfold. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm over there, but. Anyways, uh. <laughs> A uh, priestess and uh, priestess and antiquarian first year, so pretty standard antiquarian band, and yeah, not giving GH their priestess character that they really prioritize, especially here on Chinatown. They're good priestess mm -hmm. match. Yeah, that's actually a good call on Dong Shuen's side and also the coach. We've been highlighting how good Little Boy is on that priestess, and they're just denying the fact. So they definitely did their homework. They definitely watch IVC and also the Koa qualifiers to know that they do have these strategies with that priestess. In a map like this, there can be interesting uh, setups that you could do with the Priestess. So, seems like they picked up the Cheerleader and Perfumer to start things out, and also round it out with a Seer. All right, still need a Rescuer though, so let's see where we're gonna go with that. Mercenary should be the last band for Dunkshwen, followed by, I imagine, Officer. Oh, looks like Wildling, actually, so they will have Mercenary available uh, for the Survivor side here. So, a lot of the teams have been prioritizing Wildling, and Hunter's actually mm -hmm. banning the Wildling as well, just because you know, uh, what happens with opera singers, a lot of operas will go towards the rescuer first and try to make them waste a lot of items. Mm -hmm. Whereas with Wildling, you don't, oh, they're actually not gonna go off Murphy at all here. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be the first officer. Whereas with the Wildling, you don't waste your item because the boar will just regenerate after 30 seconds. Right, yeah, I think having the first officer pick up is actually really good. We saw like the huge benefits of having first officer. <laughs> Skyfall is pointing his teammates here. No, focus on. Him. I want it. He wants this another staring match. I think Nerekun's having none of it. We're just waiting to see the spawn locations. Uh, oh, oh, what is happening? <laughs> what is going on, man? GH, you get a team just having fun. I feel like the crowd is also playing up to, you know, the antics at GH. They're trying to take things in stride, but trust, ladies and gentlemen, once the round starts, it'll be all business and they need it now more than ever. Eli and I um, emphasize that this is the chance for them to get points, especially with the setup that Meow has given them. Absolutely. Uh, you see, yeah, GH having some fun over there. It's having some fun over there, but Gong Xuan is locked in. Uh, he's ready to, uh, you know, go out and uh, try to take out these survivors and give Epic CQ an early lead here. Uh, not even flinching, he's just, yeah, he's ready to go. All work, no play. Grind, don't stop. Losing is not an option. I think everything, <laughs> everything 
in your life needs to be taken mm -hmm. with a competitive mindset. Yes. You have to win at all costs. Exactly. Uh, well, so some other things. Gonna Who's going to carry the win. boats? Yeah. <laughs> always think, always be competitive. Always think about winning. Losing is not an option. There's one mm -hmm. more thing I'm not thinking of, but yeah. Wait, wait. Be boards don't hit back. What, what else we got? What, what else yeah, are the same? I don't know. I don't, never heard that. I don't know. It's Bruce Lee, man. No? Anyway, but no. is what it is. Be water, my friend. And what is Dong Shuen gonna be? It seems like, uh, really thinking about this, but I'm not sure if he's gonna try to risk not picking up Opera Singer because they're definitely gonna go with Opera Singer at the end. It seems like our our chat has also caught up to the Riz, the Riz God himself, Narakun. Uh, <laughs> Man st stared down the entire picks and bands, bro. And uh, he's still taking things in stride. So we got a countdown clock on Dong Shuen's side. Uh, I'm pretty sure he might pick that uh, pick up that opera singer unless he picks something else. We're probably going to save that other hunters for round number two. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we see the Dong Shuen uh, fan sign in the crowd here. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, uh, that's cool. Um and yeah, it's, it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. It's cool, man. Cool, cool man. Cool, man. <laughs> cool, dude. Cool, dude. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Um, someone wants to buy me a typewriter. I don't know, dude. dude. I don't even know how to use a typewriter, so yeah, I just know it operates on ink ribbons. So I don't, I don't even know what that. I don't even know what that is, guys. Like I like I'm literally like I'm Gen Z, bro. Like I don't like know. I don't even know what this, this stuff these people are talking about. <laughs> Like, just because I couldn't find the, the thing look, doesn't mean, like, that you, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> you're Gen Z, but I have to say, like, your music taste is pretty deep. Like, it goes it goes beyond Gen Z taste. So It's just diversity, you know? Yeah. But, but yeah. Uh, the type right I feel like that's not... I mean... Like, if you guys if you guys literally heard how I talk in a non-professional manner, I just talk like a Gen Z kid. Like, when I, you know, obviously, when I'm commentating <laughs> here, I, change, I gotta change my voice. I gotta be professional. Yo, if, like, if you want to, you guys, you got you got to follow Eli good. on Instagram or TikTok because he actually schools us in the Gen Z slang. So yeah. appreciate that, Eli. Thank you for educating yeah. us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's for real, for real, coming in clutch for that. Yeah. I'll be like, "What's up, Podge? Like you trying to go get some Chipotle or something? Like, what's, the what's, what's the move? What's the move, move Podge? Like what, what, gotta, what, what are we doing, bro? You, you gotta pay the Phantom tax. You gotta. That's what I'm saying. El Riz energy, bro. What's that? El Riz. That's what I'm saying, bro. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Again, go some Chipotle. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> tell me about this spawn location. Oh wait, no. Tell me. Talk to me about the Versano build. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, we well, have you know, is here. Uh, we do have uh, Sierra <laughs> with broken windows, perfume with broken windows as well. Uh, we see the cheerleader has a kiting build, but actually no borrowed time. And we will have Ty Turner there and the officer with Ty Turner as well. Dark pretty standard trip card detention with uh, blink. So very traditional. Uh, layout for him. We usually see the perfumer with the one uh, having kind of mm -hmm. turner, but let's take that's not gonna be the case. And can we go straight for hotel? Really trying to find that your first. Yeah. So once again, Elio and Potch Spice on the mic for the second half of round number one. Little boy. Uh, heralded as one of the best kiters in Southeast Asia. We'll take this. So Dong Shuen teleporting downstairs. Little boy able to catch that early on. And now tries to go for the drop down here. Dong Shuen. Has to be very careful. Tried to go for the drop down hit, but little boy still continue on this kite. The owl is already ready for him to use. Yeah, taking some risky plays here, but uh, you know, avoiding those drop down hits early, which are pretty important here. Just gonna try to, gonna, we're gonna see the, the owl get utilized here. Just gonna try to um, obviously waste as much time as possible. See your first is usually not ideal for the survivors, but um, it's a lot of little boy, very strong kiter, so. And now has to eat the hit for him to be able to transition away. But wow, able to practice some discipline, forcing him to actually go but through, blink. but forces the yeah. blink. And now Dong Shuen has the seer down. That was super important for him. Yeah, a good blink here to secure the down. Cyphers are look to be about a tie here, 70%, 80%, and 55. So definitely not enough for any sort of win from GH survivors, but a pretty standard opening here. Um, and a pretty standard first kite first here does get blink out as well. So definitely does the job here, does uh, uh, the bare minimum for sure. Probably a little bit past that as well. 
But mm. yeah, I don't know if it'll be enough. Yeah, it'll looks like it'll be enough for a time. Oh, Skyfall getting an early, eating an early hit here. So let's see if Dong Xuan's able to catch Little Boy. Knows that someone vaulted the window and notes that this is Little Boy. So he's going to try to work with the pallets that he has here and try to continue on. But he's going to get caught out in the open and he just gets a regular hit onto, onto Little Boy. So Dong Xuan has his uh, second... Oh, well, this is going to be a second time on the rocket chair for Little Boy. Yeah, second time. 80% uh, on that first cypher machine. I think that was the officer's first cypher. We see officer moving on to a new one at this point. Cheer later is going to be the survivor who still has tied Turner. I don't know if they're actually going to rescue. I feel like they may just leave this. Keep in mind, they only need to get two survivors out the gate here. If they're able to get two out, then, uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, enough for them to win the first round. Mm hmm True. So he's well on his way for him to do that. Uh, let's see how they're going to try to get themselves out of this situation. It seems like Seer will soon expire, so they're just accounting for the end game, just for them to have enough ciphers to push uh, just for that tie, just so that Meow's game would not go in vain. So let's see who he will be chasing next. Will it be Skyfall? Will it be the Riz God himself, Nerakun? Or will it be Indonesia's finest, Zhao Khan? It seems like Zhao Khan might get caught out here in the hotel area. Absolutely. It looks like uh, this is a pretty good find for Dong Chuan. He's able to chase the survivor with Ty Turner. Um, also avoids chasing the Perfumer, which is not a survivor he really wants to chase. Although this is going to get the survivor some time to heal up here. Um, and yeah, I mean, just good job from Zhao Khan not to get too close for the to the hunter here. Avoiding the shadow to teleports. Yeah, so let's see Dong Xuan trying to close out the distance between him and Zhao Khan. There's no more pallets for him to use, but now the cooldown time of the cheer will slow him down for him to catch up. And Dong Xuan has his sights set on downing Zhao Khan. Cyphers are nowhere near from being done, unfortunately, so Zhao Khan has to just use what he has in this area. Continues I literally just on the water chase. And I had a little... Go for Sorry, it. I was, uh, I was drinking water I and I had like a like a like an air bubble or whatever it's called uh -oh. i don't know anyways we're gonna see um <laughs> i don't even know how to explain it but mm -hmm. anyways uh yeah cheerleader is gonna leave on the ground here it's gonna some perfume trying to bait out a perfume which he is able to do here and um yeah just gonna keep going after the perfumer here really trying to secure a second down mm -hmm. okay never mind going back there we go. Okay, so seems like he's just going to gather. Uh, yeah, he's he just trying to see if he was going to be able to patrol around that territory, but he's going to go on chair, but unfortunately a pause in deduction here, folks. So hopefully uh, we get to find out what's going to happen in just a bit. Like, I would say the first time that pause happened, all right, it was still early in the game, but things are kind of setting in stone, right? It seems like Dong Shen's well on his way to... Uh, possibly get a tie on how that is going to go or at the bare minimum just a tie but how are you feeling about the matchup so far you like oh you're, uh, you're you're muted again it's looking like it could go either way but <laughs> um i think that at this point in time uh Dunchlin seems to have pretty decent control cyphers are not really ready just yet i think they have two cypher machines that are approaching ready but uh there's mm -hmm. still an opportunity for Dunchlin to win obviously uh, GH will be fighting for this tie, but yeah, I think if anything, uh, DX has a pretty good position. Um, if it's not even, if it's not a four kill, I still think you could probably three kill uh, based mm -hmm. on how we're looking right now. Yeah, uh, hopefully we'll be able to see that. Uh, again, based on the previous game, Meow got a three person elimination and Dongshan needs to get that just to continue this best of three going. So again, just a slight pause in the action, folks. It was the referee that had that pause. So um, hopefully all the conditions are still all right. But this gives us time to talk about the group stage, right? We were talking about Group B and how your predictions went, Eli. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. So we have... <clears throat> so I think for Group... Okay, so for Group B, I did have HHGG first, uh, which I think RC might be the ones coming out at first here. But mm -hmm. at HHGG, RC, FB... Uh, RD and Omni, and then mm -hmm. or what? Well, looks like we're no still boss. Okay. Oh no, we're back. Okay. Oh, we're cool. back. Okay. We're so back. seems like Zhao Khan will be seeing the rocket share here close to Skyfall Cipher. So that's quite unfortunate. Seems like the production doesn't want us to reveal our, our predictions, but nonetheless, Skyfall has to pop the watch just for him to continue on the chase here. Yeah, it's gonna go for. 
I, I think at this point in time, yeah, it's gonna have to use watch. I think at this point in time, uh, because he was able to share on the cipher machine, it makes it very difficult for the survivors to actually finish the cipher. Keep in mind, they do have progress on a, a extra cipher machine, which could be pretty good for them. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's gonna be really difficult. I think Dark Twin has pretty good control on this on this match as of right now. So is Teleport Dark Twin too. Mm -hmm. Hits him through the window, so this is gonna be a little tough for them to work past. Seems like the Hotel Cypher, but the Teleport will happen in Skyfall Cypher. Skyfall caught out in the open here without any items. Double down situation. Nerekun is going to have to pick someone up for him to be able to continue on this while Dong Xuan will chair this first officer. So excellent control that Dong Xuan has. He realizes that he needs to be able to put at least one person in the chair to not um, have these two Cyphers popping. But it seems like they're going to go just picking up. Uh, Zhao Kahn, and it's going to be, oh, Narakun to take this next kite, and he's able to get a perfume. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it looks like we're going to see, uh, yeah, I mean, at this point, even with both Cyphers at 90 83%, it's really hard for them to pop both of them. You know, as long as Dong Shun can control both, you know, both, uh, both areas, he's able to teleport around with the Shadow Clones as well. Perfumer. Being at half health is really important, getting the down here as well. Mm -hmm. uh, this should be a, a four person elimination as long as Dungeon keeps at this pace. Yeah, uh, it seems like the ciphers aren't even close to being. Well, they are close to being a threat, but it seems like, you know, first officer on a rocket chair, perfumer down, Zalcon left. Uh, doesn't have cheers to work with as of now, but he's gonna have to che uh, take a wow and it just goes through the window that was quite unfortunate so triple down situation now it's just only a matter of time for this checkmate to be official dong shuen able to get a five point game out of gh is huge perfumer though trying to make a beeline for the rescue yep absolutely uh this game's not over just oh. yet but yeah mm -hmm. it's not gonna not gonna matter here unfortunately and yeah i mean gh they looked like they were having a, a pretty good start there potentially enough to, uh, to pull out a, uh, a victory in this round. But uh, yeah, even with Meow Pai's incredibly strong start, we talked about would it even be enough against the power of Dong Shuen. Dong Khan trying to stay alive a little bit longer, but not gonna matter in the long run. And uh, that means FTX EQ Koch is actually gonna take the, the victory here in the first round as long as this down is secured. Yeah, this is actually kind of dangerous because FTX EQ taking the first round and if they continue this at this pace or this streak, they could actually even deny the best of three to happen. So you got to give it up to GH for trying their best. But yeah, Dong Xuan being the X factor here for them to be able to turn a 3-1 in their favor in a 5-0 game. So it's going to ultimately lead to a 6-3 game in favor of FPX EQ. Yep, Dong X being the X factor. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just uh, oh, getting stuck here a little bit. Trying to find the last survivor. And nobody has self-heal, so as long as he doesn't, uh, you know, allow the survivors to die on Nudgeon, which obviously he's not going to do, he is able to secure a 4 elimination here. And yeah, moving FPXCQ to a 6-3 to three lead for the first round. Mm -hmm. Talk about how important this first round is. Um, based off of this tournament, I think every team that's won the first round so far has won the series, uh, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, that first round victory is really important. Mm-hmm. Especially, uh, man, this is uh, this is really tough for GH because, like we said, they only have two matches left, including this one. So, the fact that Dong Shun is able to make that that, that work out, it, it got them the victory and it gave them momentum coming into round number two, and also it really made their uh, map pick work out since FPXCQ did pick Chinatown. And the way Dong Shun is able to control the match, and if you kind of compare it and contrast it to how uh, Meow played it out, it's just a lot more. Uh, Dong Shun just has a lot more comfort with this character and had the game i know there was like tech pauses here and there but he had that game one in the five minute mark of the game yeah definitely uh you know it was, it was looking like obviously as the game started uh, we can revisit from the, the beginning uh the first guy from the seer was pretty good you know seer usually is not very strong solo kiting especially against mm -hmm. something like an opera singer uh you can waste time with the owl and you can as long as you can get the blink out it's usually enough for a tie which Mm -hmm. Little boy did that. He was able to kite a decent amount of time, get the flick out as well. Kind of set up everything pretty well. But as the game progressed, uh, Dr. was able to move around, get some free hits, and down the the new chase targets relatively fast. Driver stopped to heal at one point. And while they were healing, Jacqueline was still getting chased. So uh, as mm -hmm. long as you know you can keep that pressure on as the hunter, it's very hard for 
the survivors to tie in mm -hmm. really saw. Yeah, it was just uh, quite unfortunate with how the things played out. We're going to check out the match data here, folks. You know, they popped the two ciphers really well, but at the two minute mark of the game, that's when the first survivor expired. And the the three survivor mid game was where Dongshuan was really able to set up like uh, a scenario where he was not only like chasing someone on top of a cipher, but he was also chairing on top of a cipher and then catching someone off guard really far from the rescue and just forcing uh, GH to kind of play in his pace. And by the end of it, they didn't have enough ciphers to push for the end game, and you know he whittled down all the items and separated everyone for them to uh, ultimately uh, give them the five point game. So congratulations goes out to FDXEQ for getting five points out of GH in this round number one second half. So scoreline is going to be six to three coming into round number two. Yeah, definitely um, FDXEQ taking early again. Once Mapai was able to get that three kill, we thought that it might could be enough. Uh, considering that Darkshwin had a difficult time against Weibo with his uh, his opera singer, I think he only managed to tie, uh, or yeah, was it a tie or was it a three skip? I don't actually remember, but he had a dip I do remember his match was a bit challenging. I think it was a tie, mm -hmm. um, but this time around, yeah, Darkshwin coming out in even stronger condition with the opera singer today, and uh, appears to be ready for for GH. Yeah, I mean, we, we talk about how, like, the group stage matches, like, every time they keep leveling up. So uh, I guess that was a slight hiccup on the rogue for Dong Xuan when he went up against Weibo Gaming because he didn't perform to his best. But it seems like he's definitely dialed in and locked in with how well he performed with that opera singer. Um, not much to what's that right home about when it came to how he, I mean, not much to improve on because he was really able to just operate uh, completely. I think he also played his strengths and you know it had to force out the blink but it still worked out in the end for him so yeah this is a terrifying uh match to go up against uh for gh but gh does have map selection so there's still a window of opportunity for them to be able to come back in round number two yeah definitely um while we're on this in between time we can look at yes the... finally finish yeah let's go yeah um So Excuse, for yeah, mm -hmm. so for Group C now, I think I had uh, I don't remember if I had T or Wolves first, but the top two were T and Wolves, and then okay. we had Scars at three, B3 at four, and Cat at five. Although that one's mm -hmm. shaping up to be a little bit different, I think that's going to be Cat Cat and five. We have that one right, but the rest of it could uh, go anywhere around. at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then for Group D, I had uh, Wavo first, Epic CQ second. X wave third, GH4 and AWG5. So currently that's shaping up to be mm -hmm. perfect. Uh, so it'll come far. down to the AWG mm -hmm. and GH matchup, assuming FX CQ is able to hold on to the lead for today. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this one, of course, is still not over just yet. We're going to look at our uh, highlight video for this first run. <laughs> Here we have another fan cheer for FPX EQ fighting, move forward fearlessly, go, go, go. And an excellent Joseph cosplay here. I mean, the cosplays have been quite on point here for everyone. So if you guys want to get in on the broadcast, share your cosplays, share your fan cheers, selfies, memes, artworks, whatever it is, just use the hashtag, hashtag koa 7 support and also hashtag your favorite team and win. Not sure if we're going to see another one, but this is just a beautiful piece of uh, cosplay uh, photo here, even with the, the mirror in the background. So again, thank you so much for sending this over. Hopefully we'll get to see more cosplays with a hashtag koa 7 support. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think, you know, who was it that, who was, I've, I've seen this cosplay done before, but I can't remember who it was. Who was it that mm -hmm. we, I feel like, 
someone uh, in Southeast Asia. Fun? Yeah, who was that? Was NTT? it NTT? I Oh, NTT, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to NTT. He is an amazing yeah. cosplayer. Do follow him on his socials. I think it was. Uh, I think we saw him do this photo uh, photographer yeah. cosplay before. Yeah. Uh, Interesting. Was that right? Yeah, it was. Okay. Yeah. Now I remember. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nice. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I saw it. I was like, oh, that seems like I've seen someone do that again. Mm -hmm. It's a very famous one also with Joseph. But welcome back, guys. Yeah. We're over here at round number two between the team of GH versus FPXCQ. If you're just joining us now, GH is put in a tough spot. Meow did an amazing job in Hunter round number one, getting a 3-1. But ultimately, it was down to Dong Xuan, and he was able to get a 5-0 game with his opera singer match. But GH, uh, uh, Eli, is there any options that you think they can go with when it comes to map selection? Yeah, um, well, I think that everything that every hunter that uh, Meow Pai plays, uh, Dongshun also plays, mm -hmm. and then Dongshun also plays Dream Witch more often than Meow Pai. So, um, yeah, realistically, I think that it doesn't really matter. I guess at this point, you're just going to choose an out that's going to be best for your hunter. So, assuming uh, Meow Pai likes to play characters like Breaking Wheel in round two, especially mm -hmm. considering that they need to. Um, start to make a comeback. Yeah. A map that's good for Breaking would be good. Uh, Ever Simming Town potentially could be good. Moonlit could be good. Anything that could be good for Breaking Wheel uh, is going to be most likely GH's option. I think that's something that Meow is going to consider is, is playing Breaking Wheel here. Um, and also, you know, obviously there's other characters that are available and other characters that he would play, but I think Breaking Wheel seems to be Meow best, usually his best option for late round uh mm -hmm. four kills yeah when the thing is when we seen him over here in southeast asia it's like he usually plays the like um yeah like breaking wheel oh he has also a dream witch but yeah he just plays super aggressively it takes big risks but i think in the in this high level it's 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 getting really dicey for him to try that but i think now is the best time than ever to try and bring that out bring out that aggression yep. just so he can kind of steer the ship in gh's favor so if we go breaking wheel what map could we possibly see yes yeah, so a moonlit or ever sleeping would be very uh likely um and i believe they could pick chinatown as well because it was chosen by a different team i think they can still choose it as their own Ooh, pick i'm true, I'm not true. i think that happens uh, in I ibl believe. yeah mm -hmm. yeah i believe i'm not sure if the core rules are different but um mm -hmm. yeah they could do that but yeah any map that's gonna be good for wheel basically would be best for um, GH, I, I would think, unless Meow Pai wants to play a different hunter. But yeah, I mean, assuming that he likes to play Breaking Wheel in, round, in second round, probably something like Moonlit. Ever Sleeping is good because you can also play Nightwatch. So basically, if he goes Ever Sleeping and he's worried that they're going to bring all Flywheel for Breaking Wheel, then you could play maybe Nightwatch, Nightwatch where mm -hmm. Nightwatch is good against uh, Breaking Wheel. Broken Wind is usually better against Nightwatch than Flywheel is. So you could kind of like reverse. Mm -hmm. counter that in a way and you know also uh i think we already did we back to the we, fan or, yeah. we've seen this again I, i've seen the chat okay. they really liked it so wrong, wrong one. Back, okay, to there this, go. back to this and yeah, and hey good job cool. eli that was an excellent prediction a lot of people are actually uh talking about your prediction saying should have followed your predictions to keep our apples safe so yeah do follow eli for the predictions here but we see that it was ever sleeping town that was uh, picked up by GH. It is going to be Meow to kind of break the, the streak of uh, FPX CQ. It's super important for him to actually get a win here just so that their team can sigh, uh, sigh of, uh, can ha breathe a sigh of relief uh, because their FPX CQ can potentially deny the best of three if they're able to win this uh, second round. So fingers crossed for uh, Meow over here. Yeah, definitely. Ever soon town. Again, a lot of options here. You got Wax Artist, you got Night Watch, you have Breaking Wheel, so many uh, choices here are available. And actually, with the we've seen Wax Artist start to rise up a little bit here recently, so maybe that's gonna be uh, something that I yeah, will play here as well. Um, you know, if you're going to a, a match and you predict the team is playing Heavy Flywheel, then Wax Artist can be a very good response. And also, Wax Artist can be very good against composition, certain compositions. Sometimes teams play compositions, the counters turn hunters and they forget about wax artists and the wax artist comes out and really is effective against those team comps. 
I'm trying to remember the last time I've seen Meow use Wax Artist, but that's definitely something that he can bring out. So just a tough call all throughout. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, big shout outs to the people that are watching. I see Chantel Bestie is actually in the chat, you know, um, and Erica. Yes, I do understand you guys. So please, uh, yeah, just saying what's up to everyone in chat. Nico is here as well. Uh, Thief BBG is also in chat. Just a girl hyphen TH. Toby Fizz, Snooty, just a girl. Uh, who else is here in chat? Let's look. Cynthia is here too, bros kisser. All you ning ning as well. Big shout outs to each and every one of you for joining us. This is day number six. We're definitely halfway through the Call of the Abyss group stage. And the group stage is definitely kind of, it's, it's starting to set in stone, right? Some of these teams have already put enough points in them. Uh, in, in the the group stage for them to kind of garner a safety at least in first or second place but what's scary about this is that gh and fpxcq are literally at the third and fourth place spot of group d so gh needs to be able to knock on that door to be able to be in in that safe zone of the first three spots in their group stage so eli without further ado we're going to start the picks and bands while the global bands since they picked the seer and the wildling will not be able to be picked up by fpxcq all right yeah they definitely got a uh what is it knock on, knock the door wait knock on the door or knock the door down and get yes into the I'll third do. place position something like Let's that go. i don't know yeah <laughs> anyways uh priestess and the patient are gonna be the bands here hmm. from Real Pies. So pretty standard of a, honestly could be anything. Patience good against uh, Nightwatch, Breaking Wheel, and Wax Artist. So that's understandable. Looks like we're gonna see Psychologist and Merchant. Merchant is hmm. a good counter to Wheel. But Psychologist is interesting because Psychologist is weak to Wheel and also weak to Wax Artist as well. So that's something you have to consider. So Psychologist here seems to not be very optimal uh, going into what Meow Pie has available. So I'm not too sure about this one, but looks like we're gonna see forward band as well. So uh, that's, that would definitely indicate uh, breaking wheel bands, banning a forward. Also, Antiquarian is last. Mm. So FTXCQ ends up on, what, which, which character are they most worried about? It's gonna be a lawyer, so that, again, could be anything. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, the lawyer just being just well rounding everything sure giving it gonna promote cypher rushing no terror shocks when you kite uh but yeah maybe the psychologist is just they uh, actually i don't know it's, i know meow does have a dream witch but i don't know if he's gonna bring it out now in this map boy merchant like you said does counter wheel um wax artist i guess would be the safest bet do you remember if he brings out Nyad? Uh, I'm not sure, but I don't think Nyad is really going to be great for, uh, for Meow Pie here, just because, uh, I mean, against this team comp, it would just be Psychologist can take three basic hits, which is really strong. Uh, Merchant can fly away once the Hunter gets watered, waters off an area, um, mm -hmm. and then Lawyer is a good decoder in, in general. Also, Nyad is not really a Hunter that's going to, uh, that Meow Pie, it's not really his play style. He likes mm -hmm. to play a bit more aggressive Hunters, uh, like... For example, Night Watcher, Breaking Wheel, also Wax Artist. So I think that I think it'll be one of those three. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't think he'll go anything else here, um, considering that he is down and uh, the stars of GH did have a hard time against Dong Shuan. So he's gonna yeah he's gonna want to play something with higher wind potentially. It's gonna be the Breaking Wheel. Yeah, Breaking Wheel, like you said, is that type of hunter to promote that aggression, to promote that uh, mobility, to just stop Cypher rushing. But the Toy Merchant able to at least move on around the map. Psychologist also interesting, I guess, maybe for rebound kite or rebound rescue potential. But when it comes to the pickoff of targets, he's definitely going to have his fair share of chases. I don't know if he's going to bring insolence just so he has the extended spikes right away. Uh, we just have to wait and see the persona build that Meow will be bringing to the table. But we are going to see a breaking wheel in Ever Sleeping Town. And this was the hunter that was in the meta when Meow rised in prominence in IVA in the, our commun in the community tournaments. So he's going to bring back the, the hunter that got him a lot of notoriety. Yeah, so wheel here is um, obviously a, uh, a high risk, high reward character. But considering that, you know, uh, GH survivors... Yeah, having a hard time for the dog Shuan matchup. Definitely gonna want to play a hunter that can gain a lot of points here. We're gonna see uh, Meow Pie spawning Graveyard. This is so he can actually block off the Mercenary Cypher at Fate Gate, forcing him to rotate to a new Cypher to slow down Cypher Rush a little bit. 
Um, and yeah, also a breaking wheel. Most hunters wouldn't want to spawn a graveyard because you get rotated very easily because you're spawning away from a lot of the survivors, but breaking wheel obviously is not going to get rotated in that fast one you can catch up right away. And it actually spawns into Lawyer, which is pretty good for me. I actually don't understand the... Uh, I guess Psychology is also an easy chase for wheel, but do you think Lawyer would want to be in the safest spawn in middle mm -hmm. two story? But I guess not. We're going to see this is a trump card detention and no insolence for Meow Pie. Wow. As for the survivors, it's going to be we have flywheel, flywheel, and flywheel. So they definitely expected <laughs> this breaking wheel. And uh, unfortunately for Meow Pie, uh, the, the surprise wax artist, the surprise night watch might have been a bit better here, but they mm -hmm. uh, definitely knew this wheel was coming. Definitely scouted early on, folks. So Eli O and Potch Spice commentating this next match. The first half of round number two and already immediately spots, spots out Sans, the lawyer. Let's see if he's able to down. It's going to be hard without insolence here, but in these in this small alleyways, let's see. He gets the first spike. That's super important. Can he get the next one? That is the question, folks, as Meow continues to rotate around. There is a catapult for him to use here, so Meow has to be mindful of that. Yeah, the setup is really nice here. He's just going to wait, I think, until... He takes the second spike and then jump on the catapult. Uh, mm. Now, if I could technically get out of wheel form early, but no, he's just gonna. Yep, they're just gonna the jump into two story here. Does have blink here, so he could just wait for his blink. Uh, the goal for the lure is at least kite until blink is ready. He does have the map; mm -hmm. you can see where the hunter goes, so he won't get light tricked as well. Um, that's the power of lawyer in these uh, uh, these two story areas. Mm -hmm. Pre-dropping the pallet. That's excellent strategy for Sans. Continuing on the chase here. And this is what's so tough if you're a hunter and you see this. Goes for the blink, flywheels through, and now it continues on the rotations, Eli. Um, yeah, that's really game-changing. Um, that, again, one of the things with wheel that makes wheel, you know, the only consistency factor with wheel for the most part is that you can go for that blink with two spikes to secure your first down. But because he's able to fly with that, avoid that he has to catapult again, although Meow is going to get a little bit closer here. It's not going to be as effective, but yeah, lawyer does get trapped here at the pallet, but it's still going to be a mind game. Going to wait for the next drop. Uh -oh. No yeah. more flywheel. So yeah, he was kind of cornered there, but all things... Uh, how things played out, Till did pretty well per to promote Cypher Rush. They're working on their fourth Cypher. Two are about to pop and putting themselves in a pretty okay spot in this game. Yeah, I think this is a pretty much a three Cypher kite. This is exactly <laughs> what the survivors needed to potentially go for a win here. Looks like we're going to see the Boy Merchant, Boy Merchant is mm. going to get uh, the rescue here. Uh, no Tide Turner, but Mercenary will have that for the next save. Mm -hmm. So it seems like just waiting for the opportune moment to rescue. He was stalling the chair time. Already to rescue the, seer, uh, the the lawyer. So Sans doing a great job avoiding all the spikes here. The lawyer will fall down to a regular hit. Unable to get the, the spike onto him, but oh, vaults a little too much there for Meowth to be able to down the lawyer again. But like you said, Tide Turner will be on the mercenary side. So uh, the fact that Toy Merchant was able to rescue unscathed is actually a huge thing. Yeah, they need to get the last cyber started as soon as possible uh, because they have 60% on one, but they don't need to have the last cyber just yet. Mercenary, of course, will be able to buy a lot of time here and also save with Tide Turner, reducing the last progress. Progress in the last cyber being started. Uh, let's see how much time Mercenary can waste, though. Mercenary mm -hmm. needs, again, needs to waste as much time as possible for rescuing. Then the Tide Turner will come into play here. Uh, not full presence just yet, though. There's no insolence, keep in mind. Yep. Ooh, Mercenary actually having a bottle of perfume. He's going to get caught in the trap, and Lawyer, unfortunately, will fall down there. So last effort has already been popped. The snap is also going to happen just to injure the Mercenary. So last Cypher is not close to completion, and they don't have any stunners here for them to be able to save this Lawyer. So it seems like possibly a, a, a tie game for... Uh, we see, but hang on. Okay, he's just going to go the other way. Yeah, no, he's uh, not going to pick up inside the pallet there. They really were trying to go for that, but... Uh, looks like not going to work out here. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, a smart decision for have to execute to start a, uh, an extra Cypher. That way, when Meowth goes to pressure with this one, they're already going to have an extra Cypher. 40% of the way done. Wow. One way teams can lose. Yeah, and that's why Merchant's so good against Wheel. But one way Yo. teams can lose this. Mm -hmm. He's going to have normal, which is actually... Hmm. That's actually a huge misstep from from yeah, I'm gonna, I'm going to stress that really hard. That is a huge mm -hmm. mistake, and the reason why is you cannot have normal unless you have 
some sort of One pressure, like a down survivor or mm -hmm. somebody on chair. If you just go for that abnormal play with no pressure, they just continue to decode multiple ciphers and it's impossible. In fact, they'll have the cipher machine most likely prime before the abnormal's not even back. And even if it does come back to abnormal that cipher, they have the other one. And now he no longer will have a trade for Lakey. So unfortunately, when you have normal with no pressure, you are not adding anything to your position. Wow, and just like that, Toy Merchant falls down, but the Cypher is about to be primed over yep. the lower left side of the screen. Psychologist is ready for that prime. And now Mercenary, the best possible rescuer, will be on the case here with three elbow pads. So unfortunately, Toy Merchant does not have any more catapults, but that's all good because there's no detention in this game. So we're going to see how this rescue is going to happen. SXY just buying enough time here to just account for the end game. Oh my god, sorry. Merchant also holding on to the <laughs> Merchant also holding on to the uh the flywheel, saving it for the end game here. Right. Uh Mercenary just gonna continue to uh to touch Stall. the chair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not actually sure what this yeah. does since the cypher's already ready, but Yeah, and he has abnormal, yeah. so well, interesting. So it seems like Mercenary taking two spikes in the process. We're gonna continue on. Is he waiting? Okay, there. He gets the rescue done. Not sure how they're gonna play this last end game since Meow was deciding on whether to chase the Toy Merchant, but he's gonna go for the Mercenary instead. SXY yep. will be falling down to this one hit because he already has three spikes on him. He's gonna place a trap. He's gonna go through it, but the snap is actually gonna be the one to bring him down. I don't know why hunters do this. They chase the rescuer end game, but the rescuer has three elbow pads. Okay, so now he's gonna leave. Change targets to the Toy Merchant who is now uh, caught. Yeah, the, the hunter is able to, to see them here. He didn't save his flywheel. He actually used it earlier on, which mm -hmm. uh, I'm not uh -oh, sure I agree with. ZB. Oh my God, swung a little too early. ZB was still caught in the trap. He still has one more placement to drop, but in that process, they already opened up the, an, an exit gate. So Toy Merchant has to remove the spikes here. He's going to snap, but that's still going to be a little tough for this Toy Merchant to get out of the situation. They keep going around, but it seems like they might just go for this tie. Of course, yeah, I don't think... Oh, he's going to go back into Will. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think uh, Merchant can actually make it to middle. It's going to be a bit close here. He needs to get out of Wheel Pump. He can just go for the snap. Which it's not... Oh, it's still on cooldown, though. Mm -hmm. uh, can he fly to Dungeon? Oh, my God. He's going to try to go for it, but he hits him out of the air, and the Toy Merchant unfortunately gets anti-aired. And we see that Meow is actually going to go for the tied game. Yeah, that's going to be a 2-2 two to two for this round here. Uh, I did try to, to make it past there. If only he had a catapult to work with, but unfortunately not the case there. So, yeah, that's going to be a 2-2. Two to two. So, again, excellent job from Meow Pie to get two survivors eliminated. But, uh, again, that's going to beg the question, Posh, will that be enough? Or mm -hmm. GH against Dong uh, We saw in the first round, the three elimination. Seemed like it was going to be enough, but mm -hmm. ultimately Dong Shuan able to work out of a tied position and get a win. So now mm -hmm. it's uh, same positioning here where uh, you just kind of play for a three elimination. It doesn't even need to get four. It just needs to get three down here. Um, and usually we're thinking, okay, uh, it's a survivor side game when it comes to rounds two and three. So in reality, that's going to be very difficult. But not mm -hmm. with Dong Chuan. He's uh, consistently been able to, uh, you know, in at least in situations like this, he's been able to win a lot of the time. GH mm -hmm. had a hard time in the first round. You know, it's going to be... Uh, mm -hmm. There's a chance of a similar result unless they're able to figure out, you know, what went wrong and how they can come back here in, in this situation. Definitely a dire situation for Team GH, so I hope they're able to come up with a strategy. But we have to give our congratulations to the Team FPXEQ for them to still maintain this lead. And, you know, a tie, it's still a tie, but they still honor the 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 game of Dong Shuen getting the five point game. So in point in point speak, we're still looking at a uh, it's at a six a three point differential and a round one win. And like you said, um, yeah, Dong Shuen known for actually gaining momentum as the uh, as the rounds go on. Uh, I think he yep. won against AWG 2-0 in round number two, I believe. And I think it was the he was able to tie out in uh, up against uh, Weibo Gaming. Uh, but yeah, it was the survivors that unfortunately fell to Alex. But in this case, the survivors are actually tying things out and also. Uh, being able to defend properly here in the second game. So, yeah, tough call for the GH survivors because 
uh, Dong Xuan could, uh, yeah, just at least get a three-person uh, uh, kill, and he'll be able to call it a victory. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah, if you're Dong Xuan here, with Opera Singer being banned, uh, you know, Poch, we know he's got a lot of hunters, a lot of options. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, what are we thinking for, for a win hunter? What, I mean, there's plenty of options, go, but... Yeah, he could go with Night Watch, like you mentioned. The other the other options that you mentioned that uh, Meow didn't take up. I understand why Meow took, uh, took up the Breaking Wheel, because he has done... Um, remarkably with the breaking wheel in the past but in, under yep. these circumstances he needed more than just a tie so he didn't go out so um possibly i, I would want to see a night watch come out of dong Xuan. um we did see him bring a naiad against awg but i believe that was round two and that was leo's memory so it did work out in naiad's favor but that's for me how about you eli yeah, I mean, I, I know he uh, does prefer the Nyad uh, in round two, but when it comes to Wind Hunters, obviously I think Geisha would be very good, mm. uh, or Dream Witch would be very good. So, um, we've seen him prioritize the Nyad a little bit more, so I mm. think if I had to guess, he'd probably mm. just play Nyad here, but uh, yeah, I mean, Nyad, obviously, if he's able to get a tie here, he's able to hold on to the lead and be in a good position, or if he's able to get three eliminations with Nyad, then that could be great as well. Uh, we will see most likely the Priestess ban first. I think probably Priestess and some other character. GH, obviously, their GH's biggest weapon is Priestess. But if they mm -hmm. don't have Priestess, they do seem to struggle a little bit. Um, yeah. So, especially on Everceiving Town, Priestess would just be a normal ban anyway. So, mm -hmm. might as well take that off the table. Yeah, it's tough. It seems like the the opponents of gh have definitely scouted them out they knew that okay dream witch is a big or they they knew the picks and bands accordingly they knew that the priestess was a big threat they accounted for the breaking wheel of uh meow for them to bring flywheels and just kind of defend accordingly so it seems like fpxeq is just a step ahead in this game but that's just how it's going gh ha that does have a possibility for them to be able to come back from this but um, as the days have been going on, as Eli and as Psyche have witnessed, and I've witnessed also because I'm watching in the background, usually the one to win round one kind of dictate how the momentum will be shifted in round number two. And more often than not, we've seen a lot of two zeros uh, from the previous days. So this could be added to that, or this could be the exception to that. Yeah, definitely is the case. Um, but I think, because um, again, GH needs to win this match and the next one and you know we talk about how it's very important for these teams to start winning rounds start winning points so right. gh really is going to need they're going to have to win I, I think gh cannot afford to tie this round and then go for a, a large point win in the last round or something like that i think they're really just going to need to start winning rounds winning mm -hmm. points winning a lot of points back so i think gh really needs to try to win this mm -hmm. round and the last round if they want a chance at playoffs uh, so I think it's very important that GH goes for a three escape here uh, at all costs. With a tied round, obviously they could still win the last round by by uh, six to three or higher. But I yeah, I really think that uh, GH is going to they really need to start winning rounds and getting a lot of these points back. So I think mm -hmm. going for a three escape here is um, the rest chance for making playoffs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, with that being said, there's definitely a lot of pressure on GH. So chat, if you guys are for Team GH, you need to send them all the support for through chat or prayers or anything, any good vibes that you can send them. I know they're sending it back through the camera. I know that they're kind of having fun being all silly, but they really need it now more than ever. You got to love the lightheartedness that they're bringing to the table. But yeah, Eli kind of broke it down that this is kind of do or die because they're going up against AWG next. And AWG also is in that similar situation where they're needing to look to get points on the board for their team. So uh, here we have it, guys. Again, shout out to everyone that's joining us in the chat. I see Moons in the chat. I see Erica, officially new. Uh, who else did I not mention in chat here? Kamu? Yeah, Kamu's in chat. Sasha, uh, Nico, FMVP Sans. Any shout outs you want to give out, Eli? Uh uh, I think you probably uh, got it pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, did you well, say Chantel? Did you already say mm -hmm. Chantel? Or? Yeah, I said Chantel when uh, okay, yeah, well, the first time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was giving him a first round of shout outs. So. Got yeah. it. Kind of crazy how um, 
GH is um, kind of in uh, staring down the barrel of the gun here with uh, going up against uh, Dong Xuan and Dong Xuan for sure is a hunter that would not. What's up? Someone said. Uh... Mm -hmm. I think someone said something about patrol or BQ. Uh, Whoa. I don't, I don't think that's even. I don't think that's a. It's a feast uh, or BQ. I don't know, man. <laughs> a feast, there's a feast yeah. or patroller, but yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Anyways, Interesting. Uh, Interesting. Zero priestess here. Yeah, zero priestess mm -hmm. here. Definitely don't want to give the priestess to GH. Mm -hmm. Take that mm -hmm. off the table makes things very difficult for the opera singer. Uh, will be banned now, it looks like. Um, and yeah, let's see what Dong Shuan goes with his later bands. Looks like Antiquarian and. The psychologist, which is pretty normal for going against a naiad, and actually, this is a, a good combination to have together. And also, this is a tough combo for a naiad to deal with. So maybe they're trying to play around naiad here. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe mm -hmm. they yeah, play something else. Also good against Dreamwitch too. Also good against Geisha. So yeah, Dungeon not taking down the Antiquarian is a bit tough here. It looks like we're gonna see first officer as well. And the fact that they brought it out during the global picks, right? This They're really trying to go all out, but uh, they'll have to think about not having Antiquarian or Psychologist in game number three once they're able to pass this test of uh, round number two. So Barmaid as well, just to account for the Dream Witch uh, of Dong Shun. Two healers, a rescuer, and a stunner. So this is potentially the last um, survivor lineup we might see with GH in this matchup. So hopefully they play their cards right. I think there's a geisha coming potentially. Potentially, um, okay. I know there is a antiquarian on the table, but psychologist is chaseable, barmage is chaseable, um, and also naiad would be very difficult here. Dream which is unplayable uh, mm -hmm. against this comp, so yeah, I, I guess. Uh, it's actually pretty tough to say. Mm -hmm. A lot of people in chat playable. showing some love for Dongshan's geisha, and it's been a while since we actually saw it. So I'm open to seeing that Geisha. Yeah, definitely. Or Wax Artist. Uh, Wax Artist also would be fighting as a scene composition. Oh, last year, um, Eli would probably love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. But uh, Wax Artist is uh, starting to become a better hunter again. So uh, mm -hmm. you never you never really know with the Wax Artist. I'll start mm -hmm. playing Wax Artist again in rank, I guess. Maybe. Oh, yeah? We'll see. Who's, who's your uh, hunter preference choice? Uh, who are you using hunter rank now? Uh, mostly Nightwatch and BQ. Nightwatch, BQ, and also play Wax Artist, but not as much. Uh, like once in a while. Oh, Gamekeeper. Oh, wait. Gamekeeper. Okay. Uh, I guess this, let's see. Gamekeeper against this composition. Hmm. This is, I'm Sorry, not really sure how this would play out, actually. Mm -hmm. I haven't really thought of, uh, it's hard to tell, actually. Um, Barmaid. Let's see, Gamekeeper hook is what, 14 seconds? 12, is it 12 or 14? I can't remember, one of the two. So you can get your hook back before the Barmaid gets her heal off. So I guess that'd be, make you pretty strong against Barmaid. Uh, Psychologist does require three hits though. Um, as long as Antimarin can get the stun, Gamekeeper needs to sort of play, keep distance to get the hook um, and then get the hit. If you just get close to the Antimarin, just gonna stun you. So yeah, Gamekeeper is interesting. Kind of felt like Geisha might have been good there or Possibly, uh, what was Wax. the other Wax Artist, yeah. Mm -hmm. But Gamekeeper, uh, Gamekeeper has been pretty standard for uh, the round two situation in most of these, uh, for most of these teams in this tournament. Yeah, and it was the Gamekeeper to actually win it for uh, Team FT, so Dong Xuan. He actually, we've been talking about GH's position also, but uh, and for FPXEQ, they want to be able to, uh, to move on up in the rankings above Weibo Gaming and above Axis. So they're also fighting for their lives here to stay away from the lower bracket of the uh, of the playoffs. So yeah, Dongshan will have to fight for his life here because the 2-0 is going to be huge for them. And spawn locations here, it seems like Zhao Kahn, Skyfall, and Little Boy would be surrounding this gamekeeper while Nerekun is going to be far away. Talk to me, Eli, about the Persona builds. Um, so... I think here it looks like they were with Triple Flywheel. They were definitely considering uh, probably something like Geisha, maybe some. Okay, well, I mean, Triple Flywheel would be Dreamwitch, Geisha, and that's it, right? Dreamwitch, Geisha, and Nyad. That, that Nyad. Dreamwitch, Geisha, right, and right. Nyad. Those would be those would be the what Flywheel would be for. Broken Windows would be for Wax Artist mm -hmm. and uh, that other hunter that I was just talking about. What is it? Um, Nightwatch, there we go. Nightwatch. Wait up, no, did I say Nightwatch? Yeah, Nightwatch Wax Artist, there we go. 
Okay. Oh, this is both so, here. Wow. Yeah. Very interesting. Zhao Khan now has to take the first kite as the barmaid. So he's going to make a rotation. But actually, when he takes oh, the turn, Narakun's actually going to get. Yeah. Oh, my. So now tries to get the first hit. Change of elevation, but he's still going to be able to hit. Uh, continues on the chase so here. So he's, he, mm -hmm. Yeah, so he's waiting for the hook to come back before hitting. That way he can hook before the drink is, hit, yeah. you know, is able to, to heal her. He doesn't want to, like, ha he wants to have the hit and then the hook. Yeah, and then he wants to have his hook ready to go for the hit after. Narakun being in the and being in this vicinity is actually not also promoting Also waiting for Blink rush. as well. Sorry, that's the uh -oh. other thing. Oh, yep. good stun here from the anti. Mm -hmm. Is he going to use this... the Blink? Uh oh nope. Barmaid able to heal up? That's huge. Yeah. So now it yeah, seems he, like... He kind of blink there, but... Uh, oh, the sun was still in play. Yeah, that sun was so crucial here. He's going to set up some traps so she can't return to this area here. Going to go for the hit. Barmaid not wanting to run into the trap. We're going to see the flywheel here. Good mind game from Zhao Khan as well. Able to avoid hits. Going to go for the blink. Barmaid does not have... She does have the drink ready. So she's going to start the drink yet again here and also was able to avoid the, the tra or the trap uh, i guess was taken down by the oh my friend. god and narakun oh. just continues on the ob and yep. now it actually lets another drink off the barmaid he misses the swing there but now dong Shuen had enough of narakun has already him injured so a whole bamboo stick has caught and, and also the full kit of the barmaid has definitely bought enough time for them to push for the mid game but the antiquarian trying to drop down the pallet but unfortunately what? there for him unable to get the stun and dongshun was able to get the down yeah so i don't know how that didn't hit but yeah the first time but yeah i was able to get the down here uh onto the antiquarian pretty good cyber progress for gh maybe enough for a win but the rescuer cypher is only 50 so that's not too great here uh it's looking more likely to be a tie if anything looks like we're gonna mm -hmm. see the chair uh onto the corner house cypher machine which is one cypher that does have a lot of progress here uh we're gonna see does see sky fall in the distance here so he's not gonna allow a free rescue um again dr when simply get a tie here i think that's gonna be perfectly fine uh tying this round isn't too bad for fdx cq obviously they would like to try to win things here it looks like we're gonna see another pause uh so yeah <laughs> quite the interesting turn of events eli because of how uh well i would say that uh, they went really for that support uh we were kind of concerned at their onset that when um Zao the barmaid was kind of rotating on top of the cypher of the antiquarian but turns out the antiquarian really needed to like support an ob for the two drinks to actually go off so uh, i'm gonna ask you a question like that was a uh, two drinks and also a whole bamboo flute spent at the first round in tri in in favor of two ciphers being popped. Do you think that's a fair trade with how this match is going? Uh, well, obviously it's definitely benefiting the survivors. I think. Um, so for right now, I'm trying to think of how uh, Dong Chun could try to work this into a win. Uh, so basically what's going to happen now is Officer can come for the savings, he's able to get hit with the Officer with the hook, that means he can ship with the Officer at a quarter health, uh, they're going to get the rescue. Um, the Antiquarian is the survivor that's down, right, yeah, so there's no mm -hmm. option for harassing. So Antiquarian's then going to get down after because she's, uh, I don't, did she have any stick left? I don't remember. She had none. It, uh, it, she had she none. Okay, used yeah. it all. Yep. And then Antiquarian, yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay, so Antiquarian then will be easy down for the gamekeeper after that then they won't have any more tide turners, so they're probably, will they be able to go for rescue at that point? It depends on where the cypher machines are at. Um, but they really want to get a three escape in this situation, so they're probably going to push the rescue then. Um, and then it's just going to come down to if it's going to be a farm or if the Dungeon goes for a terror shock on the chair. Of course, that is a possibility with game we have to think about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it just a tough uh, mid game that they have to play since resources are dwindling. But we're going to look at the stage. Oh, it seems like we're already back in the action here. Skyfall has to be very careful. Zalkon's also here. Hook. He's able to hit him through the hook. Yep. And now Zalkon getting the rescue here. And you know what? Uh, we didn't take in consideration a double rescue, which actually is weaker for GH because they lose out on decoding progress here. Uh, Narakun's going to try to kite in this area. Try to push the tram. Dongshun's going to stand here, I think, until the tram leaves. Maybe. Yeah, he's waiting for the tram to leave. So the star can get it. Gets the hook over the barrel and is wow. able to get the down here. Uh, last ciphers are almost ready and mm -hmm. actually should have enough here. 
but it's shared on the last cipher, so that's not going to be enough. Uh, that's going to be really crucial. The fact that he can keep sharing on this cipher machine is game changing. And the fact that the officer wasn't the one to make the rescue meant there was no tie turner, which means he could, the cipher could not get far enough away from the chair, uh, from the cipher machine. Thing is, the first officer is possibly going to get it, but no, he gets hit outside, and the last effort pops. Uh -oh. Can he make it in time? The five seconds. Five no, seconds. able to get it. Wow. Oh my god, that this five is five seconds. That is what Dong Xuan needed here. Little boy, the psychologist is going to potentially transfer in for the rescue here, but uh, oh well. I don't know, Pach. On the, on the next to... episode of... <laughs> the next episode, uh, we're going to have to wait a, a week for release. So mm -hmm, you guys... For sure. Yeah, uh, tune in. Okay, guys, we'll see you soon. Yeah. Uh, don't forget Actually, that like was the end of the season. So you're there. not going to wait until next year. <laughs> um, the writers haven't finished it yet, so... Yeah, yeah they'll leave uh, you on a clip, cliffhanger so you'll mm -hmm. come back and, and uh, spend more money on our show. But you have to wait a year to see it. So. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about that, the, the five seconds. That was really unfortunate. That was twice that Dongshun is actually able to predict the first officer's pocket watch. So really unfortunate for Skyfall yep. that he was kind of found out during the hypnotism phase. If he made that rescue and Tide Turner did pop, that would be extra precious seconds on the board for Team GH. And you pointed it out, like double rescuers didn't really pay out in the end there because the over support meant that the cypher rush i mean they, they lacked in the cypher progress for them to push or at least threat the end game and that's another reason why gamekeeper is, is a good character because with the the rise of first officer uh gamekeeper's hook hitbox is so uh it's so auto aimed to a point where like you can hit the officer in the watch more often than you think and we saw that actually twice it's been two times now in which he's mm -hmm. been able to use that watch to hit the first, uh, or use that hook to hit through the watch there. And so, yeah, at this point in time, it's uh, with the first officer down, we're not sure if the psychologist was trans was coming in for the rescue, but we're not sure if she's able to make it just yet. Um, but the the problem is like, survivors, they keep getting shot on the last side from the shoot. And now Dong Chuan's gonna have his straight back suit enough. I think it's around 10 to 20 seconds left on the cooldown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if he's able to have it down and have pressure, he could have normal, uh, or he could just continue to control that last cypher machine, force him to open a new cypher, and maybe he's able to snowball up to a win, or maybe certain survivors get a, a rescue off, and somehow the psychologist can body block until the officer heals up and then goes and does the last cypher, but mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be pretty difficult. All those answers will, all those questions will be answered in the next season, guys, so yeah. <laughs> tune in. Unless the show gets cancelled, and then you'll never uh, know. You'll never know. Oh no, we're gonna have that to have a lot. I've had some, I've had so many shows where they just cancel it. And it's oh, what cool. shows in particular? Uh, there was one show on Netflix that was, I think, canceled because of COVID. It was like, it was mm -hmm. called like the Society or something. Society. Okay. Where it was like, was yeah, like. Oh, hang yeah. on. Oh, we got renewed. Uh, oh, they did make the rescue. So mm -hmm. yeah, it looks like um, we're into the chase, uh, into the next chase here. Officer on the ground, stuck on it, trying to dodge the hook here. Dr. really wants to, all oh, able to avoid the hook. And we do have flywheel on the barmaid, so she can flywheel Whoa. on the pallet here. There's the flywheel to avoid the hit. Excellent job from Zhao Khan. Straight back online for Dong Shuan. Let's see, but she's kind of trapped here. Yeah, um, so now the hook does the land. Chip, you know. And yeah, the last cypher not being worked on because they know they have to heal up. So let's see what Dong Shun decides to do. He's going to try and check out the Cypher. He's just going to use the traps to just make sure that this isn't going to move again. Two Cyphers still remaining. The one Cypher, uh, that, that's the 50% the one, is over here. The 92% one is at Corner House. So Skyfall getting healed up is going to be a huge deal here. But he has no items to work with. And he has not seen the Rocket Chair just yet able to get the the wall the the hook slams here just to kind of slow him down skyfall has to be very careful he gets another hook and gets a hit as well barmaid and skyfall are already um one chip damage away one hook away from falling down and you know what the issue is here is that they're gonna they're giving a lot of they're giving too many free hits too much free damage to the gamekeeper here uh Dong Shuan's going to teleport as well cypher machine is going to be popped but they still have 50% to go on the last Cypher. Mm -hmm. uh, and runs into the trap. And now the issue here, Hodge, is that uh, 
Uh, you see the health, right? It's yeah. Really it's not yeah. ideal. Just one hook away, they'll be falling down. And they're, they're actually split right now. So they're opening up a new Cypher, which is all right. But it's not enough time because you have unlimited hooks on this Gamekeeper. Uh, if he finds just a Tinnitus or at least knows where the Cypher is moving, then it's going to be Curtains for GH in this matchup. So, and the thing is, yeah, they need to get three uh, They need to get... Uh, as much survivors out as possible. Absolutely. Uh, it looks like we're going to see uh, continuing. Okay, so he's going to try to cut off this rescuer before she made. Oh, bad. Gets closer to the carrier. He has one more hook to work with here. Or he has infinite hooks, I guess, technically. Gets oh the my. hook onto the barmaid, but she did actually mm -hmm. make the save. Going to go ahead and go for the chair there. Still oh. working on this last cypher machine. He's mm. gonna chair between both cyphers. So the both cyphers that are 50 here. Oh, maybe is, not. Oh no, he's not. He's gonna bring her all the way to this other, other cypher. But this mm. does allow. Yeah, see, this does allow the corner house cypher to be worked on. So I would have liked to see him mm. chair in between here. Um, but it looks like that's not the case. He's gonna try to catch up to first officer. Does have a illusion though. Mm -hmm. So first officer. Has to be very careful here. Skyfall able to use it. Is he going to get the tear shock? Oh my oh. goodness, able to stuff the rescue. And that is quite unfortunate because that was the big deal. He's uh, for uh, Dong Xuan to actually call a checkmate in this scenario because it is little boy, two survivors remaining. Well, you know, one hook, one hit, and little boy will be falling down, but He's going to try and go for this rescue. He needs to go for just a regular hit, and that's going to be GG's. The flywheel even gets baited out, and Dong Xuan gets the five-point game for his team. Incredible showing for FPXCQ. Just an incredible showing for Dong Xuan. Dong Xuan has definitely yep. arrived, folks. And unfortunately for GH, uh, they were not able to get a victory in this, uh, in this third match of the game. But you know what? GG's are going to be called... Dong Shuen approaching just to shake their hands and to show of mutual respect for both teams. Yeah, Dong Shuen definitely locked in for this one. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, a good performance from both sides, of course. GH definitely doing their best with that, but it's going to be FPX EQ who are the victors for this match. Unfortunately, this is going to knock uh, GH out of playoff contention, moving them to 0 and 3 now, and FPX EQ. Moving to, uh, are they, is it two and one now or, or one? Two and one. They two were, one. A, they unfortunately lost to Weibo Gaming. So, yeah. And then, yeah. Mm -hmm. They, did they win against, what was their other matchup against? Axis. Uh, they, they won against AWG. Ah, uh, that's right. Yeah, okay, yeah. So they're going to move on to two and one. Um, and yeah, the last match will be against Axis, who has also been playing very well. But yeah, unfortunately for GH, that a really hard group for them. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say one of the hard, one of the top out of, I would say this is one of the top two hardest groups uh, mm -hmm. that we have in this competition. Yeah. And that's saying a lot because the hardest group that everyone heralds is actually a group A, which is just full of IVL and one IJL teams. But yeah, it's just, it just goes to show that GH really swam with the sharks here. They really tried their best. They came in in good spirits and I hope that they still keep their good spirits because they still have one match against AWG. And uh, the fact that they're on this big stage as a team, and they've been together for the longest time. It, it's still a moral victory in, in their scenario. It's, and after all, it is Dong Xuan. You know what? He is one of the goats to play this game and the hunter side. So hopefully they gain some experience in this, uh, learn some lessons, and uh, hopefully end in a bang with their matchup against AWG. Absolutely. We see, um, you know, GH, uh, you know, every year they seem to get a very difficult group in the group stage. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, hoping uh, one of these years it'll be a little bit easier, but... Uh, yeah, this time around, unfortunately, a bit challenging for them. Mm -hmm. And Dong Chuan played well. I mean, their star was pretty good in both games. Yeah. Uh, this time around, also, the star was pretty good. Excellent setup. Uh, I had support with the Antiquarian, but yeah, DX able to work things into a victory. I really thought Cyrus had a good chance to three escape. Definitely a great chance to tie. But the yeah. fact that he's able to somehow work that into a four kill uh, is honestly pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just the, the predictions on Dong Shuan. I'm looking at the replay now of, uh, of our feed. Just the way he was able to stuff the rescues, he knew where to go. There were some mixed, missed hooks here and there, but ultimately his 
his cool calm collectedness and also him deciding to chair at certain spots and uh, and transfer chases if he needed to even after uh not the most ideal start he was still able to get a four man elimination definitely speaks volumes of how well he knows this game and how well he plays so congratulations goes to dong shun with his back-to-back -back five five uh point game for uh the hunter side absolutely um and i imagine we'll probably be uh seeing him as the mvp as well mm -hmm. with the double four elimination here and um, yeah look at the statistics here we see the first kite from the barmaid was 142 seconds 90 to 70 seconds from the and Craig with the support again looked like a very great position but overall um Dong Shun was able to turn things around and get a win from that spot you see mm -hmm. uh great job though you have to give a shout out to Meow Pai from GH as well I um, was right. able to get a three elimination against the survivor team um and then a tie against the survivor team usually that's enough against mm -hmm. most teams for a victory but against mm -hmm. a team like FXEQ with Dong Shun as a hunter not always the case yeah, hopefully the GH will see the chat. You know, the chat is telling you know, spirits up, chin up to GH. You can try again next time. You could you know, you could definitely end on a high note against AWG. But we have to give our congratulations. We got to give the flowers to Mr. President himself, as the the chat likes to call him. We got the MVP Dong Shuen. five point game consistent in round one and round two. Not just with the opera singer, but also the gamekeeper, which is the ivl meta right round one opera singer than round two uh gamekeeper um no one better no one else better to do it but dong shren so congratulations to him and congratulations to the survivors of fpx cq yeah i know there's some talk in the chat about gh just want to point out everybody that uh it, I, it's not that they fell off or anything like that it's just that they have a very challenging group yes correct. Um, they have some of the best uh professional teams in their group uh, that they have to fight against um and uh yeah that's that's really important for uh for how these matches will play out so definitely something you have to consider having to go against all these competitive professional mm -hmm. teams is not easy i think with a different group gh could easily dominate um but they consistently get in one of these powerhouse groups and can be uh definitely mm -hmm. very challenging for them yeah yep that is the way things go here the dems are the breaks and i think you know what with gh going up against like powerhouse teams like weibo gaming and also fpxeq you can only learn so much and there's always other competitions i know there's ivc that's coming up as well for the southeast asia region then you know what there's also next year so hopefully they'll be able to you know what bounce back from this and it's not over just yet we're still gonna see one more gh match up against awg so keep supporting gh folks uh, they're still in the group stage. I think they'll have uh, an amazing showing up against AWG. So there's that. And you know what? Uh, the two sides to victory is always, you know, what? Uh, there's one team that uh, has to face defeat, but there will also be a celebration on the other side with FPXEQ because you have to admit FPXEQ is also kind of finding their footing. In the qualifiers, they didn't have the most stable performance. And the fact that they were able to hopefully find their stride here would say a lot in their ch storied chapter as a team. Yeah, definitely. Um, but, you know, keep in mind, GH still will have one more match True. to go. So we'll see if they can uh, at least try to secure a four spot. And I would hope so for the Golden Apples because we have <laughs> uh, GH in fourth and AWG in fifth. So, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. We'll see how that one plays out. Looking into the groups one more time here with this result. Uh, right. Let's see how they're shaping up. So right now, uh, Group A mm -hmm. uh, is perfectly lined up with the exception of Doe being 4 and GR5. Mm -hmm. um, so that's perfectly, Group A is pretty uh, pretty well set up right now. Group B, uh, the only missed call, I think. Although with FT beating HHDG, FT has a chance at second place now. Right. Uh, RD being 4 and Omni 5. Uh, would be how we called the apples. Um, anyways, we'll get into our interview. And, uh, yeah, Hello, Hello, just player introductions. Hello, everyone. I'm SXY. 
下班的，想下班了，想下班是藏不住的。那我们马上回到今天的比赛吧，就是想问一下。First off, big congrats the host says on winning this match in spectacular fashion. 满意的一个状态吗？准备。开心努力。开心努力，还有进步的空间，还是比较谦虚的。那。要这样的，求胜者这边也是。Like, uh, finally, yeah, I guess it's time to go home. 这么锐利吗？今天对于大家的表现，其实打的还是很稳扎稳打的。我们继续努力，好好调整一下，好不好？那问到学妹吧，今天上来歌剧的压迫力还是很强。那一局打下来，你觉得从什么时候开始你就意识到，哎，我要四抓了？呃，三连吧。嗯，控到了三连密码机，然后他们没有办法。修机，然后这是一个疲于奔命的状态。Uh, 那到我们要要要，单面对到破轮嘛， uh, 其实破轮还是要要。They have some i m p r o v e 的。那一局，大家对于密码级的破译是这样子三岁一六的时间，他已经控不住了。啊、uh, ，我们三岁一六六的特别特别好，而且还预判了一个闪现，夸一下。六。<笑>六。特别棒！今天我们大家的发挥特别好。那其实想问一下，在对面，就是你们当时有意识到说他切了时长吗？我们看到了。哦，你们看到了是吧？那切了上周，大家对于那个看门战，就感觉还是已经有信心了，就是我一定是可以保平的，对吧？嗯，认可。是的，是的，而且还有机会，有可能可以三跑。嗯，是有三跑的机会的。那到了选妹这边，其实只要三跑。Or had a situation where he needed to get a 4K to get win the game, and he was confident that he'd get that 4K for his team. You in choosing the time, would you be more inclined to the hand or the eye? Or is there other reasons? Uh, different style. Oh, different style. We're going to do the most beautiful man. That actually, in the time, uh, at the beginning of the game, we were forced to chase the ball to the ground. After that wave of changes, what kind of change will happen? Uh, just wait until you get the state of play. Slowly play. Yes, slowly play. Next, I want to ask Yao Jiang. In the hand, two very beautiful balls hit the ground. Directly hit the ground. That wave of changes. Did you get the state of play? Did you get the state of play? 应该不会吝啬对学妹的夸夸吧？当然没有<笑>，当然没有。那当时大家怎么说的？我当时呃 ，stating that gatekeeper is not a character that's within his typical character pool, but he felt like in this position would be an optimal time to to bring it out and start playing gatekeeper. You know, especially considering that it's a very common meta. Hunter, and we've seen it more often in round number two. 最后的话，其实对你来说就完全是一个四抓的节奏了。那赢家这边的话，还是非常非常大的机会去冲击比较好的名次的。两位对于后面的比赛有没有什么想说的？呃，继续加油。嗯，继续加油。要这样呢？加油，加油。那其实今天现场也来了很多很多朱雀的粉丝，我们大家的粉丝要不要一起来给他们加加油、打打气？我们一起给他们加油，好不好？朱雀加油！那也是感谢两位来到赛后采访，再一次恭喜 FPX 朱雀获得了本场比赛的胜利。接下来马上要进行的是我们今天的最后一场比赛。Dongchun closed out saying that he will keep fighting for the next match and said thank you to the crowd and thank you guys for tuning in for this one. Eli, any final words before we throw it to break? Yeah, thank you guys for watching and uh, one more match ahead of us. Stick with us. 
back in your lives, ladies and gentlemen, for the main event of day number six. Potch Spice and Nello Mello at your service for Call of the Abyss 7. Nello Mello, we're doing the main event once again. How are you feeling, my guy? I'm feeling great. Again, mm. once again, glad to be sharing a mic with you. Uh, doing the last slot, GG versus Zeta. Couldn't ask for a better match to end the night with, you know? Uh, yeah. How about yesterday, you? How you yesterday yeah. we were also in charge of the last match in Group A, and that seems to be the the group that we're kind of following the storyline in. It seems like Group A, uh, this being the group of death, it was a little unfortunate that um, G. We found the lower end of the group stage yesterday, where it was Gr and Do to go up against each other. Gr actually still looking to get points on the board, but here. These are actually the top, the first seed and the second seed. So first place is GG, second place is Zeta. So the stakes could not be higher in this group. Exactly, stakes couldn't be any higher. But you know, we we're here to enjoy the game, and mm -hmm. what better way than to welcome the crowd back again? Hey Let's guys, go. Let's what's go. going on? I'll, yeah, mm -hmm. I'll do a line. I'll do a line. Uh, okay, go. A mind's eye line. Okay. All right, see let's hear mind's eye line. See if it's relevant. Okay. All right. So cool. guys, this is dedicated for the audience. Even mm -hmm. without my vision. I could see us together from a mile away. Wow, that's a good <laughs> one. <laughs> Mine's not, you know. Uh, <laughs> that was, that was, it got me there. I thought you were going to do like a... Well, an easy one is like a... You know what? Let me think about it. Because I was thinking about like a patient hook. Um, oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm always attracted or I always find my way to get to you or something like that. But yeah, uh, you, 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 to do tonight. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And hopefully this might actually go the full BO3 because we got Zeta and GG to go up against each other. An intense uh, match that we've seen Zeta go up against uh, MRC. And they were able to get a, they were able to trade off a win in this group stage, but now they have to go up against GG, the leaders of yeah. the pack in this group. Exactly, super scary, right? Considering mm -hmm. GG's performance yesterday, uh, Shalma ending it with a 4K uh, at the very end, that was super, super crazy. And now Zeta, um, like you, you couldn't put it in a better way, right? Coming back here, they finally recuperated with a one win. Um, mm -hmm. But now facing GG, I don't know, man. GG looks super ready uh, for whatever that is to come. Mm -hmm. um, another classic uh, Chinese division versus Chinese mainland division versus Japan division matchup. Let's see if Zeta will be able to break the GG's run uh, dominant streak. Yeah. Right. So as they are welcomed on stage, just welcoming everyone that is in the chat. Benedict Chan is here. Toshi's here. Hey, uh, hey there, Mr. Kens. Uh, I saw Chantel, our bestie, was here a while ago. She's asking bestie. for us, uh, asking for a stick figure drawing because we, <laughs> we do have the fan signs for you guys ready. And shout out also to Ghost Investigations. Uh, I hope Ghost Aww. Investigations able to get her the, their artwork of FT. I, I want to show it, but unfortunately, my camera is going to blur it out. So because it's like green screen and whatnot. So yeah, yeah. yeah do follow Ghost Investigations on Instagram to see the, the amazing artwork that they did for Team FT. Any other shout outs you want to give out now? Because it seems like uh, a lot of people are uh, pouring in the chat. And they're also reminding uh, Nell of the promise that he did. And Nell is a man of his oh. word, folks. Nell is a man oh. of his word. Are, are yeah. you though? You, you can... I am. Commitment. Commitment mm -hmm. to the cause. I mean, we started we started this whole thing with a slogan um, for IBA, make Southeast Asia great again. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say that ZT, FT, Utopia, all of these teams, even GH competed in um, IBA. These teams emerge, you know, all these mm -hmm. super strong teams emerge and like finally coming into the main stage and now on the verge of taking top, top mm -hmm. eight. That's crazy. Yeah. Verge of top eight. Yes, and we'll put a pin on that because we got to head on over to the interviews. すごい。強気なプレイだったり、結構まあ立ち回りが綺麗なので、そうですね。やっぱもう立ち回りを勉強すごくしましたね。
大家好，我是来自中国大陆赛区成都记忆战队的胡草，心情是比较激动，然后又开心的。第一次和世界各地的选手在线下一块竞技，就是没有经历过。我感觉我们队伍的状态是比较好的，因为没有参加之前的预选预选赛，我们一直在备战，然后在。观摩其他战队的打法，这塔战队，我想说也不要小瞧我们东大陆赛区。其实你是艾吉尔的冠军，但我们也是中国大陆赛区的冠军。And there we have it, folks. Both mutual respect coming from both sides. We're going to start things out with the survivor side of GG with Fulan. So Fulan coming in, usually best of one survivor, then as XMX does come in as well. So interesting to see what strategy they're going to bring to the table because no, this is uh, styles will definitely clash, clash here in in uh, representing both divisions. Yeah, styles will definitely clash. Um, as you can see, that they have the utmost respect for both uh, coming from both teams, right? Um, it is. I mean, I I would say that GG definitely has to feel more comfortable coming into this game. Uh, mm -hmm. They are. They, have been, they had a dominant run, right? So far, yes. they've been clearing games after games and now facing up against Zeta. Uh, yeah, I, I just feel like they're already super prepared. Mm -hmm. um, and even the survivors, I, I feel like the trainings, the strategy, they definitely analyze all their teams thoroughly, practicing mm -hmm. anti-counters, anti counters towards the the hunter specialty, especially Opera Singer, right? And mm -hmm. Yohan. So I feel like they can definitely make something happen here. Um, and I would say that all of that, uh, they also have an anomaly in the team. And a good one in the mm -hmm. form of PP Shia, because he's uh, like a hunter main <laughs> turned into a survivor main. And you see him, you, he's, he's, a, he's a really real person, you know? Like, he misses his owl, yeah. but, he, but he, kites, he kites you really good. And he still manages to pull the game back. So. I, I feel like uh, this is the kind of anom anomaly that they are happy to have in Team G2. Yeah, uh, anomaly, X Factor, just something special that they can bring to the table. And it's it's been, I would say, uh, an interesting transition for PP Xiao because once he won, once they won Koa 4, he wanted to make the transition to Survivor side and he didn't have the best outing. I think they tried to rotate him in different positions. He didn't have the best kites and you know what there's still room for improvement there so uh but like you mentioned he's still able to make that rebound happen so that is that um that anomaly that you spoke about that x factor that uh, pp shot does bring to the table but knowing zeta they're bringing out their ace or their um their bo1 hunter in mirai k so yeah. opera singers opera singer matches are definitely inbound to round number one yeah and considering his uh the most recent use of Opera Singer. He got a 4K. Mm -hmm. So I feel like Mirai K, he's definitely, he's definitely up there. He's definitely up there. He's definitely feeling comfortable. He's definitely, you know, there's a lot of interviews going on, right? And two one slippers. Interview, two slippers. <laughs> yeah. Slippers to your face if mm -hmm. you do not perform. Oh no, game. we're talking about like <laughs> <laughs> the punishments received before. So that's uh, the yeah. slipper gang. But you were a hanger gang, right? Oh no. I'm a hanger gang, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I prefer not to be part of any of those gangs. G yeah, uh, no. Just, yeah, we prefer I'm part a of chicken the, gang. I'm I was part of the disappointed talk gang. You know, I'm disappointed in you type, so it was more emotional. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, you could have done better. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Why? Why? You know, but well, they they're coming in with a fresh fresh slate. They haven't mm -hmm. faced each other, right? So this is their, practically their first encounter with each other uh, yes. in the group stages. So mm -hmm. GG uh, already in a very good spot. They just have to continue doing what they're doing because clearly it's working, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas Zeta. Uh, after the one win and one loss, I feel like a lot of people have uh, <laughs> misplaced their golden apples. And uh, <laughs> I feel like they yep. might not want to join the disappointed gang. Uh, True. I want to prove something here. So yeah. guys, <laughs> I hope you guys did join the disappointed gang too with your golden apples. And you know what? There was, uh, I don't know if you caught that now. Uh, did you see the, there was a Wu Chang that came in in game I number did. three. That was crazy. Yeah, that's super it, good. In uh, Moonlit River Park, right? Yes. Park. Yeah. Four-man uh, a four-man uh, elimination. That was crazy. It is. Wu Chang's strong. Yeah, mm -hmm. in 
Wu Chang super strong. I'm glad that someone has finally bring Wu Chang out and get mm-hmm. a 4K with it to top it off. Yes. Right? Um, but yeah, definitely hope to see more wildcard uh, hunters coming yeah. out here. And I don't know if you caught that. Also, I was talking to Psyche about best items in the game, and I brought out syringe. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he was he was debating with Eli about it being elbow pad. So I'm like. But you can't syringe, mess up a syringe. <laughs> a syringe <You> gang. <laughs> yeah, you can. You can't mess up a syringe. But one thing for sure, they're definitely not messing up their band picks here because mm-hmm. Antiquarian, uh, Perfumer, Gardener, they're all taken out and those are super strong counters towards Oppressing Singer, right? Yeah. Um, for now, yeah, I think we've seen this lineup so much that I think with the audience that I think even the chat knows like okay yeah we're definitely gonna see Sangria in <laughs> BO1 <laughs> yeah, we, we know we know the bands I mean close our eyes we know mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> but the one difference is mm-hmm. yeah sorry uh, I was just gonna finish it the part but the one difference is GG is still committing towards the CM there mm-hmm. there you go yeah um, it just it's usually the uh the survivors kind of have their say in how they're going to play this one out. And it's it's a different flavor, but trust that, you know what, Mirai K, best of one, you all, got, you all know there's going to be Sangria at the start. Um, I would have to say though, Nell, in, in your years of commentating this game, which meta was the most prevalent? Because you have to admit Sangria was, she is good, but we have been seeing ties. Heck, we, even today, FT was able to get a four person escape. But which meta hunter was the most dominant for you because we've had yeah how, which meta hunter was most dominant for you um because there was an age of dream Witch, age of the sculptor age of the the breaking wheel which which one was your favorite uh i would say breaking wheel that was a breaking good one, wheel then. yeah mm-hmm. before the introduction of flywheel it was night and night ah! <laughs> right no flywheel <laughs> remember when we used to not have flywheel yeah, oh. that's right. We only have we only have raw kiting yeah, skills. Yeah, raw kiting with. and just like what you, what was there? It was the uh, that feather walk thing, right? Oh, what, yeah, I forgot what the, the trick walk. was. But air walk, air walk there. Yeah, yeah just so, to move your trails really fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I still remember um, when Mercenary had five elbow pads. Yeah, five elbow pads, and he doesn't go down that fast. That's why yeah. everyone just loves using it, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, we're in a we're in a point now in the game where it's kind of I mean, especially with the global picks and bands, it, it's kind of in a very good spot competitively. But yeah, that was an interesting time. I believe that was like Koa five. Because Koa four was sculptor. And then Koa five, that's when everyone round one breaking wheel. Yeah, super super dominant. And then there was also the Clark. Uh the Clark and then there was also mm-hmm. the Nightwatch, remember? But the Night Watch was pretty short lived. It was, yeah, it was because I feel like the Night Watch was just an IVC. We yeah, just uh, okay. not not necessarily in Koa. Yeah, it was just like a blip on the radar. So it's just oh, yeah. a little unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, it seems like we have our spawn locations here now. Yeah, spawn locations. The cross. Speaking of the cross, shout out to just a girl. I need help. I sent a DM to an FT player, playfully praising them, and they replied, "I'm gonna cry." Ah! Ah! Congrats once again to team. Congrats to just the girl, and also congrats to Team FT uh, for them to be in a good spot. I would have to say uh, in their group stage match. Oh uh, yeah, their group stage standing. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, you know, coming into this match, we can see that there's a three six blink on Opera Singer, very standard. There's no flywheel as expected. They know that they're dealing with an Opera Singer flywheel. Uh, they, they want the broken windows more. Um, so yeah, looks like this is the start of Opera Singer Mirai K. Bringing the commentaries is me, Nello, and Hosh Spice. Yep, and Mirai K already making his way outside the red carpet area into the graveyard and transitioning into the back uh, back gate part where Fulan is actually going to be here. But there are some music boxes that are set up. So let's see him try to zip past to get the hit. That was so risky, Nell. Oh my god. Right? Oh my god, why the slow ball? Why the slow ball? I was like, okay. Yikes. You're lucky Mirai K did not lunch a half a second earlier. That would have been a terror shock. Uh, GG would be probably... Uh, uh, yeah, that would, that would be super bad, GG. But hey, he didn't mess it. Uh, has another pirouette to work pretty soon with. Oh, and a beautiful... Oh. Oh, this time by Pipi Shia. I want to say uncharacteristic, but 
Nah. Hey. Beautiful owl. Beautiful yeah. owl. What, what other owl? Yeah, I mean, that's all he does. He just is so on point with the owl. So Mirake having a tough time trying to down Fulan here, going to uh, the remnant form. But now Fulan is going to have to get hit in this area of the map away from the music boxes. But there are some pallets for him to work with. So doing a decent kite. But the blink and now the hit for the uh, Mirake to down his first survivor. Yeah, I think he's done his job, right? Fulan has already done his job, uh, bait out the bling, uh, put put the hunter far away from uh, all his other teammates. I think he's done his job, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um. he definitely has uh, done his job, and now the transition. The far camping seems to be paying off. He knows that 18 is in this area, but he chooses to go back just to see if anyone has already uh, covered some ground to go for this rescue. It seems like 18 using the first hook, getting the hit. He has Tide Turner to work with here, so that's going to buy extra time for this dancer. Yeah, buying a little bit more time, but you know, Fulan is going to pop. Usually, like, this is the style, right? You, you, you don't care even if you get hit. You just want to leave this area as soon as possible because you want your teammate to decode the ciphers that you were mm -hmm. you were chaired at, Ooh. right? So now Ku Chao running towards Ku Chao, beautiful stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Not only leaving the cipher for his teammates to decode, but into the hands of Omar. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just okay. to provide support here. Oh! oh caught him actually going behind the pallet here. Mirake not going to be fooled here. He's going to get the push onto him. He's going to buy enough time possibly for some cypher progress to be done, but the wildling eats a hit in the progress, so it's going to be too risky for him to try to harass him and ultimately go for the rescue, Nell. So this is a little tough on the side of GG. Yeah, I appreciate him trying to harass the hunter a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. don't give him a easy time to chair. But now that he's injured, there's no psychologist in the game. There's no owl anymore. How are you gonna rescue Fulan? You know, mm -hmm. and he's gonna start disturbing Cyphers as well. He knows Kucha's not gonna have oh a rescue. God. He knows Kucha's going away. He's gonna hit Kucha down. And now all of a sudden, it seems like Mirai K has uh, the upper hand because look at the Cyphers push not even done. And oh my God, this is yeah, hard. this is kind of hard. Everyone is injured. PP Shah had to go for that rescue. I don't know if he's gonna be farming an owl. We do see that there is healing going on the lower left side of the screen. But Fulan has this pallet to work with, but unfortunately vaulted there. And I mean, he had nothing else to do. No items. First survivor is gonna be down and out. But last cipher has been already established at two percent, which is still leagues far if you have a full presence opera singer that is chasing you. Uh, can I just say, this is very bad. <laughs> they don't even have a last cypher yet. Everyone's injured and no mm -hmm. one is even healing. Yeah, this is super hard. Might even look like a 3k here. Uh, just predicting a little bit into the future here. But yeah, yeah Mirai K seems to have a good grasp. He's at full presence. Hey. Yeah, I'm not even going to allow survivors to heal and Oh, he's gonna get Pipisha after that heal, very mm -hmm. unfortunate. And he has a blink to work with, so... Yeah, unfortunately, I don't know if Pipisha was able to gather an owl in the process, but yeah, he's gonna use the shadow form to just try and cut out. He missed his dash there, but can he get this window vault in time? Gonna go for the charged up attack and Seer is down. Finally working on their last cypher, but as you pointed out, Nell, no one's safe to rescue because they could go down in one hit. Yeah, this is true. It's very hard. Uh, maybe Ku Chao can be the one because he's finishing up the ciphers. Um, uh, it's already close to completion. But Mirai K, he, he, the presence of mind, he's not going to stick there to Pipisha. He knows it's 1v3 now. One on the chair, two of you are injured. You're definitely decoding the ciphers. And now, chasing after... He <gasps> and the blink! On to patient and no more hook as well. And he's oh, gonna go no. back and camp Pipisha. What can Ku Chao do? This looks like more than just a three survivor elimination yeah. now with how this is going. That last cipher is stuck at 25. Ku Chao is across the map. Seer is about to expire. I mean, the, the early game actually was really good. Like Dancer had an amazing kite. Pipisha had an amazing owl. But I'm trying to recall what made the wheels turn in formation to this Mirai K sided game because it just seems like they're in a tough spot. They've dug themselves this hole that they can't get themselves out of. And Mirai K continuing to actually move on along. I think it was mainly because of the injuries that were sustained. But Nell, what do you yeah. think was the, the first domino piece to fall to, for Mirai K to get this uh, so dominant uh, uh, position in the game? 
Kuchao mm. overextending. Yeah, Kuchao overextending. Wildly. Yeah, you, you mm. cannot overextend. And because now you cannot rescue, and then you try and do a cipher, but you can know what you're doing, and then he just comes after you. He just keeps going and going until until you go down, and then everyone all of a sudden up. Yeah, he's not going to make it in time uh, mm -hmm. to finish the coding as well. Gu Chao, uh, with the Walling still trying to buy more time, but it's safe to say that, yeah, it's going to take quite a bit of time. Uh, yeah, and there we go. Uh, it seems like the exit path game will be uh, the case here for Mirai K. So an excellent start to Mirai K. Um, yeah. uh, that was, this is kind of crazy how that moment led to this scenario because they needed to get those objectives done they needed to kind of push for um more yeah. than just uh, a tied game but yeah if you kind of overextend which yeah it was just a little unfortunate he also got injured i just remember i'm looking at how uh, things played out and it's actually playing out in the replay so yeah. it's just gonna be a slugging strategy at this point yeah slugging strategy this is a very risky composition right because once your rescuer is down what can you do and the terror shot onto Ku Chao, pretty much unavoidable at that mm -hmm. point, you know. You, you don't have anything that helps you uh, vault faster. If you're the forward, maybe the interaction is super fast, better when you activate your reach. Uh, you also vault faster, but yeah, nothing like that with the mm -hmm. walling. But it seems like the game plan for GG right now is to mm -hmm. bleed out 18 and force Mirai K's hands to chair Ku Chao, right? Yeah. But, Mm. And, and, and for you guys in chat, this is super important for Zeta to get as much points as possible because, again, in the group stage, you don't want to just get three points and give one point to your team. You want to be able to get a, a solid five-point game. So uh, he's really trying to expend as much as he can. So he's going to try to drag him mm. as close to the Cypher or at least a closer to find 18 as possible. Oh, he's just going to yeah go for basement. 18 still has exit path. So right before he's going to expire, he's probably going to try to heal up just for um, to buy enough time. But yeah, here in the basement, it's going to be hard. Uh, he's going to get on the core, but he could actually just hit to get two hits before he exits the basement, I believe. Oh, no, he's still able to get it. Yeah, still able to get it. He just wants to run as far as possible. Okay, uh, no more board to work with. 18 is about to expire very, very soon. He's at 98%. So depending on what happens to Puchao in the next 10 seconds. Oh, he's going to go down. Yeah, I, I think Mirai K might be forced to chair walling. Yeah, and, and, and kind of wait for 18 to use the self-heal. Yeah, so... Yeah, I don't think 18's even going to use the self-heal, so it seems like GG's might be called here, but... Yeah, uh, Mirai K. Oh, here we go! Two for one! This could be an opening for them. Yeah, it is. Nah, but... but that's the thing, if Kuchao goes down here, he doesn't have to chair the walling first. Oh, he can actually. Yeah, I because think I think, might, yeah, because patience sure. already up, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. True, true. Yeah. Patience opening up a chest for an item. So this is very interesting. It seems like is he gonna? He's not even gonna go for a chair. So. Uh, I think it's safe for him to chair. Yeah, uh, safe because yeah. exit path is already done. But Wildling still has exit path, so I'm not sure. I I know that maybe Kucho. This could actually be a, uh, kind of devastating because the pig is ready for him to use, but the blink attempt. Okay, I feel like he should really go for a chair now because things are getting kind of dicey for yeah. uh, Mirai K. Very true, very true. Because mm. if he... Uh, patient just needs to last a little bit longer because if patient goes down here, mm. he's going to bleed out in a matter of seconds, probably just mm -hmm. a little bit more. So I think he cannot afford to down the patient. He needs to chair while link. It's only, it's only his first chair, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true. Yeah, yeah, and look, the the 18 has a football. So, yeah. oh my god, he's actually going to drag him further or closer drag to the again. chair. But that's the thing. Wildling already has his boar ready, so that could buy him enough time. So he's... I would say Mirake is kind of flirting with disaster here. That's true. You know what? You know what should happen here? Mm -hmm. Patience should body block for Wildling. <laughs> <laughs> Patience should body block for Wildling. And, and uh, yeah, and it's like, okay, hit me, Mirai, hit me. Mm -hmm. And then after hitting the attack recovery, he's going to bleed out a bit. And Ku Chao with the full board will be able mm -hmm. to go to the dungeon, right? But True. yeah, it doesn't seem to be doing it now. I think he cannot do it now anymore. He needs to wait until the board is at the cooldown, uh, the cooldown finishes. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to see how many hits the Wildling has taken in this game. <laughs> it's just a lot, like a pinata, man. So he just keeps hitting and hitting. There's, 
There's no candy that's gonna come out, Mira. Okay, I think someone has to tell him that. But now, it seems like he's gonna leave the wildling to heal up. He's at 49%. That's fast healing. So yeah. hopefully he's able to find 18. Because once he downs 18, then it's gonna be kind of a checkmate. Because there's no more heal. Actually, when he downs 18, he's gonna expire. Yeah, he's gonna expire. Oh my god. No, he can't go for the dungeon now. He can't. He has to cheer. He has to cheer patient. Oh my god. This is a big misplay. Oh my god, how can you not see this? You should chair, you should chair. Dude. You should chair the Wildling, then go after the patient. That was... <laughs> oh, he had so much more. I mean, look, as commentators, we want to build it as much as possible, but he had it in LA. It was in his hand. Yeah, He could have 4K. gotten the 4K. Or at least... Uh -huh. If he chairs and then he try to just look, like there's gonna be crows. He knows that the dungeon is there, but he kind of, he left. The, oh my god, that's, that's not true, gonna right? that's not gonna feel good backstage. I think. Yeah, I mean it's technically even if it's the first chair or the second chair, you still have time. You still have time. Mm -hmm. Like, um, and and you know what? What else is uh, really sad? You mm -hmm. committed. You committed the bling onto the walling just to yeah. slug him even longer so i know it, yeah save it for the patient then even if the patient has something in his hands right uh -huh. at least yeah at least you you hear okay you just keep dragging you keep hearing where uh mm -hmm. you keep you keep finding out where mm -hmm. the tinnitus is coming from then if, yeah then at least you will have an idea where the patient is but one thing is for sure it doesn't matter what thought process uh is going on one thing is for sure you do not chase the patient until you secure the wildling because that's what he said <laughs> and that's the thing it's like the wildling takes his time on the chair how many times did we see him actually slug the patient? And, <laughs> and the thing is it would be fine if he if he went for the patient if he went for the chair onto the wildling and then a uh, patient gets dungeon because you know it may be a misplay but this i think this would hurt a lot more because this was mirake just really extending the game out and he yeah. left the the wildling next to the dungeon so it is what it is moral victory i would say to it's gg yeah. it's still a i i feel like morally it's a win for gg because that was a <laughs> five point game for zeta but he denied that so yeah, that, was ah, yeah. that was that was tough to see that was yeah. ah, at the ah. possible pass the impossible test. The impossible test. Um, yeah. This kind of reminds me, it's like, of that time. I think there was a team, I'm not going to name who it is, that they thought they made it out in the exit gate, but they didn't. And then the hunter yeah, was able to hit. Yeah, yeah so it's just like, it's so close. He had the five point game. But then, uh, yeah, that is what the hunter it is. was like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. He even stopped and just looked like, okay, what's going on here? Before mm -hmm. finally downing uh, mm -hmm. the survivor. But. Yeah, uh, I, I I agree with you. I think it's more morally, it's a moral victory for GG. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, Zeta still pulled off a win. It's still a yeah. GK, right? right? Yeah. So, um, and it, it is Zeta's map selection. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's just hope that they are content with this, and mm -hmm. it doesn't affect. Yeah, it doesn't affect Mirai K in the next game. But then again, he won't be playing next game. So yes. It will really be matter. Alf. So there you go. Yeah. So at least Mirake can, I don't know, maybe he'll have the the smallest katsu for dinner or something for that one. But I think the when it comes to the um, the survivors, they still have not seen the stage yet. So uh, all they have to do is just kind of tie things out and just move on. That's that's where we were able to kind of analyze the situation. Could have been it could have been tighter, but. It didn't work out quite well, so we just have to move on from these type, learn, and then move on from the misplays. Yeah, I see some comments in the chat as well. Mm -hmm. That is very true as well. That's another ending to this. Um, mm. At least chair the patient. True. You know the patient's gonna die after you hit him. At mm -hmm. least chair him. Then go for the wild walling. Yeah. All right. Yeah. True. Yeah. That's kind of weird. Now that we look at it. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but nonetheless. Still a 3k, we're not complaining. No. Zeta still got this in the back or in mm -hmm. the first half. So unless if GG unless if Zeta survivors uh is up to something uh mm -hmm. out of the ordinary, um uh, I, I think they should be pretty stable. It's it should be a draw game. Yeah. Um yeah, but Xiaomong, Xiaoma, oh my god, I, uh... I cannot I cannot <laughs> say that it's gonna be a draw because it is it is him that's playing, right? Yeah, so, he is him. So he is uh, him. 
Okay. Here it is. Yeah. He, he is me. He is you. <laughs> me is you. I am me. Well, there's our shirt. And there okay. it is. We actually right. see the the ending in our in our in our uh, replay feed. Oh yeah. my, yeah, that was, uh, yeah. Eh, it is what it is. And you see that Mira Kay is like, you know what? All right, let's, let's, st we're still at, we're still at an advantage here. We're still able to get a three point game. So it's still all good. So hope Fair you guys enough. are feeling all good. Uh, I did write some <laughs> shout outs that I want to give out just real quick. Aww. We got MJH, we have Kiara and big shout outs to my boy Corone. Uh, he, he tagged me on a photo because I had Corona, and then remember when he drew a clown? So oh he yes, thought, I saw. So out of context, they, like why? Like he asked, "Watch why am I a clown? You're not a clown, Corona." Big shout outs to you. So there you go, <laughs> Corona. There is your shout out. I apologize for drawing that clown. Uh, yeah, me and me and Nell were in a drawing contest for uh, clowns. We will be giving out fan cheers as well. So appreciate you guys for sticking with us and giving us also your. Um, your shout outs. There we go. Who we got? Who we got? Just a girl for the for being brave, messaging mm -hmm. the FT members. Mm -hmm. Anako for calling me Puffy because I'm Daddy H, I think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Chantel, uh, because she thinks that I'm young enough to be her son. And <laughs> wow, let's go. <laughs> she she mm -hmm. called me her son. So, uh, mm -hmm. and Nico as well. Just shout outs to you, Nico, for mm -hmm. being awesome. And Erica. Mm -hmm. And everyone in the chat, Adagio, mm -hmm. those who, are, who haven't made it on the board, mm -hmm. we actually have a bad, we actually have a good news to share with you guys later. What is it? What is it? Oh, we do, we do. Okay. Yeah, we do, we do, we do. You, do we want to share it with them now? Hmm. Uh, maybe after introducing the survivors, because okay. it is Great. Zeta Division survivors to take the next uh, half here, and we're gonna see Shauma uh, on the hunter side. So Mochi being one of the most stable rescuers of the team. I I can't forget the last. Uh, last year where he got MVP because he kited with a patient. So that's something mm. that'll be burned my... Because we were like, give... I remember. Give, <laughs> give Mochi an MVP. It's like, all right, no rescuers. Yeah. He's the patient. All right, yeah. he kited really long. Yeah, he never sleeping, if I recall it. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. super good at that time. Mochi is definitely one of the more stable rescuers. I, I haven't seen him miss a lot of rescues at all. Mm. Uh, 9 out of 10 is always going to be perfect. But joining the ranks of Zeta is Hame too as well. A few impressive performances by him as well. Um, so I feel like he's definitely a great addition to Zeta. Mm -hmm. And yeah, hopefully we'll be able to see more of his coordinator or the patient. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, we have Dolisu to round up the team of Zeta. Uh -huh. Again, Dolisu has a gardener, an acrobat, psychologist, entomologist, and acrobat is over here, but he also yeah. has a seer. He's known as the toy merchant of the team, but I don't think he's going to bring it out in this map. This is Probably their map not. selection. Also, yeah. has a cheerleader. They have a lot of characters that they, they yeah. can use. So, uh, we're Also we're has thinking. a smooth face. Oh, yeah. Very much <laughs> smooth face. Share the skincare routine, please. Please. The seven-step Dolisu routine. Yeah. What seven steps? Only three steps. <laughs> no, there's like, there's more. There's more. Exfoliate. Yeah. Watch that. Exfoliate again. I don't yeah. know. Maybe it's just wake up. Uh, rinse my face with water and just be awesome. That's the three steps. <laughs> wow. <laughs> just use water, guys. Just use water. Purest. Love them all. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Xiaoma, we caught a glimpse of him. Uh, looks like he is burdened with mm -hmm. the impossible task. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I'm trying to do John Wick reference, but... The impossible uh, task. I actually thought that was a Star Trek reference. Is the impossible test? The... Yeah, because he was supposed to do an impossible task in order to mm -hmm. quit the assassins yes. group yeah so but but, but he killed his dog so he came back anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> do, you the, do, do you know the do you know the did you notice you watched the latest john wick right yeah uh, no okay I, you didn't watch the latest one yet I'm, yeah i i couldn't make time to go to the oh. cinema okay and i didn't want to watch pirated said, <laughs> okay i was uh i, I thank god you said that because i was going to tell you about the ending someone yeah okay so also i unfriended someone because they spoiled the ending because they put this like the final scene in the ending i'm like what the heck on social media so darn it oh, no spoilers there, there. Guys. yeah oh, i know and it was just weeks i was gonna catch it in the cinemas i was like oh man well oh, that's come uh, on that's not cool come on don't man. spoil that's, it man that's not yeah. cool what the hell yeah, yeah, Hermit's angry now. Kermit's mm. angry now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was doing a Patrick Star though. Careful, SpongeBob, careful. Oh. <laughs> I, I was that the laugh? Your I mic actually went so high that I, it didn't register. 
<laughs> I don't know if I was doing this. The laugh or just a goat eating, but. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and why am I Tito Nello again? I, I don't want to be Tito. I want to be. I want to be. Uh, what's the calling for like older brother? Kuya, Kuya Nello. Kuya. Yeah, Kuya. You, definitely you, you, my puppy. Yeah. You don't want to be Joa Nello? No. What's Joa? Joa is like boyfriend or girlfriend. Like your you're significant oh. other, basically. Like your sweetheart. Oh, um, yeah. I. I. I I'm. Yeah, currently I'm just trying to jo <laughs> love myself. Yeah. There we go. That is the most important lesson of the day, folks. Yeah. Take that real, to the bank real. and cash it in and save it. All right, here we go. <laughs> for real. Mm. Okay, here we go. We are going to see, well, we're going to see Perfumer this time. I can imagine that they'll probably pick Cheerleader at some point if it doesn't get banned. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, the patient band. So Cheerleader's up and open. Yeah. Mm. With... Maybe they're gonna pick it. No, oh, or yeah. interesting. So they're not gonna use the cheerleader. I'm oh, sorry, yeah, the cheerleader perfumer combo, but have the coordinator. Um, Cypher Rush isn't gonna be as fast, so Shaoma does have time to. Uh, but then again, in the previous match, there was Wildling as well, so uh, totally Four fine. And, and now it comes down to an acrobat pick for Team Zeta. Yeah, I like this lineup. They have uh, two dedicated rescuers like one is uh, I, I wouldn't count coordinator as a rescuer but the gun makes him makes uh, Martha more of a liable supporter right but this is more stable than the very very risky lineup that GG tried to come in with just one walling and the walling is like once you get down the board you're pretty much food right but here <laughs> everyone yeah but here everyone has a chance to run away you know mm -hmm. everyone has you know, acrobat type potential um, the even the coordinator with a gun already buy it a lot of time, right? Yes. And sitting on the chair for ten percent longer, if mm -hmm. I recall correctly. Uh, even Jose as well, first officer, perfumer. Uh, I guess Mochi is just really confident. Mm -hmm. Is Mochi gonna play the perfumer though? I, I don't think so. Yeah, I wish. Totally darn. <laughs> <laughs> we oh, have okay. another MVP in Mochi, but no, it's Dolisu on the the perfumer. Mochi on the very stable, uh, very stable first officer. Uh, Kazuneko on the acrobat and Hametu on the coordinator. No nonsense. We're gonna jump straight into just picking the opera singer here. Kashama is locked and loaded. He wants to be able to get at least a three survivor elimination or even more just to keep gg's game going here and their undefeated streak in this uh in this group stage yeah for real for reals but just uh reiterating a little bit of uh comments from the chat uh if i recall correctly shelma hasn't always gotten more than a 2k uh hasn't always gotten a 4k 3k 4k uh especially in the one with an opera singer so uh who knows maybe this is one of the those times this where he powers be. up um, I'm looking at the the data I did for playoffs, IJL, IVL playoffs. Uh, his his win tie loss is two one zero, so pretty good, pretty good. But this is IJ IVL playoffs, right? Mm -hmm. So Nell's bringing up stats of uh, how he's been performing now. So hopefully this will be one of those days where he lives up to the IVL playoffs where it's a 2-1-0 because uh, he definitely needs this win to keep the game going for Team GG. Yeah, so since we do not have a Seer here, um, I'll probably do a line for Seer. I predict a future for them and it looks absolutely divine. Divine future. Yeah. Or, divine or... future. Hopefully Zeta will be able to make it divine even mm -hmm. without the Seer. But Xiaoma, both fits up, you know he's ready mm -hmm. to give a fight. He's ready to fight. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, definitely. So, looking at the Persona builds, just one flywheel on Dolisu's side just to prolong the kite. Also accounted for the borrowed time for endgame for everyone. We have also the Tide Turners that are ready. I hope you guys are ready because me and Nell are ready to give you guys the commentary action for the second half of round number one. Yeah, Shalma, beautiful skin. Uh, talking about skin routines makes me <laughs> seven my step skin. routine. Yeah, <laughs> oh, dude, look at to that. the face. Oh Hamitu's like, I'm waiting for you, bro. I'm uh -huh. waiting for you. Mm -hmm. Oh my this, god. This has a, has this has your name on it. Let's go. But for real, it's it's like, okay, he's used it already. So now 
Shawma has nothing to worry about for this coordinator. So very interesting that Hametu used it this early on. Oh. Wow, and the trade dropping the pallet for the hit. Yeah, I do kind of feel like that it was not necessarily to wait for the hunter there. Mm -hmm. to, because you obviously have so much time to rotate, right? You know what I mean? You could have mm -hmm. probably saved it after one hit. Um, because I, I just think that it's a little bit too early to use yeah, the gun. You were practically waiting for the hunter yeah. there. <laughs> Not even a minute passed, and you're like, yeah, shoot, shoot, just shoot the guy. Oh, and the oh. blink attempt, and yes, and that's also why a blink down is so much more valuable than a blink hit. And maybe the the utility of that gun could have been used later in the game. But you know what? Zeta is playing for a tie, so that could be it. And maybe Coordinator just wants to sit on the, you know, she wants to sit down for a long time. You know, she's kind of tired, true, but Mochi... True. Uh oh. Okay. No oh, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably accounting for a possible excitement. But yeah, well, Dude. it's not there. Oh my god, how? 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 Oh how, how, how? 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 He's gonna catch up! He's gonna catch up! Oh, oh my god! And Mochi double down! It's gonna be a double down situation. Wow, oh, Xiaoma, what a scary, scary opera singer sprung there. And there's not even a pallet here, so Xiaoma can easily just. Catch up. Mm -hmm. Okay. If he drops the pallet here, it's hard. Oh my oh. god! Yeah. He did drop the pallet, and the double down is now in effect. He's already used the trump card, I believe. I I, I heard the notation. Man, he really. Uh, it just. I think it started with with the coordinator guy. He just used the flare gun early on. That Ooh. happened, and also the early. Uh, just hitting the first officer of the pocket watch, that was uh, not ideal. They don't even have their last sure. cypher now. So this is a tough spot for Zeta to be in because uh, Shalma could potentially even aim for a four-man uh, elimination. Yeah, wow, nice presence of mind. Oh my god, Ooh. the snake actually got hit through the pallet. But fortunately, he's going to be able to rescue in time and he has tight turner to work with. So coordinator is mm -hmm. going to take that hit try and get away as far as possible uh, attracting Chalma's attention while Zeta tries to make up for their lost ciphers um, yeah still no last cipher <laughs> oh uh, this is real tough because yeah first officer is up and they're healing the first officer so they have to play this mid game really well perfumer is technically the only one that's pushing objectives she already popped her cipher we're still looking at one and a half ciphers to work with Ah, uh, this is kind of tough. They need to, yeah, they need to recuperate here and heal up. So hopefully they'll be able to do that. It's just the first officer and he still has a pocket watch to work with, but no tide turners left for the survivors. So this is going to be a hard end game to uh, work with, knowing that Shaoma's already at full presence. Uh oh, Mochi, please be careful. That's true. Yeah, I have to be mm, really okay. careful. Uh, but he's already going to be oh. using... Oh, at normal straight away. And nice. now Zayna is left with two full ciphers. Mm -hmm. I know so hard. Eli said that you want to be able to pressure and use abnormal because they could just work on another one. But knowing that he used it in the mid game is actually a masterful stroke. So Dolisu is going to get caught out here. Seems like Perfumer is just going to be waiting out here. He's going to see if he's going to go back. No, just chooses to walk forward. Walk forward indeed. Still has four seconds to work with. Dolisu will be able to make it in time. The flywheel wow. just to buy a little bit more time for the to make up for the cooldown time. But now he's going to have that perfume. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably, yeah, he's not going back. Oh my Whoa. god, the patience! He mind gamed him! That is yeah. crazy! No, Shaoma is going to just hide enough with his perfumes. I'm in the... Ugh, just too much of the perfumes. Oh. The first officer, unfortunately, went through the pallet. No more pocket watch to use. He's injured. Mochi has to be very careful. Force yeah. him to break this pallet. And now they're opening up three ciphers just in case. Yeah. Spamming pallets now. You you might as well do it, right? Uh, mm -hmm. He knows that... He knows that Xiaoma does not have Blink anymore. It's just an abnormal. Mochi still trying. Yo! Oh, yeah, he's gonna get hit in. Ah. Mm -hmm. But. Okay. That was super important yeah. that they were able to pop that cypher in red carpet. And now it seems like Xiaoma would use the rocket chair here at the graveyard area. So, um, Perfumer is the, possibly the best one to get the rescue, but Perfumer will be uh, chased out of the cypher. So. Um, that opens up the rescue. However, he did drop a remnant, so he can actually go back and just monitor the chair. Oh, he's going to kick it again. 
Yeah, it's okay. They at least they have a six cipher that's at fifty one percent. So that's good. And can I just say, I just want to make the comparison of Dolisu's perfumer. Like you know, like two cars coming at each other heads on, and mm-hmm. the person who they just keep on until one person gives in and just moves yeah. away, swerves away. Dolisu mm-hmm. is not someone that you want to go heads on against. Oh no, yeah, you do not <laughs> want to play chicken with him. But now, no, we're put in a tough spot here too injured members of Zeta, one on a rocket chair, uh, has already expired the halfway mark, and it seems like Kazuneko is going to be the next target here. So it seems like they're trying to push for the last cypher, so I think the first officer is resided to being sacrificed. Yeah, going back again, he thinks that someone's off uh, trying to rescue officer. I think he can actually make it in time, um, mm-hmm. but I think Kazuneko does not want to risk it. I think Kazuneko yeah. can actually risk it if he wants to. Uh, oh wait! Oh my God! But the not cipher. like this. Uh oh. Not like this. You this have is a not bomb. Good. Yeah. yeah, you have a bomb. Use it. The cipher will get prime. Two bombs, oh, though. This is so unfortunate. And now this is what I think my Mirake was supposed to do. Just chair, and now I could chase after because both of them are actually on their first chair. He still has time, and Shaoma is gonna. Uh, his tinnitus will be removed, so he's gonna try to double back here to try and find out where. Uh, perfumer is hiding out. Yeah, this hard. He already has the Nidus. It's oh. gonna be a 4k here. No way the freeze no way perfumer will be able to do this. He has a flywheel to work with. Let's see if Dolisu will be able to time it well enough, but no, it's not gonna happen. Mm-hmm. And what is this? A 4k by Xiaoma to respond? Dude, <laughs> Xiaoma has arrived, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, I I do not wanna see how Zeta is or how Mirake is because that was he could have had that same type of result and it would have been a tie that would have been all right but knowing that they could have tied that, that game out with five five uh th- this is rough because now it is a six to three point lead and a uh, round win on the side of gg and yeah shauma had no nonsense there he took no the early sense. hits um uh, at the start you know with a flare gun uh continued yeah. on the chase and he just it was very textbook opera singer match so For kudos real. to shauma yeah, that was super crazy. For those of you, uh, for those who have mentioned that he barely get, <laughs> gets a, mm-hmm. a 3k or a 4k, well, this is one of those times where oh, he yeah. turns Xiaoma into Xiao Max. I don't know, yeah. Pro Max. Pro <laughs> Max <laughs> mode. Yeah. <laughs> super crazy, especially. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, just seeing a few people in the chat as well, since mm-hmm. you mentioned chat. Hello, Karina. Nice to see you here again, Bestie. And. Mm-hmm. Uh, Snooty Exogen, Nico Balam, number one Chong, Chongai fan, Moon, and Erica, and Pops. I mm-hmm. uh, hope that you guys yeah. are enjoying the game. And Melly as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 4K, okay. if you guys have just seen it. Oh, so there's there could be a huge potential for him to actually deny the game number because this is the way that this is the way fbxq and gh match went like meow got a three to one which is excellent but then tongshren comes in it's like nope i could beat that three to one and i raise you a five oh game and it's like well you got me there let's go for the next hand Uh, but hopefully they play their cards right yeah he usually wins. It's like a situation where you go all in and you win at showdown. Or mm-hmm. your presence is dominating enough that you just make your opponents fall. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> true, true. I think Humble. that's... Uh, that's, that's <laughs> Dong Shen and Xiaoma are those hunters that, you know, they, they exude that confidence that you just have yeah. to fold. Like, oh man, what yeah. does he have? Pocket aces? What's going on? I know, right? Probably the big stacks as well, you know. Mm-hmm. The big aura, the big stacks, you know. Just yeah. scaring people off left and right. But, but I totally agree with you. You come into the 3K, I'm going to best you with a 4K. And that's exactly mm. how these hunters operate. You know, yeah. top tier hunters operate. I just noticed two things. I don't know if you agree with this or not. Go for it. What's I that? noticed, okay, one of the things about these top tier hunters, if they play quick match, even if they meet their friends, they never go friendly hunter. <laughs> they never. Join us I... in, with the discussion chat. Never. Mm-hmm. They never yeah. go friendly hunter. You never, yeah, because it's like, especially if it's uh, even in quick match or what? Yeah, or quick this match. Is for quick match. Or even, oh. yeah, even in quick I, match, you know. Yeah, I've. You so say you never go friendly hunter. Or you've never met friendly hunters in quick match. Yeah, never. 
Uh, mm. Especially if you're facing top tier hunters, you you mm. never you, you like high level hunters. They never go friendly. I mean, there might be some exceptions where you meet, yeah. but tournament players, no, oh, yeah. I've never seen, never seen. They, they will be don't. even more excited to 4K. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know I bump into some friendly hunters, but yeah, if they're using top tier hunters, they will not be friendly with you. Just yeah. also, it's uh, I I have my fair share of trauma. Also, like oh, friendly. Then when Z gets detention, he just starts hitting everyone. No, he just cheers everyone. Like oh, we call my that God. fake friendly. Come yeah, on. how dare you? How dare how you? How dare that... you? Report it for being <laughs> fake. <laughs> Report it. You're on. But it is what it is. Like you, you got That's true. I would say the hunters that are mostly friendly for me are rippers. Rippers are pretty friendly with me. Uh, you kind of know that they're friendly if they bring the accessory where they carry survivors. You, yeah, and that's that why. <laughs> yeah, because you cannot hit with mm. that accessory when you're carrying a survivor. So maybe, maybe that's uh, one of the mm. characteristics. But um, I just have to say, when hunters are when hunters are going crazy, you know, when hunters are trying to be friendly, you know, when we play together, mm -hmm. I always say never trust. These friendly hunters. <laughs> I'll make them not friendly anymore. <laughs> mm, yeah. With that being said, folks, we're going to throw it to the highlights and take a quick break. More of Call of the Abyss when we come back. ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっ
uh, and also kind of give back to you guys for being with us uh, in these crazy hours of commentary. So again, uh, post it on stories, tag us, do a fan, uh, whatever fan cheer. Even if it's just a screen cap of your favorite player, just uh, be able to just uh, go for it. And then we'll be able yeah. to sponsor a monthly dice for you guys. For real. So just tag us and send your message, tag us. And we definitely look forward to seeing your fan cheers, um, your team cheers, your player cheers. And if you guys have fan arts, please do submit them because if we, we don't get to see it on the screen, at least we'll be able to see it in Instagram mm -hmm. and we'll share it to everyone, right? So, yeah. So, hopefully. looking forward to seeing it. Also, shout outs to Ghost Investigations and also Vanilla B. Uh, Vanilla B posted a, uh, like a quick drawing of me saying, What's up, brothers? Uh, so, yeah, I just love to see all the fan work. So, yeah, just tag us. We definitely love to see it. Oh, that's really fast. Mm. Oh no! Oh now? It's happening now? Uh no! Actually, okay. Mm -hmm. Moments ago, okay. This is a story where Hanako asked me to tag Nerukun and uh, oh. give him a shout out. Please, Nerusama, I'm a huge fan. I love him. The Please Riz God Neru, the Riz yeah. God himself. Yeah, Riz God, and he is tagging me back and saying thank you so much. So Hanako, Yo. that's your shout out. There you go, Hanako. Well, post it again on repost it on stories too, and, and you can tag Hanako because I think that's an amazing moment. I think I think a lot of people are saying that uh, Narakun's popularity is skyrocketing in Weibo because of his staring contest with the camera. Did you see that? No, he was just staring. He didn't blink at all. Wow, staring contest, staring deep into your soul. Uh, yeah, I mean, is his heart even a machine? Because Every beat synchronizes perfectly. With wow, ours. that's that's deep. I, I thought we were gonna go with a Tracy. Uh, yeah, that's a mechanic. Oh yeah, But yeah, mm -hmm. um, coming in. Alf is coming in to replace mm -hmm. Mirai K. So apparently Mirai K's 3K still. Don't get me wrong, 3K is still really good. Um, mm -hmm. this, it, it does keep the score closer, but now Zeta needs to work extra hard. Alf needs to work extra hard, especially after that beautiful artwork. Yeah, you, you better. You better. Be <laughs> <laughs> and fingers crossed that he will. Like, we have seen him rise to the occasion before, and he's given us amazing moments with what he has. And uh, I do believe that it is GG's map selection next, so he will have to adjust to whatever GG has in store uh, for this next map now. Yeah, I mean, Hu Chao's already ready. I mean, this doesn't look like a team that's come out from a game uh, with, you know, they, they got a round, one round win, and it doesn't look like a team that's already feeling comfortable. They're always 24 hours um, alert, focused, mm -hmm. And this is exactly the kind of focus we need because as we all know, GG, right now, mm -hmm. they're a man of focus, commitment, integrity, and pure uh, sheer will. Yeah. 10% <laughs> luck, 20% skill, 15% percent hard will. Yeah. Shout out to Shinoda. <laughs> yeah, I'm Shinoda. Yeah. Remember the name. Remember Team Shinoda. But yeah, uh, I love that, and yeah, I mean, they've, they've put it up themselves, right? They mm -hmm. definitely need to feel more confident after the practice, countless practice, tra training. They definitely, mm -hmm. one thing that's probably the last piece of their success is the confidence in themselves to bring it through, to pull right. through. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, gotta, they gotta do that, yeah? Very so, true. GG. Very true. Yeah, so GG, Survivors versus Data Hunters, round two. Mm -hmm. And instead of Mirake, it's Alf coming in. I can't wait to see Alf in action. Mm -hmm. Same. I'm excited to see. Okay, so actually, I want to see the sentiment in our chat. I know we asked for like emojis. I know GG is dedicated for the panda emojis. I'm trying to have a what, what is Zeta Division as an emoji for you now? I know that their their logo is red, but a peace sign. Zeta, I don't know. The only thing I can think about is Mass of Zoro for some reason. <laughs> you know? With Z, yeah, with Z, right? And that's one of your favorite uh, movies because I remember. Uh, Antonio Banderas. Antonio yeah. Banderas. Dude, he, was like, sir, he, he was made a star after that movie, but yeah, you're saying? Oh, yeah. And Sir Anthony Hopkins. That dude is mm -hmm. super good. I, I just love that. 
uh, certain Anthony Hopkins, yeah. In Silence of the Lambs as well, and, and X Men. Sorry, wrong movie. <laughs> X what X Men? Jesus. <laughs> Sir Anthony Hopkins in X Men. That is uh, a retcon. Oh, maybe in the multiverse, but. If I remember correctly, that was not Anthony Hopkins. The Ian McKinnon. <laughs> no, he's Ian McKinnon. Yeah. 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 I was going to do that. Hello, too. Hello, Clarice. <laughs> do you hear the silence of the lambs? Oh my god! What uncanny resemblance! <laughs> <laughs> I just remember the line. Exactly. I just remember the line. But yeah, again, just uh, I want to see some pan emojis for GG, but whatever you guys think of what Zeta is, just go for it. If you see a Zoro mask emoji, that would be great. But any other emoji, I'd assume it's for Zeta. But the pan emojis, I'll account that for GG. Because I feel like in this matchup, I guess GG is the... the favored one just by a slight margin because these are two yeah. powerhouse teams from each division. I agree, but if history has taught us anything valuable worth mentioning, okay. BO1s are always the, the cause Ooh. of the fall in BO2, BO3. Yeah. Remember yesterday's yeah. match? Yes, true, true. Or escape in the end. Oh my god, that I, was I thought so of an emoji. I, I, I thought of an okay. emoji. Since so. it's Alf that's coming in, is there a wizard emoji for Gandalf? So, definitely you know that sorcerer emoji? Maybe use that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, we can do those emojis. Magic for team Zeta. Yeah. Uh, nice, magic nice. one or magic. Anything related to magic, magic pointy hat. But mm -hmm. pandas for team uh, GG. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. So, you, you can see on the screen now. You see the the fan arts going on, the, the screen caps and things. Yes. That's exactly what you guys have to do because just a girl was asking you have to do mm -hmm. art. You can do anything. No, you can screenshot yeah. anything. Just a message is also okay. Anything. Mm -hmm. anything. Yeah, anything, anything. Anything. We want to be able to reward you guys and we also want to be able to, you know, promote that hashtag koa 7 support. So please do and uh, we'll reward you accordingly. Yeah, for reals, for reals. Mm -hmm. And who knows, maybe we see a lot of creative messages. We might be tempted to give even more. Ooh, maybe. Ooh, Nello's, Nello and Posh's choice says. <laughs> <laughs> when you think you only have one choice, then it becomes says. So yeah, uh, hopefully you guys are uh, invested in this game because Zeta definitely needs to come back here. Al doesn't seem like he's uh, slightly bothered at all. He's still smiling mm -hmm. there, probably thinking about the Wagyu he will be tonight. I'm not sure. When, when he gets the 4K or... When he gets know. the 4K, for real. Mm -hmm. And that's also Wagyu? a comment. Oh <laughs> that's also a comment here saying, yeah, Mira K is probably getting scolded backstage. No, he just gets one less steak. That's it. <laughs> yeah, the the smallest steak or the smallest katsu. The smallest. Or, or he has to do the he has to do the dishes. He's the dishwasher. Dishwasher <laughs> for real. Still, still a three K though. You can't hate him for that. Yeah, still a three K. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but coming in, Pitisha. I love that his seer gave the perfect all just now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's hope that he continue to become the positive anomaly for Team GG. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, Risen as the greatest, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, Hunter main turn survivors ever. But... Actually, I can't even name them much. Are there other Hunter mains, turn survivor mains that you Share with know? us. Yeah, with us I don't... Chat. Let us know. I think, is it? I know. God J. <laughs> well, we thought, right? I actually thought. People we were thought. asking where God J is at. I know he's there too, but... Seems like they really allowed Meow to, you know, tank Go for it, most yeah. of the games. But let's see. Maybe he'll be able to come in in their last game against AWG. But Moon River Park is the map that we are uh, seeing in front of our screens. This is GG's map selection, by the way. So uh, this is kind of scary because this is, I believe, also in the group stage. They were able to, well, Shamo was able to 4K with Breaking Wheel on this map. Yeah, 4K. Uh, breaking will you, you cannot even rest you know what I mean it's just so hard you everything depends on this game here like Zeta if Alf is able to get uh, a 3k 4k I, I think the survivors can really relax when they're up against mm -hmm. uh, Xiaoma mm -hmm. but we don't really have a history of seeing um, Alf getting a lot of 4k's yet so far it yeah. seems like he's just been tanking draws and allowing the survivors to make the comeback right 
Um, very true. Mm. Very true. Yeah. I see a but, lot of lightning emojis for Zeta. Yes, because you're, you're, you're a wizard, <laughs> Harry. It's Levioso. Mm, okay. Levioso, not so. Mm. I... <laughs> Swish and flick. All right, let's. It's, uh, it's a swish and a flick. I'm, I'm trying uh, to think of uh, like. Okay. What, uh, what are, uh, give me a Harry Potter line. What, what's what's okay, your okay, iconic? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Let's try it. Let's both try it. Uh, okay, you go first. Uh, 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 oh, I, I know. All right, ready. <laughs> Harry Potter, the boy who lived, came to die. Oh my god, that's so good. Yeah, I just love the way he mumbles it, you know. Or right, there was the one with Hermione, is like, uh, it was like, not me, not, uh, not Hermione, you. That's when they were playing chess. <laughs> and then like, yeah. <laughs> he's gonna sacrifice but, himself. And I'm like, no. Oh my god. He can't do that. Sorry, it's like. Yeah, you gotta love. Yeah, you gotta love the diverse accents coming into right. It's just, it's just super I, interesting. I, I would say even I, we know I what just love the, listening the, to different the, kinds of accents. Yeah, even the acting like they were so young and they were able to act that way. That was so cool, and they they grew up in front of our eyes. So, shout outs to the Potterheads out there with uh, with uh, how the movies played out. But speaking of playing out, my apologies, ladies and gentlemen. We already have the full. A list of survivors here and it seems like they're bolstering up here with a psychologist for the wi-fi heals entomologist with that bees that count for any potential probably night watch that might come out we also have a patient and a gravekeeper because looking at what i can bring to the table <laughs> Gisha. <coughs> oh, Gisha. sorry Gisha. Come. i think Gisha. i think I, I think i also got the cough of eli <coughs> Yeah, Geisha. Geisha. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> Geisha is actually really strong. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it, with this lineup, well, you kinda, you're kind of able to catch up to the patient. That's one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and even the, oh, okay, never mind. Uh, I take that back. He prefers the dear god instead. So, mm. yeah. Gamekeeper, super strong in Moonlit River Park. You can see hey, yeah. why he's got <laughs> Xiaoma is an example of that. The 4K uh, probably going to say like, hey, I could do that as well. And not in game number three, but we're going to do it in game number two. So what's interesting to note is that I believe in IVL, IJL, they didn't really go to uh, go to much of the gamekeeper um, uh, picks here. I'm looking at the, the picks of Alf. He has a geisha as an opera singer. He brought out one, Spider, Nightwatch. Wax Artist, Bon Bon Clown, and BQ. So in, in the finals of IJL, he has not brought out the Gamekeeper. But then again, we're not sure if they had the buff yet. <laughs> so it's interesting to see how he's going to manage this situation. But we know that Gamekeeper is really good on this map. For real, for real. So maybe that's why they're already prepared with Gravekeeper. You know, like because you're in the shovel, you... Yeah, it kind of negates the hope, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. But one thing is for sure, we've seen a little bit of history in this very map uh, with the psychologist as well at the first uh -oh. station and mm -hmm. not going onto the tram, right? Onto the coaster, right? Yeah. So let's see if he's actually going to repeat. We're going to see a repeat of that incident. Mm -hmm. But for now, uh, one thing's for sure, there are two people with flywheels, psychologists, and... This, the patient. So both lovers have have flywheels. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Prioritize the bond and love. You know, you want to keep mm. alive to keep loving. Ooh. Okay. Quotes what? by Nell. Let's go. So now oh. we're gonna head on over to our first chase here. Uh, it seems that's like how you Alf. Do it. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> that's how you do it. Step yeah, in right. the trap. In the coaster first. Step <laughs> in the coaster first. <laughs> All right, but uh, Alf is super close. But the, uh, the mm -hmm. one difference is at least there are the bees to stop, right? To stop him. But Kuchao! Oh uh -oh. my god, the get was closed instantly, and the first hit is gonna register. But hey, anything beats the early traps <laughs> at the mm -hmm. first station. Nah, still good, still good. Um, but Kuchao slowly rotating around. He's gonna have his hook ready in a moment. Oh, and this is so scary. Look at how it's like one hook, one one hit, one hook, one hit. Even if he doesn't hit the survivor, it hits. It, it pulls him close enough to register a hit onto Kuchao. And Kuchao's like, hey, hit oh my me, hit god. Me. And he's gonna gladly oblige. He has a little bit of stress to work with, but that is a really amazing start by Alf. 
first down in the early seconds of this game, an incredible uh, that I mean, it's 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 the punching bag of the team, right? So now he yeah. can actually move on to the two story building to try and harass the cypher progress here. So it's going to be a little tough for them to kind of mitigate. So it's MX that oh, oh sorry, the XMX. I just saw the MX thing come out. So shout out oh. to MX, but it sees a great keeper. Let's go. MX, MX. Okay, sorry. XMX, XMX. <laughs> okay, he's coming in. Take, take that one hit. Okay, finally just gonna decide to hit XMX. Uh, he's gonna try and run away. Ku Chao has. Mm -hmm. um, he still has tight turner activated. So last effort has still not been popped. Obviously, he cannot go up the tram. Uh, Ku Chao's just trying to survive as long as possible here. Hopefully, mm -hmm. he'll be able to last it. Oh no, the miss flywheel! Ku Chao's gonna fall. And he still has the stress on him. Uh oh, yeah, not good. Not, not looking too good for our friends here. And now it seems like Alf is really powering on all cylinders for this uh, for the second chair. So 18 is actually the one to kind of make it towards the rescue, but he could just hit him right away. He's going to clear out some of the bees. So this is going to be a little tough for our friends at GG to try and go for anything. Uh, oh. more than just the tie. He's going to just drop a trap here to see if he can actually go and trap the entomologist. Yeah. I mean, if you look at Cyphers wise, they definitely have everything covered. But again, it's a big map, right? So you got to be really careful. One hook is all it takes and 18 is going to get hit. And that's exactly what happened. Um, and he won't be able to rescue anymore. Kuchel's going to fly off. And the blink! Ooh, the he predicted it! Oh and my god. It the god like prediction by 18 but 18 has to be very careful unfortunately the hook was enough to actually down him and this is gonna be tough for gg but at least they have their last cypher right it's at the That's true it's at the 60 percent mark for them to work with so it's still salvageable yeah Pipisha, once again is having the time of his life mm -hmm. just decoding so we'll have to see what goes on from here posh yeah, so now it seems like Alf is going to continue on this reign of terror. Entomologist still on the rocket chair. XMX is going to get chased outside the two-story area. He does oh. have a shower. It's still on cooldown now, but is he going to oh. get the hook? That answers your question. And XMX is going to be hooked to his death. Um, yeah, he's not going to go for the dungeon. He knows he has this in the back. Alf is looking like he's ready for a 4k victory here decides not to chair xmx huh. oh why oh he could chair oh, no. and he could just go straight for the patient because entomologist is, is gonna get rescued for free okay now he's gonna chair okay yeah. just making sure i guess i don't know i don't want another situation how mirake was <laughs> yeah please not again but let's see how alf is gonna try to navigate his way towards the end game here Seems like, yeah, two ciphers are still in a standstill. GG, unfortunately, put in another precarious spot. And now through what? the structure, uh, just oh. to get the hit off the patient, you can actually try and go and uh, camp out this chair. Yeah, unfortunately, everyone is just one hook away from death. Uh, fortunately, psychologist, uh, sorry, not the psychologist. Fortunately, the entomologist is going to come and rescue uh, the Gravekeeper keeping the fight alive still has a little bit of... Oh, what? What was that? Oh my god! Still able to get a hit Max off Hulk? to XMX. Yeah, that was crazy. Wow, that was super crazy indeed. Maximum hook, maximum velocity, maximum reach. And just like that, XMX is going to lie on the floor, wondering why Psychologist died first and Kipisha is still not dead. Um, following his lover, you know what I mean? Oof. But 18 wow. is gonna get hooked up! Wow! What can is run, going but on? You can't oh, hide. The hooks left and right. The LeBron of IDB. I, I, don't know. <laughs> I would say more Steph Curry, right? The three-pointers. Like the way he's been just getting these hooks left and right. But yeah, Alf just showing an amazing uh, performance here. He's not known for the gamekeeper, but yeah, I was saying no, that he's like the more of the Steph Curry with his three-pointers. 
Steph Curry, I like that. It's it, and, cooking. And, yeah, it's pretty much not even a three point shoot. It's more mm -hmm. like a half court shoot. You know what I mean? And yeah. XMX, okay, it's going to be removed. And that's ex exactly a counter, right? To the hooks. Mm -hmm. You do not want to get closer. You don't want to be closer. XMX will he be able to buy enough time. Alf still has some blink to work with. And he's going to commit with the blink. He's going to down XMX as fast as possible. And PP Shia is just one. Away. <laughs> Shout out to Char. Hey, we might get demon. We might get copyright. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, but no, it's I, good. I, you, you sung the first line, but he's definitely one <laughs> hook away. Uh, that's a scary hook away. So for real, for real. Uh -huh. is avoiding Charlie. Uh, sorry, avoiding <laughs> the mm. molten hound as much as he wants. But Alf is going in the right direction. Oh wait, I think that he's going in the wrong direction. So <laughs> Pipisha. Uh, mm -hmm. Still doing a good job, so there's two hooks to work with. Has to be really careful um, that whatever happened to Mirake does not happen to him uh, yeah. as well. Yeah, because you know, these cheeky survivors, GG. Um, mm -hmm. They'll find a way, they'll find a way. They would, but luckily for him, the Gravekeeper is already, uh, does not have exit path to work with. He just doesn't, he, he can't share the patient. That's the thing, because XMX could just crawl towards the dungeon, but. Yeah, Alf needs to be very careful how he plays this scenario. It's just kind of crazy that we're seeing a bit of deja vu here with GG. They just don't For want, reals. they just deny as much as possible the, the, the five point game. For reals, for reals. One, um, at least here, uh, the map uh -oh. is bigger, right? The yep. map is bigger, but Alf has the capacity to keep hooking and finding. But Pipicia with the crows? It's going to be spotted here. He's going to heal XMX, but doesn't mm -hmm. really matter. The hook's going to bring him down. He still has self-heal, but XMX mm -hmm. is the one that's in danger because he has no more exit path, no shovels, no nothing. And the hook is so ready. And one hook is all it takes. Uh, yes. XMX needs to juke this like a god. Oh. Too hard to juke. Too hard to juke. Yeah, it was just unfortunate, yeah. but there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. He just needs to chair the patient, and then it'll be GG's. But uh, he's gonna go back to the patient because he does have that exit path. One last hook to use, but oh. PPCI is actually hiding away from that dungeon area. I think. Does he find out where he's at? There he is. Oh my god! I, I thought he flywheeled through the trap to go inside the, the clown house, but apparently Oof. not. And oh, look at him. Just another day at work. <laughs> oh my god, this is like the most epic anime exit. He's like, mm -hmm. 4K, Done. 4K. It's like just, one of those things, like you don't look at the explosion, just like, all right, cool, peace out. Just mic drop, and we just we keep going on. Yeah. So, um, this this guarantees that we will see a best of three because even mm -hmm. if Shaoma gets uh ties it up, you know what? That's a that's just a tied game for the hunter side. So yeah. now this really makes things a lot more interesting because GG looking real good at the the uh, well GG's hunter Shaoma looking real good. It's gonna have to have that same type of performance, and he's also good on this gamekeeper. That's very true. But hey. At least Zeta has already done their part. Uh, and mm -hmm. Alf. Alf has transformed into Gandalf thanks to all of your lightning emojis, guys. I knew it! So <laughs> keep supporting, man. Keep spamming mm -hmm. those lightning emojis because that's exactly what's been powering up Alf, powering up Zeta. And as for GG, well, mm -hmm. let's just say that um, pandas are all they need here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, true. Sure. Yeah. Shaomas. I'm seeing Slay Alfredo. Pasta Alfredo, Alfredo, and, and whatnot. The great. So, the great. I'm getting hungry now. So, because we we're talking about Wagyu, he's definitely going to get Wagyu steak after this, after that performance, keeping things alive. For so, yeah. reals, for reals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, they still have a fighting chance. I mean, Zeta, it's, it's not as easy as it seems. It just feels like they're just making it look easy. You know what I mean? Like, um, you know one of those catchphrases on TikTok where people say like, okay, it looks easy, but it's actually hard. You know, it looks hard, but it's actually easy, right? But but here it's actually like, okay, and they do those clap thing. I, I don't know why, I just keep like, okay, it's hard, but it's actually easy. It's easy, but it's actually hard. I've yeah, seen so... some of those, yeah. It's, it's actually hard. What, what Alf did yeah. there, that was crazy. Super, that was yeah. an uphill battle. But puts Zeta in a good position here because now it looks like 
the least that they could do, well, the, the, the most that GG could do is just tie out this performance here. So what a way to start out round number two with him, the Alpha the Great, ladies and gentlemen, getting a five-point game for his team. For reals, for reals, 22 survivor hits slaying, man. Mm -hmm. Woke up woke up with violence in his mind and cool, chill, MC character vibe, you know, MC vibes, exiting the stage with a 4K. You know that you know that he's here to slay when you see all those knockdowns, ten knockdowns mm -hmm. throughout the game. And that's crazy. I mean the survivors, you once they use up their resources, there's pretty much no way they can avoid, you know, mm -hmm. they can avoid the hooks anymore. Yeah, just a little unfortunate. I don't know if Nell's frozen, but I could definitely still hear you, Nell. But while that is while they're trying to sort that out. Oh there you go, we're back. <laughs> um uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. just Alf slaying is also like making us freeze in in fear of Alf. So again, an incredible showing by Alf here. We have eight to six, and just like that, they were able to come back uh, in in the point differential. So uh, just mm. in a just a great showing. Uh, I would attribute it to, like you said, Nell, the the chat giving out their lightning emojis, really powering them up. And yeah. now it, it comes down to how the survivor team is going to secure this round win. Yeah, exactly. And I'm going to try and talk like a ventriloquist, you know. I'm trying to talk without my lips moving. So as you can see, <laughs> it's actually working. So it's also another skill I have. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a useless skill for me. I don't know why. I do not have a doll here. I think but... I could do that too. Look at that. I'm doing it too. Oh my god. Yeah. Look at that. Oh my god. It's crazy. Hello, people. All right, I'm going to talk now. All right, we're good. Next level. <laughs> How did you do that? And show your teeth as well. Oh my god. Yes. I can never. I can never. Uh, I'm, working, yeah. I'm working on it, guys. For I'm trying to have a, yeah. a, a karma impression with, the, with with me. Just freeze freely. Really? You got one? You, freeze, got, freeze. you, you got another one? Yeah. Okay. Uh... <laughs> I don't know what to do with it anymore. <laughs> but for those of you, uh, okay, this is a tribute to Gamekeeper. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, actually, I don't have any lines I can think about Gamekeeper. Um, Hooked on you. Want to trap? They you. say. <laughs> okay. We got they it. they say Gamekeeper. Gamekeepers are good with hooks. Mm -hmm. But all I want is to rope in your heart. How's that? Ooh, <laughs> oh my god, that sounds more cringe. I mm -hmm. don't know. Uh... <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to think of one. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Mm -hmm. Hang on, hang on. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, hang on. Okay. I'm trying to think of like a pun to use with Gamekeeper. Uh, mm. Mm. Okay. Cool. They say that. Okay. The, the, uh, w Yo, I use Bane because my game is on point and I definitely want to keep you in my heart, girl. Mm, no. Oh my god. <laughs> Slay, yeah, use, bro. Yeah, use Slay. the hands, bro. You got to use the hands and, and the Slay. lip bite, but that's about it. Slay. Easy. Slay. Easy. Eat. <laughs> He's eating, bro. Top G. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> More of none of that. But mm. yeah, I mean, Zeta Division is definitely coming out here, uh, feeling on top now that Alf has secured secured the 4k in the first half so technically all they have to do here is deny uh shaoma right mm -hmm. deny shaoma of the 4k and they will be able to take one round win and equalizing their score right yeah the one. Um, oh, oh man everyone's like just <laughs> super must be really hot, hot in state i don't know the the competition is definitely heating up most likely but look at shaoma he's like no nah, it's not hot bro i'm good Chilling, wiping out my hands, getting ready, putting some powder on. But yeah, they definitely need it now more than ever because we saw how Shamo was able to rise to the occasion in round number one. And this is what's a little scary because Shamo has always been the dedicated hunter of GG. There's no best of one hunter. But yeah. that could be a good thing and a bad thing because he has to be in top form to continue on this streak and not make the point differential too vast in this next round. Yeah, not too vast, but I, I'm very confident that he might be able to replicate what he did as a gamekeeper in yesterday's match uh, and, and duplicate it into today's match, right? Because I feel like he's definitely trying to pick the same, a gamekeeper as well, 
Mm -hmm. So the Baron picks are going to be super important here because here, if Zeta decides to, if you see even the slight appearance of a Aeroplanus or uh, Embalmer, yeah, Embalmer, you, you, you know that Zeta's gearing for that, for that um, one man escape at least, mm -hmm. you know, ge gearing for a draw game. So Shaman needs to try his best to counter this kind of situation, taking away the patient. Uh, sorry, taking away the psychology piece from patient does allow um, him to control, like you know, in case the heal gets out of hand. Mm -hmm. Because because forward is a risky player. If right. he misses a stun, if he misses a uh, support and gets injured, you want to have that Wi-Fi global heal yeah. uh, to heal him up. But without that, mm -hmm. uh, forward's gotta think carefully uh, how mm -hmm. he's gonna play in this game. Right, and. Rounding it up with an Airplanist pick, this is very standard, especially in a big map like this. It's interesting that they pick, yeah, Mochi on... Oh, sorry, I don't know who's going to use the forward, but the forward coming in first is very risky. Big shout out to the fans over there at the, the venue. <laughs> uh, I think he's going to... Ha he has to play Gamekeeper, right? Because it's a map like this. This is Gigi's map choice. Unless he has something else that he can bring to the table. He does have a, a plethora of other hunters to work with, but I don't see any hunter that could be as effective. He has proven in the past that he was able to bring out Gamekeeper uh, and look at the re the reactions, but uh, I, I can't, I wish I knew how to read that. <laughs> I wish I knew how to read that too, because I can only listen and speak a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But one thing's for sure, they're definitely giving the cheers. So you guys in the chat, don't forget to send in your team cheers, your fan cheers, be it in this chat, be it to us on Instagram, because we'll definitely be resharing it, reposting it, and reading it out. And they, uh, who knows, maybe, maybe, if your cheers are loud enough, you know, we should we should screenshot it, you know? We'll mm -hmm. screenshot the entire line of chat uh, <laughs> chants, and then we can, we can share it, we can tag uh, the players. That's possible. We can make, we yeah. can try, yeah. And we did with and... Nerakun, right? So yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know if Shaoma has an Instagram, but I know there's a GG fan account, so I will tag that if ever that would be the case. But it seems like we're all locked and loaded with the character picks. We just have to check out the spawn location as well as the personas in this scenario. And you can kind of see uh, Shaoma getting advice from his uh, coach here on where to spawn. It seems like yeah. the survivors are going to go with an L spawn, if I saw that correctly. Mm. But I do see that uh, one will take uh, fourth stop, so hopefully it might be the aeroplanist because uh, I'm trying to remember entomologist. They also picked the the forward and the Wi-Fi healer, which is the psychologist. So possibly picking the best one. Seems like Mochi is oh. not. Oh, interesting. So the L spawn is going to happen, and Shauma actually spawning near the first stop. Yeah, first stop. Um, so it seems like Zeta's plan here is like. Yeah, we're gonna forego the we're gonna forego the first station altogether, right? Because against a gamekeeper, the hook might help to keep him up to pace, you know, mm -hmm. be able to close the distance. But while all of that's going on, well, I just want to ask you one really quick question. Sure. How do you, how do you say I hate uh, I hate someone's name in the Philippines? Like you hate. Yeah, uh, like, yeah, I hate you, like, you know. Uh, oh. This, you don't really say hate, like, we say something else, but I don't think we're allowed to say it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. okay well, I'll, I'll, I'll think of that, I'll think of that. Okay. But, yeah, that's not yeah. something that we usually say, but... Oh, really? Uh, why? Oh, Who do you hate, No. Okay, I hate Erica because she... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she she just shared a story of me bold when I'm not even bold yet. Oh <laughs> my god! Wait for it, Erica. Wait for it. But anyway, Wait. we're gonna go to the action here. Pot Spice and Nello Mello watching Shaoma actually set up some traps here at the two-story area. So everyone's left this area. Everyone's mm -hmm. left this area. How many twos yeah. already flew flown out super far distance from the second floor, going towards the first station? Xiaoma's tool hooks won't be able to help him reach in time. Mm -hmm. Maybe How many two's just gonna use that uh, hook to go up. Oh yeah, he has no more hooks to work with, and it's gonna use the roller coaster straight away. So this is already buying some time mm -hmm. for Team Zayden. 
Pasha. Yeah, and Hametu is going to choose to go down. I thought he's going to wait. Oh, actually, the hook cooldown. I thought he was going to hook from the second, uh, uh, well, from the, the, the second stop. But it seems like he's hooked his way towards the two-story area. Has to be very careful because some traps were set up here, but the bees are able to control. And nice oh. avoidance of the hook. Does he see that Hametu's here? The basement's also here now. I like that. Uh, there. Oh, my God. I like that, too. Uh, <laughs> I oh my god the hit onto the patient, but I like that Dolisu is using the bees to provide a lot of support because that's the one thing that counters the hope. So yeah, yeah, you, you can see. Oh wait wait wait! Oh, oh my god. god, finding that opening, that slight crack in the defense, mm -hmm. breaking through. I would have to say the... that yeah, the the trap on the door really helped out. So now For we're real. gonna see the basement game of this gamekeeper. The thing is, though, they can choose not to go for this risky rescue. Oh, but That's they true. see the oh, Kazuya! <laughs> oh my god! What a stun! Oh, oh, oh and the bees push him away! Oh wow. no! He's, he's gonna like, lose surprise. sight! Yeah, he's yeah. gonna lose sight of them! And now he surprise. doesn't know which way to go! That's crazy! What a jump scare! Spooky yeah. rescuing strategy on for the side real. of. Oh, but Kazuneko, they ran in the same direction here. It seems oh. like, oh, Kazuneko's gonna be the next target. He gets the hit, but Hametu's still here. Hametu's still here. I thought he would try at least run towards where the second stop uh, yeah. was, but... Or at least hmm. maybe hide in the second floor because the, yeah, the exit yeah. was there. But uh, yeah, it just seems like that excellent play. So much resources were spent. And now oh. the hook is gonna be able to catch the patient and the patient has fallen down, folks. Yeah, patient has fallen down. Codename patient has fallen down. No one is there to provide support anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, you try to run a forward and now the forward is injured. One hook away from getting down. So obviously even with half a football, he's not going to commit to the rescue anymore. And while all of that's happening, even the entomologist bees have depleted. So really, mm -hmm. Mochi is the only one who can actually come and do a rescue. Um, but... The cipher, there's not even a last cipher here, and this is like a repeat of what happened last game. Yeah, you know? so not enough ciphers. I don't. Yeah, they shouldn't. I don't think they should risk the rescue, and they're not going to do that. I think they should try to account for the end game. Maybe heal up the forward. Uh, but it's going to be hard to call here, Nel, because Kazuneko is the next target. He has half a football to work with for some transitions. So let's oh, see. Nice, nice avoidance. Okay. Nice. Flywheel it. Can he flywheel it away? Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, still has the hook because of infinity dash. Oh, the flag oh! is beautiful! Let go! And he still has half a football to work with. Shelma still has the... Oh my god! The hook's gonna prevail fast. And mm -hmm. this is why the adjustment to the, to the Bane, right? He, it mm -hmm. gives me more window of time to perform mm. the hook continuously. Oh, he's not even gonna chair. He's gonna go straight for the last cypher. First thing he does, put a trap, because you know, that's one mm. thing you wanna do. You gotta try to catch someone mm. trying to do the cypher, but... Ooh, nice I drop that. on Dolisu. He also has second stop to work with. So Dolisu uh, needs to be very careful. He's already halfway injured. No more bees to work with, but yeah, he's kiting actually at first stop. It's gonna be hard nice. for him to get a Nice avoidance. So he's able to actually avoid that hook. Versus out attack recovery. At least the rescue did happen. And now this is a tough decision they have to call for. It's only the airplane that can go for the rescue. While well, Kazuneko is working on a cypher at two story. Yeah. But then again, this is definitely uh, still salvageable mm -hmm. because it is Dolisu's first, first uh, chair, right? So yes. as long as it doesn't get caught off guard halfway going to rescue, things will oh be my. really good. Does he spot uh, out? Oh my god, he's oh, he spot out! He did, he did. Oh, the black wheel, nice! Mm -hmm. but, it's, but it doesn't matter, he still has... Oh, nice! The elevation into into the dash. Mochi needs to be very careful! Oh what? my goodness! Oh, Mochi wait. MVP! Oh, wow. wow, able to actually avoid the, the hook there. So he's gonna go for an after half rescue. The cooldown of the hook is still there. He's gonna try to go for a, hook, uh, a hit past the pallet. Cypher isn't moving quite as fast as you'd want it to. He's gonna be forced to go for the rescue. At least the cooldown of the, the hook oh. is there, but the entomologist gets farmed off of. Yeah, and that's gonna leave, that's gonna leave two survivors down out of the game.
Mochi uh -oh. and Kazuneko. You know Kazun you know the forward and that's the downside, right? You know that the forward's gonna be caught really slow. I know, <laughs> he's trying his best. William's trying his best, but now nice avoidance of the hook. Cypher is oh, not yet nice, prime. Nice, nice. <gasps> okay. Wow, nice. Good job, Mochi. Let's go. Yeah, What's he keeps trap? making him miss. He keeps mm -hmm. making him miss. Actually, you know what? I think Mochi. Yeah, should I just gone up the mm -hmm. stairs and try and bait it at the. Oh, okay. he's gonna go down here. Oh, he's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. He knows that the Cypher's prime. He's gonna. It's fine. Yeah, he's gonna yeah take the trap. Level. It's totally fine. Take the trap. It's all right. <laughs> And now is he can actually go towards the chair and wait for the pop, but now eats the the hook again. So uh, just use it. Can you use it? Can you I have a it? feeling. I don't know. He set a trap, so I think he should use it, and then they should pop. Oh! Oh, oh, yeah, the trap's gonna, oh! Now we know. Now we know. The trap's gonna hit him. You He's gonna I mean? hook him, oh. and then go for the. Oh no! I feel like he should have rode that coaster all the way till the end. So now. Oh, Kazuneko's oh. in a tough spot. I think the it was the trap that actually forced him out, I feel. Oh. Yeah, maybe oh, that's yeah, why. Now that's we what know happened yesterday. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it does open up a little bit of opportunity for Kazuneko to use his football to go all the way out. Oh, no, it's not going to happen. And it's going to be... I will. Okay, I'm not going to say anything yet. Okay, Kazuneko with half a football probably should have went upstairs. Oh, he's going to... There we go. <laughs> Able oh, to the get the Cypher Pop. Oh my god, he's got half a football to work with, but the oh! hook is gonna land! And the hit is gonna connect, and Xiaoma! Five point game in round number two, we're all tied up! Yeah, he ate and left no crumbs. None at all. Yeah, None 4K. At all. Back to back 4K against not a against any team, but against one of the best teams in Japan, Zeta from Japan Ooh. Division. How crazy is that? Back to back 4Ks. And this is this Zeta survivors we're talking about. How often do you see them get 4K back to back? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Rare. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. You got to give it to Shaoma with how well he played that game. The hooks really um, were able to land. His his priority was really good on, on which objective to go for. They had a really big opening, I would have to say, in the basement. That was the first chair of the patient, and it was on the basement, and you had the forward and the entomologist to kind of OB in support. But it was yeah. just unfortunate they ran in the same direction. So when Shaoma was chasing after the forward, Hametu was right there. So he was able to down the hit the injure the forward and then go for the, the patient for the first, uh, I think, the first domino piece to fall down. Yeah, it's just one. I think we can just confirm one thing after everything that's happened, right? One mm -hmm. thing's for sure, we can confirm that Gamekeeper, Moonlit Verbal Park, killer combo. You, yeah. it, it's mm -hmm. so hard to, it's so hard to dodge in the end. And you notice that Xiaoma actually was actually made to miss a few hooks as well, right? Mm -hmm. He actually yeah. missed quite a number of hooks. But in the end, it wasn't enough. He was able to recover. He was able to, um, he was able to come back. He was able to come back and pressure the survivors of Zeta. And in the end. You, you saw how well Mochi Kai. I, I would say Mochi actually did an amazing job uh, without support mm -hmm. in that game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just yeah. I I would say that he was one of the MVPs. He made a miss, like you called out, and he was yeah. also tight kiting, which is kind of crazy. And yeah, yeah. It was just the end game scenario here. I guess yeah, setting the trap on the other side forces you out. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it was just a tough call. I feel like maybe I don't know what would you do in that scenario. I'm looking at the replay now. Just seems uh, like what, force the pop, drop down. Uh, I would probably, I would probably not rely on the coaster too much. Mm -hmm. Probably just uh, jump off the window, jump off mm -hmm. the window, pop the cipher, and rely on the speed boost to run because mm -hmm. he still, yeah, he still has one more rocket to work with. I think he could have definitely went there. It's better than dying a slow death like that, right? I'm looking at the replay yeah. now. He's dying a slow death, and Kazuneko in that position, what can he do? He's, mm -hmm. he's, his hands are tight. So I, I guess it's um, I I would say that it's a uh, the decision mm -hmm. to to commit to the grab coaster did not pay off. <laughs> yeah, did not pay Zero off. stars on this grab. Zero stars. It didn't, it didn't work out. The grab share did not work out for him. Nobody was there, and 
Yeah, ultimately, I mean, we see the final seconds here. Kazuneko popped it in time, but he only had a few football to work with. The tension was already in the air. And yeah, just one hook, one hit, and that sealed the deal for Shaoma to for Gigi to kind of hold on to this lead. So it seems like it is another hunter showcase or another hunter showdown between Shaoma and not Mirake. Mirake combined with Alf uh, is who he's facing. Yeah, if Mirake was the one who gets uh, 4K in best of one, right? We would have seen five oh, zeros every crazy. single half, right? Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, I guess this game goes to show that they are playing at the highest level ever. And mm -hmm. that they, they're just constantly, the hunters are constantly going for the 4Ks. Whereas the survivors, it seems like the survivors are like, are, I would say they are like caught in the eye of the storm. If they can get one person out, they should they should give thanks and be like mm -hmm. yeah that they can actually get one person out and change the tides in their favor right yeah. but for now safe to say uh gg survivors are the one the only one to live mm -hmm. the boy who lived and Came to tell the to tale. round three <laughs> yeah for reals that's the that's the score difference coming mm -hmm. in and um yeah i'm anticipating a lot more in bo3 posh mm -hmm. Yeah, when it comes to BO3, it is going to be Zeta that has the map selection. So we will throw it to highlights, but when we come back, it's going to be round number three of Zeta versus GG. So let's see those highlights. ちょっと。あれ、ちょっと。あれ、ちょっと。あれ、ちょっと。あれ、ちょっと。あれ、ちょっと。あれ、ちょっと。あれ、ちょっと。あれ、ちょっと。あれ、ちょっと。あれ、
because we are gonna see a lot of big maps if you think Moonlit River Park is the last big map you ever see. Well, apparently they do love themselves a huge map and we are going to Lakeside Village. Um, I don't know, uh, what do you think? Gamekeeper in this place as well? I mean, I, I think they'll just bad out Gamekeeper. For right sure. That, right? So I think this is where Alf could definitely shine because I've seen him has, have his fair share of success in this map in Lakeside Village. Uh, I'm looking at my notes to see, yeah, they actually, this is a map they really prefer. He actually doesn't even mind using like Bon Bon in a map like this, but uh, based on how he's performed in this map in best of three, he brings out the Night Watch. Um, I think he's also brought out the Geisha once in a while, but this kind of calls for a, a 4K type hunter and Geisha can do that. Uh, I just don't know which one he'd go for. He also has Spider. Uh, I mean, he brought up Bon Bon. His Bon Bon is pretty iconic here in Koa. Luchino. 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 You know, people, people keep surprised Luchino uh, is that emoting you in chat, by the way. You know, whenever you appear, I, they, they put lizard emojis. They, they know I hate lizards. They know that I have trauma because of lizards. And this is not just like, I'm not using the T word nonchalantly. I'm really traumatized by the four leg lizards, the the monitor lizard that actually crawled up. For those of you who don't know, I keep getting visits from the visits. monitor lizard in my bathroom. That's the scariest <laughs> thing you can actually Imagine, like, encounter, right? In the middle of the night, you have to use the bathroom like 3 a.m. Like you're kind of just rubbing your Hello. eyes because you soak up then. Oh my god, jump scare. Oh my god! I yeah. So wait, wait. Point... You're 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 more afraid of lizards than let's say like cockroaches. Like you can handle cockroaches. I can handle cockroaches. I can handle rats. I can handle cockroaches. I cannot handle monitor lizards. Lizards because imagine like what you said, going to the toilet in the middle of the night, and then there's uh -huh. a head poking out and saying, "Hi, I'm here. Are you gonna pee into my mouth?" Oh, Ew! Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> and... no, first of all, I don't think the lizard thinks that yeah, it says that. Yeah, and, <laughs> and it's so it's so traumatic because you you know what I mean. It's like I you know see the, the lizard uh -huh. so much. I even have a name for it. What's the name called of Lizzie. 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 Yeah, 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 that's in chat. They, they, they do oh say God. that. Oh, uh, thank you. Final MVP. Okay, thank you, Snooty. Thank you for that yeah, one. So and come on as well. Thank mm. you. Appreciate it, guys. But you are our favorite MVP. Thank you. For real. For real. Thank you. Yeah, so that's why, no, no Lukino attacks. I hate it. Uh, but yeah, uh, I know a lot of people who actually love uh, reptiles. Our bestie Chantal is one of them. Mm -hmm. She loves so what snakes. About, what about like frogs? Like you're okay with frogs? Uh, frogs, I'm okay. okay. I just, yeah, frogs, I'm okay so as long as I don't have to kiss it, mm -hmm. you know. As long as I don't Prince have to Prince Charming, it. though. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm afraid I kiss the frog and I, I, it doesn't transform into a princess. And I think mm -hmm. that's, <laughs> that's sad and I, I get a deep, I get hand, mouth, uh, and foot. Uh, I, I see. Whatever. True. I, I see Erica <laughs> saying, I love you, Nello. So I think he heard you say Bustos. So. Bustos. Mm -hmm. Bustos, like a, how dare you? <laughs> how, dare, how, dare you? how dare you? How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? He, 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 Turn him bald before, like he's gonna do it, guys. But yeah, FT has to make sure they qualify first. But yeah, for real, for real. You know, it's it's not. I'm my hair is important. I, I think hair is really important for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Like it shows their style, their personality, and you know, just mm -hmm. um. So losing my hair is definitely something that I feel sad about. But hey, it's for a good cause. It's like... It's a good cause, yeah. Yeah. If, if Southeast Asia teams can make it to the top eight, it's mm -hmm. it's commitment to the cause. Brothers mm -hmm. and sisters. Brothers <laughs> and sisters. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> it's a rally now. I don't know. He's, he's, he's channeling. Uh, it's at your specific room. Like, we are canceling oh, yeah? the apocalypse. Wow, nice. I like that. Pacific Rim. Yeah, it's a it's a really good movie. Uh, mm -hmm. I like that the robots are super huge. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. And yeah. you have to be tethered to, to be able to pilot the robots. But yeah, I love that. Enough about, mm -hmm. enough about movies. We got to talk about, speaking of piloting, we got an airplanist. Uh, we also have a novelist and a mercenary. So over here at Lakeside, looking at the bands of ALF, what do you think he might be actually going for? Because, yeah, you definitely want to ban the toy merchant. Embalmer negates Breaking any wheel. tie. Oh. Breaking hmm. wheel, maybe. 
Mm, there's a gamekeeper available as well. They didn't ban his gamekeeper. Oh, you're right. Mm, and Lakeside's pretty good too. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Lakeside's pretty good for breaking will. Not a lot of uh, places you can go out. Uh, you can juke him out. Mm. Oh. And even the barmaid might be able to catch him off guard before he pulls the Dublin off. Mm. Or Lukino! Oh my god. Oh, you're, Lukino, you're, you're asking for it now. <laughs> Cuba Rose Kisser. Oh, Cuba Rose lizard. Kisser. But they're cute, Nello. What? No. No way. No way, no way, no way. The baby you monitor see, Lizzie. You, st you still see Lizzie till this day? No, I moved to another house because I do not want to see mm -hmm. Lizzie anymore. I moved. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's good. Yeah. I guess I, I Lizzie owns place. that house now. <laughs> Lizzie owns that house for real. I. Please. That's how scared he, Chad. That's how scared he is. He, had, he moved out. He didn't want to deal with that. For real. Hey, imagine trying to take a dump and. Oh my God! Help! <laughs> oh my God! You know, some of my friends even made fun of me. Like, hey, you know, mm -hmm. the reason why Lizzie uh, appears so often is probably because he wants he gets nutrition from your droppings. Oh and, my God! Oh your my God! Are, what? They are so <laughs> weird. Evil. But yeah, that's evil. not good. I'd say evil. Uh, Tagalog. Italian. Masama. Masama. Sama, sama, like sama, sama, sama ka, yeah. Mm. Sama masaga, yeah. But speaking about sama masaga, Alf, the crack artist, <laughs> okay. that's evil, man. That's that's an evil hunter right there. Mm. He blocks ciphers, blocks your exit, blocks your way. And we seen him got uh, wait, did we see him get a 4K with Lex artist? He was a draw, um, right? Circle. Yeah, I think it was a draw if I recall correctly. I'm gonna try to look at my notes, but it seems like uh. Yeah, it was a draw. It's a draw, yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially if he brings Peeper, so... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was... I, I don't... Yeah. Peeper's wax artist in a big map. I know you want to stall things out, and you want to be able yeah. to catch them off guard, but it's just... It, uh, it's it's yeah. really tough, and it yeah. didn't work out. So just keep moving away. And you're just blocking your vision as well, right? Uh, I don't, if you block the windows. But hey, we're going to see how there are... He's going to pull off the Wax Artist because so far it's been 4K back to back. And quite honestly, Wax Artist, yeah, maybe he has an idea how this can be turned into a 4K. Mm -hmm. Yeah, realistically, when you have a good start, you want to keep the momentum going, right? So I don't right. see how he's choosing this just to get a draw. I think he's, he really thinks that Crack Artist can get a 4K against this composition. I can't wait to see the persona build because I, I definitely don't want to see peepers. I want to see a little more aggression in his build. Um, but then again, you know what? Alf, you got to trust in the process, trust in him. And he will go with the blink detention trump card, very standard. Seems like we see some flywheels here and only one broken windows on the barmaid side. So flywheel, yeah, you can be able to negate the the wax but you definitely want to bring that broken windows to transition away from uh, him blocking out pallets blocking out windows yeah i heard some professional players say you fly with it when you're at 97 98 percent wax but hey bring you the action here in mm -hmm. bo3 is me nello mellow and posh spice let's go let's hope the timing of that flywheel will be on point as elf just storms his way towards this side of the map of the cornfield now it seems like he's making his way towards the small boat. He's going to be blocking out the window here, but it seems like everyone is actually at a distance. So PP Shah might be the first chase. He sees him at the distance. PP Shah sporting the novelist, though. So we'll see if he chooses to commit here. Yeah, I mean, he's already got enough rest time. He's already decoded enough for the past two BOs. So it, it's, to be fair, he should be kiting now, right? Oh, nice! Oh going my in. god! Oh, couldn't make it in time. Oh my mm. god. And it's 84% Cypher. I, I, if Alf actually went for the Wax again, I believe he would have gotten him. He okay. did. He gets it. This is actually huge. And he's actually able to get the hit. But the switch... No, the nice. wheel through the window! Wow, amazing discipline. Watching the hunters move and then turning the hunter again. Oh, but this time the bling is up and ready. Alf shall take no more nonsense. Go down goes the novelist and PP Shia. Well, down for the count while the ciphers are currently. Yeah. Yeah, his teammates are doing it now. <laughs> he, he's definitely had enough. He's like, all right, I gotta be able to down this novelist. Uh, and yeah, that was just kind of unfortunate how. 
um, PP Xiao was kind of put in an area where there was uh, just limited pallets to work with or limited uh, vision because it was definitely like the alleyway. Uh, so the the way he was shooting was definitely going to hit its target. So yeah, now we thrills. see the far camping of Alf and who will come for the rescue? It seems like it's the mercenary. Yeah. And you, you see that this is made possible because he did not bring bling. Uh, he did not bring peepers. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> how would you expect to catch up, right? Mm -hmm. uh, against the noblest. But hey, XMX, trying to close in the distance. Uh, Alf, still not at full presence, only two hits. Uh, first presence unlocked, has the wax bomb to work with. Oh, nice. Uh, I'm not mm. really sure. Uh, okay. Uh -oh. I'm not sure why he hide behind the mm -hmm. tree. Huh. Yeah. And now it seems like PP Xiao was able to provide enough distance. He did hit the mercenary, but um, that's an excellent rescue. I thought he'd try to farm off a hit off PP Xiao, but PP Xiao, again, wasting away the tide turner. So at least uh, the down will happen soon enough. And oh. now gets the hit. Yeah, you can see that he's trying to avoid facial contact, face contact, right? Like, hey, I'm seeing you, kaboo, now you see me, now you don't, now you see me. Now you know. <laughs> he's like avoiding the he's like avoiding the thief's flashlight. Mm. Uh doesn't want to give him the stacks, you know. But PP is gonna go down and all of a sudden Zeta uh has a little one, GG finds themselves playing 3v1. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we see that one cipher's about to pop, they haven't opened up their last cipher just yet. Uh, it's about to hit the 70% mark, but this is one of the hard things about Wax Art is you have to walk all the way to your next target, and it's not even a guarantee who you'll find or who, who you'll find is the better target. It seems like Kuchao, uh, Kuchao will be the next target, and it's actually pretty okay, but in a, in an area like this, could be a little tough. Yeah, he's going to farm Kuchao off. He's already at max presence. Kuchao's going to take that Dublin drink. He's going to try and rotate. Oh! oh, the Wax Bomb did not mm -hmm. connect that time. Yeah, uh, well, at least he managed to lock Kucha down in this position. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, yo! Oh! <laughs> okay. You see? You see? This is why you bring Blink! <laughs> <laughs> exhibit A was previously this Exhibit B, ladies and gentlemen. This is how you want to play. And now it seems like uh, one Cypher remaining, but he's still able to get the barmaid, and the drink was for nothing because Alf was able to stuff it. Uh, but the drink did help out the mercenary to heal up. So how will, does he have the lineup ready? Can he actually stop the Cypher from moving? He knows that it's that Cypher that is shaking. So he's going to try to see if anyone is here. Yeah, he's going to go for that trick. Uh, wax into, wax into hot wax into hit, you know, mm -hmm. to down it straight away. Uh, Cypher is technically not done. So if he can get 18 in the next 20 seconds, oh, the drop down. Yeah, you, you're not going to get him in time anymore. Mm -hmm. 18 beautiful boosts of rocket closing his distance already in Ku Chow. So what needs to happen here is buy more ah, time. Yeah, mm. don't don't down, don't go down. Don't don't mm. even bother hitting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wait until your trade is ready so they can go for the late game. And right. Change to teleport, whatever you want. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, they I guess pop they're not buying it. it. Yeah, they're not. But he has the hot wax ready, so he just goes for the regular hit. Uh but yeah, trait isn't ready just yet. But the cipher the end game is still not uh in sight for these survivors since they have not touched the exit gate just yet. So let's see, 16 seconds. It seems like Alf might want to hunker down on 18, but 18 realizes this and note that the dungeon is right behind Alf. Yeah, right behind Alf, but 18 already knows what's going on. Mercenary's already on his way to the back gate. Um so it actually matters as long as you can get uh, one more kill things should be okay mm. i mean it's a wax artist we're talking about um yeah, yeah. he needs he, he he cannot get two k's he cannot get mm -hmm. two more k's here um true and teleport is ready so let's see 18 seems to be focusing on just trying to kite and contain yeah this is looking like a three person elimination He's going to try and just go for the regular oh. hit, but the flywheel just to continue on the chase here. But now, what? 100% wax. 18 will be falling down. Mercenary has left the building, and now we have ourselves a 3-1 to one game. Yeah. Let's see if uh, this 3k by Alf is enough uh, to keep Zeta afloat. Uh, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. GG, they're, they're still winning. They're still winning. Um, they... As long as next game they get another another draw, I think it's still it's gonna still be GG's game to win, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, we'll have to see what's going on here. But for now, it's safe to say, uh, Wax Artist, hey, at least, at least, 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> At least a 3K. Yeah, uh, and and yeah. Nell, no peepers. We had no to blink. peepers. <laughs> that made all the difference. It would have been a draw. It really did. It peepers, right? You would have been, think... been able to catch up. Heck, I think it'd be more than just uh well it would be more for the survivors favor i think they would have got three because look the downs were so important i mean i think pp shy if he didn't have the threat of um the blink i think he would have lasted way longer but the fact that blink was brought to the table and also for the blink to be used towards the late game really helped out alf and yeah, I know I understand that Peepers is helped to cipher control, but you saw how slow the wax artist walks, so the blink really yeah, helps well. in my book. Yeah. I think they can run a competition between Wax Artist and the Bon Bon. <laughs> they're walking side by side. And it, okay, okay, chat. Who would who would win a foot race? Would it be the wax artist or the Bon Bon? Answer, answer in chat. Answer, answer. <laughs> please, who do you please. think? Who do you think? Because I know there might be a correct answer, but by the way things look, it might be Wax Artist has a longer legs, so... He does, he does, but he moves slower. Bon Bon, it's like... He, t- yeah, t- he has to take lo- longer, like... Shorter yeah, legs, maybe bon, but... Maybe Bon yeah. Bon would lose that, that foot race. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shorter Short legs, king. but faster faster, faster steps. Steps per, steps per second. Steps yeah. per minute. <laughs> slower, and then for Wax Artist, slower, slower leg movements, but... Bigger strides. Strides, yeah, true, mm. true. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm for I'm for my short king. I'm for Bon Bon. I hope he wins that race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, whichever it is, one thing's for sure. Alf has. Well, he made the wax artist work. He made it. He, he got a 3K with the blink wax artist. It's very important to uh, emphasize the blink because mm-hmm. the last time we saw him <laughs> with a peeper, it did not work that well. Mm-hmm. But yeah, XMX is going to be the sole survivor of that game. Uh, probably happy now. I think he, I think overall it's a moral victory for Al because mm-hmm. you know he got Pipisha first. Pipisha yes. has been hiding for the past two <laughs> BOs, decoding. So he's like, yeah, mm-hmm. we go after PPX, Pipisha first, and oh, that's oh. it. Here we have the score line, Nell. So not only do they have to win, but they have to also uh, win in terms of the score. So it's a uh... Round win. So if they tie this game, if GG ties this game, they're still able to win. So here are the win conditions. Zeta needs at least three survivor out. We're not going to see a tied game here, folks, because if there's going to be a tie, GG is still going to win uh, in terms of points because they win with just one point. That's so it's all. True. Yeah. Wait a minute. I thought it was six to three in game number one. Six to three, right? Yeah. In total, it's 11, 13 points right now. Mm. 11, so, yeah, 11, sorry, 11, 12, 11, 12, 11, 12. So everything in between uh, yeah. belongs to GG. Yes. Right? So if we yeah. tie it out, yes. Uh, if, if they tie it out, yes. Uh, F, uh, sorry. Um, Zeta wins the round. But since they tie in rounds, we're going to look at points. And they're up by one point. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's the prerequisites, the requirements you can see. Um, mm-hmm. So that's definitely not going to be a BO4, right? No overtime. Yeah, none. Uh, mm-hmm. They're just going to win it right off the bat there. Zeta just needs a tie. Hanako, I see you. Mm-hmm. Oh, how dare you? Call me Papi. Yeah. <laughs> right. But Zeta just needs a tie. That's true. Uh, Actually, no, Zeta needs three man escape. Zeta needs three man escape. GG, GG needs, needs a, tie. a tie. Yeah, yes. GG needs a tie. The other way around. But mm-hmm. Hanako, appreciate you. I would call you daughter, but I do not want to be that old yet. But okay. <laughs> Do you have like, like okay? Do you have a saying for, in for the Philippines or like like when you call your son or you call your daughter? Is there like calling like, hey son, hey daughter? Uh, well, I don't have a son or daughter, so I'm not like, sure. Do, but <laughs> I mean, yeah, I know. They just but call your name, right? Yeah, I just call your name. Yeah, Anak. I mean, that's son. Yeah, or, Anak, like, really? An, yeah, or like that's not, I don't say it, but I hear it in 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 dramas of Filipino dramas. But like, oh. no one really says that though. In Malaysia, Indonesia, they say it. Anak, it also means oh, child. Oh, well, there you go. What about Shobe? Hello. Oh, Hello. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, you back. Okay. Back. <coughs> what about, uh, back. I was going to say, like, what about Shobe? Shobe, no. Yeah. Sorbet, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I am I'm, I'm jonesing from sor- for some sorbet. Yeah, for real. I I need to, you know, the way the victor. That's this TikTok I watched recently. 
the proper English word, uh, English language, and then the Victorian way of saying it. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, it's like saying I'm thirsty in English, and then in Victorian way, I want to partake in this uh, and, and this uh, in this liquid essence to quench my thirst and you know wow. moisten my lips. You know, it's like this mm-hmm. long-winded way of saying something. True. I don't know. True. It is, it is, but... I feel like we found more efficient ways, but it's getting kind of crazy how how efficient things are with you know uh, how, how we're shortening everything. Bet. Cap. <laughs> mm-hmm. Bet. No cap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How about Perfect. we spend the next Perfect. one minute? Yeah. How about we spend the next one minute trying to talk to Gen Z and let the crowd judge how our Gen Z slangs are. <laughs> oh, that's. Uh... That's, that's very, that's very alpha energy of you, man. That's that's main character energy for you, bro. Uh, for reals, for reals. You've been saying that a lot. You gotta choose, choose another <laughs> word. Choose another Gen Z word, man. Uh, slay. I've been eating, been mm. eating and leaving the crumbs. Man, that, okay. So Zeta can't have NPC energy. They really need to be the main character in this right now. My God, this is so hard. I cannot think. Uh, for real, <laughs> we gotta let we gotta let them cook. They gotta come in clutch, bro. Oh I'm that, so stuck. It's L. You're, I, I hear your keyboard, man. I hear your keyboard. You're, you're looking for no. Gen Z no. terms. I hear your keyboard. Okay, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> Stop! I know you're using a keyboard. <laughs> that's L okay, energy, okay. bro. That's that's okay, okay. Don't don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, okay, I won't, I won't. Okay, uh, mm-hmm. bet. No cap, I'm just looking at the screen, seeing take a the, lot just of... Just take the L, just take the L. <laughs> no, I'm all for the Ws, you know. Uh, the dubs, okay, the dubs. <laughs> yeah, it feels all dry, you know, I'll deal... It. Don't kill the vibe, please. <laughs> okay. Do they say that? Do they say, don't I kill don't, the vibe? I'm, don't ask me, ask Eli, man, I'm not a Gen Z. <laughs> uh... You okay. can search, it's fine. You can search. And then we can... No, uh, I, it's over. Okay, mm-hmm. you know what? I should search. I should probably try and speak it. Uh, sure. no. uh, Nell taking the L. Right. No! <laughs> I'm kidding. Let's hope Zeta doesn't take the L here because they've worked so hard to be able to uh, be part of this matchup. And again, it's a three person. Three or nothing. They need to be able to get at least three out because anything lower than that, GG gets the win. Okay, and I got it. I got it. Go. Okay, oh, okay. Oh, no. How? Judge me from one to ten. How Gen Z I am. Okay. Look, I'm just gonna say, social media isn't just where we spill the tea, drop our latest selfies, backbone of our whole social <laughs> life. You know, a toxic cesspool where privacy feels like a joke. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to drag it. It's just, you know, sliding to DM, dropping a meme, catching up. Okay, I lo- high key, low key, it sucks. I, I can't speak to <laughs> Like I, low key, low key. <laughs> low key. Let's flex that power, fam. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Is that what one? a flex. Oh. Is that one? I'm so dead. Um, high key, low key. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, Coming into oh. Lakeside Village. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Go ahead. Yep. I was going to say, people in the chat, let us rate us with our Gen Z slang or just teach us some Gen Z slang if you guys have any. Uh, and as Nell was uh, pointing out, in Lakeside Village, we're seeing four survivors. So interesting that they put an embalmer up here because they need to get more than just the tie. Uh, yeah. He can- I don't know how Shama is going to navigate through this because he can actually just play towards that and just get, he just needs to secure one survivor down and then just work on end game detention. Yeah, if, it, if they get three survivors out, right, it will be six to two. Six yeah. to two, right? Mm-hmm. Six to two and B01 is also five to three. Was it six to three? Five to three? Uh, five, basically, five, six, three. yeah. So basically, if they get three person out, they're gonna win the round and win the points. So yeah. that's the condition escape. for it. Yeah, three minutes. Yeah, they need that. Yeah. Okay. This is this is looking favorable for Shalma. Ain't no way he's gonna let three survivors escape. Oh, we're st- especially, okay. especially after the back to back four Ks. I mean, let's be realistic. Unless if he ate something wrong for breakfast or dinner or, or high tea, he's not gonna <laughs> perform bad suddenly. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He's not gonna yeah. perform worse suddenly. Mm-hmm. That's not how he is. He usually powers up at the very end. And look at Zeta giving the respect uh, gamekeeper ban here. So 
Chao Ma, you gotta wonder what can he bring out in this situation. <laughs> Look, <you> know, <coughs> <coughs> Probably in the bathroom. Look at that. They're asking for the four survivor, uh, or actually the four elimination on Shauma's side. So, yeah, what does he bring to the table here? He can go wax artist as well, but no, oh. we're gonna see the Night Watch come out, which I was kind of expecting to see Alf bring that out, but brought the wax artist, and now Shauma is gonna take it and use the Itaqua, Itaqua, Ita Ita cults out there, and Ita also Ita the Night Watch Nation. Okay, I'm gonna do some Itakal cheering here. Itakal, Itakal. Okay, never mind. Mm -hmm. Itakwa, assemble! <laughs> <laughs> that is the call to have, it, to have them assemble. That is correct. Sounds like, sounds like He-Man. Have you watched He-Man? Yeah. Assemble! Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, what was that? I have the power! Is that the one? The one where he has the... He-Man, yeah. He-Man, right? Yeah, yeah. It's such an old... It's such an old cartoon. Mm -hmm. And honestly, those are the cartoons we used to watch. Oh my god! Exposing our millennial uh, cartoon. Well, I mean, we just we watched, we watched it. We just caught up with it. We, we never heard of He-Man. What are you talking about? Oh my god. Okay, but that was typically what we watched before all of this anime manga thing came out, right? Um, but yeah, why don't we try and name a few? Like, I know Captain Planet. Oh, of OG? Like, OG, OG, yeah. Oh, OG cartoons uh, before. Scooby Doo? Those. Scooby Doo. Yeah, I think that's very iconic. Uh, Popeye? Popeye the Sailor Man. Uh, we also have Tom and Jerry. Yeah, super classic. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But speaking about classic, looks like Classic's we have bomb. another. Mm -hmm. Another oh. powerful formation, Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> That's another hero. That's another one, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, powerful formation. Um, instead of building a wall, they're building a wall. Yeah, they're a T-shaped uh, yeah, uh, spawn wall. here. Yeah. So Kazuneko is possibly wanting to get the the first chase here. At least he'll be able to kind of kite his way towards Big Boat. Uh, and Balmer at the center. Uh, I guess you could also chase the embalmer because he's going to be right out of the coffin. But it seems like teleport insolence detention on Shalma's side. It seems like everyone has accounted for endgame. But uh, yeah, we have one flywheel on the team and the rest are broken windows and one tie turn on Mochi's side. Yeah, Mochi is going to go back to his rescuer role. Probably decide that, yeah, while well, I want to get MVP for playing Aeroplanis. But. Leave it to Kazuneko, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm gonna stick to rescuing, and that's exactly what's gonna happen here. Xiaoma coming in with the Itaqua, the Night Watch. Trying to find his first victim, and bringing you the action here is me, Anello, and Lodi Poshu. Wow, thank you for that goaded uh, introduction. As we see, uh, the Dolisu is actually already dropping down his coffin at this area here. It's gonna be tough for him to especially um uh, a, a zero presence uh night watch but luckily he has that insolence for him to get unlock his first trait but he's going to use the wind ability for him to try and uh zero out the distance between him and delisu yeah you you gotta just drop pallets here right uh mm -hmm. oh yeah the the boost coming from the pallet oh doubling back dolisu beautiful double back into the Pallet slam mm -hmm. this time. Will he be able to get it? No. Yeah, pallet slamming is a strategy. And apparently it's working for Dolisu because he's bought enough distance away from his coffin, right? So Yeah. yeah. Incredible start for Dolisu because now it's like he's not kiting on any cipher. He's using this advantage and he's already created wow. that distance, as you mentioned, from the coffin. So it's looking pretty good. And Xiaoma has to be very careful. He's Gonna try to drop down the pallet, able to do so, but he gets the leap over it. But look at that, he has another pallet to work with. So yeah. Shalma did not bring Blink. So, oh, he left it right there, just a gift for the IDB gods, but it's totally fine. Because Embalmer has a coffin, but that could have lasted longer. Yeah, I think they already kind of suspect that Shalma has a teleport because he did not use Blink the entire time. So, mm -hmm. yeah, because he, look at where the position of the coffin is. If he uses the coffin here, Shama can easily just teleport back to the big boat and catch Very up. True. So, yeah. So I guess they have to force him out, mm -hmm. uh, force him to use the teleport at a later round, so that when the ciphers are prime, at least his teleport would. 
It'll be oh on my. cooldown, I guess. But oi, two people here. Oh, the <laughs> gun into the face. It's mm. like, what you looking at? Why are you uh -huh. waiting here? You know what I mean? Okay. Oh, so now they know at least he doesn't have excitement. So that teleport is really coming uh, through now. So nice body block here. But the, the problem with nice. them going for both, but able to get the stun that the ciphers aren't going as fast. And now we have a full presence uh, night watch here. Can he make it through oh. the terror shock as he vaults the pallet? But it's good news for Dolisu though. He's escaped the clutches mm. of night watch. And that's exactly what you want to do. Uh, cause you, you kinda know, you kinda know that the Nightwatch Shama probably brought teleport because no excitement, no bling, what else? Don't tell me it's peepers, they know it's not yeah. peepers. <laughs> yeah. Use it mid game. <laughs> yeah. Shama is accounting for the late game, so it's not too late to see what's gonna happen here. He's gonna use the first oh teleport my. of the game. And Dolisu is gonna be caught out! Why are you decoding? On the cipher when you're at half health and the hunter knows where you are. Uh, well, now he knows that he can actually teleport to the big boat <laughs> yeah, uh, with the embalmer's use coffin. The coffin. Yeah, he has to use it. No, Just the because... coffin's here! The oh my god, is here! He, he moved the coffin! Oh no! Nani! Mm, why? This is huge. And why? <sighs> oh, okay. Why? He could have just stayed there, but now we see that Xiao Ma, Mochi's gonna try to defend, but this might be a little over support. Tries to go for the swing, Mochi's still here. Drops down the pallet, eats the hit. Mercenary able to support, but two Cypher's still remaining now. Yeah, this is super, super intense. Like, Mochi is trying so hard to keep the Embalmer alive. And all I can say here is, Nande! <laughs> Nande! He used up the teleport already. Uh, yeah, probably a little bit of misstep going on here. But Dolisu's <laughs> finally gonna go down. But hey, Posh, at least mm -hmm. uh, the last cipher has a lot of progress in it. Yes. Masonry is on the ground though, so. Mm -hmm. It's Hametu uh, that is gonna go for the rescue. So it's. Oh, but that's the thing. Sorry, I realize he's already. Uh, that's his last chair. This is not good. Yeah, and this is exactly um, an issue as well because here Xiaoma does not need to perform his usual 4k whereas Zeta they need to have a 3-man escape in order to win against GG otherwise if they lose this it's gonna be one oh win two losses and Hame to not even gonna Whoa. have the chance to prime the cypher Xiaoma yeah. is not getting less than 4k here he wants the yeah, 4k yeah he definitely does can you imagine that He's gonna have a cons he's gonna be up there with Pepe in a five point game all throughout wow. uh, this matchup. And that's crazy to think because of the adversity he had to face with how well Zeta's hunters did as well, but he was able to rise above the occasion. And also speaking of which, Zeta survivors are also one of the best. For him to be able to do that is no easy feat at all. Once this coordinator expires, we can call GG's to team GG. An excellent showing, an excellent performance, but they will not go down quietly. Zeta will try and go for this rescue. And it seems bet. like Kazuneko is already on the case. Bet. Bet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, bet. Oh, it's going to suck both person in. Hey, but at least the... he'll be able to body block once, but it doesn't put Hamitu out of trouble. Kazuneko's mm -hmm. in the vicinity. I thought Kazuneko would at least try and, and a body block because this is the last chance. Oh, he's going to oh. be pulled back in. Hametu ah. gonna be on the floor. Cousin Neko's trying to push that last Cypher. That's why he didn't body block. But mm -hmm. by the time he sits on the chair, Cypher's gonna be popped. And what can he do in this position? Oh, he has... this is so hard. I think they're just trying to deny the four, the four survivor elimination. Ooh. He has the flywheel. He also has the jetpack to work with. But you have a full presence night watch on your tail. Mercenary is opening up the exit gate and teleport will be ready. So let's see. He's just going to go for a three person elimination. But how crazy was that? Xiaoma going above and beyond that tie for him to get himself a three person game, ultimately securing himself the victory for this uh, group stage match. Yeah, that was super crazy. Xiaoma, the ace in the hole. Uh, goaded. GG. Yeah, goaded super. For real, bet, slay, eat, cr left no crumbs. I, 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 I'm, I'm just flexing all the Gen Z slangs. Uh, what about, what about all of that. skill issue? Well, we don't know the Gen Z terms. It's a skill issue for us. No skill issue. Definitely goaded, slay. Oh, for, for, oh, yeah, for us, it's more of a skill issue with Gen Z terms. But for Shama, for there's definitely for no real, skill real. issue here. Definitely one no of the cap. goats.
Mm-hmm. Yeah. No cap. <laughs> high high key praises. High key best one of the best out there to do it. Big. Low key low key we're not qualified to low praise key. him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why are we doing? I, I you started it. <laughs> ah, but how do you say thank you in Gen Z, or they don't, or they don't say thank you? I think they just say thank you. I don't know. Thank you. I don't know. Maybe that's like some super term like K thanks. K thanks. K thanks. Mm-hmm. I, I don't um, know. <laughs> there was a my friends. Okay. Uh, so there's like shortcuts in in when we text in the Philippines when they say thank you they put. A number 10 and a Q. Oh, for me, I put a T and a Q. Thank you. Thank you. TQ. Yeah. TQ. Okay. Yeah. This is one term that I think the millennials coin K thanks bye. K T H X B A I. K thanks bye. Okay, wow. thanks bye. Mm, we came up with that? Millennials came up with that? I, th- nice. I think we did. I think we did. We're, yeah. we're claiming that. We're claiming that. We're chat. claiming that. Yeah, bet, mm. bet. <laughs> Dub, dubs for us. Dubs for us. Dubs for us. Slay, slay. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, you know, you know that situation I watched oh. on YouTube where. It's, sorry. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. I was gonna say instead of YOLO, they say do it for the plot. Do it for the plot. Mm-hmm. Oh. Like, hey, should I should I stay up all night and watch uh, Call of the Abyss? YOLO. No, do it for the plot. Do it for the right. plot. Okay. Should I get a? Should I get a? Uh, a tattoo? Should I ask this person out? Yeah, do it for the plot. Do it for the plot. Okay. Mm-hmm. Better not be yapping. <laughs> oh, we do it for the plot, for sure. We do it for the plot, for sure. GG. Tell the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But one thing's for sure, congratulations to GG. Um, mm-hmm. uh, that's definitely round wins, right? Yep. GG's gotten the round wins, two round wins. And unfortunately, Zeta will be getting their second L. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, yeah, and this is this marks the third W for GG. So mm-hmm. I have the to say GG is looking very strong in this group of death. Yeah, I I don't know where you had them rank, but they had I had them ranked uh, pretty high up in this group of death. It was actually for me it was GG and Zeta. Uh, MRC is in third place, so I think the the standings is still going to remain the same because that's the top three that's in this group currently. So again, just an amazing performance for Team GG, still holding on to their top play spot. Because if we look at the group stage standing, folks, it is GG, Zeta, MRC, Dowu, and uh, uh, Team GR. Is that how you predicted that how this group stage would be now? I, okay. I actually predicted Zeta and GG on the top. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, unfortunately... I did predict GR being at the bottom. Uh, it's mm-hmm. either I, I put actually it was just a, a toss up, right? It's either Dou or GR mm-hmm. uh, because GR super rich left, Dou yeah. Dongxuan left, so that's mm-hmm. why I put them both at the bottom. But for mm-hmm. Zeta, I honestly did not predict uh, them getting only one W and two L's. So mm-hmm. yeah, uh, I guess that's the only thing that was a. Uh, out of the ordinary for me. <laughs> no, the thing is, I believe Zeta got an uh, MRC. They they didn't get the win. They oh yeah, it's two L's and one dub, so they only need right? one more game. So I think did they face Zeta faced uh, the or who is the team Zeta faced? Because uh, now this is their third match, right? Yeah. So who? Which they match did faced... they win? Mm-hmm. They won once ag- once against. I can't remember what team that was again. It was either Do or GR. So this yeah. actually bumps them down since MRC actually won against Zeta. So yeah, we just have to MRC. wait for the group standings. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's that's kind of tough on Zeta's side. That's true. Super hard, and it would be devastating for the Zeta fans if they could not even make top three, right? If, yeah. yeah. If you make top three, at least you'll be able to make the top twelve. Uh, although you will have to fight it out in the losers bracket, like mm-hmm. all the four, the third place, third seat of each mm-hmm. group will be fighting it out for the final spots, right? So I guess yes. that's uh, what's gonna happen. But Zeta definitely still has a fighting chance. I mean, mm-hmm. they technically need to win their remaining two games. Yeah. That's, yeah, for sure. 
Uh, one game, actually. One Ooh. more game left, yeah. yeah, for them to be able to work with. But no contention here with the best deduction. The GOAT himself, Xiaoma, getting the MVP with his gamekeeper in round number two. I mean, he was on his way to have a perfect streak of hunters, but that t that title still goes to Pepe uh, for him to get a five point game all throughout. But Shauma's definitely up there with one of the goats. So uh, big for dumps real. on the side of uh, Shauma. Yeah, coming in for the plots. <laughs> <laughs> We're speaking Gen Z here, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, a lot of people are reciprocating. Ten Q casters, mm -hmm. ten Q, ten Q, ten Q, and yeah, I mean. It's been a wonderful ride. You've been here for three matchups. Three and, matches, uh, man. Oh, which so one would uh, <laughs> yeah? Which one would you dub the most interesting ones out of the three? You come with um, today? Well, the first match was quite close. The match that we did see Wu Chang in, and mm. uh, th th that was the match between FT and I believe it was Team HHDG. That was quite yeah, close. HHDG. And I'd have to say that was a mix of both survivors really uh, showcasing their skills and synergy and also hunters coming in clutch at the uh, game number three. And I think the last two ones with uh, when I commented with Eli and when I commented with you, it's more of a hunter showcase. So yeah, I, I, I'd herald if you guys want to watch the VODs, check out game number, uh, sorry, the match between FT versus HHDG because that was, uh, th that was really a back and forth and it went the full best of three games. Yeah, that's also that's also one of the games where people are literally guessing that I will have to go bold, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go into the interviews. Hello, I'm Gigi Shama. Hello, I'm Gigi, your papa. 18. <laughs> He's saying that, uh, congratulations, you already secured, you pretty much secured uh, the ticket to top 8. Uh, your feelings. Super happy. Practice for so long. So, getting a satisfactory result, definitely very happy. Uh, you 18? Yeah. I'm high key, happy. Uh, high key, happy. Over the moon. Yeah. You want him to get 4K? He gets 4K. You want him to get 4K? He gets 4K. He responds to 4K. Feelings during the last game? Oh. Oh, Coffin. Oh. He had the skill, that's why he, was, he used it. Okay, so that's the that's advantage. Yeah. If only he did not move the coffin at all. Mm. Yeah, it's a very happy day for you guys. But the, it looks like first game. One survival escape is also very important. Feels like, it feels like what happened. I'm feeling what happened uh, six months ago. And feels like it's coming back here. Hopefully, we won't experience that kind of nervousness again. Explaining their plan on how they managed to get one person out. Shishang,非常非常高,在第一局歌剧演员当时也是非常果断切了市场,那个时候你对于局势会有什么样子的判断? Yeah, just keep trying your best. There you Yeah, hopefully in the group can get number one. 
Yeah. Oh, Chen Hao is just fix your mood and just, you know, get back to it straight away. Ooh, Ma Hong, you're great. Yeah, 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 you <laughs> so it's been a long day for me. I know I gave my highlights. Did the main event live up to what you、uh, expected it to be? Because this was actually a match that everyone was looking forward to seeing. Because this is gonna、mm -hmm. kind of put the place、uh, of Group A. How do you feel about it? It pretty much solidifies、um, GG standings. Honestly,、uh, taking out a lot of heavy hitters in the group and、mm -hmm. going for wins without losses. I feel like、right. the GG stands a very high chance of winning everything this year. Ooh, yeah, I feel like they might be able to do it、uh, this year.、Uh, for other groups, I have to say, like that's perks, right? Being in the group of death, being in the group of hope. In group of death, you're playing at a hundred percent against super tough opponents. Right. So right. yeah, and you prove your quality, right?、Mm -hmm. In the group of death, you can get number one, number two, but when you meet the big hitters. In top、mm. eight, top twelve, that's where things are really gonna change. Dynamics are gonna change. True. Now that I think about it, even like another contender for winning this is Wolves, but they suffered an out L. Yeah, yeah, they they suffered an L yesterday against Scars, so they traded wins loss. But、uh, that GG coming in with this much momentum to the brackets is gonna be huge for them. So yeah, I agree with you. If in in that. Sort of、uh, prediction. I know it's still a little too early since this is only day number six with how the brackets are going to shake out. But GG is definitely a big contender for them for to、real. be able to get the the whole. They might be the two-time Call of the Abyss champions, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's saying a lot. For real, for real. Like that's uh, it's just saying a lot. There are just a few teams that、uh, lacking a little bit in a lot of departments.、Mm -hmm. Like for example, GR losing the hunter. Uh, the Dou losing their main hunter that they're、yeah. supposed to have, yeah, just、mm -hmm. just keep a, a lot of things. But Yan is a good replacement for Dou.、Mm -hmm. Just a lot of things just keeps rotating, and it feels like they're not playing at their best. But I have to say, for B for you, full roster, they're definitely playing their best.、Uh, for FT as well, full power coming in,、mm -hmm. so it pays. It pays to have the same team because of the、mm -hmm. synergy, the teamwork, communication already there,、mm -hmm. and. It shows they're they're pulling through,、uh, much、Definitely. better than the previous Koa. Yeah,、uh, I can't wait to see. I think their their last Koa win was、uh, well. If we're talking about GG, like the previous Koa champions,、uh, they have learned a lot from Koa Four, and majority of them are still there. Wolves also, you have to admit, the survivors are there. It's just Alex that、uh, did go out, but Chong Ai is there. Chong Ai is there. So yeah, it just it's it's a little it's hard because there was a lot of roster shakeups that did happen. A lot of hunters moving to different teams. A lot of survivors going back and forth, and it built. It's hard because that rapport that you have with your teammates, the synergy is definitely built over time. So it's super important for、uh, you, like these teams, to stick together. And it's also super important for me to show this fan sign that I'm gonna say hi to Pop. Popsicle, Yamiko, and officially Mew. Big shoutouts to you guys for you know keeping everything positive in the chat and also saying what's up to us. And yeah, keeping things.、Um, I want to say a Gen Z term, but I'm blanking out. I've been talking for like almost eight hours, I believe. So I'm a little.、Mm. Oof. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got you, fam. It's fine. I I believe the audience knows as well. Hey, Toto. Oh, oh Toto、bed. knows. Toto knows. Not biting my bed, Toto.、Oh. No, no. Are we gonna get a cameo from Toto soon? Toto, come. come.、Mm -hmm. All right. Tell us today's hey, results,、that. Toto. Tell us today's results. Oh well, my God. Well, guys, Potch,、uh, I think we have、uh, two to zero for、uh, for Team T E. I've got、oh、two HD. I'm getting a loss over F T, and I also got F B X E Q, one of my favorite teams, getting a two zero against G H, and. We got the main event with <laughs> GG with one and oh, so congratulations to all the teams out there. That's me, Toto. So an incredible showing. <laughs> congratulations to all the teams that won, but also big shoutouts to all the teams that performed today. 
Oh wow, Toto! Oh, I, no, I can't know. believe. It. Oh my God, Toto! Oh my God! I didn't know you were such an FPXEQ fan. FPX, he loves FPXEQ. That's crazy. For real, it's real. I thought you were a wolf fan. Come on, mm -hmm. come on, <laughs> same species. Come on. <laughs> well, well, wolves wasn't playing at us, but I really like FPXEQ. Oh my God, you are an FPXEQ fan. Looks like we gotta tag Toto and let Dongshen. Repost? I don't know, man. Tech Lotion, <laughs> FX ZQ mascot. Who knows? Who mm -hmm. knows? Hey, who knows? Maybe Toto would commentate an entire match. That's going to be kind of crazy if he does uh, that. But yeah, shout out to true. Toto. Shout out to each and every one of you that's still joining us. And yeah, a big ups to the teams that did come up today and tried their best. I, I know we have our last match of Cat. Uh, team GH, HHDG. I think HHDG is in a good spot. And also Zeta is on the cusp of still kind of breaking even in the the, the, the third place spot, but we're just gonna have to wait. Actually, we will see the match result. We just, today's results, then we're gonna see the group stage as well. That's true. That is very, very true. Um, so yeah, uh, I believe we will see the seedings, the latest seedings shortly. Mm -hmm. And they have it, poof, like magic. You mm -hmm. ask and you shall receive. So we nice. see that GG and Zeta are still on the same keel here. Uh, not much shakeups here. RC and HHDG still good, but FP was able to actually get uh, closer. Oh wait, actually, even though the win at HHDG, uh, HHDG still in a better spot. So interesting there. Yeah. TE and B for you. We haven't seen a match here yet, but we did see TE get a win over Cat. So they're actually leading this group. And yeah. Axis, Weibo Gaming, FPXEQ, AWG, GH, still in the same keel, but unfortunately, I think AWG does uh, move up against GH in this ranking. Yeah, this is one of the one of those days, you know, where you have to screen cap that before you is above Wolves in ranking. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. yeah and speaking of sure. which. B4U is gonna start out day number, uh, well, day number seven here up against Scars. And then we got RC versus RD. Axis Wave versus Weibo Gaming is gonna be an interesting one. Then we have Dou versus MRC for the main event and Group Ooh. A to end out day number seven. Yeah, before you is up against a very scary competitor because Scars mm -hmm. is the one that brought action against Wolves, right? And taking it away. Yes. So. We'll have to see what how mm. before you is gonna respond. Yeah, it's just an incredible day number seven tomorrow. Again, you guys need to be there. To, uh, set an alarm, support your favorite teams, and, and really show up and show up for your favorite teams tomorrow because they need it now more than ever. Before you in a really good spot here, they need to be able to hold this spot because imagine if they're able to hold that spot and make it all the way to brackets, that's gonna be the furthest NAEU has gotten in, in Call of the Abyss, and B4U is leading that charge. Leading the charge. Yeah, I like how you put it that way, because mm. they're definitely... Oh, 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 oh. He's oh. leading the charge, too. Toto. Wants to say something. <laughs> yeah, Toto, he's, he's a fan of FPXEQ, you know? Oh, but, that. oh my god, that's crazy. Oh my god, oh my god. That's the troll. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, definitely looking forward to tomorrow's matches. So guys, make mm -hmm. sure that you stay. Uh, you stay notified uh please do hit the bells and toto come on mm -hmm. so sweet this little yeah, boy Be yeah yeah he's gonna come tomorrow he's gonna come tomorrow for sure and chantelle it's not Nell, it's toto it's, it's toto. toto it's toto that was talking guys that was that was mickey mouse that was that was toto guys it, was, it, was, <laughs> it, was, it wasn't even kermit that was here that was yeah, toto. For reals. yeah <laughs> definitely definitely and just to answer a quick question it's Steel series headphones, the Arctic, hey, Arctic nice Five, mm. nice suit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They look really so, good, and also keep your hair intact, so that's awesome. Yeah, for reals. Mm -hmm. uh, love it for sure. You know, comfort throughout the day. That's really important. And mm. guys, uh, hope that we will get to see you very soon tomorrow, as usual. Um, it's mm. been a pleasure casting for you guys, and hopefully. Well, you have a good day, and we'll see you yeah. tomorrow. See you guys tomorrow. All right, day number seven. Let's go. Bye-bye. See you.
我的技能也慢，我输了应该大不了才。死了，三甲费，把你速离就得往大门溜啊！我知道，我知道，溜不了，溜不了。